magic numbers, forever lost. Uh, I was taken unawares because I was, I opened that, um, that thing, what is it? The confectionery. Well, we were sort of doing it ironically, like people getting shameless plugs by giving us stuff, but then I opened it and it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It's all retro stuff, it's got a curly whirly, a fountain, sherbet fountain. I've just been eating a drumstick that I didn't quite finish in time. It's got Brilliant. some of those little cola bottles. Uh, that's Hope and Greenwood and their confectionery, which are there mm. on their perfect summer gift. Perhaps you've got to go to a wedding or a um, barbecue party. And we've got some rubbish to give away now, haven't we? We have indeed, yeah. If only we hadn't opened that, we could have thrown that in the mix. I but, know, um, no, it's too good to give away. It's time for Rockbusters, uh, the quiz that no one looks forward to. And, um, <laughs> we've got, as usual, the bunch of, uh, CDs, uh, DVDs, I should say, which, um... Just tell me we have got another copy of Ladder 49. Ladder 49's right here. That's Brilliant. in the mix, yeah. How many did I send you? Joaquin V. Nix, John Travolta, Ladder 49, the movie that no one's seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never met anyone who's seen it. But it's owned by every single SFM <laughs> listener. <laughs> exactly. Um, also in the mix, uh, as I said before, there we've got Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, mm. um, which, um, if you haven't seen that on telly, I'm be very surprised. Uh, French and Saunders at the movie, the, uh, the best of all the French and Saunders movie spoofs, which is, I think, on TV every single night. Yeah. Um, it's a very gay giveaway so far, it's isn't it? Well, this got is a 49, the people in uniform, you've got Queen of the Desert and French and Saunders, well, the gays love them. You know how much a fan I am of, uh, Chevy Chase. You know I love Chevy Chase. Yeah. Well, uh, we've also got here National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, which doesn't feature Chevy Chase. <laughs> it was so bad, even Chevy wouldn't agree to be in it, so instead Randy Quaid, who plays Cousin Eddie, it's him. Right. And on the back I notice it says, Special Appearance by Eric Idol. Brilliant. I mean, let's be honest, if a film's got a special appearance by Eric Idol, <laughs> I know. It's probably not a classic, is all do I'm saying. Do you reckon they do, um, always walk on the. And that's on the bright side of life. Anyways, that's, that's just some of the DVDs which you can win. And obviously the, the real reason you should enter is because you go forward to this big prize draw, um, which is in our last show, where you can win some actual quality. Um, yeah, a, a signed, uh, a Matt Groening drawing. And if you can see him drawing that on rickyjavase.com, it's uh, totally genuine. It's there, him actually drawing it in front of your very eyes. Also, um, us, uh, made us, uh, flanimals, um, and a signed, um, uh, poster uh, by Nigel Tufnell. Christopher Guest. Sure. So proper good prizes. Yep. So the, this is the, I think it should be the last one to get into it. Maybe next week, the four that we've got get down to two maybe, and then we get them on the line in the last, uh, what do you think? Well, I'll be honest, I wish we'd thought it through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wish we thought this Chris through. Chris Campling, if you've got any ideas <laughs> yeah. how this show could have run, see, we should have, we should have scripted this. What yeah. we said, we just said go in a drawer, didn't we? Did we? Oh, yeah, we hadn't thought it through though. Yeah, but we can't keep swapping and changing. Well, well we, we haven't done do it yet. We, 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 just, we, we can do what we want, yeah. We, we, you know how many BAFTAs we've won? We can do exactly what we want. High five. Well, listen. <laughs> Six. Right, well, let's, let's get down to business then. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Rockbusters, uh, make, let's explain briefly what this quiz is for those that have only just started listening to the show. Um, basically- It's basically, uh, um, Blockbusters. Well, you say that, Rick, but it's not, is it? I mean, that- Blockbusters made sense. Yeah, well, there's this thing that, uh, Carl thinks this is a cryptic clue and going, right, a fella is walking along and it- Oh, look, there's the fish. What does that mean? d trout no, some, some, well, of I them, mean, some of them are hard because they've, they've dug some them all out. Some of them are hard because they don't make sense. No, but they've dug them all out because they're gonna put them all on the website for people to play along with and they came to me for the answers and some of them are, are pretty tricky. I couldn't answer them. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that. Anyway, um, <laughs> the only man that can outwit himself. Right so, then. So the first one then, here we go. Why don't you borrow some land off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher? Alright. Why don't you borrow a little bit of land? Oh, it's changed already. Already changed. Oh, already oh, changed. Mr. Boardman. Well, no, no, do it again and do it exactly the same each time. Do it again. Uh, why, uh, why, right. do, why don't you borrow uh, some land off, off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher if you, if you need a bit of it? <laughs> Okay, and what's the, what are the initials? Right, L.S. L.S. That's a band or an artist. Who am I talking about? Hmm? Uh, second one. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, geez. I'm that's gonna, uh, that's right, he's got a sweet in his mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those, uh, those seabirds over there. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds over there. Well, just, just those seabirds, it doesn't matter where they are. I'm gonna annoy them seabirds. I don't know what he's talking about anymore, Steve. <laughs> Honestly. B. B. B is the initial. I love the fact that he was fascinated by the strangest village in Britain, but the stories he's told us about where he comes from, there's him going around with two fellows with big heads, webbed feet, a little pigeon-chested bloke, uh, him on his grifter with Maggie pecking at him, his dad in the telephone box nicking groceries and a horse in the house next door. <laughs> I mean, how strange was his upbringing? Yeah. And him hanging from his satchel. Uh, uh, unbelievable. 
There's Feel another free. woman who I remembered. Actually, I'll tell you later. Go on, what? what? No, I'll tell you, tell you later about another woman who I remembered. What is it? Give us a oh, oh, teaser. It's just a woman who rode around on a three-wheeled bike with her husband in a basket. <laughs> right, I'll tell you later. Right, right, and, and the final, the you final place. You don't get teasers like that no, on the other radio station. That's the head of a funeral service. Oh. Right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, the final clue. Uh, what the Scouse fella said to the robber who he found in his house next to his vineyard. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Again. Right, so what the Scouse fella said. Right, this is gonna be a pronunciation thing. To the robber he found in his house. Oh, God. I've, I've lost his... the will to live. I have lo I, I, I wanna get in that woman's basket on the street, we'll just be driven round the, the rest of my life. The initials there, A-W. A W. Who is it? All right. right. Well, Email in and that. Mm. Should we have also on the text eighty three X F M? You can win um, Christmas Vacation. Christmas, 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 Christmas Vacation two and <laughs> or ladder forty nine. Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie. Watch that man on X F M one hundred four point nine. Now, coming up, Steve and listeners. I mean, then you know I'm talking to them mainly. I'm not really. I'm talking to you and Carl really. Yeah. But coming up, an old feature. Knob News. Ah, oh, Knob News. The welcome return of Knob News. Yes, and uh, Monkey News is still there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just briefly, um, you don't think you really gave that uh, competition justice, did you, not handing out the email? Oh, let's just quickly whiz through the questions again. Yeah. John's texted in, by the way. He says, I never get any of the Rockbusters clues. Is this a good or a bad thing? Definitely a good thing. Definitely a good Definitely thing. Definitely a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. All other people do. Well, First yeah. one. Why don't you borrow a bit of land off uh, Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel? Or even Mr. Fletcher. Right. right. L.S. Second one. I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. Right. B. And the last one. What the Scouse fella said to the robber he found in his house next to his vineyard. A.W. If you know what they are, yeah. email in or, or uh, text. You need the answers quickly, Carl. Right. Right. We're busters. running out of time. We've got right. Rockbusters and Monkey News to come in this fun packed show. Give us the clues, give us the answers. Right. The first one was. Why don't you borrow a little bit of land off, uh, Mr. Boardman, yeah. or Mr. Laurel, or yeah. Mr. Fletcher? Go on then. Yeah, right, sure. what am I getting at there? The Stand. initials were LS, yeah. right? Yeah. Lease, lease, a Stan's field, right? Because you're borrowing it, that's leasing it. It's Stan, Stan Boardman, Stan Laurel, and, uh, it's a field and that, innit? Second one. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. That was B. What are you doing when you're annoying a bird? You're bugging it. What's a seabird? A, a, a gull. Buggle. Buggles. Right? Bug gulls. Uh, I don't, I don't know where to start, mate. Right, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I don't, don't know where to start. Uh, if we, if we had more time, don't worry. I'd throw him out of a window. Yeah. <laughs> right. What, what the Scouse fella said to the robber <sighs> he found in his house next to his vineyard. Go on That then. was A W. Yeah. That was A, me wine house. Right? A, what? A, 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 me wine house. What? Tell us about the woman, what's the text, quick, well, well, Eight three oh. nine three six on the text. Okay. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk on the email and that. Alright, and that. Right, I'm down. Make a note of that. And that. Right, tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the, you know, our, our living. We are broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't us sort of like. Yeah, sort but of you, you were just talking about. How I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, webbed hands and that. They went to my school. <laughs> and, uh, I, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going to, I'm going out to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the, uh, big headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos, because they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales would, you know, because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that, and he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so... I would uh, love them! Yeah! That's why I'd buy them! Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? Is it and that's piece? Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Hmm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know... When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. 
not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, well, loads of weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And uh, she had a three-wheeled sort of big. What do you call it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. What do you call it? Like a big tricycle, tricycle but for a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though. It was a no, no, no. Motorbike. It was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his like legs dangling over. And they'd be going to like the like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same, same yeah. Old, sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then just people just throw Grandad just in the back and go yeah. like we're getting four quid for Granddad. But but, but she's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're she, very low, but they extremely... bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but she'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now I've heard, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you're picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that, she That's was good. And how was the husband? He, did he, did he, was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the No, he just, uh, she sort of stopped picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's good. Just you can't, you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer Well, you probably did, there was, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop, but I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was, uh, you know. But, but let's, let's face it, he's, you know, he's, he's not gonna be caught, cause why would anyone know about it? It's not like his son's gonna say it on a, on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of like vigilante work? <laughs> just whatever, I mean, his mate, just, you know, if they saw something going on, they go, what can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Guns right. Traven or something. Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, I don't. Is he is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that it's always. I mean, I could cut a body up. I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, <laughs> is anyone keeping an eye on him? Sort of going. Well, who is he actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is a proper doctor. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't answer everything. Like he doesn't say. I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, exit straight dark line down out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was like miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just, have a, just have a straight, do you know no, what I mean? Straight it's just what you're talking about. Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us, it really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. What I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was, it might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. now. We're eating like yogurt, <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> we, we don't we don't need anything that you know is 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 doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up, and in aura, right? <laughs> All her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them, and that's how. <laughs> how <laughs> She's got teeth, but she don't need them. No, but that's well, how we need her intestines removed. Then well, no, but this is that what I'm saying. That's our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet, um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got like three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's what? not true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they did for no, what, like, what, what doctor's doing this then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say this is what we want and- No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take- uh, They don't- Doctors don't do that. 
What sort of practice? Is this doctor going around and go- Dr. Jekyll. I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we've Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. No, <laughs> sign this. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it isn't- oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, cos it's like- Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose, or a beard, or two front teeth that would, to make them look different, right? Not- I'll tell you what we could do, go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of, there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Alright, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprise me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle. Right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers, how many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers. Sewn that on to where his his tackle is, he's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, that's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've. I assume they they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, to near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery. In surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke, he had, um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not gonna be that good, but just carry on, um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that anyway. He was, he was fed up because he loved his meat, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day. And thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. Oh, he wants you some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of like steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. <laughs> What? No, it's something. I know it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> it was sort of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from it's from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't are you allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there and throwing. Why? I tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I go. <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Um, <coughs> he choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, "Oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all." Just That's listen a symbolic to your, story. To it's, it's all. There's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers, and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. Okay, then listen. Right, I'm gonna. I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these. Okay. Now, these are facts that I've sourced. Mm. Okay. What's the What's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal well, some facts. Some of them. I don't. Mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just, they just do. Okay then, here you go. Right. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog, that contains enough poison 
to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does if it does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? Rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much? Is it is, is it getting threatened a lot? Is what I mean. Well, no, because it's saying don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours. It's got the colours that say it doesn't want to be eaten. It doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't You don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why, why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out, and then they'll attack it, and then it'll turn around and bite and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite, it's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's, I mean, who's gonna eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sacre bleu! <laughs> you have killed me and 999 <laughs> of my friends! But why, why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it it, not seem... if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not going to lick it. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't, I will not be licking a frog. So it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it and there's no chance, at no point am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He doesn't, he, then he wants them to hide. He doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool. And the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. You think that everything, slugs, Cats are all somehow they, their their ambition is to be like us or to to have the attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. he's I'm thinking of Planet of like the Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, no, cat. no, you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. Mollis Chambers, Kings of Leon on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant Carl Pilkington. And uh, England are world champions again then, so... Oh, it's brilliant. It was amazing, wasn't yeah. it? See, I'm not a rugby man at all. I, I, I never watched rugby. I think the last time, I think, was when we won about 12 years ago, whenever it was. And I got into it last week because I realised we were doing so well. Because I watch England win anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, I don't care what. In fact, I wasn't into war when I was little until I realised we were so bloody good we at it. We are really good at it. it. You know, it's brilliant. But, um, uh, oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it was great. Right, that's the rugby thing over. That's what next? With... That's it. That's all I've got. That's all I had today. It does steam me, sometimes I watch it and it does, it does remind me of when I play rugby, because one of them will boot it down the field, and then someone will catch it and boot it straight back again. Yeah. Which is essentially how I we play rugby I was made to play rugby, we were to play rugby, yeah. and I don't think I'd get rid of the ball so quickly. Yeah. Um, I don't think I ever got tackled or fell over. Yeah. I think I touched the ball about 20 times in the two years it was compulsory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was terrified. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, same as cricket. I, I, I can't. I'm a terrible batsman. I'm all right at bowling, but it seemed like the pastime for people I went to school was, was to injure you. Yes. It was funny to yeah. see someone polax. It was funny to see someone get a cricket ball in the head. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. You know. I so. never relaxed into rugby because the first day I was going to play it, my mum. I swear to God, my mother said, oh, "You're playing rugby today. You got the kit and everything. Um, enjoy it. Be careful. There was a kid at my school who got um, who broke his neck." And Cheers, I just, um, yeah, thanks very much for that. See you later. So I we just went to school absolutely Man, one thing, wait, 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 broken neck, that's, is that all, does you get better in a couple of days? Oh, no, oh, oh, oh. Find a wheelchair. no, 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 no. Enjoy the game though. Yeah, no it was, it was absolutely petrified, I was just petrified from that day. See, on. at least American football, you know, 
helmet. Padding, the helmet. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, but anyway, well, no no injuries, thank God. <laughs> thank goodness. Uh, yeah. So uh, well, I tried to uh, try to play rugby, but it's awkward when you've got glasses. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about you. Don't, you didn't really play with glasses on. Yeah, cool. Well, I couldn't see anything, could I? I couldn't see anything. How else was I going to play? Oh, my God. And so you're bound to be cautious, because inevitably you're a bit more cautious when you've got glasses next to your face. you're the tallest person on the pitch as well. Yeah. I mean, you were, uh, like, w- w- when you were about 14, you were probably six foot already, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. everyone else was, like, five two? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you uh towering above them <laughs> and with glasses on. Just with the glasses and on. you've got pretty cool glasses now. That's very you've well. had a bit of a, a makeover. Make it's like Trini and Suzanne said yeah. first thing to go the glasses. Sure, sort them out. Yeah, yeah. and but presumably you used to have those national sort of bottles. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it true you've never been able to mosh? I tried to mosh. I. I, cause cause I've always watched people stage diving, moshing at concerts. I've always thought that looks like brilliant. You know when they they um they ride ab- above like everyone's wave, heads, like they're surfing across the, someone's yeah, hands and everyone's like, yeah. And I've always wanted to do that because I'm a big rock music fan. And uh, the only time I did mosh was at Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to mosh at Rage Against the Machine. I, but I love the idea of a, a band called Rage Against the yeah. Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, aimed at a man with glasses who yeah. won't mosh. Well, it was at the Reading Festival, and I think the lead singer, I forget his name, he went um. Can I just remind everyone that racism and fascism, fasci- fascism are on the rise in Europe again. Let's not let it happen. What did you do? And we all cheered, obviously. I mean, if there's one thing that guarantees a cheer yeah. at Reading Festival, it's down with fascism. And what did they do about it after the concert? Did, pretty did, much did, went back and... Did, went, went home and had a cup of tea? Probably, I don't yeah, know what sure, they got sure. up to. They didn't go to Europe then and try don't and think start... They, no? I don't think they got involved politically in Europe. I think they just continued to rage. Against the machine? Yeah, but largely in, in America, I think. Sure, but, sure. But, um, I tried to mosh, and I got, got moshing, and, um, glasses flew off. <laughs> And I went, I went, I remember, because we were playing away, you know, hey, you know, do what you tell me, yeah. and I, went, I was just going, careful, I've just, my, I've dropped my glasses, can we just, can we be careful? Loads of kids so in, in hooded tops, yeah, exactly. just going mental. Yeah, and they're all trying to like, just, can we just calm down for a second? Let's not be silly. Yeah. Yeah. It oh. was absurd, I had to kind of, you know, scrabble around on the floor, and I, thankfully they were okay, and they didn't get broken. So, so what couldn't you do then? What do you mean, what can I do? Well, at school, could, can you not, can you not see th- without glasses? No. I mean, what, you're, it's like, that you couldn't do anything. It's a blur. Yeah, really? It's a blur, definitely. God. Yeah, it's like being kind of punch drunk or whatever. So, yeah, you can't play sports when you, you know, when you've got glasses. But why, why not contact lenses? Because they're, t- they're not strong enough. No, I just, I it was, t- they seemed a bit fiddly. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant! <laughs> bit of Lou Reed. <laughs> that what you want? Yeah, Satellite of Love. Classic, a retro cut. Lou Reed, with a little help from David Bowie there in the background. Satellite of Love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, Steve, you know how Carl won't do anything outside his jurisdiction. He, uh, he, he moans about stuff. He's awesome. got one job. We've got, we're doing about five things in the we're week. Um, we, we just turn up and he's always available. He moans about it, he goes, oh, lucky you caught me, right? He's not, he's chatting, he just win. he's one of those people that, uh, uh whinges enough and people think he's overworked, so yeah. he got Mondays off, right? He's just one, a whinger. Yeah. I haven't he got Mondays off, though, have I? Yeah, well, anyway, um, two hours on a Saturday. Uh, mm. this is what, the phone message he left to me Wednesday on my mobile, but I just, uh, he's chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment, uh, what he does need to know. Um, oh, Duncan who mentions is my agent, and, you know, you you understand a few other things, but this is the sort of message I get from Carl, right? Wind. Old messages. Alright. Ten past twelve. Wednesday. Um, just getting loads of people calling me all the time about shit. Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk TR, going on about do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Right? Uh, just saying, uh, you and some listeners can go. So I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria. So can, can you just like let Duncan know that I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his arse with his thumb firmly up his arse? Can you let him know that I'm running around like a c here sorting shit out for you? Alright, see you later. <laughs> Message left. So- 
Do you know what I mean? I know, but that's the kind of phone message he's needed. But, that, but do you remember but, who he was before but, you? But is it even him? annoyed that he gets a phone call? I remember we got a phone call for you to do a voiceover. Didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That yeah, was yeah. thousands of pounds. No, I did. I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you I said someone had phoned. Yeah. That's not good enough. But who's that? Well, she she didn't say, and I didn't ask. But of course she said. She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take your number down. She went. She went. Oh, can you tell Steve to call me? And you went. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just thought you'd know her already. I should have known. It was a woman, so I should have known. He's having a go, you see? Unbelievable. I don't know how he's gone back on me. You're the one who was picking on him. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying. I'm defending. Why is he having a go at you? He never picks on Ricky because he knows you are his bread and butter. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) you know what I mean? The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's scared of you. That's why he's like he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows you know I'm a pushover. I'm a nice guy. He's scared of you. I can't believe it. I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out. I look after you. Mm-hmm. Sort you out with tickets. I sort you out with lager. I got you today. Why are you picking on me? What, 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 what do you mean you sort about tickets and lager? What's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah. yeah sort like I don't want to use this as like moaning time and that because yeah. I don't like to moan. I'm busy and that. Right. <laughs> I've, sorted, I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right. Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right. Lager. He was sorting about the cure. He complained it was boring. Yeah. yeah. There was that big drum of lager that yeah. you had, and you said, oh, put that in your room for me, yeah. because I don't want to carry it home. Right? Lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. Mm. Then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one, you make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it home, can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. yeah. But interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, obvi- it's still, still pressing on you. Oh, hang it? on, and I forgot the one when we had an argument over 50p. <laughs> <laughs> and I went you out didn't for want to coffee. give me 50p back that you owed me. Uh, that was the that same day you'd given him about 40 quid worth of lager. But, see, this is my problem, this was my point at the time. It's not the 50p, the 50p in terms of money is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only 50p, that was the point of the state. Mm. I, it's me who makes the decision, oh, don't worry about the 50p, not you, it's only 50p, I'm not gonna give it to you. You know what I mean? There's mm. gotta be rules, otherwise it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. Alright? I don't wanna fall out about no, it. No, it's not <laughs> Should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you want oh, that? It's not right. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we should play a little record and come back to this, cos... I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up... I know. ...as the monster. I know. Bit of R.E.M. Yeah. R.E.M. and Animal. Animal. I would think that animals would be... R.E.M. and their animals... What are you talking about? Well, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking. I wonder if there's done a video for animals. And the animal. What? On a DVD, an animals DVD. Huh? <laughs> what are you no, I'm just saying, like? I'm just, it's, it's R.E.M. there, it's just a good link, a- R.E.M. Animals, on a, a DVD would be, I've got an, I've got an, I've got an Animals DVD out. My You've got DVD, an Animals yeah, DVD? Yeah, my DVD, out. my live stand-up's out, buy it. HMV and Virgin. Well, no, I'm just saying, Animals, your, no, it's funny, I don't think you should plug no, 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 I'm not plugging thing. it, it came up in, com- the Animals from R.E.M. came well, I don't up. think you should plug your DVD. W- well, buy it now. It's a really good stand-up DVD. I think if you're gonna buy anything, if you, I mean, it, I, t- I ought to what? balance this out really. If you're gonna no. buy a DVD, you should probably buy the Office no. series too because well, I no. get money for That's that. That's been on telly. Animals, she, in, uh, mm, Animals hasn't been on telly. The Office has been on telly. Uh, it's through all with it. Um, uh, but I don't get any money for the, no, the Animals no, that's DVD. What I mean, I get I'm everything involved. from Animals, whereas I've got to share the Office where it was with you and some of the other actors, whereas I get the whole, the lion's share, lion's an animal, the lion's share of Animals, it's all mine, you see. Mm. So. Mm. The tr- I mean, the truth of it is that it's not, I mean, it's your stand-up, and it's yeah. not great, it's a bit no, weak, my a lot of the observations are quite poor. Right no, 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 no. You're a great actor. I'm, I'm rubbish in the office. One trick pony, well, I, I just touch my tie, and I look at the ca- camera, bored with that. Yeah. Animals, whole new side. Yeah. But 15, frankly, you've been 15 doing- Fifteen quid. You've been doing so much publicity on TV that, you know, if people have seen it all, they'll have probably seen all the best clips. No, uh, yeah. And, I mean, the there's office. only a couple of decent gags. It's only really the dance, and you can get that on a- JPEG. So some other great stuff in there. Don't buy The Office. There's some other great stuff in there. No, no. Phoenix Knights is better than The Office. So buy Phoenix Knights, don't no. buy The Office. Okay? Well, right, let's get on with it. That's yeah. that. You... Right, what else is that? You've probably heard most of the stand-up observations <laughs> on this show, so... <laughs> right, what have you got for us? Available in Action B. Go on. Oh, well. Uh, I'm annoyed. Um... Oh, Office. <laughs> um... Signs on XFM by Snoop Doggy Dog and Justin Timberlake and a bunch of other people. Mm. Hi, uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant Carpet. I'm just sorry, I was just enjoying yeah, that um, Hope and Greenwood confectionery. Lovely. Well, I wish I had something to uh, wash that down with, Rick. Well, won't you have uh, a glass of um, lovely um, 
at Ban Rock Station Red Wine. Oh, lovely. It's barbecue friendly. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Um, good, so just keep sending stuff in. Free stuff, please. Free stuff. Good stuff. Um, Carl. Oh. What are we talking? Oh. What are we doing? I've got something to tell you, actually. Um, you know we teased Steve about, um, not ever spending any money. Careful, I'm careful with money, I'm not- Yeah. Guess what? He's, he's treating it like, um, he's nurturing this, right? I, he keeps running off, right? In the edit, he's having a suit made, and he wants to be just right, because I reckon he's forking out quite a lot. He's having a suit made. Think of that, him. Let me tell you this, though, I don't want you thinking that I'm getting all flash with my cash. Um, it's very hard to buy off the peg when you're six foot seven. So, you know, it was a necessity. Carl, I don't want you thinking that this is the beginning of some new phase. Well, is everything you buy sort of made to measure? Or no, I'm afraid I w if only. If only I could afford it, mate. But, uh, no, I'm off the peg generally, but. You know what, like properly done and that? Just. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the full, it's the full, yeah, it's the full thing. The full works. Got to keep going back for fittings. They've got that little bit of chalk, you know, the pins. That's where I have mine made. You know how good I look all the time. <laughs> so if you have to have that, uh, thing done where they say, um, what side do you, uh, do you wear your member? What side do you dress? They don't say what side do you wear your member. That would hardly be a euphemism, would it? So they say what side do you dress, sir? It means what ties your little poke, your little, your little John Thomas leans, doesn't it, on a, on rest, usually to the left, isn't it? Your, your little Could left you know, testicles. If I said to you now, what side do you wear, you know, do you uh, know? It would be left. It would be the left. That's what I mean. If, if I stand in there, right? Um, with no nothing restricting it or holding it in or holding it up, right? It sort of leans, the, your one ball is sort of like slightly back and lower, isn't it? And your, your little John Thomas rests there, so it's left. And the reason they ask it is so they don't put the tape measure up on the left and squash your willy or touch your willy. So it's nothing to do with like, well, you'll need a bit more room, of sort of more material on that side or? Uh, well, no, I don't think they, they compensate. It's just uh, when they put the w when they stick that up into your groin, they don't want to come in contact with um, with your. The thing is, I I don't know what side I wear stuff on. I just sort of pull my pants up and w wherever he wants to go that day. But maybe it's not big enough to sort of make any you know real decision. But like now, I'm sat here right with my jeans on. I don't know where I am. <laughs> Well, that's clear from hearing you talk. No, but what, but what I mean is, if a fella said to me, what side are you, uh, what, you know, what side do you member on? Member? Go, what is this, what is this, the <laughs> use of the word member suddenly? I'd, I'd go, I'd, I'd, Well, it's not, it's usually not appropriate, and also, I imagine in the old days they had big baggy pants and used to sort of like hand down, and now, you know, like with those stretchy boxers and briefs, it's sort of held up in a nice little, neat little parcel, isn't it? So it's probably not appropriate, it doesn't come in contact with your little snake. So, <laughs> you know. Did you ever, what, well, have you ever heard that? Have, have you, have, have, are you telling me a tailor has asked you that and you went, what do you mean, mate? No, no, I've never, uh, I've not really had one made to measure. I had one made when I was a kid, but since then I've sort of bought a suit off the hook. But I've, when, you know, when you were saying about buying a suit, I know that question sort of crops up and I don't know what the answer is. It's just annoys me the way every, I don't know, there's no surprises anymore. Do you know what I mean? People know. What, what do you mean? He's gonna, he's gonna go, right, I'm gonna measure you now. Which side shall I measure? Go, well, pop that, go on, have a look. <laughs> right, there you go, oh, you've got it. You what took me now. What do you mean there's no surprises anymore? What are you talking about? Everything mean... you say is a surprise. Everything no, no, but, you say, but what, every opinion you have no, but what, is a surprise to me. What I mean is, why aren't people just happy just to go, well, pff, depends, isn't it? Just, I'll just pull the pants up wherever it wants to go, I'm happy. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is this such a big issue? <laughs> But Carl, when they ask you this question, they're not making a note of it somewhere. It's not statistical research <laughs> to find out what the kind of common leaning is. It's just, it's a question so he doesn't touch it when he's using his tape measure. Well, just be careful. But it, but he is being careful by asking the question. But what, what's wrong with him touching it anyway? If he's, I mean, it's only well, like hello. a slight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fair enough. But if he just sort of, you know, knocks it a little bit, you can just go. Ooh. <laughs> Do that again? To me, it's the same as the prostate thing. It's just uh, happening all over again. It's but the that, same. doctor doesn't go, oh, what, what, what side's your ass on, sir? Trying to avoid the ass. He kn he wants to go, he, he knows where your ass is and he's aiming for it and he wants to get it up there. He's aiming for it for a good cause. This little fella's going, well, I've got to measure his leg. I don't want to touch the knob. I'll just ask him, sir, do you mind uh, telling me where your cock is so I can avoid it? It's a big difference. But like I'm saying to you, I'd have to have a look first. To let him know. <laughs> I don't know where it is now. I don't know. It could be the left, could be the right. Are you telling me you can't, you don't know where your knob is Without now? Without looking. 
Will that, will you, uh, what do you mean, how I'm looking? How could- Well, you're saying it as if like- Should we have a guess? Well, have I'm, a look, have a look and tell us where it is. Uh, what are you wearing? What sort of pants are you wearing? I've got my jeans on. But you've got pants on underneath them? Yeah. What I'm are they, briefs? Or uh, box shorts? Uh, Boxer shorts. Boxer shorts. Well, it's probably free, but the jeans are probably stricken it. I probably, it's, I think it's probably uh, either in the middle, resting, dressed in, or just slightly to the left. Have a look, and we'll come, we'll tell the, we'll tell the listeners after the break, where, where's Carl's knob? For good competition. <gasps> oh, brilliant. We've got to send this to the Sony Awards, people. <laughs> Run, Snow Patrol on XFM. Well, big question, where was, uh, Carl's knob? <laughs> That's what people have been hanging on for. <laughs> yeah. Where was it? Well, I can't believe people have been texting in. <laughs> hey, well, guessing where it is. People saying, uh, is it in the middle? Is it in the left? Uh, it cost them 10p. <laughs> <laughs> it cost them 10p to find out. Just wait, I'm gonna get out the answer. You don't win anything, alright? <laughs> Let's strike it lucky. Alright, um... <laughs> Bottom or middle? Right. It's, uh, it was to the left. Oh! Yeah. I went with the right. That's annoying. See, I, I thought it would be uh, to the left. If not, maybe if it was all scrunched up, sitting out in that right, it might just pop up to the middle, just pop out, <laughs> like you know. Sort well, of next week we'll uh, we'll be finding out where uh, where's, where yours is. Where's right? where's uh, Ricky's bar? <laughs> right then, which uh, leads us nicely into knob news. Oh, it's the welcome return of knob news. Right. Okay. This is it's very much like the news at ten. This isn't it? Hmm. I do a uh, I do a bomb. Or in this case, a schlong, and uh, he gives me the headlines, the big, the big, the, the knob news of the day. <laughs> the big, uh, where do you collect all this knob news? Was, was, there, was there a lot of knob news this week? It was, it was mental this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> that stuff. The way it works, uh, you, you give us the, the, uh, the bong. Yeah. I'll give you the headline. Okay. Steve decides which story we're going to talk about. And now on XFM, knob news. Schlong. Man grows knob on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> schlong. Man gets doctors to make him a second knob. Schlong. <laughs> Turkish prisoners made hole in cell wall to produce third inmate. Schlong. <laughs> doctors accidentally remove man's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, well, can I straight away? Time. Can I straight away go for the accidental uh, removal of the testicles? <laughs> Well, it's happened before, haven't it? We've talked about that before. Well, how does that, oh, what, what did he go in? For, for a tonsil, uh, I, uh, um, what are they called? Tonsillectomy. And he was, he went in the wrong way. What are you talking about? How can they accidentally um, remove his testicles? It says, uh, and, uh, um, he didn't look at his folder, um, and the doctor said to the fella, oh, we've, uh, we've removed your testicles and we've wanted to take out your prostate gland. So, that's, that's what happened there, <laughs> there's, there's the story. This is what I mean, that's why I don't like going to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Because the, all these sort of, uh, it's when they say things like, oh, it's just, we do loads of these operations, that's when they're not concentrating. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? When they say it's procedure, that's like uh, be, having a boring job that you do every day when you're not going to be concentrating. <laughs> I prefer them to go, this is a tricky one, this. <laughs> I know what you mean! I sort of do know what you mean! People, you watch TV programs about like, you know, removing someone's second head or whatever, mm. and it's like the best surgeons from all over the world. It's televised, they can't it's make a mistake. It. They can't go, we took his legs off by mistake. Whereas the fella who's having a prostate, it's like, oh, do you want to do it? I'm sick of doing that. Yeah. And they're probably doing a crossword whilst writing it. Of course they are. I've seen that actually in, in uh, operating theatres. They're doing a crossword. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I was just examining some of the other knob news, Rick, a little bit more closely. Mm. Um, man gets doctors to make him a second penis. I'm sure we're all interested in what happened there. Yeah. A German who persuaded doctors to give him a second penis has lost his wife after he showed her the result. Uh, biker Michael Gruber lost his original penis in a motorbike accident and doctors built him a second one using a mixture of skin, bone and other tissues. Bone? Apparently, the, pe the penis worked so well that he was even able to father a child with his wife Bianca. But Gruber was still not happy and asked doctors to repeat the operation and build him a better organ, to which they agreed. From his hospital bed, he said, I've got two penises, but no wife. I'm hoping when I get rid of one of the penises, I'll get her back. What do you mean? They, well, they, well, sorry, he had a, so he had two put on. What side does he wear? <laughs> so he's had both. So he's had three, then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the thing that happened with Hitler, when well, he had one ball, but he's, he had three at one point, didn't he? So he just got one in the other ball, gave his mum one, and got the other one. <laughs> Man grows penis on his arm. I mean, why are people constantly losing, losing their penises around the world? I've no idea. But why? I didn't realise it was a bit- What do you mean why on the arm? Thing. It's just a graft, isn't it? 
Yeah, but put it on like your, your buttock or your, your side, not- you can't wear a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> Why do they- they've done that before? I don't understand it. Why not just graph it on the side of your leg or something where it's high up, close to where it should be? I don't know. To get it used to the environment. Like when you were like released a, like a, a duck into the wild. I've never, you... I've never understood that. If there's a doctor, again, you know, we had a doctor last time, I see someone who can let us know why they put it on the arm. So they can keep an eye on it, presumably. He's not, he's not going to work with this knob on his arm. He's probably in a hospital bed and under, under examination. Right. So it's, what, do you, what do you think? They pop the art knob on the arm. Say, come back in three weeks. What do you do, by the way? I'm a mechanic. Keep the knob. Keep the long sleeve shirt. Because the blokes go, why have you got a knob on your arm, mate? What are you talking about? He doesn't go back to normal as a teacher, sir. What? What? What is it? Uh, what is it, Simpkins? You got a knob on your arm? No, don't worry about that. Do your maths. What do you think this bloke's walking around with a big knob coming out of his arm? Why on the arm? So they can keep an eye on it. So it's not- But if he's in bed, just get him to not put any undies on or whatever and just have a little sly look at how, how it's going. Even in hospital, if you're in a shared, like, <laughs> little hospital room, people going, oh, I've had heart, you know, heart problems, what's, what's your problem? He's there with his arm out. <laughs> He's got oh, his knob out. Yeah, but I don't think it counts as indecent exposure when they're grafting a knob on your arm. Sticking that- <laughs> out <laughs> the bed! <laughs> Imagine if he's driving, he's just got it out the window. <laughs> People driving by. Yeah. Oh, the the, is, is that bloke giving me the finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end of the man grows penis on his arm story, uh, it says, uh, a Moscow surgeon said the man will, will be able to have sex in a few months. He said, w women will never suspect. <laughs> but like, what kind of a doctor talks like that? Yeah. Oh, totally, it is his cock now, seriously. We, the birds will never know. He'll be able to go berserk. Yeah. They'll never realise he grew on his arm. That is unbelievable. Will he have a little scar on his arm, do you think? Yeah, I just don't, I don't get it. Like I say, 83936 if, if there's a doctor out there. Or indeed if you've ever grown a tailor. Yeah, making you a shirt. What side do you wear your cock on, sir? To my left arm. Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Sex <laughs> FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy start, myself. We started yeah, off it's good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that Robin. you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He. Uh, what I can remember is he he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get him. He never answered me. He was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now, straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, yeah, did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so, sort of, uppity about it? Well, imagine because if, it's not true. imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said, tell so, you why, though. I said, so Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. Well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army? He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um, <laughs> messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? Whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part of something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrap some where the skull is. So they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> no, they didn't. They did. Ah, that's oh, not right. funny. Everyone... So he's gone in by the toe. 
so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. <laughs> we put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard, the skull. There was, there was a reason for it. And it was like the, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and he said every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. a worm, okay. even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they love bacon. Last week, remember last week when I said about the little fellow with the bone with no brain, and you were proved wrong. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just. I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese. There wasn't a there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little white maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it? out of the it body, they strapped bacon to his head. <laughs> yeah. That is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, dear. Honest, Honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story and um, right. just. It was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, and when- And so the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is, that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way- You know Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do, you do do things like that as a kid. Right. He's the I mean? telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's Yeah, tunes. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually, bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You. It's a good track. That's I Am Clute, and a track called To You from the uh, teachers soundtrack that's also got uh, I noticed the electric soft parade the hives star sailor feeder uh Turin break smoky rev on there it's a good little collection lovely carl uh has just had confirmation he's looking smug because someone phoned up and went it is true it's a lao guy chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head that's all the bloke knew as well yeah and his name was gary yeah so i'm not having it no and he said he said see that's why the robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's not standing. Same. Strokes. Hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes. Yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Here you go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle. Yeah. Always carry some. Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Good <laughs> voice. Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in, you know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> 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 Although he's been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions. Cause exactly. He's the producer. So technically, oh. that twat's in charge. Go yep. on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, and chocolate biscuits, and uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and um, bacon. Just in case, you never know. So, um, so anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away, 
Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <laughs> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it, it, what did you just sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yes. Yeah, so well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Right down it. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? <laughs> what so I was on like, your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't uh, didn't even know what I'd eat. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I got like a small throat. But, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat not, pebbles. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on it now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, he hit, hit his nose with a stick. So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, me, me dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone His to, share! I yeah, love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I, I'm done I just for. just like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And um, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying, that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, <laughs> So it? he's there like that, and my mum's going, oh, look at him, and my lips were going purple, and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. Yeah, like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What, the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, I, you see, that's what I don't understand. Because there was no, nothing just, there. No, I mean, just, just a little there. bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down your, this sort of like, your epiglottis, it went down the wrong way. Like, it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat. And it, it sort of, it, it, it sort of spasms. And that's the, that's the fear. You've just got to calm it down and relax. So, so in time, I would have been all right yeah, anyway. you don't, um, Well, no, yeah. you might have... So that's, that's so, 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 so that's hang on, one. So, but, but, so no, 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 but the weird thing is, like, for, like, three days after that, I felt like a sort of, a uh, special person. <laughs> I wasn't, I went to school. I'm I did, that, I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went. I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days turned everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. After three days, you thought screw it. Yeah. Well, did, did the quick history yeah. exam. Ash, there's a star on XFM one hundred four point nine. Five past one. That means it must be well in. <laughs> Five minutes in to the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. Yeah, he's here as well. Yep. Well, we got some great tunes lined up. Have we? we? We got Eminem. Have we've we? got we've got Coldplay, Oasis. We've Brilliant. got De La Soul, Chemical Brothers, Doctor Dre, Garbage, REM, The Manics. We got sure. Muse. We got Feeder. Yeah. We got some classic. I mean, you said all those names, Rick, but the chances of us actually playing all of those are quite slim. We might not get to them if we talk too much. And obviously, we'll obviously drop a couple of those to play our own tracks as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. they are our own tracks. Yeah. You well. know. Well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that now. Right. <sighs> Here's Eminem. Eminem, the real Slim Shady. Now, even though that sort of record is, is, you know, relatively recent, and yeah. it's, you know, it's quite hardcore, what's going on about, you know, subject matter that is, that is adult, mm, really. Certainly. And it's quite aggressive and it's cool and it, but he still managed to make it sound like a novelty record. It is, yeah. So, I mean, it's like a little sing- I know that's intention, and that's good. But yeah. I mean, I think uh, I think it's nice that he's got a nice little tune. It could be like um, a little cartoon figure. Here comes Flumpy McMum. But the irony is, there is isn't there like a video you can get now, which is a cartoon Slim Shady, The Adventures of Slim Shady. Really? Because I know there was The Adventures of MC Hammer, the cartoon animated series, which sadly I never got to see. And New Kids on the Block, I think. The cartoon was. went a bit mad and started, set, you know, spending a lot. Yeah, exactly. Of money exactly. And it was, you know, MC Hammer now apparently is like he tours on the kind of religious music scene. Does he? Yeah, he's gone sort well, of. Well, he was religion. always. Wasn't he always at a preach or something? Or or started in gospel or something. Was he? Yeah, I think so. Because he used to, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just assumed he was quite he was off the streets. He used to keep a lot of Bibles in his big trousers. <laughs> yeah. So he could go around giving it to poor people. Yeah. Well, apart from the great music we got lined up, Steve, we've got obviously our, our regular features. Sure. We've got uh, my classic film review. Always looking forward to that's that. That's already getting a little bit of, uh, you know, attention. From who? 
Wow, just various people. Go on, name some. Well, I can't name them what, by name or just. Yeah. Uh, so, oh God, what's that one? Oh, Scorsese. <laughs> right. You want me to talk about <laughs> yeah. one of those films? Okay, good. Yeah. You going to talk about one of his today? Yeah. No. Well, no. What, no, what we've got Spielberg. Like right. Going to do a Spielberg film. Okay. Uh, we've got um, that film sounds good. Yeah. Now that's not my film review. That's where I take a a track off a soundtrack of a classic film. Yes. And it's a great track, and I go, oh, that film sounds good. <laughs> Brilliant. So <laughs> yeah, because it sounds yeah. good. You see what I mean? But don't please don't be confused and think that that's the film review. No, I hate people to no, think no, of no, that. No, 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 no. That's because, why I wouldn't want. Yeah, yeah. One. We've got song for the lovers. We've got song for the ladies. Yeah. I'm going to be playing a hip hop track. It's it's called the class. It's called the the hip hop track. It's called uh, Steve says hip hop hooray. <laughs> it's pop parade. That's not bad, it's, is it? Oh, we're just, just brilliant. Come on, on, if there's anyone listening, like you know, um, Sarchi and Sarchi or McCann Erics and all, you know, those people that do you know, advertising, then we are the people. We we're the people. Man. We can we can market. We'll market anything. Maybe you're a, a two bit band. You want to email in or something, you know? And yeah. just Say how can we publicize our music? Yeah. We'll well, find I mean, a way. if we were marketing, say a, a band, we wouldn't say this is a two bit band. <laughs> that'd be, no, that'd be wrong. <laughs> we'd that we'd say this is a yeah, yeah yeah. We'd say this is a brilliant band. They're going. Uh, the, They're going from places. the excellent. I like it. It's always the same. Reviews. They, it, it's sort of like um, Not good, they, go, they go. They uh, go. Um, the excellent single by Coldplay, Yellow. He goes, oh, Yellow. That's Yellow by <laughs> exactly, Coldplay. Yeah. Why do they do the bit that says Yellow? We yeah. said it just to yeah. show. Like, I want to see some else in the song, maybe, maybe the middle eight. Yeah, it would always be the new, the brand new, excellent album from Travis featuring the hit single Sing, Sing, <laughs> Sing, Sing. That's, That's the brand sing. new album from Travis. <laughs> it features twelve other new tracks and Sing, Sing, <laughs> Sing. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well done, actually, I'd buy it. No, I would. <laughs> Based uh, on that's that. That's about. That's all the features we've got, isn't it? That's all the stuff we lined up. We were probably gonna, I don't know, probably wrap it, wrap it on about other stuff. Yeah. Carl, unless I'm very much mistaken, we've got something to give away, is that right? The K-Man's with us, of course, pressing the button. <laughs> yeah. KP. You all right, mate? K-Man. Yeah. Uh, Pilkington. We, we oh, no, I'll just say there's nothing funny about that name. Just straight, <laughs> no, straight away, seriously. Let's just clear that up straight away. You know, the idea that people are laughing. You you, so in school, they'd go through the register, Anderson, they go through well, Camfield, Sturgis, Sturgis. Well, no, it wouldn't go to Sturgis yet, would it? Oh, she wouldn't be there, would she? Well, no, P's before S, uh, S isn't it? But she just wouldn't be at school. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be out too busy in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Pilkington. <laughs> okay, settle down. There's nothing funny about Pilkington. What's up with it? It's Pilkington. Pilkington. <laughs> yeah. Sounds a bit like plonker. Yeah, or pilchard. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we've got, we've got tickets for <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever mocked the name before. I think <laughs> we're the first ones to do it. Oh, we're brilliant, we are. I don't think people yeah, up north what? figured that out that it was a funny <laughs> name. <laughs> Well, it probably isn't up there, is it? Because they've all got names like, so like Ramsbottom, yeah. Wilkinson, Pilkington, Piddle Trent Hyde, <laughs> yeah. Oscar Piddle Trent Hyde. What are you doing? You're late. Anyway, Gervais. Well, all right. Okay. Oh, that's an exotic it's name. A a bit it's a bit he pays your wages. Blimey, here he comes. I'm going to go at the star of the show. Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. Do you want to play a record and get back to it? We've got tickets to give away. That's what we're saying. Carl, what's the tickets? People want to know what the tickets are after this record. Clever. <laughs> Shinobi versus Dragon Ninja. That's what I like about sort of rock and roll. This, you know, sings, tells a story about everyday things <laughs> yeah. you know about. You Shinobi know. versus Dragon Ninja. Yeah, <laughs> was experience. there any reference to Shinobi or the Dragon Ninja in the song? I wasn't listening. I wasn't really paying attention, but I'm assuming that some of that screaming was about Shinobi and the Dragon. I don't know who won. If anyone knows who won out of the Shinobi and the Dragon Ninja, or maybe it's maybe it's like a trilogy. Maybe they sort of get together in one. Then the second single, there's the fight, right? Like sure. The mid thing in the film. Because mm. I don't know about film structure. Because I do a film review. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and then the, the final one. Uh, is, you know, the, the, the two outcome. of them pairing up against maybe a, a larger villain. Oh, a Godzilla type. Maybe. That's, that's interesting. Mm, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Okay, well, no, they do. Lost Prophets. Well, <laughs> they're they're listening. They haven't written it yet. Are the Lost uh, Prophets uh, English? Are they British? What's the deal? Who are the Prophets? Pilks. Who's the Profs? Pilky. Um, uh, yeah, I think they are, yeah. yeah. What? What was the answer? What was that? Are they English or, or American? I'd say they're American. Do you have a guess? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you just say I don't know? <laughs> so trying to fool us. <laughs> <laughs> KP again trying to deceive us. KP, you were going to tell us, Pilkey, you were going to tell us, Pilchard, you were going to tell us yeah. what. What tickets are anyway? But it works for me, see, because when I was younger, yeah. I had a mobile disco. <laughs> Brilliant, so did I. And um, it was me and my mate Colin Makin. And the disco is called Pilkey's Making Music. That's brilliant. I mean, uh, genuinely brilliant. 
Pilk is making music. Guess what? When I first started the Mobile Di Disco, this was when I was about 14, we just, we didn't really go at tour and we just would do it for like people's parties and stuff. We were called the Rock and Roll DJs. No, <laughs> really? <laughs> we oh, drew it on God. some, uh, on some sort of see-through paper and put a light behind it. Rock uh, and Roll DJs. My first yeah. disco, I had, uh, two nights a week in this pub. What, you run a disco? Yeah, this pub near King's Cross, right? And, uh, <laughs> it was just their records, right? And, um, every, I had to play a, this, this, a uh, number of songs every, time the same time we so all the locals all drunk with dancing and everything one of them was um american pie by don mclean right and they just sing along all the words yeah. sort of drunk it's about <laughs> seven minutes long also, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah the other one was baby jane by rod stewart nice. if i didn't play that i'd get lynched <laughs> and what was the other one there was another one that i always had to play um oh, it was a it was a ballad oh, i have to remember that but yeah but do you, so carl do you think and maybe ricky as well do you think you know much about djing for like you know the sort of uh, the wedding party or maybe oh, someone's yeah. 18th oh really mm. okay let me just uh, offer a little Test. hypothesis for Go you then. um all right the buffet's been served right yeah. people have done some speeches mm -hmm. like it's a wedding do yeah um so you've already played some records early on you've stopped for food yeah you've just played some light backing music in the background while the food's been served you want to get the party rocking again what do you kick off with it depends it depends. I've already got it down to two or three records. Okay, I'd like to hear what they are. Well, I've got it down to, uh, um, Earth, Wind and Fire. Right. That'd be great, it, you know, if there's, you know, depending on, uh, or, you wanna go a bit more modern, I'd, I'd probably start off with sort of Will Smith. Well, careful, Rick, I've got to bear in mind, it is a, is a wedding do, so there's people from age eight to eighty. You've got to cater right. every market. Okay. Carl, uh, what about you? See, this was back in 88, so. Yeah. Kylie. Depend, yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you what the definitive track is? Go on. Oh, what a night, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Ding, ding, ding. People don't realise what it is exactly. It's straight away. Ding, ding, ding. Bound, down, 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 down. I can't actually play it. But, uh. Yeah, oh, what a night. Mm. Late December, back in 60s. That leads you straight into a 70s medley, and everyone's loving that. I'm thinking Bee Gees. There's gonna probably be some kind of ABBA track, Dancing Queen, all gonna storm. I, uh, well, you're, you're turning your noses up. I can tell you this, that we got bookings endlessly. People are going, you're amazing. I don't know how you do it. I wouldn't have got up. I would've sat there. Well, you might be, because you're one of those grouchy, you're one of those kind of moody teenagers. Oh, I'm not gonna dance to this. I'll yes. tell you, the old ladies would've been up. The people with a decent, decent bit of musical taste would be up. No, the Ricky first Gervais person to up. get up is a fat lady in a dress with bad ankles and a, and a little, a little kid who's got problems and he's in a little DJ. See, the problem with you two is you're not catering to the market. You're trying to be all sort of bohemian and kind of off, off, you know, teach people about music and stuff. There's no place for Kylie, not at a mobile disco. Far too avant-garde. All right, kick it in. Grease Megamix. Play, um, got play a record. Come on, Eileen. Have you got Come on, Eileen? Play that. What are you gonna play? Love Shack. Coldplay. Excellent. Yellow. Well, you never It's the it. excellent single by Coldplay. It's Yellow. Oh, Yellow. That's Yellow by Coldplay. That was the stunning new single from Coldplay, Yellow. Yeah. Are you yeah. ever asked to, when, when people are doing, like, you know, uh, um, Sharma's Britain or, you know, people are doing, like, big... <laughs> Historical. <laughs> they, they, they say, well, we'll ask Carl about this. He might, yeah. he might have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got I'd nice like to air. see you as a pundit. Definitely uh, on those kind of on news night. It's yeah. just that he, I think it's a funny one because the whole idea of sport is to keep fit. Yeah. Mm. And that sort of, you know, it's a yeah. bit of an odd one, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Well, it's, it's the same as sort of like weightlifting. You have to go through all that all year to see if you can push up, mm. you know, something heavier than someone else. But you have to walk round in a golf buggy. To, yeah. to, you know, to that one, yeah, yeah. and take steroids and... Well, I mean, look, I mean, the other day, you know, I, I don't do much sport. I think living in London, there's not that many areas you can go and... Uh, actually, I'm probably wrong there. Well, there's all the gyms and yeah, sports clubs I'm, and stuff. I'm probably yeah, wrong the on the parks and, and the, the roads. But, but yeah. look how, like, excited I was going round to your place, Ricky, and yeah. you had, a, like, a little garden. Yeah. I haven't got a garden. We played was, football, didn't we? And we had a little... Well, I did. No, you were rubbish. I beat you in penalties, um, 5-2, and then I beat you on, uh, uh knockout, I think 10-4, no, no, no. and he always makes an excuse, he goes, no, start again, we didn't say that, he, or, I'm cracking up. So, have you seen Ricky play football? No, I've not really seen either right, play uh, it's not football. Y you sort of do it like, um, it's like when you get a cat and you chuck it some wool, you sort of jump on it and lie on top of it so you can't get it, and then sort of kick it with his feet, lying on the floor. <laughs> Really? No, what I mean is, he fouled me, and I still, I was on one Are you hand sure up. he didn't just collapse? Because yeah, of all the stress <laughs> and the exercise. That's the other thing. That's he the just tumbled off the floor, <laughs> still and poured out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was too strong for him. No, no. I was, 
too strong for you. Yeah, but you didn't last long, did you? It was like if, if football I didn't matches, last if football long. matches went they just they just bring me on for the first ten minutes. <laughs> Who suggested that you two play football? Did you suggest this? Rick? Yeah, we went around there. Yeah, I thought, yeah, we had to go and football in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. What else do we do? Uh, I I look just had a look at your salamander. <laughs> right, is that you from Ismore? <laughs> Because I know that when I first went to race, you did. You used to show your genitals to people a lot more than you do now. Oh, you well. definitely used to do that. You used to think that was hilarious. Yeah. I don't know what it is that you get to a certain age. Men of a certain ilk yeah, get well, to a certain Jonathan age and just don't. Yeah, out, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. When Ross came in, he did the same. Yeah. It's that weird. Yeah, I suppose. I thought. Oh, you've seen it. Now. I thought you've you. seen it. You know, mm. you weren't. You weren't impressed the first time <laughs> to be quite honest, Steve. Honest with you. So. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, no, it's, you know, it's but, nice. You always know, nice. It's always, a, always a treat to see Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you make of Ricky's place? What do you, what do you make of it? Again, that's not a euphemism. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I've got it's like a flat fish. Yeah. It's, it's, what do you, uh, <laughs> do you want to see my place? <laughs> yeah. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all right. I mean, I've, I've... You've seen better. I've, the pictures you've got on the wall, I've, I've, uh, I'm not, not keen on the same sort of art as you are. Right. What, what sort of art? Because, um, yours is quite sort of modern art. Uh... He's got this big, like, bit of, uh... Abstract. Canvas with like just just loads of dark colours on it. Yeah, it looks really miserable. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. It, it sort of brings the place down. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're going to sell it, that woman on Channel Five, the house doctor, if she came round, she'd say, "Take that down. <coughs> you'll get double for it." <laughs> it's just. Oh. It's, it's, it, I oh. thought it was um like a a wall. He was Take testing. that down. Get that salamander out and just pop those back in your trousers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he didn't know what sort of colour to use on the wall. So he's, he's like been putting a little bit on, no, that's not good. I'll use like a bit of a darker colour. Yeah. It's just loads are of you, different. Are you Brian Sewell? Because you're just saying. So, so what kind of art do you like? I'm intrigued. Yeah. I, I like. Uh, Athena. I like Lowry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lowry, the worst painter in the world. The most no, overrated. No, no, no. You see, it depends. You're you're getting excited about Rubbish. your your stuff you've got on. Lowry, right? Yeah. You can look at. He his really is the Brian and Michael. No. Of the, well, um, but it's real, isn't it? Right? What do you mean it's real? It's real. You look at his picture and you <laughs> see like little disabled people walking about. You see kids That's playing, not real, then. playing with like footballs. You've got your, your your dad coming home from work, working in the factory. Got yeah. a little dog barking. It's it's life, right? <laughs> and you can look at it for like ten minutes. <laughs> go away. Go and watch telly or something for a bit. Yeah. Go back to it, and you'll see different things in it. Really? Yeah, really? What I... is it like? One of those magic sure, eyes? You sure that's not a telly? Yeah. You've you been sure looking at the window, Carl. You sure you weren't watching when the boat comes in? People <laughs> will agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your stuff that you buy. <laughs> this show started off slick. Yeah. We had something to say. No, I. We, um, we, what are we, you talking we, about? We're now discussing we art. Were, we were taking the big out of. Of, of fat people, and mm. now it's and now you've taken it all highbrow, Carl. Play a record. We we'll come back to fatties. Badly drawn boy. Something to talk about on XFM one hundred four point nine. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Well, then, uh, Steve Mitchell. Well, well, let's well. just get on with a. And we've already had a complaint. Yeah. Someone yeah. saying your <laughs> TV show so good. Why is your radio show so hard work? You useless fat. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you can't you can't please everyone, Carl. It's like Lowry. Some people like Lowry. Some people like that fellow who did the dark painting for me. Talking of uh, emails, there was a, some guy. I don't. He doesn't mention Lara's his name, rubbish. or maybe his name's Steve. But he said that he was checking out the uh, the office DVDs. DVDs going on sale, isn't it? Soon, I think the video <laughs> and the DVD of the office are going on sale soon. But he was checking out on Amazon, and he said that uh, <laughs> it says on there, and I did check it, double check it, that uh, it includes uh, some special some special frottage. On or special frottage. Oh, is frottage. That correctly that's pronounced. Is that mutual? Doing it to each I other, think it's, or, it's is it the, or, or is it the rubbing up against each other? Yeah, it's one of those. It's isn't it? Yeah, it's is that what it is? It's where you rub up against. People. I don't know. It's something like that. Yeah. But, so there's some special frottage on there. Yeah. <laughs> <that> <laughs> okay. that I think they DVD. mean. I think they mean footage. I'm imagining. Uh, uh, so. If you're buying it for frottage, you are going <laughs> to yeah, be you're disappointed. Be disappointed. disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> the, 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 we're going to th that first hour then was about eating too much, wasn't it? And I think we can. That's essentially that, what we talked about. Yeah. That's probably. Right. Do you know? Um, Read something interesting. You know, they've banned. I used to get the Guinness Book of Records every year from about the age of ten onwards, and uh, <laughs> it, I went straight went to the section like you know the biggest, fattest, all that. Right? And there used to be gluttony records, and it was like these ridiculous looking Texans, and you know, how many hamburgers they can eat. And of course, they were. It was just so dangerous. They've they've put it down to how many hamburgers you can be eat in a minute now. Yeah. And so they've brought it down to things like seventeen. Yeah. You know, they still yeah. burst their stomach glass ball. But um. Uh, I, I remember I was, um, I was watching the Big Brother when they had to break that record, you know, like eating sweet corn and balancing. I was thinking, 
Who wants to beat that record? Yeah. The, most of the records in the Ginsburg Prize exist because no one wants to contest them. There's one in there, um, a, a bloke there, had his pitch taken with a milk bottle on his head, and <laughs> it's the record for having a milk bottle on his head. Yeah. And it's like four days, I want to go, <laughs> no one wants to beat that record. Mm. And there was one in there, this is amazing, this is absolutely true, right? Like last year's Ginsburg Records, it says, um, uh, in, in Thailand in 1980, I, uh, uh, some sort of, um, uh, temple or ceremony, these, uh, incense burners fell over and I think crushed people or burned people to death, seven people died, and it's under the heading, Worst Jostic Disaster Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon oh. they're gonna try and beat that one? Oh, God. There's a, there's a guy up north, right, who's, um, <laughs> he's in a Guinness Book of Records <laughs> for being able to put a, you know, a car, a little mini. Up his no, arse? No, on his head, right, and you think, oh, that's good. But without the engine in. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he puts this thing that still weigh, weighs like, you know, 50 stones on his head and you're going boo! Yeah. What do you mean he puts the mini on his head? He, um, he wears a little cap with a little bit of sponge on. <laughs> <laughs> they all do up there. And they've, uh, and he picks up this mini. Okay, so yeah, go on. And he takes like two blokes to put it on his head and then he walks around for about 10 seconds showing off. But he doesn't have the engine in it. So, I mean, if you're gonna do it, yeah. Go the whole hog is what yeah. you're saying. See, what I think, the reason I think he didn't do it with the engine in is because he couldn't, Carl. We'll, yeah. we'll pick, do a motorbike or something. My mate went to see that, what's that circus that came to London? And that was in, uh, the Camden, and it's all like really weird sort of gothic things. Oh right, yes, I remember. And, uh, there's a, uh, 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 he said at one point this nude woman got into a, a jar. He went, but it was a big jar. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. said it was a jar big enough for a woman. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This big one to go boo! <laughs> yeah. But, you know, get into a jam jar. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I'll be applauded. But <laughs> yeah, that, it's yeah. a big jar. That's a jar shaped like I, you. I will get into a wardrobe. <laughs> what, a big wardrobe? Yeah, well, I can get into that. No, you, I will get into the well, wardrobe. Well, I remember, I told you about this before, Rick, I was devastated a couple of years, I think it was a couple of years ago, when I read about that guy that won the world record for staying underground the longest. Like, oh, what yeah. happened, right? He, he got in this box and, uh, he was buried, like, ten feet underground. It was in a pub car park in Mansfield. Yeah, and the only way he could communicate, him. the only way he could communicate was through this tube that they had that went up to the surface and he could talk to people and I assume that was how he got oxygen. And, um, and it said that while he was down there, Right, he began and ended a relationship with yeah. a woman. She, right? she a was a passerby. She chatted to him. Da, da, da. They started this relationship and they ended it. Right now, my point was right. Obviously, you know, my luck with the ladies is not not triumphant. And you know, I haven't got a girlfriend or whatever. You know, Don Juan. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. And what I'm saying is, when you read that there is a man ten feet underground pulling women through a tube, yeah. You've got to sit yourself down and ask yourself some very serious questions. Yeah, I yeah. was a little bit, as you can imagine, a little bit upset from that. the Midlands. Exactly. Yeah, a little bit devastated. Oh dear, really upset me. You've got right. a problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got a no, problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he means got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just ask No, one? let him let speak. Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for- you, No, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole, is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yes. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on. Right. So it's better to have- you've got a problem hole in your head. Yeah. Right. So you stuff in a problem problems. into a problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. <laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but that's not true, is it? The problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky! Let uh, him explain! Now, now, Ricky, I'd say, his problems uh, and not even problems. Well, how big's his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> Right, but why- Shut why, up! Let but, him speak! But, but, he's but, just expanding on his idea, why but do you what keep what is his trudging? problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little Skittles? Loads of problems. You- you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing <laughs> loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. <laughs> it is! And that's why the problem- 
ball is growing. <laughs> it's a ball. It's got a G in a ball and a hole. So the problem there's, ball. No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me ask. <laughs> I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem ball, <laughs> down the problem tube, into the problem, into the problem tube. Bounce into the problem tube. Right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Everyone. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just... Can ladies have prob a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls is my question to you. But, and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's. Or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you could right. have you could you have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you went, it, if you, okay, no, 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 suppose I came to you and said, "Listen, well, um, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country might have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it.'" And I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole. And, he, and, and, and hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first, is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right, he'd say, right, take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish, he would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball. He would, wouldn't he? Well, no, well, well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger into the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay, so... So, Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it, it's after. It's like that holiday. When I what was on holiday. What do you mean? You don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it, it's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like you... the holiday, I've just so been you enjoy coming on, off the holiday. On. What? I want to hear it. You, you enjoy the holiday, you didn't enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there... I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is there stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now, you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah. I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much they give you, because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now, I have the lamb chops, it comes with extra veg. <laughs> I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. But, but you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed... You can only so get packed so much... Enjoy if you're enjoying all... all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you but you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and but, then it's, it's yeah, ruined. But I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had, a, a, like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought, I fancy a couple of them. Yeah, and, and then... They, you... And the chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant. Yeah, now, but you haven't missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's What's not the like problem? you didn't... I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, the, th the problem was, Go I was on. enjoying it, but I thought, this is this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day, night, when I knew that it's the gone through night. my body, there hasn't been a problem. So, so that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! But then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely problem... spiciness and the sausageness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you... Go on. Auntie Nora. I've told you she prepares all the food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, now, she, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She thinks right. I got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Dunno, just want the same. 
she was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. he's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you know, never someone says, one. well, it depends. So do you have anything twice ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl, well, because no aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or are all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that then, shows not you only what, it's that, not just on Monday, yeah. what are you going to do on Thursday as well? That, I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> that, the food diary. That, that, that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life <laughs> Exactly. Now, to go, right, well, fucking hell. Well, why else you say But then he's people. phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls that week. Well, it's just... Just read her journal. Now, the question is, is it better to enjoy something once and not again than not at all. But you're an idiot because you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing. I did the boxing. I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm, that yeah. is it. I think that's what but, it is. But, but that's what I'm saying though, I soon get bored. And that's, it's like how you enjoy, you know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than... But that doesn't make sense, that goes totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first one's surely so your favourite. No, so hold on, not. so if you do have one munchie, I'll like, go, yeah, there's a munchie mate. You no. go, I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, but what is- Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all, don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie, have the first munchie, there but you I'm go. I'm gonna have one and I'm, I'm gonna get a taste for them and I, I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? I'll keep them then, forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I'd prefer- I'd prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you enjoy <laughs> the okay, la why wait. do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry, but not the second curry. But you know curry. it's the last one. Because it's- no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about twelve in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> fast. Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm eating. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, I'm liking this. But yeah, that's what, one. every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. Them? Yeah. So, hold on though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly then? Not as often as you think. You well, I don't know. <laughs> when no the as I think, I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after, sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munches. And the same experience. You, you like the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations, is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr just from my own experience, working for summer does feel better because you've got a you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah, I genuinely believe that. But you need you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus, no, but, it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. With chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what I'm saying metaphorically, is, what what's the like, yeah? Well, I'm actually I'm named what revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well, I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the revel like is raisins? there. Go on. Well, well, maybe, if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. What, what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? <sighs> uh, when I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted, did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most oh of the kids were. Oh God, it's exhausting. A kid exhausting. like whistling, they brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they look at it, they go, can you fix it for me to go into space? No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah, so, so that's I mean, why I wouldn't write in because 
whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One so thing. Just one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. I mean, it's extraordinary. <laughs> there, is no, there is no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. One more fact from this book for you, Carl. Apparently, officially, the Second World War is not over. It's not actually over because there's never been an official treaty signed between Germany and Russia. So it's still going on. Interesting or not? Uh, not as good as the monkey one and and the, and the woman and, who eats dirt and the Pete the Great and that. Sure, but yeah, it is over, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it though? That's I get. That's what I mean about you annoying me with stuff that you go. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think that is interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. It was uh, what was it I learnt? <laughs> what was it I learnt? Uh, think of that yeah. as a question. Well, we're all trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, go on. Leonardo. Uh, DiCaprio? The, the painter. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. He could, uh, he could write with one hand, draw with the other at the same time. Right. Yeah, that's good. It's all right, that's it? interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all right. Well, if you have an interesting fact for Carl Pilkington that you think he might be, uh, intrigued by, email ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. What have we got coming up? UK. What have we got coming up? More education stuff. Some <laughs> good, good tunes and that. And a uh, bit of outcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Outcast. Hey, yeah, on XFM, 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, and over there, Carl Pilkington. Now we've got a new feature. Well, let's. I don't know if it should become a, a, a feature every week, Rick. I'm not sure it's got legs for that. Um, no. But maybe in the absence of rockbusters. Basically, I was looking through the pigeonhole, and we got a lot of stuff sent to us. A lot yeah. of junk. You know, yeah. stuff we don't really want. Yeah. And a lot of people, for some reason, they send begging us- Begging letters. Begging letters, a lot of that. We get sent a lot of CDs by people, bands, artists, who have not yet been signed. Maybe they've knocked something together in their bedroom. They got a band. And they just, for some reason, they want our feedback. They want us to sort of give them some thoughts on what they think, where they're going wrong, stuff like that. And I just thought, well, we're basically, I was having a clear out, and I thought, why not just, um, give them a little chance, you know. Yeah. Just throw them a bone, Rick. Honest, we'll, honest critique. Honest critique of some of the artists that sent us stuff. Okay, um, these are bands that have not been, uh, they've not got a record contract. This is exciting. Okay, name the three bands. Well, first. I'll tell you, no, we'll go through them individually, and I'll hear a little snatch, and then I'll get your opinions both from you, Rick. I know you've been in the music business. You've got a good general knowledge of music. Yeah, 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 yeah. big time. And big also time. Carl Pilkington's views as well. Yeah, um, we know what to think of them. So uh, this go first on. band is called Kellerton Road. I'm sure they're very excited. As I said their name then, they probably can't believe it. They're phoning each other now. They're getting so excited. All friends are phoning them now. Yeah, Turn exactly. your phone off. They can't people in this band. You don't want to. Yeah. Well, okay then. Kellerton Road. Kellerton Road. Play a track from them. Okay. So that's Kellerton Road. I think that's a track called uh, Secretly. And uh, looking on the back, here, there's uh, six of them in the band. They all pretty much look the same. Uh, they have got the long hair, the usual sort of look. Uh, what do you make of them, Rick? All right. Yeah. Quite like that. Yeah. I mean, a bit generic. The chorus is a little bit simplistic. I like good production. Good, yeah. yeah. Good music. Reminds me of something maybe like the thrills and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, good. Jukebox or junk box? What's junk box? <laughs> it's just I'm just trying to make it sound snappy. Jukebox don't, or junk box? Don't, because you, you you haven't got it. Don't okay. ever stick to what you're good at. Okay. Um, what being sexy? Mm, no? Just sort of watching Doctor Who and stuff. You like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I love it. Okay then, right, okay. what's the next one? So, well, well let's just ask Carl Pilkington's opinion. Carl, what were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, it's alright. Yeah? Yeah. That's it, is it? Yep. <laughs> is that why you no longer write for the enemy? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So what's this next one you've got for us then, Carl? Uh, Toffee. Toffee. It's called Born Depressed. <laughs> oh dear. Brilliant. I, got, I quite like that. Yeah? That's sort of a bit, yeah, a bit, bit glammy, bit underground. Yeah. What do you make of the name, Toffee? Not, I don't like the name. It's not great, is it? No, but I, I quite like that track. Quite like the track. I'm just looking at the CD they've made it themselves, and uh, basically the band feature on there completely nude. Oh. What do you <laughs> Well, we know what we think of that. What do you think of that, Carl? Let's have a look. Though. Have a look there. Well, that's no point, is it? There's quite a lot of blokes and there's one naked lady. Oh, just having a look though, just... Yeah. What are you looking at the blokes? What are you looking at? Why are you looking at the blokes? That's knob. Just having a look. But you're looking at the knob. I can see, I can see by the way your eyes are looking. I'm looking at the woman's knob though. 
Well, she won't be happy with that. No, no, that's a bloke, Carl. <laughs> yeah, that's no. where you've been going wrong. Yeah, that's the woman. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I was looking at, that one, mm. the woman's knob, so that's all right. Yeah, good. So, um, uh, so Rick, uh, hit parade or shit parade? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, I don't know if it's gonna be, uh, I don't think it's gonna be a hit yet, cos I haven't got backup, but I think we're looking more about whether they get, you A record know, deal, do you think they deserve yeah. one? Uh, yeah, I th- yeah, I like, yeah, I like, I, yeah, thumbs up for both of them. Okay, well done. Alright, well done. And Carl, uh, play the last one then. Uh, what right. did you make of it? Sorry, we didn't ask your opinion, we weren't interested. Um, I'd like to see him on CD UK. <laughs> 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 Just like that on the, yeah. on the CD cover. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. And this right. last uh, act, I think, is this right, Picture Centre? Yeah. Picture Centre. Picture Centre. My favourite. You like that? Yeah, that's my favourite out of all of them. Good, there's a bit of Amy Mann in there. Mm-hmm. A little bit Cocteau Twins. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. no, really good. good I really like, uh, really good, really intriguing that. Come yeah. Pilkington? Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't like it, what would you say? Um, it's weird though, isn't it, music? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? It's like, it depends what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? That's alright. If you're just having a game of crib or whatever, it's just on in the background. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the thing with music, I don't think you can sort of slag any of it off. It's times, and it's, it's, depends what mood you're in and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so, so it's a pointless, pointless feature, it's a pointless, pointless feature. Pointless feature. We're doing well, it Well, I didn't then. come up with it. No, I don't, all right, don't slag it off. Okay, we'll do that again then, I was quite enjoying that, but, okay. No, do you understand what I'm saying? Well. That it's not, <laughs> it's not worth having an opinion about music. Uh, well, c- I'm not that bothered. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, um... <laughs> Imagine if he was on the panel of fame and going to be your pop idol. Yeah. That'd be great. It'd go along, and Nicky Chapman go, yeah, you, you've really improved. I really like that. I don't know what you're wearing. Dr. Fox, you were hot, baby. <laughs> I loved it. Like, like, like your legs, like all your boobs and all that. <laughs> brilliant. Come to Carl. Not bothered. All right? Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Oh, no, we'll keep it up, you know. Keep, you know. Play a record. And roll over DJ on XFM 104.9. All right? Carl, um, just an email, a question for you. Can you please let me know which school Carl went to? What school do you go to? Uh, Sesav. What? Sesav. Sesav? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, it was on Cecil Avenue. Cecil Avenue, in Manchester? Yeah. It's just, he says, I'd like to know so that I don't send my kids to the same place. <laughs> he also <laughs> says, uh... <laughs> He says, P.S., does Carl look like Gollum in Lord of the Rings? Yes. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, in fact, I was just putting a little bald wig on you, wasn't I? Like he needs one. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, if it's you just want some a of picture. the fun and games we have when the songs are on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did, did it hurt? Just did a it... little bit. The, 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 the bit that worried me is when you said, let me just staple it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was trying to get it under your chin because it looked funnier. And he was scared. Oh, I really saw it. Do you remember when I did that thing with the tea towel? Have you told Steve about that? I don't think I have. It's not something I'd shout about, to be honest. Go on. Uh, went round his place. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, before you go, I must try something. Cos I couldn't get squeezing hard enough. I can't, cos I'm not strong enough to hurt him anymore now, or am I? Uh, uh I think I, I can take it a bit more than I could at the start. Yeah, so I wanted to squeeze his head more, so what did I do? So he said, uh, just hang on, I've got a tea towel, he brought a tea towel in now, I need something, uh, sort of long and thin. Uh, what can I get? He's asking his girlfriend, where's that there? Comes in with a spatula, mm-hmm. right? He puts the tea towel on my head, uh, and manages to sort of put the spatula in and turn it round so that the tea towel is tightening on my head. Yeah. <laughs> using little pressure, would you say, from you? Yeah, just little, it's brilliant, it was like a tourniquet, and I just turned it a little bit, and he screamed almost straight away, didn't you? It hurts. <laughs> but so, I don't, I, but, but why did you think that was good? When would you need to use that tool? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I did it on my other board mate, Rob, was over, and he screamed as well. Cause he, get, he just put a tea towel around, like a little, uh, bandana, just stick the wooden spoon down the back, just turn it, and it, it's even half a turn, isn't it? Mm. And it really... Hopefully children listening will be trying that on their friends. <laughs> No, no they won't. Don't try that at home. Strokes, someday, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Lads, can I just stop you there straight right. away? Because the record finished before we'd finished chatting about what we're gonna do well, next. We're gonna do, we're gonna do Carl's stupid competition again. We're just trying to get the... I think, I think that you What are the rules? Just, right, I Because last week it was a shambles, Rick. I know, it was too easy, that's no, why. The week before, I should no, say. No, I think, I think people should phone up now 
and be held in a queue, and then he should have the clue. Otherwise, because people are just phone up whether when they know the answer or not. But how is that entertaining to the listener? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> That's not, what I'm gonna I throw think, back at you straight away. I don't think this is entertaining at all. I just think people might want to talk to Carl for us just right. a split second. The way we'll do it, right? Yeah. Right? This is me role here, right? This is- this is the way we're gonna do it. Right. right. We're gonna say, if you want to win, The Office on VHS, right? Yeah. You can call don't it now. Don't say it like that. Like yeah, it's a rubbish it like prize. There is some- if you get the DVD, there's some special frottage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> it's impressive. Right, so they call up now on 08, 08, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Yeah. We like bung on a bit of Elton John in a bit, right? Mm. We line up two callers- Look forward to that, it's a beautiful track. Yeah, we line up two callers, Yeah. right? And then we have them on the air and we say, right, I'm gonna tell you the little story, you've gotta tell me what song it is. And they're playing against each other. Well, right. can they be- could they be up at the same time then, so I can speak yeah. at the same yeah, time? Yeah, of course, yeah. But how can they play against each other? Because they haven't got buzzers it's or anything. It's the first one, they'll- they can say the name, they can shout out the name, and- and it's organised, don't And they've got as many goes as they want? No, I think no, they no, should no. have one go at a time, and then the other person can have a go, and then they can have another go. Yeah. It's like duelling. It's and, like duelling. And if they don't win, no one wins this week. We're not giving away prizes willy-nilly. Sure. You know, <laughs> we can give one away next week again. Because you know, like, Maybe the office is not costing us anything. Because we were like involved, I know, we can get as I many copies as you want of that. I like Seriously. it. I like it when like we got them coming out of our. our. Do, do, do you think the listeners are usually in on sort of board meetings like this? <laughs> or do you? you know, oh, usually... I said this before, guys. I said before <laughs> I we know. should do this off air, but you you refused imagine, to try. Imagine Chris Talent going. Hold on, what they they can they can what do they, they do? Can they, they, they can phone a friend. Yeah, they just phone a friend. Look, come down. To, right, okay. Look, we haven't got this. We've got this sorted. Phone up, up now. Phone up. We'll have to. We'll play some adverts. Phone yeah. up now. Yeah. Right, so so that's the plan then. Okay, right. we're gonna have a beautiful track here. Continuing our wait, whoa, 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 Steve, 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 Steve. Go on. Right, I've said your name five times now. I don't need to mention you at all next week. Right, um, we're gonna play uh, Out and John. Continuing our sort of thing of don't don't diss them just because they're old and bald now. Yeah, they used to be good. This is a beautiful track. I dissed him, didn't I? Yeah. Um, called Tiny Dance. So we gonna enjoy that. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy listener. that. And then, if, if not the now, show. Steve, what were you going to say? <laughs> Thanks for asking. I was just going to say, <laughs> what should the audience be doing now? If they're listening at home, they want to play the game. What should they be doing, Carl? Should they be phoning say you the now? phone number they, again? They should be ringing 08700 800 1234. Right. 08700 800 1234. And two lucky contestants get to play um, your game. Yeah, what's the song? What's the song that Carl's thinking? Could I give it? you a clue when you call up? You've got more chance of playing if you don't sound like a mentalist. <laughs> exactly. Most of the people that phone sound a bit like Carl. We're not interested. We don't want those <laughs> no. sort of people. Yeah. We want people who can, you know, who are maybe eloquent. Why are you watch me in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> Out on John, Tiny Dancer. What Beautiful. a great track. Oh, that's that is. Well, we've got. <laughs> did, uh, well. Despite Carl's actions, you should have seen Carl. It was like squiddly diddly. <laughs> His arms and legs there, he'd have been better with feet, I'll tell you. He didn't know what he was doing, we were getting angry. At one point he went, oh, we get a man and a woman. And he, uh, <laughs> bloke phones up, he goes, are you a bloke? <laughs> bloke goes, yeah, he goes, hold on. And then, another bloke goes, he goes, oh, you're a bloke. Oh, we wanted a woman. <laughs> and looks at her, he, goes, he goes, put the woman on. She came on, he went, are you the woman? <laughs> it's the way he speaks oh, to people. So have we got on the line? Here's the woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's the woman! Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah, okay. Right, Steve, you, you, you wanna be rooting for this? Well, I think we should- it seems to me because you may need some help because obviously Carl's mind is, uh, is a, a viper's nest. Yeah. It's a jungle in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you wanna call anyone at any point, maybe you've got some questions you wanna just consult or con confer, then I'll be on I your side. Be. You're then like- you're, she's like- you're like her phone a friend. Exactly, I'm the phone a friend. And I'm the- uh, ask the audience. Who's and the bloke? Here's the bloke. It's Owen. Owen. Okay, I'll, I'll be um, helping you out should you need any help or clues as you know, as insight into Carl's mind. I must tell you though, we don't know what Carl's going to come up with now either. No, we I keep it. We keep it real like this. I should just say for people who've not heard the show before, um, this is where Carl now will tell us a cryptic story. And basically, hidden within that will be a clue to the title of a song. I say cryptic, it's- it's- Gobbledygook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nonsense. So, okay then, um, just to find out, um, uh, who- who goes first, my lad or- or your girl, um, I'm gonna, um, uh, th uh, toss a coin in my head. Okay. So, who, who can guess Well, first? ladies first, ladies first. Okay, what was your so name again, sorry? Sarah. 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 So, Sarah, okay, so- Sarah, uh, heads or tails? Heads or tails. Tails. No. Right, my lad will go first. Okay, okay so, then, right. so what this means is, when he's finished the, uh, the cryptic clue, you, Owen, will get to guess first, but if you get it wrong, it goes over to Sarah, and then back and forth until one- hopefully one of you gets it right. Okay. okay. Uh, we could be here for some time. Yeah. Right, and what- what- what are we playing for here? 
of DVD or video of The Office? Whatever we can whatever find. You've got, yeah. Whatever format you've got. Yeah. Okay yeah. then. Brilliant. Okay, Carl, go. Right, so here we go. So then, it's right? the name of a song we're looking for. Brilliant. Right, this bloke, he's had a, uh, he's had a good night out at the yeah. pub. Right? This is probably all irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Um. Remember that, Owen. This <laughs> could all be irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right, so he's had a good night out with his mates and that, and, uh, he's really enjoyed himself. And he's on, hi on his way home. And it's just like any any ordinary night, right? Everything's just normal. He's seeing the same people leaving leaving the pub, going home, and he's like, "See you, you know, see you tomorrow night. I'll I'll be out tomorrow, seven thirty and what have you." <coughs> and and they're on the way home, and uh, it's a nice night. Everything's everything's nice, and he's walking home, and he sees this sort of sort of smoke coming out of a grid. Right, some smoke coming out of a grid. Yeah, a bit a bit of like smoke. And he thinks, "What's that?" Right. And this is what's weird, because it's like any other normal night, but this time the smoke coming out of the grid, and he goes over to it, and he can hear some moaning. Right? It's like, ooh. So he, he thinks this isn't right. So he stands over the grid, and he's, and he's looking down it, and he can't see anything. So he lifts the grid up, right? Do you mean a grill? No, a grid. A you grid? You know, like a grid in the street. What? Yeah, he Not means really. a grill. A grill. Okay. Okay. And he lifts it off, and he's looking in, and like more smoke's coming out, and he can hear the moaning getting louder, and then this little demon pops his head out. Oh, right, like and, demons. And he goes, "Are you all right?" Yeah. And the little demon goes, "Oh, I'm hurting." And he goes, "What do you mean you're hurting?" <laughs> he said, "Oh, it's dead hot down there, you know." <laughs> and and it's weird because he works it out that it's like come from hell. Right? Yes. And it, it's going, oh, I'm all hot and burning, and all his skin sort of r really red raw because of all the flames in hell and stuff. <sighs> so he goes, oh, he said, uh, I tell you what, I I'll take you to the doctors. And the, and the little demon's like, what, y you'll do that for me? And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And he takes him to the doctors. What's the song? That was, uh, Ricky Gervais and XFM. It's three o'clock now. We're going over to <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> Thanks very much. See you next week. Bye. Man, a long, that was, that was quite a long story. Ooh. Is Owen and Sarah still there? Yeah. Have you dozed off? <laughs> You're still with us? Okay, Owen. Any clues? No, not yet. I, I haven't a got guess. a clue. I haven't got a clue. I, I have <laughs> no idea. Can I think out loud with Owen, do you think? No, I think him? Owen needs to at least okay. have a guess before Go on, have we a can. guess, Owen. Uh, smoke on the water. No. Well, it's not, is it? So, okay. Over Sarah, to what do you think? <laughs> Back out of hell. Mm. It's a good guess. No, not. It's not right. Not right. <laughs> right, Carl, you'd have to give him a little clue. Um, well, think about the little fella. Think about the little demon. Yeah. Okay. There's the clue. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Where did I say he came from? Highway to hell. Mm, on the right, along the right lines, but not the right song. Back Sarah. to Sarah. Stay <laughs> away to heaven. Oh. <laughs> Carl, if this is rubbish, I'm never working with you again. <laughs> if this doesn't work, what do you mean? If this is right. rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> right, th right. Okay, take it. Take the main bit of the story. What's happening? We don't know what What's the main, the main bit, bit is. Of the story. It took thirty minutes. The grid. There's the grid, we've got the grid, grid the yeah. smoke. What's it's he done? How did the story end? He went to the, the doctor. doctor, he went to the doctor. That's right, the he, went to the doctor. he went to the doctor. Who did he take to the doctor? He went to the little, little demon. demon fella. Why did he do that? Because Sarah, was, come he... on, that's a big clue. Right, why did- Sarah, come on, let's think about this. Why would he take a little burnt demon to- Was he burnt? He well, was burnt, wasn't he? He was- he's from hell. Yeah, all the flames yeah. and that, and all the skin hell. was really raw, and he's like- he was moaning in pain. And oh. the little fella goes, yeah, I am on the way home, my tea's gonna be in the oven and everything, but do you know what? I'm gonna take you to the doctors and sort you out. Sick. Doctors. Doctors. Oh, God. Is there man. anyone you've got there in the house who could maybe help you? <laughs> like a sort of eight-year-old child? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> An alien. Yeah. Um. I've got a three-month-old baby. Oh. He probably talks more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not than you. Than Carl, we mean. Um. Oh. Right. Right, I'll right. tell you what, let's play a record. But these let's all have a chat. These poor people have got lives. Sure. They're, they've oh got yeah, like we haven't. No, but I know the, the Carl, this I is- I got- there's so many things I could be doing instead of this, Rick. I know, but Carl- Carl- We'll play some ads, right, and They come can't back. stay on the line They've for got three minutes- they, they're playing for a video, eh? Three, <laughs> they've got three minutes to think about it. Is that alright with you? Okay. Yeah, and is that alright, Owen? Yep. Sorted. Right. Please try and guess this, cos Carl's threatening to roll it over to next week. Oh? 
I know. <laughs> I, d I don't want to live a week trying to think of a little burnt devil in a in a grid, as he calls it. <laughs> burnt right. devil in a grid. Devil, <laughs> in, a, devil in a grid. Devil by in a grid. Excess. Smoky, smoky devil, devil. <laughs> oh God. Oh, um, burnt devil grid. Sarah, any grid? What's a grid? Any it means idea? a grill. It means a little thing in the in the uh, smoke. Burn. Smoke on the water. Bar smoke. Barbecue to doctor. Burn. Doctor. Owen, doctor. any any ideas? Uh, devil without a cause by Kid Rock. No. What we're gonna oh, do is, is, the, is the word devil right? Yeah. So devil's a, a key word here. And you're thinking about what the bloke's. What's the bloke done? He's took him to devil, the doctor. Why, why, why did he do that? Why didn't he just say, oh yeah, it looks terrible, but I've got to get off home? He's, he's a good he's Samaritan. He's a good Samaritan. Right. He's, he's a good guy. He's a. Uh, he's a good guy. Saviour. Devil. Saviour. Devil for later. <laughs> we're really running out I've of time. I've got it. I've got it. Have you really? Sarah. Yeah. I tell you this, love, you are, you have got something to entertain yourself with in about three weeks' time when we get the, the DVDs and videos through. Cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sympathy for the Devil. Well done! <laughs> sympathy for the Devil. Carl, oh, man rubbish, alive. It's, it's not, rubbish. That's not a cryptic clue. <laughs> it's not rubbish. Sympathy for the Devil. You said he wasn't the devil, you said he was a demon. Right. Yeah, but I One. No. Right, okay. Sympathy for. What, what's all that rubbish about him being burnt and taken to the hospital? Sorry, Rick, but I'm noting a little, uh, a little whiff yeah. of jealousy there. It's so rubbish. No, no I'm sorry, but Sarah cannot, is happy. It's not allowed to try and make people Her guess. baby is happy. Sarah. Her, her husband, or maybe partner, sorry, maybe they're not married, maybe they're living in sin. She, he's also happy. Yeah. They're happy. That household is happy. Owen's Owen, Owen, devastated. Yeah. yeah. Owen, do you, what, do you want it on DVD or video? DVD, please. DVD. Mm -hmm. Sarah, okay. thank you very much indeed for playing. Cheers, Owen, commiserations. Sarah. Sorry, Owen. Yeah. Triumphant. Another You're triumph. You're so rubbish, Carl. Carl. You are so rubbish. Oh, you got it right. Oh dear. <laughs> rubbish. Well done, Steve. Jealous. Jealous. I love rubbish. It. I thought it was great. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. that doesn't work either, because like then I told, right? because I told okay. me, I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's amazing! So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> when I was on holiday recently, yeah. I got talking to an old fella, because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm -hmm. um, I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had, um, that sort of, um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans. Oh, yeah. Which is always sort tell, of... Tell-tell sign. It's, it's kind of like he's got money. Yeah. And, um... The, uh, red jeans are twice as much there. It's okay, I've got money. Yeah, it's sort of, it's either that colour or yellow. But yeah. you can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think, yeah, he's got a few... Oh, I'm a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir. But they're the most expensive. Yeah, they're there in the back room. Um, uh, could I just see your your bank account first? There yeah. it is. Oh, yeah, you can afford yellow jeans, right, sir? Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now, I was chatting to him for about ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? He said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Hmm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. Um, so he's rich. So you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on. Oh, he had a shirt and his his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants. And he okay. just went over well, and struck up a conversation. With him. I don't know. Why did you notice his, what um, kind of the crotch area was? Why did you notice what but you were looking the, at the arse I, I the can see why you could see if you're looking at his face, you could see a white shirt. But why could you see you what colour is what the you. fabric around his testicles were? You saw a good looking old man sat at the bar, you went out and bought him a drink. Right? Yeah, you oh, saw so you I was noticed for the barbecue to open. Right, right. okay. And you I got noticed there a man early. so you <laughs> noticed so a man's in the morning. No. Yeah, no. I was annoyed. I right. don't like late nights on holiday. Right. Okay. With jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40 odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. 
Uh, well, I don't know. It starts at eight. So you notice in people, you do it in old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but get your saying, story straight. What I'm saying to you is the right. reason I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about. Right. There was no reference points. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. He what was he talking about? For your eyes to wander down to his penis is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, <laughs> is, is reference points. I had no idea and what, what was he was going talking on about. When you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it above the waist? Keep it. Uh, Looking at his bollocks. Keep it erect. Oh, <laughs> 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 I, I made Carl laugh. <laughs> so. Uh, it made me think of something that I'd heard about. There's a thing that you can do, and I don't know why, for people who are really hairy backs and people who are hairy all over, mm. okay, called back, crack and sack. They do your back, and there's, you know there's some people that do look like little monkeys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. They do your back, they do your ass crack, <laughs> and they do your balls. Oh. In that order? Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Always a question that doesn't matter. No, it, it does, because what I'm saying is, is it done from the top all the way down? It's not done in one! What do you think? This is huge 30-foot band-aid type thing that you're wrapped in and then pulled. It's done a little bit at a time, isn't it? Right, well, again, it still matters. Which right. order? Because right. if it hurts your back, it's definitely <laughs> gonna hurt the sack. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I think- what, what is it called? Back? Crack, crack and sack. sack. Or sack, crack and back. No, it's called back, crack- I- oh, I don't know, it's probably a marketing person said we've got it in order. You could probably choose which order you want them in, Carl. It's back, crack and sack. Uh, it should be sack. Sack, crack, back. Definitely. It should be sold like that. Why? Because like I say, if you're- if you're lying there, look, you've had half of your back done. If yeah. you went, oh, forget it, yeah. right, there is no way you're gonna have the sack done. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No. I would, sorry, I wouldn't have the crack and well, sack I, I done anyway. I don't know why people I'm are not going to have the back done. It doesn't need doing. Where are people going where they've got to worry about the, the condition of the sack? <laughs> At what event do you go to and you go, well, I've got to look sharp. I've got, I've got to look the part today. I don't know. The sack done. Nudists? No, because they're about being natural and that, isn't it? Normally they are airy, like that woman on holiday. <laughs> yeah, the so. women are, the men aren't. No, I don't know. They, yeah, they all- they all are sort of pretty airy. They believe in just leaving the body as it is. I think- I think little gay fellas, like, love it, don't they? they don't, why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know! If you're a little gay fella, and you've had it done- Yeah, text just, in. just text in. What's the text thing? Uh, 83XFM, just text in, you know, tell us- uh, tell us what? I don't know, do we need- is there any information that we're missing? Is it painful? I assume so. Of course it is. Uh, why- yeah, why- why, why, did you, why did you get it done? That's- that's the question. Why did you get it done? Yeah, why yeah. is it important to have a hairless arse? Touring <laughs> <laughs> breaks on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Richard, Carl Pilkington. Carl, are we doing your, uh, story with a song? Is that what you are doing? Yeah. Well- Excited about it. Like last- what was it the other week? We did, uh- Babushka. Did Babushka. Yeah. Um, pinball wizard. You said if he's deaf, dumb, and blind, he doesn't even know he's playing pinball, which is. <laughs> I just said, don't, don't go <laughs> putting money in it. That's all I'm saying. Let him play pinball, but don't waste 20p or whatever. <laughs> good point. <laughs> um, this week, right? Do you know how I was saying. It is a good point, actually. It is a good point. Again, though, it wasn't a documentary. It was what? just. It's, it's not. Didn't really happen. Yeah, well. Do you know how I was saying sometimes I listen to a song. I, I like a song to be. Obvious what it's saying. Pinball Wizard was a good story. You need a song to be obvious. Uh, in the ghetto, you know, as a kid growing up and in all that ghetto, rough yeah. area, gets killed for nicking cars and messing with guns and that. Uh, mm. living in the city, growing up in New York, rough area, how you cope with it and that, right? Mm. But they've got to be as simple as that. Otherwise, okay. I'm not that I've got a brand new combine harvester. Yeah, it's about like the It's brand new. Yeah. It's brand new. But even though it's new, he's willing to lend it out to other people. <laughs> No, but what I mean is, if you start trying to be clever, yeah. the the story's lost on you, innit? Yeah. Not 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 necessarily me or Rick, but yeah, sure. Go on, on, on. We, we know what you mean. Go on. On primates, yeah. Well, this <laughs> this song here, right? It's not an XFM song. You'll probably hate the song, to be honest. Go on. What is it? What's the song? Yeah. It's wonderful tonight. All right. Eric Clapton. 
Okay, it's all right. right. It's, a, it's, 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 it's a sort of, sort of bluesy right. sort of ballad from the late seventies. Yeah, it's all right. But I'm always arguing with Suzanne because every time I hear it, I'm getting different pictures in my head. Yeah. Of like what's going on, right? Okay. And I'm convinced it's about like this little cripple fella in a wheelchair, right? And he's knocking about with his wife. Mm. And we don't say cripple anymore, do we, Steve? Do we say cripple? I, I don't think we've said that since um seven years. I think it's the seven years when we stopped. Mm. All right, little, just a little fellow in a wheelchair then. Okay. Um, and the story is all sort of, uh, mm. you know, how he's, how he's being pushed about by his by Again, his no, that's not literally. By his wife, she's wheeling him about, what do you mean? He's wheeling him about, they go to a party, everyone sort of looks round and looks at him. What makes you think, what makes you think that he's in a wheelchair? What's the clues? What's the words? There's, there's loads of little things. It's like, uh, well, like I say, uh, Something about his wife walking around with me and all that. Well, of course she is. She's pushing him about. But whoa, 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 whoa. walking around. If someone said, "Oh, she was walking around with me," I'd think they were both walking around. There's a few. Th there's a few. But that's not. Well, well, there must be another. There must be a reason why you suddenly thought that fella's in a wheelchair. Right. Is my wife's walking around with me? Put on your makeup. And I feel alright. No, and, 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 and she's always saying, "Do you feel alright?" And that she's always asking him how he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's uh, just just listen. Let me play, right? <laughs> and try and try and picture the scene, right? But now I'm only thinking well, of a little fella well, in a wheelchair. Well, have a listen to it, oh. and, and you know, just just everything that's being said. Okay. Understand why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. No, right? never. Yeah, there's no but, clue. But, but the thing is, that's that's what I'm picturing. But that doesn't mean it happened. You picture people that are half man, half moth. It doesn't mean it's possible. Do you know what I mean, Carl? What you what you think is usually not true. Suzanne is totally right. There is no reason I have never ever thought that Eric Clapton was singing about a little fella in a wheelchair. And the one clue in that, there's two, isn't there? Are you all right? Well, let me say that, little cripple. All right, and uh, uh, I'll give her the car keys. Oh, well, why's she driving? You've got any legs? Pushing him around in that. No, 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 pushing him around. Well, so we'll do one more next week then. Okay. Jack Johnson on XFM, uh, Carl. All right. Yeah, you were gonna, you were, we were talking briefly earlier about something that you'd been reading. Well, it's just that you're always having a go at me saying, you know, you're never happy. Uh, True. you know, what, what cheers you up, what, what, what's the best thing that can happen for you and stuff like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have never said to you what's the best thing that can happen for you. No, no, but- I'm like, trying to Steve's, encourage you. Steve's oh yeah, and, and you have a bit. I've started reading more and, and, and doing more science stuff, even though some of it does me head in, like I say, knowledge is almost annoying. <laughs> right, knowing about that mammoth is annoying. Think that lean a quote. Yeah. Think that if I have seen fur, there's close to the shoulder of giants. We will fight them on the beaches. E equals MC squared. Knowledge is annoying. Yeah. That's an amazing one. Carl Pilkington, 2005. <laughs> no, but it can get you down, can't it? Knowing, knowing stuff that's going on. Yeah, knowing stuff. But sometimes anyway. I don't want to stuff in my head. When I read a horrible story or someone tells me, I, I wish I didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that's all I'm saying. But, at the same time, there was something in the paper about, uh, things to do before you die. And it was just stuff that I sort of looked at, I thought, don't want to do that, cross that off, not bothering with that. Uh, at number one, you always know what's at number one, it's the same thing every time. Swim with dolphins. Yeah. Don't know why. <laughs> R do you want to do that? What's going on down there that it's so good? What do I we not know. know about? I mean, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun. I'd, I'd love to uh, sort of encounter most animals, to be honest. I mean, there's be a few animals on the top of the list. I'd rather hang out with a bunch of chimps. I wonder oh, if I it's. I wonder if it's. You're down there with dolphins and you're swimming with them, and they they sort of they they click away, click click click. And they tell you a secret. They, they, you go into like a, they lead you into a cave, right? But down there, it's like. It's like being at like Rolling Stones house in the 1970s. It's they're like smoking. There's, there's drink, there's women, yeah, they there's don't tell bars. Them. There's like um, they're eating tuna. They're loving tuna. They're loving it, but they can speak. They go, "Oh, this clicking stuff. It's nonsense." We're yeah. in a wild time, and they go berserk, go crazy. It's 24 hours of non-stop debauchery. I think it's spiritual, but isn't never it? mention it to anyone else. It's incredible because you know they're so intelligent, and uh, you know, do you know? Do, do you know about dolphins though? That how, how intelligent they are. Well, people keep saying that, but what, what have they done? You know what I mean? Why? What? What's someone done that they've gone? This you know, the, uh, I've read a book by a dolphin or whatever. What? What have they done? That makes them so bright. It's the same way they go. You know, they, they look after you, they save you, and that. There's got to be one bad one 
in that bunch. Cause they're- <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't suggesting they're all flipper. I was just there constantly going round the- the oceans trying to save people. Mm -hmm. I mean they're intelligent, you know. In what way? What do you mean in what way? Well, what do what you, you mean? mean why do- because why they pass tests- Why do people tests, insanely bright? Because of the things they can achieve and learn like and- Like what? And, well, they can- they can tell shapes, objects, colours. Mm. This- sorry, Carl, I mean they're no match for you. They're, they're not as clever as you, they're way down this that. But it's all relative, isn't it? From a- for a non-human, they're doing okay. They're up there with chimps, you know. So what do you want to do before you die? Uh, Anything? Any achievements you want to have? Well, if I'm ill, I'd prefer to go to the doctors than to go with the dolphins. Yeah. Why yeah. are you suddenly ill? It's not- they don't- when they say things to do before you die, they don't literally mean the sort of the day before. They mean you croak that, it. that you want to experience life. You can do it over the next twenty years. Is that years. what you thought you meant? Like, literally Is the that what you meant? before Like you a die. priest there going, Ah, 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 give me the lift. <sighs> what is it, Grandad? Dolphins! You know, no fit state, Grandad. Get me in the water. Get me down to Brighton. What do you think that list means? Well, yeah, that, you know, before you die. You're incredible, Carl. Amazing. You're inc- all this time. <laughs> things to do before you die. That's why he doesn't want to do any of them. Didn't you think it was a bit extraordinary that you had to swim with dolphins and visit Disneyland well, and climb Mount Kilimanjaro all in the same afternoon? You, that's, that's why I said to you, I would be in no mood for a dip. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible! Always a new twist on things. Always a new twist on things. But you say about travelling and that, you, uh, you like travelling and stuff, but what- why? Because I've seen and experienced extraordinary things, you know? I went to Kenya once, I met a man who was a, a, a vigilante, he was cleaning up his neighbourhood because the police were too corrupt to do it, carried a sword, and you know, he was extraordinary, he just- he, he'd been attacked but he didn't care, he fought them off, he was- he was trying in, the, in this little slum area to try and b instill some law and order, he had to arrest his uh, brother-in-law once, it was a fascinating story and he was an extraordinary <laughs> man. I, I went to Manchester and I saw two lads with big heads and webbed feet looking at a house, there was a horse in the living room. Right, straight onto Monkey News. The baby oh, no, let's play a record then. We've got, no! play a record and we've got uh, to monkey do news. Monkey News! We it's only five minutes to go! We've what? got time for a record and then some Monkey yeah. News, surely. Oh. Ex of XTC. Oh. Making fans for Nigel XTC. Okay, uh, let's play the jingle. Ooh, chimpanzee that! Monkey News. Right, this, uh, this happened in, uh, Pittsburgh. Right? Uh, there was a rock band. And, uh, it's sort of, they've got this studio in, in Pittsburgh and what have you, mm. and they're laying down tracks and stuff like that. And in the, in the studio that they use, right, there's this, uh, this monkey works there. Right, <laughs> I love the way he throws that in. Like, cool, like, cool. like, he throws that in, this monkey works there. No, it's just got a little gig there, he sort of, uh, it, it carries the equipment in, guitars. <laughs> no, like he that. doesn't! He does. Uh, no, he doesn't. He just sort of cleans up after the band. No, right? he doesn't. Emptying the ashtrays. Doesn't that happen. Stuff. It doesn't does, happen. That's, that's the gig it's got. Anyway, right? <laughs> Gets women out of the crowd that they want to, uh, <laughs> go visit with. With one arm. <laughs> so anyway, right, so the, the band's in the studio, right, yeah. and, uh, one of the band members brings some A&R fella to the studio to have a listen to the latest track, right? Yeah. So they hit play, and, uh, and they're all there going, yeah, brilliant, this is good. Oh, no. Anyway, so the fella says, yeah, I like the track, I uh, especially like the, the bass on it. Right, <laughs> right it's because it's bullshit. So, this uh, is rubbish. So, so... And they haven't laid down the bass so, track? So, so this is, have you heard it? So <laughs> the way, the, Carl, the way, the please don't is, do right, this to so me. So the A&R fella goes, and yeah. it's like, uh, it, the band members are stood about and they're going, that's good that you liked it. And I'm saying, yeah, but what's he all about with the bass? So no, this is rubbish. This is absolute rubbish. Where did you get this from? Please, because we never Where get to the end. This, this is it? absolute so, nonsense. So they played it back. Yeah, right? and it's the chimp playing bass. So, Definitely not. So they were like, that's weird, we haven't got a bassist. Anyway, so they go, well, whatever, right? So we haven't leave. got a bassist! <laughs> so, they so, go, whatever, let's go. Oh, uh, forget it. <laughs> Don't steal our son. Please, lads. Thrills. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little Carly Pilkington, little baldy mank, whinging little twat. How all are right. you? Yeah, all, right. all right, yeah. What are you doing? Happy? Bit of fin, bit happier today. You look as full of, full of spunk as they say in America. Yeah, I'm all right. Just a bit of a miserable day, though, isn't it? Yeah. A bit miserable. Yeah. Uh, walking in today. 
right? Uh, do you know I walked through like the uh, sort of the gay district of of London and that? Right. You don't walk, you mince, don't you? I'm well, just just walking through on on the way to work, and I'm always interested in their their little shops and stuff. Like they have right. Loads of <laughs> their little shops. That's no, 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 If you want to go in and buy something, go in and buy something. I'm just having a look at, you know, looking in the windows and stuff. Um, little postcard, just near the, near the entrance. Yeah. That's meant to tease people in, to make people go, that sounds good, I'll nip in. Right? <laughs> little postcard, free butt plugs <laughs> with every sale. <laughs> Right. How did we get from 5p off milk yeah. to free butt plugs with every sale? Wow. What society come to? Well, it's because we're liberated, Rick. Yeah. You know, it's an open society. What did you buy to get them? You didn't buy- No, I didn't, I didn't, uh, but what- what's the purpose? <laughs> what, of the poster or of butt plugs? Butt plugs. Because I- I- I really honestly- You shove them up your ass, don't you? Woo! Slow down, bum. Shove uh, them up your bum. Yeah. But- but when? Is that just like when you're doing whatever, <laughs> doing stuff around the house or- <laughs> I think it's- is it to kind of- it's not to keep things out. Is it like you would use a plug in the sink to keep, you know, the water in the sink? <laughs> oh, if you're not gay. <laughs> get, oh, yeah, no, I know what you mean, yeah. I don't know. No I mean, entry. What is, it, what is it? I mean, I don't understand what- I don't know. I, I assume it either feels good or- or are they- <laughs> well, I've got to be careful here. Or are they sort of like breaking it in? Right, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, it's like a shoehorn. Sure. <laughs> or, or, or yeah. you know, It's or like the... when you stick, uh, paper in your <laughs> shoes if they're a bit too tight. Yeah. Or, or, um, or those people, those, um, people who sort of like put little bits of wood in their lips, sure. and then as soon as they've got big plates in their lips, yeah, yeah, same yeah. as the butt plug, it means you can, you know, yeah. you're ready for anything. I don't know, do I? And they can face! <laughs> well, if you know what butt plugs are used for, then well, I'll get in touch. <laughs> Ricky Dr. Blaze, at xfm.co.uk. What do you think? If there's any- I can't believe we're already on this subject. How I know. It? It's five past I know. one and we're and I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say then, if there's any people who use butt plugs, and, and I was thinking that Carl would have said, well they're, they're not up yet. Yeah. Cause they go out late. No, but- But what? Is it, we're award winning people, we've, we've yes. written a TV Not on show radio though. Respected. Not on radio, we're rubbish on radio. I know, we've got nothing to lose. But I always say to you, Steve, that I like educating people on that. Now, the way I say it, see it is, I didn't know what they were. Mm. Um, Let us phone to go. Tell them what now about butt plugs. All right, we'll, we'll get no, to them. No, no, get them on. Get them on. Get, ask them. No, because they might say something dodgy. Oh! But, <laughs> yeah, where us? <laughs> yeah, what have we yeah, just yeah. been doing? Just take a chance. Take a chance and tell them not to swear. Well, you tell them. Okay. Right, Steve, you oh, I've got my headphones on. Hello, who's there? Oh, my name. Hold on. Who, sorry? Nicholas. Nicholas, hello, mate. Uh, you're not going to swear, are you? No, I'm not going to swear. Keep it clean. Oh, yeah. Well. Keep them keen. Um, what, uh, what, what were you calling about? I'm phoning about your plugs. About pl- m- well, not my plugs, but sure, plugs <laughs> in general. What, uh, do you know much about them? No, Are you a no, plug I'm user thinking, yourself? No, I'm just thinking if maybe you've got some gay friends and you're spending the night at their place, you might want to use one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what, you mean experiment with them, or? No, so you can make sure they're not going to do anything while you're asleep. Do you, can right. I, can I suggest, could I suggest, uh, you know, just lock the door? I mean, that is easier to can me. I, can I make a bigger suggestion? <laughs> That's probably the most homophobic thing we've had said on the show today. <laughs> Thanks very much for your call. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. good. Well, that's why we shouldn't put people on the line. <laughs> just, you know, without like checking first. I think Carl's made a good point. That's the caliber of listener we've got. <laughs> God gave rock and roll to you by Kiss on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. I'm bloody XFM. glad he did, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, I am. Cheers. Carl Pilkington's with us as well. He's learned some stuff while well, uh, the song's been on. He's had a couple of calls. One from a bloke, one from a woman who worked in a sex shop, and you learned quite a lot. I can see your eyes widening. What have you learned then about butt plugs? I haven't really learned anything. I don't. I still don't understand. Yes, it. you have. No, but she's just, the woman was just saying, you know, it spices things up a bit. Yeah. Well, what do you need to do that for? The end result is always the same, I think. <laughs> so why complicate it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you with me, though? These people who say, you know, they do stuff all night, it's like, what's the point? <laughs> That's why I like short stories and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. So. Excellent. If I wish people could see what he looks like when he's talking yeah. about it. Oh, in fact, he's in heat next week, Steve. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, they put a picture of him, they could do the grab off the, the DVD, mm-hmm. 
and he's behind the scenes, and uh, he's got his little picture in heat, and he <laughs> hates it, don't you? Well, I'm a bit annoyed because I didn't want it in. <laughs> Why are you worried? Just don't want people knowing what, knowing you look what like. I look like and that. Why? Were you on the DVD? Yeah, but it's to public domain. Anyone can take it off there and put it on the paper oh. now. But I, but that's extras on a DVD, and I'm just thinking not that many people. If they watch it, they won't take it in and stuff like that. What are you worried about then? Just I don't. This like me brother and sister and stuff who I don't see anymore. If they know what I look like now, they might. What do you mean if they know what you look like now? They've just got to imagine little Carl Pilkington with no hair. No, I've I've changed quite a lot because I work hard, don't I? So I've aged quite badly. Right. <laughs> and I'm just thinking if they. You still the hair of a Chinaman. But sorry, you? why why is it a problem for your brother and sister to see you and to? Because I don't see them anymore, do I? And they'll come out of the woodwork now. What? what, what they're after what? your millions. No, no. So they're sitting at home. They're looking at heat, and there goes Carl. And says, oh, Carl's my brother. My my brother. Right? Oh, maybe I'll go and see him. I don't. I don't want the hassle. But they could find out where you are. What's, the hassle? What's the hassle then? Uh, it's just hassle of. Having friends and family and that. <laughs> you mean this, don't you? Yeah, it's that you know that I'm not not into be you know having. But if either that. your brother or your sister came to your door, would you not welcome in it, welcome them in, and give them a cup of tea? Do you know what? He bumped into his sister right after about seven years in a car park somewhere, right? And she went, "Oh, I got a picture of my my new kid. Do you want to see it?" He went, "Not really. All kids look the same." And she went off in half. Unbelievable. Yeah, but that's the problem though, isn't it? She she hadn't seen me for years and years. That's the way I am. I'm not like being rude or anything. I'm just says what comes in me head. Oh, don't give me that. Don't do that. I'm not rude. It's what comes in me head. That's a rubbish excuse. Not know me, know my ways. Mm. Yeah. Right. I'm wrong then. Let's look at it. Let's look at the. What hey, I said. there's an ounce of Barmer's cakes. Know <laughs> me, know my ways. Get out, you twiddle flunt. <laughs> what is that? What sort of philosophy is that? Know me, I'm rude, and take it or leave it. I'm not it. being rude. You what? are being rude. What, saying that old babies look the same? It's your nephew! He didn't even bother to have a look. You could have been courteous yeah, and had a look at the picture. If it was a first, I'd say fair enough, but she's got loads of kids. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> what kind of woman is she? <laughs> David Bowie, Lady Stardust from Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. I went to see him Tuesday. I know you went to see him Wednesday, Steve. Mm. I mean, obviously I'm a mental fan, but I think objectively that was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Yeah, it was brilliant. He's got the best band in the world. He it, it, he played all the hits. It was an amazing show. The sound was incredible. He, I mean, do you know what I mean? Well, his just voice as well. I think people don't realise how incredible his voice. Is. It was absolutely Soulful is the word I'd use. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. You. Don't, don't give it. You don't care, do you, Carl? We don't care about this. You never really go to gigs, do you, Carl? You know, the live music experience is not something you enjoy. Uh, can be all right. I mean, I heard, go on. I heard that someone else who went to the Bowie thing said that he sort of messed with the songs a bit, which would annoy me. No, he didn't. Not really. Hardly said, at all. He said when they did um, Life on Mars, instead of saying something about uh, just just the tune of it, he messed with it so it wasn't the same. That that would annoy me. What would you well, do? Well, get up and but leave? I mean, we're not oh. we're not talking Bob Dylan or Sinatra. He it's the, he ad lived a little bit, I suppose, and it's his song. But it was t you know totally faithful. It was he was singing the songs. What do you yeah. mean? Well, it's just don't don't mess with stuff. It's like if you went to see Titanic and then the boat didn't have a crash, you'd go, what what are they doing? It's like oh, Fancy's messing with it. Well, he didn't. I mean, well, I tell you, I tell you, he didn't mess with it. Relatively speaking, he did not mess with the songs. They were brilliant renditions. That would be a hell of a film, though, where Titanic <laughs> gets to New York absolutely fine. <laughs> what I think is interesting about that is how much therapy it provides for these often mentally unstable people, which is another important value of art, of course. People's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you whistle. Uh, yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? It's right, like freedom. expand on this point if you would. Well that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. 
That's mm. great, that. For art is freedom. I yeah. love that, because I think, I think you've really hit on something there. Would you, would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, I know what you meant, I know what you meant there. Would you include I mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to, I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, uh, what, uh, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So, Not just take us off. through a typical See, uh, day. When would the whistling begin? So, so uh, uh, this was that you spent you spent <coughs> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, yeah. Could could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking. I'm in my own place now. I'm going to annoy them. Well, it was mainly it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble, mm. and they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> Um, it's sort of you got boiler problems, don't you? Got, it, well. work, it works. It just gives something off every time it kicks in. The radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like I, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going from one thing to another. A wedley. And a, a man was impressed. She was like, "Oh, you can whistle, can't you?" I was going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you go? I was just doing all different levels. So it, this sounds like a scene from One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. The boy is setting off the radio, I can whistle, oh, you're a good whistler, aren't you? Oh, yeah, scrab, oh. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home it when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd, cos I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you mm. never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up. You whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a well, whistle. Well, the people who aren't whistling are, are usually pissed off. But yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least. He he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling. Which comes there's, to show there's, there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's I, not. I don't know. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh. Retired. <laughs> <laughs> what, because he couldn't whistle? That was it. It was like, well, yeah, can't he whistled whistle. all the time. Can't whistle, well, yeah. can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth? Yeah, I suppose he could have done. He didn't think of that. What about a flute? Or a recorder. Not London's burning again. Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off. <laughs> he didn't really think this through, did he? He retired at the age of 28. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family with, were bankrupt. With no teeth. Yeah. And just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why aren't you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No. I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. What, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? Oh, two hours. Two Fuck hours? Put me word down. And and then... Sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it, can we hear it? So you were, whistling, is... you were whistling after you had your go as oh, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. That is Carl's self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, cos I do alright. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can come oh, up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't- no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that I, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree. Cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth ten, that. It's not bad, is it? Now, I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you- I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out. And then, yeah, when it wasn't my go, just. <laughs> oh, God! Christ, what anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed to for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby, maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here. But I think there's a difference between 
bite open and <laughs> squirm. There's <laughs> a cue in that. <laughs> Robert Nozick did this thing that, that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible, you did exactly what you've always wanted, you became the person you wanted to be, you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference, so it was your life, okay? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying? So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. Am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank Right, uh, and your one proviso was, are munches as good? <laughs> yeah, No, absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic, You've got yeah. to pre-program your life, that's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just that if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them. You are the... You're the... It's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're living it. That. A bit dangerous, Sorry? A bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, why? Just, um, I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in, because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't, you're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. We well, just have munchies every day and... Well, yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you, if you don't know you've got in this tank, if I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. And right. Go, yeah, I meant to be at work. And she goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Go, All right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that. Well, I was a bit suspicious, of... though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like, but I like the fact now you're even questioning and you're not in the tank, and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that, because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example, you wake up, there's the munchies, sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Well, she goes off. to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought of that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, can no, have some but, munchies for breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti, yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet, I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane... A scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it because that's mm. sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right? Okay. So anticipation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it? And looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay. Well, right. can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea, okay? You can design your perfect life, 
But I prefer not to but know I'm doing it. No, you, you won't know. Won't. But I you want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munchies. What else? We've got, got munchies, munchies and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, d I, d I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, just, I just think you need you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes." The, the, oh my God! The so he's is like to have a virtual life, so his boiler's fixed. No, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no, no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but it you gets fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler. You could be the perfect temperature. But live in the Caribbean anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But you won't realise it. Won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? Do, do you? St what is your method now of? Ch do you still throw little rocks at them and go over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Um, there was a kid I remember at our school, Mark Johnson, when we were like ten or something. And we were talking about Guinness Book of Records, and Mark Johnson went, Yeah, yeah I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> I thought, I'm intrigued. You're a ten year old. <laughs> I said, Go on. He went, Now, I don't, does this qualify? Does this qualify? He claimed that he was in America once, and he went to see um, a baseball game, and the supposedly that game was the world record for the number of people in an audience for a baseball game. It was like some massive stadium, I, I, I and this was the I, most people I'll ever. I'll tell you what his account. I and he claims he was there. I don't reckon it was listed. Well, I don't reckon Mark Johnson got his name <laughs> no, on that list. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. Ross McWhirt would be going, "Well, that's the whole book." But I think we I remember him all. looking it up and going, "There it is. I was there." Yeah. Yeah. Does no. that count? I mean, no, I don't. Well, I've done a similar thing. There was an ice hockey game in Manchester. Sure. And they filled it. It was the uh, the arena. Yeah. They had an ice hockey game, uh, and I was part of it. But I wouldn't go around bragging. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, now you've no. brought it up, I'm telling you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not going to boast about it. Nah. You're what's not going to get a t-shirt made. What's the best thing you've ever done? I don't what? know. I just... Come on. What's the best thing you've ever done that we will go, did you really do that, Carl? You see, it's weird, cos I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Cos, uh, I'm 30 on Monday. Are you? Are you really? Yeah. Oh, you're just going to try and get presents, aren't you, from the listener? No. Nah. But, I but, say listener. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but um, I kind of was thinking, have I had a good 30 years? <laughs> what do you I? think? I don't know. Carl, is this going to get a bit melancholy now? Yeah. Because we've been having a few laughs at the expense of fat people. I'm not sure you want to, we want you to bring it down now. No. We've, just, been, I, we've been having a jolly laugh about people who are morbidly obese. It's yeah. always when my girlfriend's working away, I always think about odd things. Do you? Odd times. Doesn't she leave you shiny things or videos in so you don't get... You don't get too depressed, and you can... Well, what, la last night, when I sent you that text. That was... Right. Um, right, let's play a record. This sounds right. intriguing, because I'm right, worried it is intriguing. Really... It's incredible. Right, play a record. Right, w wait for this text that Carl sent me. Oh, uh, All Along the Watchtower there by Jimi Hendrix. Beautiful. Can right. I just say straight away, Rick, before you carry on, uh, we've had some people emailing in um, about the origins of sumo wrestling. Yeah. But they've sort of cut and pasted a huge ream of information from the web. Thanks very much, but... We need bullet points, or not, not, don't bother. You're wasting our time, frankly, with any, any, too many sentences, uh, proper grammar. We're talking about Ricky Gervais here. Yeah. So not that I'd read the bullet points either, you'd read them too. Exactly, me. but exactly. So but your, your concentration would lapse so quickly <laughs> that it just yeah. needs to be keywords, you know, arse, sumo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. things like that. Yes, arse wipe. <laughs> yes, arse need... wipe, sumo, correct. Yeah, or maybe even a picture of someone wiping an arse with a tip <laughs> next exactly. to it. If you could get yeah. words if you out. Could, if you could, maybe if you could send through the orange of sumo wrestling in sort of diagram or sketch form, <laughs> yeah. or in a kind of comic book, or one of those flick books. <laughs> that just, you just maybe draw a quick flick book, send that in. But thank you very much. Well, thanks for thinking of it. Um, I woke up this morning, yeah. Feeling fine. It's not a blues song, and uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, forget it, I've made my mind up. And I thought, wow, what is that? And I forget it. it, I've made my yeah, mind. Yeah, I went, Carl, what is it? He went, oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went, well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went, ah, oh. oh, I was just wondering, I was, I was thinking last night. He said, supposing you had to have your hands removed. Sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
and the doctor said, well, you can either have them stay like that with stumps or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? And I was bleary eyed and I went, the stumps? He went, yeah. I went, all right? He went, yeah. <laughs> and then and what that, was his follow-up text to that? And then I got the text that was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious. What, what would you do if surgeon not hands, would you have stumps or the feet, right? Now the way, uh, when I said, he's made his mind up, and I went, the stumps, he went, yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but was too embarrassed to tell me. <laughs> There's a little, little bit of what would you do? Cause it's, it, but why night. did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Girlfriend's away, back? right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre I'll, surgery I'll devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, I um, <laughs> I had some beans on toast, right? <laughs> she was away. It's good already. Right? She was away. She had some beans on toast. Right? She went yeah. wild. Yeah. Right. Now I was stood up. I live on like a on a high street, right? So I'm, I'm washing up. I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is I can I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on. I was watching them, and everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see them all watching it, and it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs who was reading a book, and she's always reading a book every night, and it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's a, there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on, I thought. Did you witness a murder while you were doing this? <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body, the way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up and you do. Yeah. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah, You've got five little digits, but it's, it's just the right amount to do what, <laughs> yeah. to do what you've got to do, right? So... <laughs> So I'm, I'm wash- I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl! Stop! It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front, uh, limb? Just go, we'll just say it's the right amount. Huh? But it is. It one, is. One of extra it would is. get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it that little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure. Or, <laughs> buy, or buying gloves. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. all right, imagine like going to the doctors and they're saying, yeah, everything's all right, your heart's good and everything, but... <laughs> your heart's good? What, your Larry's or...? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your heart, your heart, yeah. you're, you're in good form and what sure. have you. It's good news, you know, I had Giano in earlier, he's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I had Fats Waller. But yeah. you're, you're all right, but your hands need to come off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Blimey. But, That's bad, like, I'd get a second opinion initially. <laughs> But a better good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? <laughs> but, Steve! I, <laughs> that'd be tricky. Yeah. And then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the, sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you had to keep putting the feet through there. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still cycle in. Okay. To work. You could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd was, be like, you'd be really yeah. fast. Well, well, that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance. And then I thought, but the only thing is, I probably couldn't pull the brakes <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. because of the little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you'd run in in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night. Right. That's what I was thinking about. Sure. Did you? Did you? How ever... long did this take? <laughs> Well, how long has it took to wash up? Right, because I imagine you just being there for like all night. <laughs> Probably twenty-five minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He's always doing it. Last night he was at it for like ten minutes. Just yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always sat in the bedroom. <laughs> She's going, you you dance in pants again. I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. All the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing, it's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants, the old woman sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think thought, she ever goes- Are you sure she's not dead? 
<laughs> Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it. She's just reading this book. The pages never turn. <laughs> she never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you sure? Are you sure the Chinese her girl's cats going? Her are dead around I, her. I, I, I'm going into the next door again. That little yeah, round headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me. The bouncer goes, "Don't worry, love. I'll go and beat that's, him up." But he's true. always getting ready. That's true. That they, see, they see you staring at and washing up, going, "I could have feet." here and they get yeah. scared the old woman's dead <laughs> oh Carl, can you tell us roughly which neighborhood you live in so so it's, that we know it's central central is it yeah yeah well imagine if that little was he a chinese friend did you say yeah Imagine if he was listening now, I'd love him to call in and explain his actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, do we have this doctor, this doctor that would go, well, all right, Carl, I've got, you can either leave him as stumps or I've got a little pair of feet. Why, uh, I mean, I t told Jane this and Jane went, did, is that the only choice? Is he, you could say, could I have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any, have, if you, where do you get the feet from? Where do you get the feet from? Can I have, can I have, what would you rather have then? Human feet or monkey paws? Well, I mean, that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said. No, it wasn't an option last night, but don't forget, it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this but is... I'm just saying at the time, that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know, it's your head, you can go anywhere. No, 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 it wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head, you can go anywhere. You're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say, we'll sort us out some other hands. <laughs> fair point, the fair so, record. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl. But, um, oh, you're amazing. It's because I work here, though, and there's a lot of gigs going on all the time, and then you get to a point when, you know, you just go, oh, get a bit fed up with that. Well, I mean. when was the last time you went to a live experience? Uh, well, I've, I've been to gigs, but the one that springs to mind probably is when I first sort of tried a gig out, and it wasn't a music one, it was, um, it was Bottom, do you know, with- <laughs> <laughs> bottom, what, bottom the live thing with, with Rick Mayer and Eddie Limited. Yeah, when Manchester. was that? Years ago, because it was, it was in in Manchester in about, I don't know, 87, 88 or something. And, uh, I was set up for a, for like a blind date. Right, this, uh, a mate of mine sort of set me up to see this. See this what, girl. so you said, let's go to bottom? Well, I didn't tell her, I just said, meet us at the Apollo. Uh, I bet she was over the moon, wasn't she? Met her there, I said, right. There Romantic? Go. Going to see some middle-aged men run round in pants. Brilliant. Well, it, it, it's good, it's one of the things that afterwards you've got something to talk about, haven't you? And stuff. Yeah. So and was, like, uh, was it a good gig? Yeah, it was alright. Uh, sort of bought some, bought some opal fruits and that at the start of the night. Yeah. Uh, I think she liked that. And then we watched Bottom. Then afterwards had a bit of a chat, and then, uh... You didn't see her again, I take it? I would have done right, cos she was alright looking and everything. Yeah. But when <laughs> we were- when we were chatting, she said, uh... She had a, a problem with a marrow. Marrow what? and that. <laughs> she what? She had a problem with a marrow. Uh, she had a problem with her marrow? Yeah. Uh, you mean her bone marrow? Yeah. I've... Oh! I thought you meant she had one stuck of her fanny. No, just- just a... <laughs> Thanks for that, Rick. That's an image I take down my head. <laughs> no one did what? Oh, I see. A marrow. I think it's a marrow. Her marrow. And is is that serious, that? Is well, it, I just was put off it because I thought- if you Well, it's, I, I think it's more serious than problem with a marrow. Yeah, I mean- With a marrow. With a marrow and that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea if you're bored with- but I love it! It's, I love it! Everything he says is like someone from Kez. It was just that thing that because- You didn't want to go out with a girl who might be ill in some way. Well, yeah, I thought, what's the point in spending time with her, spending money on her and stuff, and then she's gonna die on me. Oh! Right? No, 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 but seriously. God! No, but I'm just- but, see, this is what annoys me. Oh, you asked me to be honest, oh. but I'm just saying, what's the point in me getting upset and stuff? Oh, no, but it's not the- it was the- one thing is said, what's the point in spending money on her if she's gonna die anyway? Do you gotta realise no, that's no. not a normal thing to say? No, but what's the point in getting to really like to know, you know, knowing someone and thinking, oh, that she's really nice, I want to spend my life with her. It's good that she told me when she did. Carl! <laughs> oh, what, during bottom? <laughs> oh my god, this is the most amazing thing you've ever said! What, Steve, you... don't you- don't you understand what I'm saying? But no, because- what? Well, firstly, it's the assumption that she's going to drop dead, and well, you're going to think, "Well, I'm not a doctor, some not a doctor am I? I don't know what 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 it means when you've got a problem with a marrow and that." But she looked pretty serious when she was talking about it. 
So I was like, oh. <laughs> Christ almighty! Oh, I don't God. want to say what's so bad about that. Play record! I'll tell you, I'll explain to you during the break. Play record. Libertines? Yeah. If you're morally objectionable, why not email <laughs> ricky.jvs at xfm.co.uk? It's okay, he's an idiot. True. <laughs> Morris Chambers, Kings of Leon on XFM, 104.9 I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Steve, yes. I want to talk to you. Uh, I think it was, uh, might have been Wednesday night, I was uh, in the pub, phone goes, and Carl goes, are you watching that thing about parasites? Right. I went, no I'm out, he went, oh, fellow with a maggot in his head. Fellow with a maggot in his head? Yeah. And he goes, oh no, he's pulling it out now, oh, oh, God. I said, well, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it, I said, yeah, see you later. About five minutes later, I get a message on my phone, beep, beep, I look at it, it just says, oh no, there's a fella with his fish up his cock now. There's a fella with a fish up his cock? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Do you wanna explain that, Carl? Is it one of those little ones that swim up if you're having a slash in the Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? But it was, it was still, like, stuff like that, it started off with, a. Uh, what does the fish do when it gets in there? Just sits there. <laughs> so why does it, why? Well, what else can it do? <laughs> no, but why does it go up there? Uh, dunno, I didn't listen to that bit. There's a bit, there's a bit, he started off with a fella who, uh, had a bit of meat and got a tapeworm inside him. Yeah. And he grew it for however long and it came out at the end it was about seven foot long. On purpose? Yeah, he did it on purpose, yeah, for the, for the programme, right? I think it, yeah. Probably slimming, isn't it? Well, I was thinking that. Could, you know, I mean you're a fan of Waller, could he purposely have about eight of them? <laughs> what, Rick Waller? Yeah. It's a good idea. Cause, cause he was saying how they, they eat, you know, a lot of stuff when they're in you, they just eat all Well they of... take, they take enough so you don't die and nor do they, yeah. But I mean you've got to keep taking them out, haven't you? Cause you'll still have the same weight, cause it's got to go somewhere, so you'll have them in you. you what you got to do is like, let them eat your meal and then take them out. Do you think worm watchers will ca <laughs> catch on? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that happened, right? And then, uh, yeah, there was a woman with a, with a maggot in her head. A woman with a maggot in yeah, her head? Yeah, just, she went on holiday, it got in there somehow. <laughs> and, uh... Stow away. It just, just, oh, it was, it was massive. And the thing is, it, she had a hole in her head and she's there being interviewed with the doctor, like. And you can see it just sort of sticking its head out. Like, do you know when you see a cartoon with a, a maggot in an apple? Yeah. And it looks out, looks around like that. Yeah. Why didn't they just take it out there and then? I think they could have done, but the doctor's messing about. It's like, well, it's good for the show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and they left it in right, there. Right, that's libelous. Well, that is libelous. But I found it weird. Why not just grab it? When, when <laughs> oh, because there must be a reason. There must be one of those medical reasons that you don't really know about, Carl. Right. And another, but this this was the best one. Right? <laughs> grab it. Right. There's this fella, <laughs> and he was. Uh, he was, he was on his bike, right, yeah. cycling, cycling to work or whatever, and uh, he sort of sees this thing in the corner of his eye. Right? Literally in the corner of his eye? Or you mean he, he saw something? He just said he saw something. In his peripheral vision, okay, yeah. He thought, what's that? Yeah. So he thought, oh, doesn't matter, whatever. And he, uh, he stops off at a cafe, right, yeah. get a little, uh, little scone, the tea or whatever, <laughs> and he goes in there and he's, he's sat down and the waiter comes over, he says, uh, yeah, what do you want? He says, I'll have a scone on the tea. He goes, all right then. So he goes to get it, comes back, as he puts the tea and the scone down, his face is like, what, what is that? Right? Like a look of frightenedness on yeah. his face. <laughs> right? Drops the tea and legs it. So the fella's going, what, what, what? So he legs it after the bloke and goes, what? And he says, oh, something came out of your nose. That was massive. <laughs> Sorry, something came out of the guy's It's all true there. because people would have watched it, so don't start saying Sorry, it didn't happen. Sorry, but hang on, I just need to clarify. The guy I on the bike- I don't believe he ran away. Wait I don't minute. believe he legged it. I, oh. don't have, I don't believe he had a look of frightenedness <laughs> on his face, and I don't believe he said something massive came out of your nose. <laughs> Wait and, a and I don't even believe he had a cup of tea and a scone. <laughs> These are the things that I think are embellished. <laughs> <laughs> but who had something coming out of his nose? Was it the guy serving the scone? The one who was on the bike who, who ordered the scone. Yeah, but what it was came it? Out of his nose. What was it? Came out of his nose. Right. So he goes home <laughs> and he thinks I've got to sort this out because it's not good and that. So he's. But what? No, it was out of his nose. So you mean it poked out of his nose? It didn't come out. It just said hello and then it. 
It was like the maggot in the head. Yeah, he just yeah, popped, just, popped his head out, had a look around and went back in. And why did the bloke- why did the bloke <laughs> drop the tea and run? Well, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Alright, <laughs> so- so- So he goes home. He yeah. goes home and he goes, oh, God, you know. So he sits in front of the mirror and he's sat there waiting. <laughs> this thing comes out. Uh, again, sort of looks round, goes back in again, so he goes, oh. <laughs> no scones. Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> so he goes, I've got to sort this out. He goes to the doctors, yeah. says to the doctor, I've got something up my nose. It just keeps coming out and having a look round going back in. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't so say that. The doctors, so the doctor's like, oh, I haven't heard of that before. Right? <laughs> Didn't say that. So, <laughs> so sat there. <laughs> He does it again, the doctor looks, you know, frightened again. He runs away? Yeah. No, he he he's away. Well, he's got a look of frightenedness. <laughs> he, he, he had a look of fr medical frightenedness. <laughs> yeah. He dropped his stethoscope and legged it. No, he said, he said, I know what it was. So what? what? So you got a leech up your nose. He had a leech about that long. What's well, radio? Well, how long's that? Four inches. Four inches coming out of his nose. <sighs> Next time it stuck its head out, he grabbed it, pulled it out. That's horrible though, isn't it? Isn't it? Can I just remind people, uh, just let people know, when Carl was saying it was about that long and Ricky said four inches, he was using his fingers. Oh yeah, he didn't have his, no. There's nothing else there. Fellow, oh, no. So he had a leech up his nose, how did he get a leech up his nose? I don't know, again, <laughs> just, that, I'm not that bothered about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> All the footage and stuff. Oh, player brilliant, record. Brilliant program. Yeah. It's just the same, he just sees that, he gets fast, he doesn't read on. Mm. His education is just sound bites, bites and a self embellishment in his own head. Yeah. It's like he gets he gets all his news from Ananova and he just reads the headline. Yeah. Oh. And and he just doesn't bother reading it. it, it but you know he he considers that education. He well, gets annoyed if you think that there more information so you is useful. Don't get going on that. Oh, we'll talk about that later. If you I'll tell you what. Go. Right. Okay. Uh, after. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna play a song now, and um, I'm gonna tell London Carl's confusion over evolution. Right. Are you two? Oh, brilliant. Sweet. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on, on the estate who, who did use... Have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. I think I told you ages ago, it's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three-wheeler bike. <laughs> And what, her husband, fish bike, pedal bike. Yeah, like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back, <laughs> cycle about. Yeah. You. She was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway. Oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always go in quick save and nick biscuits. And if anyone went up to her to say stop nicking the biscuits, she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag, and she'd look in it. But talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> oh God! Oh man! What? 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 This so she is insane. Up. It's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like it used to scare me. It's like it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you you exist in there. Yeah. It's really um, really. So weird. hang on. So she used to talk to people through the mirror because she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No, that's <laughs> no, weird. That would be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. Oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, yeah, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that. And if you are, it gives you confidence. Of, well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more, and you pick up what habits you do and stuff like that. So, what have you changed through your viewing uh, of yourself? I, I, I sort of grew grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly? In the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> 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 oh, God! <sighs> sculptures. What do you think of sculptures? I mean, because that's something that really is getting into the, the 3D world there, isn't it? No longer do you have to represent something as 3D, you can make something, you know, is it, you know, the statues are, are amazing, aren't they? They're clever, aren't they? I mean, um, they always look the same. Well, that's not true, is it? Because recently there was a, a quite a controversial one, a huge one in London, uh, the pregnant uh, uh, thalidomide woman. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thoughts? I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> Well, there wouldn't be room because it would just be you, Suzanne, and a pregnant thalidomide watching telly. 
I, I don't know what he was trying to say. It's, uh... Maybe she was saying, okay, we've had the human form. This is an example of the human form. Yeah, but do you think she started off trying to do normal and it was like, oh, chipped a bit off? <laughs> She, one of the arms got chipped off. Well, it, it off. makes you wonder, doesn't it? And why, you see that, that square, Trafalgar Square, <laughs> you've you got that. Nelson's column, he's got one arm and a leg missing or something and a patch over his eye. Then you've got the thalidomide. Why can't they just do a full person? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That that was what they saw. That was what the artist saw. It's a, it's about confronting us with certain preconceptions of what that, what we expect of the human form, what we expect of sculpture. It's probably a little ironic comment as well on the famous Rodin. It's been wrapped up with all kinds of ideas of maternity, of the human form, of what sculpture is. Why wouldn't you put that in a big public place? But what about the subject? Did you think who's that subject? Who is that woman? No, not really, because cause the Lidomides are around and we, we've, we've all seen one. It's not like a shocking, a shocking image. It's one of life's little things that it chucks out. There's some out there. Amazing. So it's not, it's not shocking, is it? I don't understand what you mean. I think what I thought is, it just goes to show we're sort of running out of, of ideas. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it or they try and destroy it? Uh, Do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> Angel in the North, that's a bit of art, but it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You're driving along a miserable motorway. Yeah. Oh, what's that over there? It gives you something for your eyes to look at again. Motorways are, are the most boring place to drive. Mm. But you go, oh, look, there's a, there's a bit of art over there. Yeah, but, Stick that but then again, should you be looking at art when, you, you, when you're going at 70 miles an hour along a motorway? Well, yeah, because it's really big. You can keep your eye on it and... and look in know, the mirror. You can, you can, it's not a problem. Wait till you go past it and look in the mirror like normal. What's so you like the Angel of the North? Because it's, it's, it's something in the middle of nothing. Right, but if you put it somewhere else... Stick it in Trafalgar Square, you'd go, oh, more clutter. <laughs> I remember we, uh, we were shown, uh, the cartoon version of Animal Farm when we were about, like, 15, 16. We were discussing it afterwards about, oh, yeah, the podium. oh, yeah, great, oh, yeah, communism versus, oh, the poor proletariat and all this. And this bloke went, you lot make me sick. It was just a nice film about some animals. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What, what's your take on that, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on, what's your point? Because you can see the irony there, can't you? I haven't, I haven't seen it. No. Uh, if you, you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I disagree with that because, um, I think, um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could, and I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Schindler's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving, couldn't you? Schindler's List in space! <laughs> Miss Piggy's Choice. Well, have we talked about that? What? About things like that in, in, in art as well. Do you think that, that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, 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 like films do, things like the Holocaust, and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, lives and dies? Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did she pick? I, th I don't. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is, this is like deal, no deal. It's kind of you down to the last, <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you going to go for? Oh God! I, I don't, but why did you ask which one did she choose? Because <laughs> even if he said the names Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it? No, because that you've then said I'd ask more. I'd ask more. Then, if if he said Alison, I'd go. Well, what was it with Alison? That what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do. You question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, "What was going on there?" Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ. That's because you've just watched Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. <laughs> I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. 
Yeah? Brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> One it's extraordinary quite, point. Guys, there, there's gonna, this is gonna be, he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something up. here, he's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then, what's your no. take on films? Films, films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. And, uh... You like one with a good story? I like, I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm. Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> Mission Impossible, <laughs> Mission Impossible 2. 2. <laughs> These are your. These are the what you consider the great works no, of film. I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen yet. You always say, "Oh, have you seen so and so?" You well, Mission Impossible One. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you. Three's out. <laughs> That's true. One of the most striking art exhibitions that I ever attended, Carl, was an exhibition of outsider art. I'm something I'm sure you're very familiar with. Outsider art, of course, is work that is made by people who are often institutionalised for mental health problems um, or they are just incredibly, you know, uh, the people who aren't in any way part of the artist. Well, they are right up to psychopathic murderers. Uh, clinically insane mass murderers would count as outsider art. Um, I, I went to an outsider art exhibition in New York. Um, it was incredible and I bought a, a, a painting of this guy He's a, a, a chronic schizophrenic, and he paints in tar, like road tar, mm. that he gets from roads, and he paints in that on wood he finds in sort of skips. And it's incredible, because it's sort of like scratched in, and uh, it, it's amazing. And there's this thing of Jesus being helped down off the cross. Um, admittedly, I was walking around there going, this is fucking mental, and James going, you've got to stop saying that. Because, of course, some of the people are. Mental. <laughs> and there was one bloke doing a sculpture of a skull, right? <laughs> and underneath, <laughs> it was like a little head with his teeth. Underneath, he put a sign that said "real teeth." <laughs> 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 Where did he get the real teeth from? <laughs> All the way back to 1999. When was it? 2000? It was. No, 99. Was, was it? it? No, was it? About that. I didn't Thanks. realize so many people were fans of the Lost Profits. Everyone's been phoning in, emailing in, telling us they were from Cardiff. Yeah. Oh. Welsh band. Now, are you going to tell us what tickets you've got, Carl? What, to, what have we got to give away? Tickets for. Now, we kept the secret. We said, no, tell us on air so it's a big surprise. This is going to be. If it's going to be really rubbish, is it? This is. This, this, whatever these tickets are, right, is a testament to how much they rate us here at XFM, how much they rate our show and care about us. What tickets have we got to give away? A top show featuring Mickey Gervais and Steve Merchant and Pilkington. What tickets have we got to give away? Tickets for K-Fest. <laughs> right, go on. What's that? It's like a, a rock thing that's going on tonight. Right. If you're, you know, if you're into the, that Welsh... Welsh right, well, name some of the bands. Uh, name some of the bands. Uh, Niall. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Right. That's one of the bigger ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Lanigan. Who? Not Lanners. <laughs> <laughs> Is Lanners playing? He's not really. Yeah. Mark Lanigan really playing there? I think so. God, who's that? What? Who's that? <laughs> Who is Lanigan? Is he someone you went to school with? <laughs> Who is Mark Lanigan? Who else is Who is Mark Lanigan? Is he the promoter? <laughs> Who's he? Who's he? Is he head Is this in a pub in Camden? <laughs> <laughs> it got, it got, you got Niall- We're giving away tickets to the K-Fest! Hold on, let's have a look. This is, this is the enemy. Mark, Mark Lanigan, Masters of Reality. Right, okay. Who else? We got Niall, we got Mark Lanigan. Niall? Who else? I can't pronounce this one. Oh, let's have a look. That's good. Bethlehem or something? Bethlehem? Behemoth. Behemoth? Behemoth, is it? Let me see. God, no one can oh. read! I expect it from a northerner, but not from a university educated man like you, do Oh, they? yeah! Let me have a look. Where are we now? I can't even find it on the page. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Anyway. Me behemoth. Yeah, behemoth open but proceedings. But I just thought something. We're not really giving those away, are we? Surely we're asking <laughs> some sort of financial reward for them. <laughs> right, okay, right. Um, is there a competition well, or something? Let's just like? South Carolina Death Metalers, Niall. Okay, alright, okay. Uh, yeah, no, okay, we've, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got a pair of tickets to give away? Yeah. Okay, um, uh, if you want to go to, um, K-Fest, it's the Mean Fiddler, uh, Charing Cross Road, and that's, um, tonight, is it? Mm -hmm. the tickets would be 7.50, but we're giving away for free. Um... Why don't we say we're giving away for a fiver? No. That's still a uh, saving. But I'll tell you what, can, um, if you can call in, what's the number? 
Oh. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three. Yeah, and in fact, the, the question is because because they're quite sought after. There's big names here, like Niall and uh, and um, that uh, what's his name? Lanigan. Lanigan's on. Um, the question is, who wants to go? Yeah. So if you can call in and answer that question, who wants to go to that? Then you could be one of the lucky winners. <laughs> right after this, some great chat and music. <laughs> could you also explain who Mark Lanigan is? <laughs> De La Soul, watch out. Well, we're wrong. The lines went mental. To it's get amazing, isn't it? So that they, they, and they knew all about them, where they were from, what they were like, and uh, the tickets. Death metal's just something that's like, it's obviously passed me by, but it's obviously huge. It is huge. It's sort of huge without being sort of in the public eye. Yeah. Famous, I think it's probably the the only real alternative out there now, yeah, isn't it? Because yeah. everything else is sort of mainstream. There's no real alternative music. Even, even hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Well, Slipknot kind of have snuck in, haven't they? Because they yeah, didn't, they went to number one or something. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. It still gets people saying, you're no son of mine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you're probably not. You're probably a daughter or something. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. You can't, I can't like, really so tell. People who phone up about the, the, the heavy metal, though, they always sound such nice people. Yeah. The women always sound attractive. You know if you meet them, though, they're like eight foot tall. I don't know we, we've actually, so we suddenly sound like two old ladies on a bus. <laughs> and you know what? I spoke to one of them rappers and he was as nice as pie. <laughs> Helped with the shopping and everything. I thought he was gonna kill me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am I am 27 years old now, Rick. 28, <laughs> yeah. according to Carl. <laughs> yeah. Talking on my birthday, you know, we, we did a, we, it was my birthday a couple of weeks back. Yeah. And I, we were talking about my, the stuff that my dad had given me, his presents yeah. in the past. And anyway, my sister told me that he'd, he'd listened to some of it on the car driving up and he was quite upset and he had mentioned it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but it was all, it was all affection. It was done it? with affection, but it was like, we were slagging off his, his gifts, which were awful. I know. Yeah. He's probably listening again. Well, possibly. That on, happened on, to me on, once. On, oh, I remember, um, telling a story on uh, on xfm and i'll tell you the story okay you, you, you've heard it but i'll tell you the um well it was i used to live um in uh just a little one room sort of bed set um with my girlfriend sort of in the it was sort of late 80s as well and uh it was it was just awful it was one room and we had a bed and it's sort of like um uh, the kitchen was the bedroom, so I bet oh, it literally. The like, kitchen was the bedroom. Yeah, it was right. the bed in there, and then like a like a. It was just one room we had. That's all we could afford. Yeah, Bit and so we had. Room. Yeah, and so um, you know, the, the you're sleeping in bed. Your head was by the fridge, and the the sink was by your feet, and you had to go out and down the stairs to a communal toilet. So I obviously, I'm a man. I could just pop out of bed, on tiptoes. The sink was quite high. And have a little wee in the middle of the night. So put him a clock, wouldn't it? That's fine. Into that's the into the sink, not the into fridge. The sink, into the sink, yeah. yeah. So that that was that was fine. And uh, sometimes I'd just <laughs> hear Jane go, Oh, at least run the tap afterwards <laughs> and I'd go, All right, all right, run the tap right. <laughs> and I just remember once um, go and at least take the dishes out first. Because <laughs> I used to sort of lift, if it was just full of dishes, I used to lift them up and sort of like aim underneath it and then, right, it was, it was, it was quite hygienic. It was, you know, right, but. What do you mean it was quite <laughs> hygienic? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was tired. World is like I, was, I was tired and drunk. And, uh, uh, yeah, and it was, it was just a, oh, it was a horrible place. And we had mice. You've um, you've, you, you urinate quite a lot, don't you? You're quite a pr you have a problem with urination after lot. Well, I worry about getting caught, like on a tube. I have to, oh, I've, oh you know, I, oh, I don't take tubes anymore. Well, I listen case. to my, my dad's advice: is never pass a toilet and not use it because you never exactly. know when you might have to use that, one that again. That is exactly mine. You might yeah, not, you might not yeah. See one for a long Oh, time. but anyway, sorry. What I was going to say was, uh, um, Jane's mum was listening. <laughs> What's the last story? When you yeah. tell that story? And I said, uh, oh, I had Ricky story that sort of story about. Wing in the sink. Is you it? No. <laughs> he makes an awful lot up. <laughs> he brilliant. makes an awful lot up. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's what we have to say. No, I was joking. You know, I, did, I didn't mean it. So, uh, you know, I think I got away with it. Uh, although she, her mum did watch me every time I went out to the kitchen when I was, <laughs> yeah. when I was at her house. You're like, yeah, just go yeah. through. Right, Do you want to call me for sandwich? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If so, just I'll have it toilet's off the newspaper. Over there, Ricky. <laughs> yeah. I know. The toilet's over there. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oasis. Don't look back in anger. A classic there, absolutely. From the from the the height of Britpop. My oh God, it's mad to think it's a classic now. And I was I there know. at the beginning. I know, I can't believe it. By the way, urinating isn't bad. It's a good thing. It's getting, you know. No, obviously it's, it's good getting, getting, getting the, the urine. Urine. It's, 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 I'm not saying the urination's a bad thing. I wasn't no. damning the fact that you needed to urinate. It was yeah. the fact you were doing it in the sink with dishes. You probably exactly. Yeah. exactly. But you know, see, the thing is, in um, you know, there are there are some societies where if you urinate on something, you sort of own that that thing. What society is that? Cats. For example, cats. Hello. So I mean, you know, cats are, you know, enigmatic creatures, aren't they? Mysterious yeah. creatures. I mean, so if I, you know, I, I sometimes I, I mean, I own a lot of things through that. 
Right. Same <laughs> telephone boxes. Yeah. You know, yeah. lot, lots of fences. My shoes. Your shoes once, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when yeah. I was chasing you around Robin's <laughs> shoes once. Yeah. You'd be alright around, um, Jellyfish. Cos, apparently... <laughs> is this a band that's playing tonight? It is a band, isn't it, actually? It was, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, if you get stung by a jellyfish... Yeah. Uh, we stops it hurting. <laughs> is that true? Mm. It's just for anyone listening. I mean, I, it's probably best to check that maybe on the internet or, or phone a doctor before you try that. I mean, because Carl, although Carl has got yeah. a lot of useful information, it's not he's not a medically trained man. Yeah, because because uh, I got in trouble once coming out of the sea at Bognor, running around people going, "Wee on me, please." Yeah, please wee on me. Just running around. Well, got I'm laughing, but yeah. yeah. But uh, have you ever wet the bed? I honestly haven't. I don't. Ever. I've never never wet the bed. Never wet the bed. Never. Okay, let's play a record then. Oh, we did what? a bit of, uh... Are you, you've wet the bed, have you? Wow, not, not as, not, Go not on. as such. Well, you may as well tell us. Um, well, yes then. <laughs> well, is there a story attached? Uh, well, I remember once, right? <laughs> oh, God. Well, was this when you were a child? <laughs> sort of. How old? 26. Okay. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's another story involving... Anyway, right, once. Just one that sink, can Oh, we? God. Come on, Gervais. Well, once... I went to, uh, stay, um, went down to, to Brighton, to, with, um, Jane to, for a party, her sister's party, and, uh, we were staying at her parents' house, her parents were away, and, uh, first of all, I got too drunk. I don't, right. I didn't, I, hadn't, I don't think I'd known her very long, might have been. And, uh, I remember... It was a fancy dress party, and I didn't go to fancy dress. But I remember laying on the floor trying to trip people over because I was so drunk. <laughs> that's one thing that's hilarious if you're drunk. Yeah, imagine Jane going, "Oh, that's my boyfriend. I'm mm. so proud mm. to all her family." And then, and then uh, we got a cab. I remember we got a cab journey home. True, but I thought I didn't remember. And apparently the cab driver going, "Is he all right?" Because I was going, <laughs> "I'd be sick. I'd be sick." Jane, she's going, yeah, he's fine. Then I laid on the bathroom floor, and Jane timed it. It was 45 minutes me singing <laughs> "Right by Your Side" by the Arrhythmics. <laughs> And then I went to bed, and <laughs> apparently, I got up in, in the middle of the night, walked round the bed, and just thought the bed was a toilet. And Jane said, Ricky! I went, what? She went, you're pissing on me. I went, well, you don't wait, need to wake me up. <laughs> and then just got back to bed. You urinated on the bed. All right, let's, yeah. Bit of hip-hop. Oh, man, alive. Hip-hop hooray! <laughs> hip-hop hooray! Oh, it's the opportunity where Ricky get, uh, Steve gets to play one of his uh, classic hip-hop tracks, something maybe you've not heard before, Rick. Can I just say, I actually slightly regret telling a story about me weeing. Yeah, well, it's, it doesn't stop there. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure you've told me more in the past. All right, just go on with the <laughs> hip-hop track. Um, <laughs> this is from, I need to just introduce it briefly, it's from a, an artist called Mad Skills, who on this record claims that he has written loads of other people's songs, which I think is true. Uh, the only thing I would say is that the names of the artists he's supposedly written for have been bleeped out, but of course, because it's also a radio-friendly version, all the swearing's been bleeped out as well, so there's a lot of bleeping, but if you can piece it together from it, it, it will actually be quite a good song. Go on. I'm gonna actually- No, don't you, I, don't- you don't own it by urinating on yeah, it! Yeah, I am. No, you- Yeah. Put it away. Put, <laughs> oh. Just a little dribble, that is mine now. That cost me over five quid. <laughs> Feeder, come back around on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I'm with him as well, Steve Merchant. I was thinking of dropping that. What? Thinking of dropping that, just going, because it's just too, that's all that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton too. I mean, get to the music, so it's, hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, this is XFM. Sure. Here's Radiohead. Yeah. Some of them come out, that was Radio and XFM, I'm Ricky Gervais. Tony Blair, what's he all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of- Snap, uh, yeah. Fast, because I quite, on a serious note, and you've always been saying it, um, I listened to an old show, because when Carl was compiling those things, I listened to an old show, and I listened to me, and- I'm- I'm really concentrating now, because I sounded like the most inarticulate, brain-damaged old drunk <laughs> I have ever heard given a show. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked. Not finishing sentences, leaving out words, slurring, just doing noises yeah. that you understand because you know me. Yeah. So I'm really gonna make an effort for the listener. Yeah. It's not gonna happen, is it? You're gonna but, give up after about but three But I thought records. you were joking. And I thought it was like, mm -hmm. oh, he's t taking the- there? Did it yeah. then, you see? Again, I don't quite know what that sentence meant. No, but- well, of course, I've got also your body language and your facial yeah. gestures, but obviously the listeners have got nothing else. They've just got the voice. Yeah. They've just got the voice for it. That's all they've got. That's all they can rely on. Yeah. And, uh, and when Carl Pilkinson is the man holding the show together... When he's the that's most quite damning. articulate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, how did I come across? You came across as lovely. I mean, I, I did an interview yesterday, right, and I was trying to describe you to this journalist, and I was going, 
it's like a cat can talk. Because the things you say, I just want to know what your world is. You know when a cat comes in, you go, where have you been? And it looks as you're like, you know, you can, it can nearly understand you. And you're like, oh, I wonder, I'd love to know what that cat thinks. And with you, it's almost like we've got one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that? No, you can also lick your own no. testicles, I think, have you? <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Should we play the doves? Doves. Caught by the river on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. <laughs> Were you asked to appear on Celebrity Fat Club? No, I, I uh, no, was there I wasn't. any? Was that, was that? Seriously, did an invite come No, in? I, don't, I don't think they did. I, I, I knew about it and I was waiting for the call and I was yeah. going to be insulted, but it didn't come. It didn't come. It didn't How happen. much are you looking forward to it? I'm quite excited about it. <laughs> I, I, I really am. am excited to it, yeah. I yeah, don't know if very... people know. Are you aware of this, Carl? This is this Celebrity Fat Club. It's a new, uh, one of those reality shows. It's ten celebrities, I think. They're all overweight uh, and they've got to lose weight over the course of the series. And they're, um, and they're celebrities. And they're celebrities. That's why I called it that. Celebrity Fat Club. Sorry yeah. for the gut. Well, I'm very excited because one of them is, you know, that guy who was in Pop Idol but didn't win in the end, that really big fat guy, Rick, Rick. Waller, Fats Waller, as I call him. And, uh, I was reading about him on the, in the, uh, on the web earlier. Um, it says, uh, he's been told to lose 17 stone because they reckon he might be dead by the age of 40 if he doesn't lose weight. Seriously. How old is he now? I don't know how old he is. He's only in his 20s, isn't he? Well, that's still a good but 20 it says, years it says of cakey. It, it says, uh, he was shocked to find he weighed 31 stone when he stepped on the scales at the start of the show. 31 stone? 31 stone. But I love that's the fact- That's really big. I like the fact it says he was shocked to find he weighed it. Yeah. I had no inclination. I'd got- I'd got- I'd got- I kept my eye off the ball. <laughs> <didn't I? laughs> exactly. That must be all those breakfasts. I haven't stood on the scales for years and I didn't know how much I weighed, Rick told the son. 31 stone, right, that is having- that is- that is having a man on your back and carrying a man in your arm. Just walk, yeah. basically two men are going everywhere. It is obscene. Because he looks- have you seen him? He looks like one of those people who's wearing one of those inflatable sumo outfits. Yeah. He's just a little head and like a sort of eye. We're not- we're not having a go at, um, fat people. I'm having a go at him, really. No, because it might be glandular. It's not, it's breed. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what? I- this is true. I- when I did- I did that Room 101, and I did one they cut out completely. I don't think I'd cut it out on taste. I think it was just too long. Um, and I- and one of the ones I put in was fat people who say it's glandular, right? And they'd done the research, and two percent of obese people can claim it's glandular. The rest, they just eat too yeah. much. But right. the thing about Waller is he was going on there, gone on the telly, going, it's good, what a wonderful role model I am for people who don't conform to the usual pop star sort of stereotype. No, you're not a role model for anyone. You are a fat pig of a man. I'm sorry, right, but you are, no, right. Rick, but be honest with you, it is obscene. It's not his weight that d disturbs me more, it's his gums. Well. Are, oh, they've been through a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't they? <laughs> they have been The weight lot. does concern me slightly. Did you- do you remember when he did his version of I Will Always Love You? Yeah, but the-, the I thought he was just singing about it like a buffet or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Outside the chip shop. <laughs> yeah. Go away, Mr. Waller. Yeah. Do do people... no, just- just let me watch the uh, kebab rotate <laughs> once more. No! Can I lick the fat off the floor? No! <laughs> you can't. I just imagine those people who run all-you-can-eat buffets, when they hear him coming, they shut yeah. the door. We it's close. like a, it's one of those 1920s speakeasy. The front changes into like a laundrette. <laughs> Just move on, fats. It's not. <laughs> I can smell chip fat. No, 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 no. Move but, on. On you but, go. But um, I mean, we're not Olympic fat Brits. They are some fat. Brits. A thirty-one stone is sort of you know quite big. But the American, that one. Did you see that one? Seriously, we talked about it before. That one on Jerry Springer, and he was seventy-five stone. Did you see seventy-five him? stone? It was in his bed. Honestly, it looked like a. It looked like a. Um, uh, I don't know, sort of molten lava in yeah. his bed. And it was re it was actually sad, and I was really sad, because he was, you know, he was in tears and he was going, this is it, I'm gonna do it. And Jerry Springer took the wall down and they got him, that to get him in a special ambulance and everything. But my point is this, right? When he got to, say, 50 stones, didn't he go, that's a lot, innit? I gotta be careful. For a human. Exactly. You know, for, for <laughs> someone yeah. that lives on land. Yeah. That yeah, is, exactly. that is, I'll tell you, what the, I mean, the fact is, they have to have special weighing equipment, so wasn't that a clue? That must have been. The fact they had to get in someone from next door to lift up a bit to tell him yeah. how much he weighed. Yeah, the fact that he featured on the Ordnance Survey map <laughs> should have been a clue <laughs> that We've given it's you your own mail. Yeah, you are, yeah. Stop eating. eating. Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Always amazing to hear that, isn't it, Rick? It's Sugar. fantastic. It's such I can't a change great your mind. tune. I was listening to Copper Blue, the album from which yeah. I was taken again. It's just fantastic. Old it really mouldy. Was. Old mouldy. Mouldy old dough, yeah. as I call oh, him. exactly. Bob. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- he's, I, he's he, he turns a, my stomach. I know, but don't- Because he's arrogant that. as well, though. Exactly. I That's don't, the problem. Don't, don't explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit arrogant. It's his whole thing that you- it's the whole package, so to speak, that you don't like. Well, there's another thing in this quote, because, uh, he's- It's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he's- he tried apparently-
apparently to lose some weight, and, uh, it says, he said, the first month I lost 11 pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on 9 pounds. I had a slip up. Mm. I can't say when, why or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't believe it just sneaked that, up on that him. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just uh, sneaked, sneaked up on him. me, yeah. I know, I know, it that. was the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old cakes as before. It was exactly the same Sleep, sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was the family oh size KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that, that uh, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty-something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah. That's not. You know, and when I was 20. twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah. I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah. Just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, <laughs> eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there, <laughs> and you discovered. No, but someone sent me. Um, Sophie here sent me something, and she said, "I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this." And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing, and it's it's the brand name is Gervais. Oh God, from, that is. Have from, you been? They've named a cheese after I think you. It, I think it's a big French company, and this is from the Czech Republic. It's all over Europe, and so it that would be a dream come true, it, wouldn't it? If they named a cheese after no, you. No, I think it's. I think it's uh, probably you know ancestors, and so I've cheeses in my blood. Sure, quite. It literally, literally is. Yeah. yeah. It, Another it, heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, 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 it comes out of pores like those play doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jane, bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't fried. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but I, you, I, Yeah, I, but I you're not big. I mean, one of the other contestants on that, on the, uh, Fat Club, Celebrity oh, Fat is, Club, is, uh, another one is Jono. Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now, Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono, he's oh. that guy who does, um, he used to be on TV and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so trivial. And he's a really nice bloke, Jono, but- It's funny, cos he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is, is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. Oh, <laughs> I love Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I no, love you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John yeah. a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards dues. Yeah. Um, like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we, <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or suits yeah. and ties. Not Jono. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts, Hawaiian knee length Bermuda shirt. shorts with just these little. But I saw him again another feet. time and he had shorts on at yeah. a similar event. And I've seen him since in the street and he's all. I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that. Whether he's just. His no, legs are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable and, uh. You know, why do you, I mean, to be quite honest, well, why, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So, uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up to those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course. Flip flops. You know, but do you but think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half was a tuxedo with the tie and And then the shorts for And comfort. the shorts underneath and he would just have to come in to kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant. Or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. You know, you are wearing trousers, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In yeah, you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 of course I'm wearing trousers. Why <laughs> of course I'm wearing trousers. And they just thought, oh, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know, The next zone it. is, I've heard he's going in a grass skirt and a mm. garland around his, and he's yeah. going gonna to come in limboing. But you you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> just for ease. Yeah. I'm in agony now, and, uh Are you in agony right now as we speak? Yeah. Certain. Uh, but it does make you think now, do you know what I mean? Like, life and everything. I mean, it's weird how it's all happened in the last month from seeing that bee sort of die. No, no, <laughs> well, not really. no, you, no, 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 no. This is not a near-death experience. It is you a had a routine bit. operation to remove kidney stones because you don't drink enough water. No, I know, but... This is not a shark attack. Yeah, but it's all, it's all, uh, life-threatening, otherwise you wouldn't have to fill out forms, would you, saying, if everything goes wrong. Suzanne can have the house or whatever. They keep taking your heartbeats and stuff. Mm. And your blood pressure. I don't like knowing about that. I just like, leave it. It's happening. Don't be messing with it. Stop measuring it. <laughs> Stop measuring it! No, do you know what I mean? That's the same with a knob. It's, it's that thing of, <laughs> of like, they put that thing That's on. what the anaesthetist was doing when you were under, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was comparing the diagram to the actual thing. Oh, God. What is the closest thing... T ...sort of living? That's nothing. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's like the closest, like, do you know at some point something's gone from nothing to something? Hasn't it? No, I don't, no, I don't understand what you mean. Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> 
say, <laughs> say like when you look at a, a stick insect, right? You go right. There's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 no. It's not. There's no. There's no. There's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But the, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. Difference. They just they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> what I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like they they, they sort of look like a leaf? Yeah, there are insects that that that, that have evolved to look like a leaf. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No! What? At no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. No! <laughs> <laughs> At no point did a beetle shag a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it... it that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but It what, looks like a leaf. But then how does it meet... How does it have relationships? It will be going around sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> No, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's not like they, uh, it, 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 you know, um, a stick insect will be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. This club's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What, what are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great slim figure. No. No, it's actually a real stick. Well, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, okay, you've moved on from In insects. the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis, where he got like a, a half a million pounds grant from a university, and I said, well, Pilkington seems to, he's done ants and he's done bees. Um, he's, he's followed ants. <laughs> Apparently they're not doing anything, some of them are lazy. Um, he, we are granting him another, uh, half a million pounds. Um, he's been working on it for a year. <laughs> um, please welcome Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Carl, what have you found? Well, even though pigeons have wings, they walk a lot. Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used uh, as as plasma, but yeah. I have had that verified because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. Uh, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort but, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why why aren't you just being open minded enough to go well? Uh, well no, 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 no. But that's not, not being open minded. Open minded, open -minded isn't uh, believing everything you hear. Do you don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it, a lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form, but a according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? But we, but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. He was above a zoo. There would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite... Yeah, yeah quite but big, exactly, really. but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. Le, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. There's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where he got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, no, the uh, lions at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in a, in a bad situation. Don't talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God. You know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right. So there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? they what do you mean? On another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock them out with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big. big. It's big. It's a big boat. Uh, how long... What was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It's a couple of weeks. Yeah. Two, two of every species, Carl. 
How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big, because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, they're next there, two yeah. elephants, and it just, and, and it's just like, it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on, but when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you, are you saying that you wouldn't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was swimming recently. I do a lot of swimming. And I've never quite mastered my front crawl. Just never quite nailed the breathing because it's quite tricky, isn't it? You know, you, well, yeah. you got to breathe at the right moment. And um, so I'm in the swimming pool in the local gym, and there's a guy bombing up and down, really doing a great forward stroke. So I uh, waited till he came up, and sort of went, uh, <laughs> "Excuse me, mate. Um, <clears throat> I was just watching you when you were doing your front crawl. I was really impressed. Could you just watch me?" When I do mine, and tell me if I'm going wrong. Why would you go to a man? I know, and that was what I. Th that was the problem. Is only as I was saying it did I realise what it sounded like. I've just been watching you yeah. swimming up and down. I was really and, impressed. And you're both in speedos. <laughs> both in speedos. You know, I'm I'm got the goggles on, um, prescription goggles, so I can see when I'm when I'm swimming. But why do you need them? There's nothing in a pool to look at. It's not like you're scuba diving. There's well, nothing. Hold it's on. Just... Clearly, there is someone to look at in a pool. Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't checking. Well, I was checking him out, but I was checking him out for for swimming tips. And he just mm. looked at me when I asked him, "Can you just watch me and offer me any tips?" <laughs> and he Steve, just looked at me like I was just that's, mental. That is a, such a strange thing to say. Can you just watch? Me? I don't know how you had the nerve to do that. Well, I d it was innocently motivated. Well, I know it's innocent, but what a strange thing to go up to someone. And but what with the civilization we're living in, where we can't just ask our fellow man to help us out with our forward crawl? But we're in a society where we can't. But you know that it's a strange thing to say. But, I, but sometimes it's nice to just think, no. Do you know what? I'm not going to fall into the trap of I thinking agree. he's immediately going to think I'm gay or but that I'm chatting him up. I'm just going to ask him to do me a favour. There's nothing wrong with that. What if he said, yeah, it's just good, yeah. Um, do you mind coming and help me with um, my plastering? But it's not the same. He's in the swimming pool. He's yeah. there in the pool. He's swimming up and down. He's, you know, yeah. it's not no skin off his nose to just offer a bit of kindly advice. If your car's broken down in the in the middle of nowhere and someone drives by, you know, it's a generous thing to do. Just stop and maybe look under the bonnet and help them out. I agree, but I don't see how it's any different. And in the end, he did, and all he asked was that I wake him off. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, as you're aware, you've obviously got many celebrity fans, and you've also got a new fan, Warwick Davis, who is the short actor that many people will see in films like uh, Return of the Jedi, he also is in Harry Potter, he's three foot six, and Ricky and I worked with him recently. And uh, far from asking us about the uh, many celebrity names that we've worked with, the only person he was interested in talking about, of course, Mr. K. Pilkington. He wanted to meet you, Carl. Yeah. Well, is he, is he alright to get on with? Was, why wouldn't he be? Um, just because sometimes when people aren't normal, it's what just... It? Sorry? No, I just mean when, when someone, like, I've met a few little people in my time. The one that I, I, I met, I met a little fellow once, and he was all right. He got drunk really quick. Uh, but he was all right, but it took me by surprise. Only because, like, like I've said about when I met Steve for the first time, it's only that same thing. And then if I lived with the little fellow, I'm sure we'd get on a storm. You know, when you met There's Steve, a TV but... show waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Things wear off. That's that's like the world, isn't it? And it's the same with the little fella you're talking about. First time I see him, it, I'd, I'd be a little bit like, oh, what do you say? Whereas once you get to know him, I'm sure he'd, he'd be a lovely little fella. <laughs> I don't know where to start, Steve. Gorillas, Rock the House on XFM 104.9, 2 o'clock, halfway through already. Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, telling really quite embarrassing things that I wish yes. I hadn't know. It makes me look like some sort of mad old you, urinator. No, you just can't handle your drink. Uh, <laughs> you can't handle your drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. I can. <laughs> I, just, I just get rid of it in the usual way of excretion via the kidneys, down the urethra, out the end. Down the sink. <laughs> sometimes a sink, sometimes a toilet, Carl. <laughs> sometimes a bed. Yes. <laughs> or your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just, oh, embarrassing things. Um, I remember once, right, um, I was, I used to love nature when I was about like, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I remember, um, going out, um, 
with, uh, my sister and my brother and, uh, their, um, girlfriend and boyfriend, like, to become their husband and wife. Um, and <laughs> Thanks I, for that. Yeah, you know, just, uh, just keeping yeah. continuity there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, I used to get shells and things around the beach and I used to get anything. I love nature. And I've, once I found, um, I love reptiles as well and I found this perfect, um, uh, snake skin. A, a, a grass snake or another, and it was I, I, I absolutely lo I couldn't believe my luck, and I was going look, look, and they were going okay, put it down because I th and I, I realised they were a little bit scared of it. They're going put it down, it's dirty, and of course I torture them a little bit, and then uh, uh, I thought it was hilarious, and they made me leave it there, and I told told mum and everything, and then much later when I had some friends when I was about fourteen or fifteen, I was telling this story to embarrass my sister, and uh, uh, I was going yeah, and she was scared of it, and she went well, it was a used Johnny. She'd waited that long to embarrass me in front of my oh friends. God. I'd been running round with a used Jurex, thinking that this was great because they were scared of snakes, and they were oh. going, put it down, it's dirty. No, be careful of the poison. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's that. horrible. It is horrible, isn't it? Have I gone too far again? How could you not realise it was made of rubber, for goodness sake? Well, what? you obviously didn't know anything about nature. Uh, well, oh, I used to love nature, me. Yeah, yeah. the difference yeah. between some skin <laughs> yeah. and then that, that, this rubber is the, Johnny. Now, be careful of the Johnny snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their little poppy head and their oh, yeah. poison that, oh dear. I always remember there was this kid who lived near me once and this, this bird got run over and he rushed it, he said, I can save it, and he kissed it. Because he thought he could <laughs> give it the key. <laughs> He thought he could well, give it a kiss of life. I thought you meant it was a girl. No, no, no. no. <laughs> got and he kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, what, what? He, he, he thought he could give it the kiss of life, but he didn't <laughs> know what the kiss of life was. He just thought you could kiss something and that would bring it back to life. <laughs> I think it was an excuse. I think to he was thinking, I can't bird. wait for a bird to get run over, then I can yeah. pretend to be giving it a kiss of life, but really I'm giving it a nice little snog on the feet. I remember he kissed it like that and let, threw it up <laughs> like it would fly, like it would fly away and it just went <laughs> oh, onto no. the floor. Oh, was it dead or? Yeah, it was, oh, it was blood everywhere. It was horrible. Oh, no. Yeah. And that, what is he doing now? Uh, he presents uh, Animal Hospital. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know what he's doing. But, uh, he's the worst vet in the world. Yeah. struck off. Oh, sleep with one of his patients. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. Oh, bless him. Oh, Just, no. oh, no. I killed a fish once. Go on. Um, well, I made a little bow and arrow. I was about, um, eight or nine, and I made a, a bow and arrow. And, you know, you, do, you never think, uh, I, we had a pond, and there was a huge fish in it about, um, you know, at eight inches long, a huge big sort of like golden orf or something, or a carp or something. And, um, I was sort of playing, and I aimed, and I shot it, and it went straight through it and floated to the top, and I thought, oh my god. God. You pierced a fish with a, with an arrow. That's an amazing yeah. shot. Well, it was luck. It was pure luck. And you never Native American. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know those little things outside, you know, in the front garden by the front gate, a little, um, sort of four inches by four inches bit of metal, you lift it up and it's sort of like where the drains are if the, you know, the plumbers need to get there or the council or everything like right, that. Right, right. I dropped it down there and I thought, oh my god, what if that's discovered? What if I have to drain? So I ran loads and loads of journeys in and out of my house, right, to the toilet and back, just taking out, um, handfuls of vim and pouring bleach down thinking that I can get rid of this fish before the council dig it up in ten years time and yeah. go, send him to jail. <laughs> yes. Fish yeah. aside. But who do you think, what do you think they would have done? They'd have taken the dead fish, they've gone to each of the doors going, does, is this your fish? <laughs> yeah, but oh, hey, you, you don't think- You recognise either the arrow or the fish. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, yeah, it's his arrow <laughs> straight through it. But, um, you know, you don't think when you're eight that it'd be okay. If I, if I can ride this out till I'm twenty, yeah. the statute of limitations on goldfish murder, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it is about, I can't work it out, twelve yeah. years. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that you're was- a killer. Yeah. Carl, anything embarrassing ever happened to you ever? With what? With animals and stuff. Could stuff. be animals. I like animals, to be honest. So do I, it was a mistake! No, you know, I thought you were f feeling bad about the fish. Yeah. But really, you were more worried about you being locked up. Well, I felt bad. There was, there was, there was both the law and the moral side of fish death. I mean, we kill yeah. fish all the time, just not usually with a bow and arrow in a back garden <laughs> yeah. in Whitley. You know, <laughs> often the supermarket can lend a hand with that. I used to sell mackerel. Did ya? Yeah, I had a pet magpie. Did ya? Called Maggie. Oh, you pet magpie, you mean you captured it and didn't let it go away? Yeah. Can't have a pet magpie. But then it, but then it got really vicious, I mean- Well, it, was quite quite it would let me go, what did you keep it, in a rabbit hutch? No, it flew around but it used to just like come to me all the time, but then it started pecking me head and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a pet magpie, that's a bird in the garden. No, no, but I could actually, it, it, I could hold it and stuff, it wasn't scared of me and it knew it was me, it used to come down from like the, the top- It of hated the... you, that's why it wanted to peck you. is uh, that- Oh. And the other thing, um, I always remember being younger and like walking, walking through the woods to school with my mum and like, I was chasing a butterfly <laughs> and she said, she said, um, she said, oh, don't do that Carl. And I said, why? She said, cause they only live a day 
I said, oh, alright, I'll get a dead one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> that's great, that's quick thinking, yeah. isn't it? Oh. oh, that's sweet. Let's play some. Oh. Wu Tang Clan and Gravel Pit. We love that, don't we? I love it, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. Fantastic track. Um, we're talking about embarrassing stories and stuff, and I don't know if I've told this on this radio before. Have I told you, Carl? I'm not sure. But this was when I was working at the BBC. This is not even long ago, and I'd moved to London, and I was fairly new in London. And I was working at the BBC, and I had this BBC hire car, and I've never told it. If there's anyone listening who works for the BBC, I don't know if I can still get in trouble for it. But, uh, this BBC hire car, and it was like, I'd been ferrying kind of actors and people and production people around all day in this car. And I was driving back, it was quite late, it was about sort of seven or eight, and I was driving back, and I pulled in to get some petrol, to fill up the car every day. And I went into this garage to fill up some petrol, and I was there. And these blokes, two blokes came in in a white van, right, they pulled into the, in the forecourt and I was filling up the car, and they went, E, do you want to buy a couple of speakers? And I said, yes I do. Yeah. Because I, the, tell you the reason, it was like I was so flattered that they thought I'd be the kind of bloke who would A, need some kind of classy speakers, and yeah. B, would like to buy them on the sly, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I thought, yeah, they like the- They've seen me, they they've seen I look a bit of a hustler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a street sort of guy, you can yeah. see by the way I use my walk. Exactly. Yeah. So they, so I, I couldn't believe my luck, so uh, they drove behind the garage, the little sort of garage bit at the back, and I went round there, I sort of casually went round there, sort of locked the car, went round there. Uh, <laughs> they went, yeah, they opened the back, he had two speakers in there. I, I said, are you sure these aren't knocked off, mate? He went, no, no. We work for Dixon's, this is a story you spun me, we work for Dixon's, right, and we're delivery men, and if we make a delivery and the person's not there to sign for the goods, then we have to bring them back to the warehouse, but if we can sell them on the way back, yeah. then that's really good that for Dixon's. That, yeah, Dixon's must love that. And instead of thinking, <laughs> are you sure some kind of troubleshooter didn't, I mean, did someone go into Dixon's and go, yeah, you're not, you're not getting in the uh, garage for court Harvey Jones. Exactly. Get a couple of lads in a white van. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so I sort of bought this story, and, and I was a little bit dubious, and I went, right, let me hear them then. And he wired them up to the car stereo, and boom, 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 they're playing. So it was some groovy hip-hop, I was thinking, great, these guys know what I'm into. Yeah. And I, he's giving me the talk and stuff, and, um, I said, I'm a bit worried these are, these are knocked off. He went, no, listen, I, we got a bloke at Dixon's who can confirm this is fine, right? Phone him up, use my mobile, right, and quote this reference number, right? So I phone out, they go, dee -dee 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 -dee, and I goes, yeah, I go, hi, some guy's here in a garage forecourt trying to sell me some speakers. Just wanted to check, he went, it's fine. I went, should I, should I just read the reference number or whatever he went if you want? And X14, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. You right. know that was, don't you? That was actually <laughs> Mr. Dixon himself. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking, well, you know, they sound great. Yeah. They're giving me to a, for a knockdown price. I say they were like 400 quid, they were like 200 quid or something. It was a good bargain. I was in the market for some speakers as well. Yeah. So, uh, while they were loading it's them in- It's all kosher, I phoned Dixon. <laughs> exactly, I yeah, phoned yeah, Dixon's, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so while they're loading them in the back of the- BBC hire car, right? I'm in there paying for the petrol, right? And the guy serving goes, e. Oh, you're right. He goes, what were you doing around the back with those blokes? Right? Because obviously there's security cameras filming this whole transaction, right? And, and he goes, what are you doing around the back? And I went, brilliantly, I went, there's some old mates. Some of my mates were just having a chat and that. He went, oh, right, okay. Like, give me obviously the evil eye. So I went out the back. So I'm in the car now and I'm driving with one of the blokes who's in the van with me because I didn't have the money on me. So I had to go to the cash point <laughs> to get the cash, right? So I'm driving with him and the other guy's dr like following me in the van and he was like a northerner like you and he's giving it all the, all right, yeah, you know. I tell my girlfriend's a DJ. She's got some of these speakers. They're fantastic. Da -da -da, and he's giving me this. And then my mind starts working. Now that I've got a bit of time to think, I'm thinking, wait a minute. This all sounds a bit dodgy. Yeah. It dawned on me, Rick. You, you know, fool, are you? Streetwise. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Streetwise, Steve. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, I was thinking, how am I going to get them home? I've got to drop the car off at the BBC. How am I yeah. going to get these huge speakers back to where I live? And how can I pay for them? Because I've just spent a hundred pounds on Find the Lady. <laughs> exactly. With a couple of blokes in the <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> square. Yeah. It seemed like a fair game. <laughs> Some so, of his so friends I, were winning. But So I explained to him, I said, how I can't get them back to like Brixton where I was living at the time. He went, don't worry, give us an extra twenty quid, we'll take them home for you. Oh, that's good, <laughs> delivery. Yeah, no, they, do, they, yeah, they do a whole service, you see. <laughs> and there's also a backup guarantee. Did they have the guarantee, the three month guarantee? <laughs> they didn't. No. But okay. so then, so, you see, I said, I'm not sure about that. He went, well, why don't you put them in a cab, send them back, and your housemates can collect it. I was like, oh, no, there'd be no one in. And I was getting, and I was beginning to sort of get a bit conscious of like, maybe this was a bit of a scam after all. So I pulled into like a little side road, and I said, I'm not sure I'm into this now, actually. He went, what are you talking about? It's 200 quid for Paris Because it's a bargain. You never get a bargain like this, mate. I'm going, not too sure, actually. I don't think I want them. He went, 150 quid, 150 quid, mate. 150 quid. I went, no. He said, 100 quid. 100 quid now to you. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like the kind of work that Dixon's would be doing. Dixon's don't do that <laughs> when I go in. This is it. Yeah. Never, just, Dixon's never negotiate in that way. When, when I go there, I look around and I leave, they go, where are you going? <laughs> exactly. I go, I'm just, we'll have anything then. Have anything for a So quid. I stopped the car and the white van pulled up behind me with his mates in. Sure. And, uh, 
And I said, can you get them out? I'm not interested. And he went, oh, 100, 100 quid, mate. Oh, you, you, and he was just going, you toss her. You, you obviously want some speakers. Duh, duh, and he was having a go at me. So I was carrying the speakers out and putting them back in the white van. And he was just shouting at me. He was going, 70 quid, 70 quid. I said, 70 quid from 200? This is ludicrous. You realise that wasn't Dixon's policy <laughs> exactly. then. Exactly. They don't usually shout moment. you toss her as you leave the, <laughs> as you <laughs> leave the shop and walk down Camden High Street. They're exactly. not usually shouting <laughs> you toss her. You should have sought the offer of, like, the monthly payments over on <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so I, eventually I put them in there and I sort of knocked the deal on the head and I got back in my car and, uh, they got, they were in theirs and I could just looked in the rearview mirror and they were punching the dashboard, like, with aggression and venom, like, we let that deal slip through our fingers. And I've never been so terrified in my life. I just sat there and I was just thinking, oh my god, all I was thinking now is what if I go back to the BBC and they go, we've had a call from the police, the man at the garage, he saw yeah. you doing a dodgy deal. I love it. Yeah. Well, oh, what so you do is, what you do is, you put the hire car in a drain in your front garden <laughs> and then go in and out of the toilet just pouring bleach <laughs> down or Ajax and they never know. But she, it's not, it, it wasn't her who annoys me, it's that doctor in it, that woman, she does me head in. Yeah. I can't be doing with her the way, uh... Well, she, you know she's not actually officially a doctor, is no, she? No, and her bedside manner's not very good either. No, It's I like the, the fear tactic that uh, I think you want a little bit and, of... And what does she look like? I mean, she doesn't look like the sort of peak of health. She's no, got that weird sort of witch-like crone well, face. Well, can't I be know. good for you hanging about all that poo all the time. She's always delving into that every day. <laughs> I used yeah. to be told, you know, n don't mess about with dog poo because it can make you go blind. Yeah. It's constantly at it. Yeah, I know, yeah. You're reaching through it. And it annoys me the way it's like, you know, well, let's have a look at your poo. Let's see if you're eating the wrong types of food. The person's about 33 stone. Yeah. It's obvious. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't need to look at that. It just whined. And, and I'll tell you the thing that, I mean, I'd never have it done anyway, right? But the, uh, the colonic thing. Did Michelle have that? I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. And the show on it, she sat there, sort of lying down. She's like, oh. But I don't understand why people have that done anyway, unless you unless you are sort of bunged up. Yeah, or you've got a cactus up there. Or, <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is like the way, um, like it's a, a clear tube. Why why do you need to? You know what I mean, why do you need to see what's whizzing past? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's some sort of generation game. <laughs> Yeah. You've got to remember, you just remember everything, then you win a prize. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you just look at it in the bucket after and go, right, yeah. Well, why look at it at all? Why do you need to look at it? Well, it's... Well, of interest, isn't it? See what's... see what's come out. I don't know. So, so, yeah, that's where that went. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I've been looking for, that. Remote control. Uh, how does it work? I don't want to go into graphic detail, but they, they just send water up there, don't no, they? No, caffeine. Or? Caffeine? Yeah, so it's like a big... it's like a gallon of coffee. Wow. It goes up there, and it wants to come out immediately, obviously. And then it... It percolates. But when did that happen? How did someone sort of go, tell you what you want to do? I think it was on first invented on distraction to win a car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do I? I suppose they just they thought there's stuff up there that's not coming out. It's for, you know, they find things up there. Though, isn't it? They, they, they did that thing that they find things up there that they swallowed when they were five and that, don't they? Lego bricks and stuff. Exactly, yeah, marbles. But I mean, meats and things can stay in there if, you know, it gets, it gets caught in a little. You know, a little recess in your in your thirty foot of tubing, and um, it uh, it doesn't come out. Talking of meats, I saw an advert on the way in today. Question to both of you: Who eats pepperoni? I don't know. Have you ever eaten a pepperoni? It's uh, uh, disgusting. I do. I've never seen anyone eating a pepperoni. Buying one, I've uh, never heard anyone say delicious pepperoni earlier. I just, I, I don't associate it. But I know, but with I've, anyone, I've, I've but never seen anyone. When you one. think, what is it? It's just sort of like. Um, uh, curdled, uh, salt, salty. It's sort of like, um, uh, do you want to try a big long blood bogey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't, no. It lasts forever. Oh, oh that's scary, scary then. Yeah. You just keep, keep it. Well, it's like keep, it, keep, it, keep, it, keep it under your couch, it, 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 just as nice in a year's time. <laughs> it does look like something you'd find down the back of the oven when you were cleaning out. One of those Gordon Ramsay documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, because oh. it's, I always associate it's pepperonis and it's the, uh, those nutrition drinks, which are like a, it's like a, it looks like a, a dog food tin. I think it's just called something like nu Nutrition or Nutri drink or something. Oh, yeah. And you always see some empty ones on a brick wall near a council estate. Oh, right. Uh, which I thought, I think the only people who eat them are homeless people. Um, oh, I really? Like, I, I, like, I, I thought you were going to say bodybuilders. No, 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 it's because you buy these, you can see them in, um, in, in regular news agents. It's not a bodybuilder. I don't believe, thing. I don't believe a homeless who's just got a quid because she runs in and, and buys 
uh, an isotonic nutrient. No, it's, drink. Not, it's not isotonic. No, it's it's. A, I think it's basically if you don't want to eat a meal because you're too high on smack, it'll give you as much as you can possibly need oh, just right. to keep you alive until your next. Hit. And tell me, Steve, does the special brew do that? Or am I barking up the wrong tree with that? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Because they seem to be getting a lot of nutrition from special brew. The, the people who make special brew now, they've just, they've just resigned to the fact that it's only homeless people who are drinking it. It's like, well, <laughs> we may as well just market it chiefly at them. What's, what's the advertising? Takes the edge off when you can't <laughs> find smack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, <laughs> you, are you trying to sleep on Tottenham Court Road? <laughs> <laughs> New Order, World, XFM 104.9, with Gervais, Steve Richard, Carl Pilkington, uh, and it's knob news time. We're all very excited. Now, last week's knob news was what, Carl? Do you remember it was a man who grew a knob on his arm? Sure. No, he didn't grow it there, did he? They put it there. Well, I know that, but, yeah. He's popped it on his arm. Yeah. A yeah. Um. Just a week. recap, just a recap of the week's news. <laughs> yeah. Right now it's the headlines. Well, we've right talked, we've talked about it before. Do you know the, uh, the little mouse that had an ear on its back? Yeah, sure. Right. Well, um, he thought he had a bad time, right? Listen to this one. Mouse walking about, with a, uh, sort of wearing a, uh, a monkey's testicle. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a laugh. <clears throat> this is what I mean about a lot of scientists. <laughs> what are they doing? When's that gonna come in handy? <laughs> I don't know what you mean! Well, they were seeing if, um, you know, say if a fella loses one, right? Hitler, Hitler or whatever. <laughs> and they go, well don't worry about it, we can sort you out. Uh, I don't know what the monkey's gonna do, not unless they keep passing them on or whatever, but the, the actual monkey testicle yeah. was put on the mouse, um, and it worked. It worked for the mouse. But, but isn't it, I mean isn't a, a monkey's testicle quite large in, in relation to a mouse? Would it not look like the mouse was on a space hopper or something? Oh yeah, it didn't look good. Well, right. they, didn't put, they didn't put it where its testicles would be. No, they did. Like if it, well, how could it walk then? The ear was on his back, so he could just get about. Well, I don't know. But well, you don't it? know, do you? You just guessed. No, did no. they grow the? Did they grow the monkey's testicles where the mouse well, testicles? Well, it looks stupid anywhere else, though, wouldn't it? Oh, whereas a mouse with monkey testicles, that's fine. Oh, you'd be showing off. You'd be all right. I prefer that than the ear. When that mouse gets put <laughs> back in with the other mice, do the other mice go, George? You look different. Have you had anything done? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but the weird thing is, as well, apparently it still works as a monkey. What? So, like, what are you the, talking about? Like the, you know, the, uh, the sperm and that was, uh, it was still sort of monkey. monkey of course sperm. it was. What do you, t what are you talking about? Well, that's weird. But, but, what are you, Carl, what, but what do you, it, it's only a, it's only a, a thing to give it nutrients. That's all the thing they're testing. It's like grafting at that level. It, it, Right, what's your question? Because I'm, I'm, right. What do you think? It would change eventually, it would have changed into a mouse testicle, because it had been hanging round a mouse for so long. No, I thought the actual sperm of it, though, would be a mouse's. Why? Because it's hang, it's, it's hanging off a mouse. No, but the, but it's, but your sperm is actually created in the testicles. So, so that's why they, that's why it has to be outside your body, otherwise we put them in a nice little cage. But I'm, ge I'm guessing then that they've done this operation, so that they can do it to humans, yeah? Why would I want a monkey testicle if my kids are gonna be monkeys? What use is it? No, think! That's, that's, no, no. The, 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 that's gonna happen anyway, Carl. No, <laughs> yeah, but think. Think of what you're saying. They've grown a monkey testicle on a mouse to see if it would still function as a monkey's testicle, okay? So they can do that to humans. So think, Carl. What they'd do is, they'd grow a human testicle on a mouse and it could still be used as a human testicle. So what? To give you a testicle that you've lost. From a, from a mouse? No, from another person who, who it was kept alive on a mouse. Because it's kept the nutrients alive as opposed to keeping it in a deep freeze. Maybe bollocks go off after a week. I don't know. Maybe they get accidents. Can you, he had a little a, a card. Do you donate your testicles? Yeah, I'll tell you what. No one needs testicles yet. Let's keep them on a mouse. You, you have yours ripped off in, a, in some sort of bizarre skiing accident. You go, well, uh, you go into, you're in a Battersea dog town, <laughs> you pick the ones you want, they can grow them on anything. They can grow them on a Dachshund. Bulldogs are growing them usually, are usually, that's where you see a bulldog, usually that's waiting for a, an upright. What don't you understand, Carl? Hang on a minute, it's what, I thought this was knob news, not well, testicle time, I don't well, understand yeah, what Yeah, this right. testicle time's not for another ten minutes. <laughs> yeah! No, it's yeah. all, it's all sort of it linked and that though, isn't it? Well, um, Sometimes, sometimes it's linked to a mouse. But do you, I mean, what, what do you think about 
like, I don't know, testing stuff out like that. Is it worth- is it worth it? Could, could you not just go straight from- But listen, Carl, I'm getting this information from you. No, it's-, it's If this it's was right. on Question Time and someone said there were, you know, Dimbleby and Paxman or whoever said it, I'd think about it as a moral dilemma. You've just said you saw a mouse with a monkey testicle, what do you think of that? I don't think <laughs> any of it- I don't think anything of it is the answer, Carl, cos I can't trust the info. I cannot trust anything that comes out of your mouth. Well, it's, it's true, but it's just all this- it's the same thing, innit? It's the leeches in a blender, it's the fella looking at an electron. Yeah. It's- it's the mouse with an ear on its back. Yeah. I don't know what the point is. But you don't read on. Cos I've <laughs> seen you read some, and you're going, look at that, man survives on eating knee. And I go, what else? You go, I didn't read on, I didn't read on. You look at the mouse with the ear on the back, and you just think, that must be murder at a concert. You don't think? <laughs> you don't yeah. think? No, yeah. I, do, I just you don't think, read is, it, is it worth sort of wasting you all think, the- You think he swallowed someone's ear, he gnawed it away and swallowed it and it's just in his system? <laughs> yeah. No, I just get a bit sad about the- the mice and the- I agree, I mean that- that is sad, yeah. I mean of course, anything that is- is awful. Well saying that, I remember ages ago, the- the other load of people on, uh, on Oxford Street, don't know if you've seen them where they- they get you to sign stuff. Yeah. And the the woman got annoyed with me, right? Because she was saying about, uh, you know, drugs with animals, testing them out and stuff yeah. like that, which is bad. Yeah. But and I was saying, yeah, it's really bad. And I was looking at the pictures and that. But I said, what would happen, you know, if if, if like the drugs, aspirin, and the monkey's got headache, <laughs> is it such a bad thing? <laughs> she got annoyed. Didn't want to listen anymore. <laughs> It's a good point though, isn't it? <laughs> At what point is it cruel to test stuff out and things? Yeah. Give it some urethrin. It's happy. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet that ear, I bet that mouse had, um, head ache. Because everything must have been loud. The other, just did the other mice squeaking must have done its head in. Yeah. Oh, that would give Turn him a neurofen. Turn that neurofen. radio down. Give him a neurofen, please. <laughs> the number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that, um, I just, I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Thoughts, Carl? Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. <laughs> yeah! That's that could be the case, sometimes. that could be the case. Yeah, well it is split into two, yeah, and they, and they are, are responsible for different things. Yeah. It's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that out there. Yeah. In your head. Because you have, you have quite sort of out there nebulous thoughts and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that, uh, that other sense of like, this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. And you go, all right, let's go. <laughs> and you move from it, and you don't know what what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is. Where they go, go left. <laughs> and you do, and then you go. So the, remember the, that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am and yeah. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> Think of that. Think of that. I called him. Oh my God, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I, I what, went in London, wandering. you got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went wandering and then, uh, uh, you know, I It's was when like... he first moved into his new place, he was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place and he didn't know where he was. He How tried can to you ever short. really get lost in London though? I'm just... It's um, cabby. Well, oh. yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? <laughs> Yeah, they didn't appreciate that, <laughs> do they? But um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said go, that's much better. Yeah, it the was a cold sand. day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Wrong uh, way. Go on. Uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right. Good. Okay. And specific. the time? The time, time when when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, but that time I was in a rush. And, and it was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um I'll do one I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, okay, in your head, okay? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house. Because it's a it's a field. 
You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You're meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't. I've, I've never been that lost, where I'm walking across a field. <laughs> At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle. I wouldn't go that far. I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> you did once. You were in the, in the middle of a field and your dad had to rescue you. Yeah, and that's when I was a kid, because I was reading as I was walking. That's <laughs> And he never read again. <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. Reading. Okay, so so uh, so okay. So <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I know you're enjoying this book. Can I have a word with you? Just look. Just look past the book a minute. There's just there's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when the other senses went. Hang on a minute, I'm being stung, load of nettles and stuff. And I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, "Where's Carl?" I was there for about an hour and a half. You should have put. Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like we were in. Uh, I think it was Saint. I it's Saint Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah. I was in St Ives, and uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that, there was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Um, it, was old, it was haunted, actually. No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most, it's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat in my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kip all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then, uh Sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs Battersby didn't exist, is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. It wasn't the landlady? No, there was no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My were you dad ill? Went were out you ill? Night. Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that. I just... So you were sitting up, but you were awake, and you were having a conversation with Mrs. Battersby. Mm. <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right, but so... at the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up. Chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening? Or you do remember it happening? No, I remember that, like, if I see my mum now and I mention St. Ives, she'll go, oh, yeah, Mrs. Battersby. She remembers coming in, because she was older than me, wasn't she? So, to oh, yeah. her, my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was older because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, oh, it's Susan or whatever. Right, sure. You call Bat older people Battersby. by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, me up boy, all night. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh, why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, what, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh. Your mum was older though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing the picture of myself at this wedding. Okay. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you uh, uh, about... I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So Mrs Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at no, all. I don't remember the chat now. Well then, so, why are you telling? You must your remember memory. it because you're telling us about it's not it. Your because memory. it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is, uh, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once, and you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs. But, Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the don't name, remember because her. your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go hearsay, thrown out of court. Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs. Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I had a beetle. I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can believe... <laughs> We can believe we can believe you ate a beetle, right? Because that is something that could happen in real life. But what we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> what sort of beetle was it? Just one of them standard beetles, just a black shiny one. Thing is, right? A couple of years ago, we were in the ivy, and the food came, and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, I call it an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? 
And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, What have you done? He said, I have that. I said, That was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classy restaurant, they're they serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah, I love the fact that it's this exactly the same thing. <laughs> They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something. You it's think, a good job you remembered that anecdote, though, because he does it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In years to come, we're going, it's some wasabi once. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did, yeah. I was in the ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. Uh -huh. <laughs> So hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Batsby because what you confidently the... said, you confidently said uh, it, was it, was, it was haunted, it was the most haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life, But you supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know. When I was younger, I but didn't you think that was a ghost. But you remember the specifics of an oh, aunt walking so you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then... It, 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 then when I mentioned it, your man was saying, what do you mean? Mrs. Battersby. Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit. But... So, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> 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 Carl, you're wow. the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Company, they had a oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? Oh, it's a, it's a little. It's a Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Carl, oh, calculator, do that boobs thing again. Uh, my mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator <laughs> on the beach. My only friend was a calculator. Oh, God. Oh. Just so I had shots of him in Vietnam. He's carrying Tom. Where's the batteries? Where the batteries? Time to have a funeral for him. <laughs> his his batteries are all over the floor. <laughs> oh fucking hell! The only company was a calculator. Before I used to knock around with a brick. Oh, oh, God. oh fuck me! We have to face facts here. Go on. The world is, is old. Hold on. All right. Okay. The yeah, world's old. The world is old. It's a fact. Yeah, that fact. is a fact. It's the same as if you've got a gram mm. who's. 70. Yeah. Um, there's not much you can do for her. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can say you're warm, mm. but at the end of the day, she's still going to be shitting her pants. <laughs> she's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm, right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old. And yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out. Uh, the earth in, metaphorically, is shitting its pants. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. No. No, we're not, no. And that's where we went wrong. And if we didn't interfere at that point, we might have been more suited to the conditions now. You two, the sweetest thing on XFM, uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. So, we're with Carl. In the week, so well, what can we could do this week? I was saying, well, don't do rockbusters. That's dead in the water. I hope the, uh, I hope the listening public agree with me. Um, he's going, well, you know, why don't I want to teach stuff again. Remember what I taught you last week? I went, no, I no idea. Were you joking? I went, no. Um, and it was. He went, Ivan the Terrible goes out of fella's eyes. Yeah. He actually said Ivan the Terrible at the time. Yeah. So, I can't remember. This was a man who had built yeah. something for Ivan the Terrible and then But, but, but his idea right of education right? is telling someone something that knows more about the subject than him so they can correct him when yeah. he's telling them it. And, uh, so I said, well, I don't know. And he gets annoyed that me and you are dubious against monkeys who perform bank robberies. And he goes, but you, leave, but you believe in Newton. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know the difference. I was trying to explain the laws of the universe, yeah. right? He was going, what, what do you do? And so all I come up with, I, some, I thought something interesting. You know when you ch tell a child maths, you say you've got three potatoes and you've got four potatoes? Yeah. I have to do that with science to Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ended up saying, imagine you're in a shopping trolley with loads of house bricks. If you throw the house bricks out, you'll go the other way. He loved that. Right. He upped, didn't you? Hmm. Because I didn't know that that, that would happen. And... It's, it's sort of useful to know. It sort of explained a bit to me and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's that's why I like doing stuff every week. I think listeners go away going, well, I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Carl, Carl told me something there. They forget it instantly, just like we do. We're friends of yours and we forget it instantly. 
No, the annoying thing with you is, Steve, not so much, Ricky, at least they'll listen now and again, you'll just dismiss stuff straight away. <laughs> I told Carl, you loads of stuff yesterday, I told you loads of stuff. But Carl, what you consider education- <laughs> what, 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 you Hang on, what you consider education, I consider tittle-tattle. Well. It's not education, do you know what I mean? You seem to think it's education, it's just kind of gossip, stories you've sort of half-read. Right, alright, example of yesterday. Goldfish have longer memories than people think they do. Yeah. You, you said no, it's, uh, it's rubbish. No, we didn't. We no, said where'd you get that from? Where's the information really? from? Yeah. It's not, there's not enough information there for it to be educational. Mm. Because you, what you because said it's is also relative. You think. I don't because, know. because the, because that as a statement, it has no objectivity. Uh, Goldfish's memories are longer than some people think. That isn't a fact. Because <laughs> exactly. we don't know how how long do people think a goldfish's memory is? Do you see what that is in a fact? Whereas law and, uh, uh, Newton's uh, laws of physics and the universe right, are. Right. Yeah, but it was just, just a little thing. Um, and I taught you more than that. I said, I said about, there's loads of Chinese people, if you put them in a line you can't get to the end of it. I don't know what that means! I don't know what that means. There's, there's loads of Chinese people. We know that, but what? If we put them in the line, we can't get to the end. But of it. If we just just say there's about a billion you know, Chinese people in the world. But what really annoys me is right. I read something on the internet the other day because I'm always trying to learn stuff. Yeah, no, you are. I know you are. Right. Yeah. And you're having a go at me because you're saying, well, what does that mean? Yeah. There was a report on. I think it was Ananova or BBC News website. It said the world may end in 32 million years. Right. First of all, it says may. Doesn't say it will. And yeah. 32 million. Who's going to argue with that? And yet they, they're allowed to put that on a website, you, you're not having a go at them. No, but, but you didn't read on. A, there's more information it wasn't like, that wasn't a, That wasn't meant to be a newsflash to worry people. That was like, that was like, oh, scientists have discovered that possibility there. That was just like... Yeah, but again, possibility. No, but Carl, yeah, but it's the, the eight but other paragraphs that you haven't read. You see, that'll have to give explanations as to why to, they yeah. think that might happen. So therefore it becomes a news item, it becomes educational. It's not just the headline, the bullet point. The head, you know the headline's just supposed to, it's supposed to draw you into the story so you read on. Yeah. That's not all the I information. Was, but then I was trying to come up with things to, um, to excite you and I realised that I was opening a can of worms. Um, I, I was trying to come up with facts for him, he was going, well, give me facts. So I said, um, I said, oh okay, uh, why can't an owl, uh, why does an owl have to turn its sort of head 180 degrees? And I said, it's because the eyes are so large, as we have a huge focal point for its sight, that it, they can't move within the skull, right? And he went, well, why'd they do that? Why don't they just do it, give them normal eyes, and let, and then after I've turned their head? I went, what do you mean? Why didn't they? He went, well, whoever did that. I went, well, it was evolution, it was, he went, well, he went, it's like giraffes. I read the giraffes grew their necks to eat food. I said, well, they didn't, they didn't grow their necks to get the food. Uh, the ones that uh, had upshots lived longer and so got the food and passed on their- He went, yeah, but why didn't they just give him wings? I went, why didn't who just give him wings? He got angry and went, whoever gave him the necks! <laughs> <laughs> this, his understanding of evolution made me fall on the floor. Who do you imagine is they? Because you don't believe in God, do you? So who is it you imagine is they? Well, whoever made us sorted us out. <laughs> <laughs> who? I don't uh, know, it just happens, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, there's no, listen, there's I, no will to evolution. It's I, natural selection, I isn't it? I still don't get it, though. We talked about an hour about, about an hour, didn't we? I know. I yeah, but to I be fair, I watched as Ricky tried to give you actually what was quite a concise and educated version of uh, evolution. He tried to explain it to you, and I have never seen a person lose interest quicker. But I used, I, I tried to use uh, actual fact, then I tried to use metaphor and analogy, then I showed you some computer programs to show what biofeedback is and everything. I tried all these things, and Steve's right, uh, you were looking out the window. Have you ever spoken, Carl, to someone who's got Alzheimer's disease? <laughs> And you try to explain who you are, and they're listening, and then they. That's mm. what you're like. It's extraordinary. But listen, seriously, I went home, I found this book, I found a couple of facts which I think are more up your street. Evolution is a little bit complicated, a little bit big. But this one, I think, I think we may have mentioned it before, I think you're like this. This is from a book of facts and trivia. The Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. Yeah. That's interesting to you, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any more there? I'll see if I can find Oh, he's interested. Yeah. Can get say. the staff. That did you, happen, you, yeah? You pay peanuts, that definitely happened, you get yeah. monkeys. <laughs> and then what did they go off and do after that? Well, it doesn't say. So I love the fact that he thinks, right, okay, so in <laughs> his mind, <laughs> if the other monkey going, it's 5.30, I'm off, you, said, you know I was going early today, and they go off maybe dancing or something, or they come in late. No, I think he. Th I think he. Well, I, I assumed what you meant there is that that was their first career move. And yeah, then they well, went on. <laughs> it's like actors <laughs> waiting to be discovered. <laughs> play a record. Uh, just one more before you play a record. Oh, man. You like this, Peter the Great? You ever heard of Peter the Great? 
No. Okay, well, anyway, Peter the Great had his wife's lover oh. executed. You'll love this, Carl. Right, so he, he, his wife had a lover, he had him executed, and he put his head into a jar of alcohol, and his wife had to keep it in her bedroom. Do you understand? That's every time she saw, every morning she'd wake up, and there was her lover's head he, in a jar. He took his head off. He took, he took his own head off. <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> she had a lover. And, oh, never mind. Never mind. Mad World on XFM. We just had a <laughs> we just had a text, Rick, from Andrew Barnes. He says he did he watched the same documentary. It would appear yeah. as Carl did in the week. And he says here just to clarify, the leech nose man got it up there when drinking from a muddy stream. Uh, and he goes on, one can only imagine the frightenedness he experienced. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> Ex explain to him once more to what, what, what happened with Peter the Great. All right, so we've got Peter the Great. Yeah. Okay. And his wife had a lover. That's another side. man. Another man. Not uh, Peter the Great. She, she was having an affair with someone else. Right. And Peter the Great, he found out about that. Okay. Yeah. So he sliced off this bloke's head. He killed him. He executed him. Right. Were you with me so far? The, the fella who, who oh, she, Jesus. Was, she was seen for a bit. Yeah, there's only two fellas involved. There's two yeah, people yeah, yeah. involved. One's Peter the Great, the other one's right, not. Right. The guy that's not Peter the Great. Derek, Derek the, the <laughs> Derek the Terrible. Derek the Rubbish. Yeah. Right? He's having an affair with Peter the Great's missus. So Peter the Great slices off his head, puts it inside a jar of alcohol to preserve it, and puts it in his wife's bedroom. So every morning she wakes up, she sees her dead lover's head. You'd have thought he wouldn't want her to remember, wouldn't you? Oh. Best put bury the head so she can't don't remember. Well, it was a reminder so as not to put it about. <laughs> and did it work? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I love that again. <laughs> that to me is an amazing thing to do. And you go, did it work? <laughs> I mean, you've got quite an interesting mind, actually. I mean, you are in some ways really, really bright and intelligent. I, I love the way you think. Uh, you're one of the cleverest blokes in some ways. That I know. Hello, it says I've got common sense. Well, yeah, and that's that's more important than knowing about you know. But it's it's or... what it, it, you really you. It's like you follow the subplot, which is quite an interesting thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like it, you tell you a story, you'll always pick up on something that I didn't even think was an important bit. It's like you're always you you're looking out of the window all the time. So what's important about that Ed thing? What do you mean? The head in a jar. What, so it's, what a it's a grotesque thing to do. It's, it's, it, it shows yeah, um, ego, power, cruelty, and revenge. Although I think it probably did work because he is called Peter the Great. Yeah. So you'd assume he got, he got it right. Yeah. I don't see how you can query that. That's the sort of facts you give us. You see now you're on the other side of the fence and you've got questions just like we've always got questions. No, but in Carl's thing it would have been, turns out, some weird happened, right? And he was still alive. <laughs> yeah. And so she was still having sex with body. And yeah. his head was watching. Yeah. And Peter the Great didn't even know. Oh, See how I, he's perked I, I up? Understand, I understand what, what you're saying. Now I've learned some other stuff, so we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can, you know, educate you a bit before three. But I want to know, to see what, I'll tell you what education I want. I want to know what sort of things I can buy this weekend. Butt plugs. No. Have you got any adverts? Oh, yeah. Forever lost. The magic numbers, and the magic number is 104.9. <laughs> oh. XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, two more shows. Till we're off air for I don't know how long. Is that two more including this one? Yeah. No, 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 no. Two more. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 no. No, it's right. This, this, this is one, and then there's another one. Right, two and more shows. And that's the last one. There's okay, two right. more shows, yeah. Including start, this one. We'll start in now. Sorry, so no, if I just said this at the end, it might have been ambiguous, but I've said it at the beginning. There's two hours. That's a whole show. Right. So there's two more shows. Two more shows, including this one. Yes, okay. well, obviously. So one more show after It's this only one. five past one. After this show, one more. Yeah, one more. Yeah. Next week, one more show. That makes two altogether. Oh, no, it's only one more show. Good night. Okay. Um, now, it better be a good one, Carl. Have we got, uh, Rockbusters? Yeah. To Check. win those prizes? Check. Have we got Monkey News? Check. Is it a real Monkey News or is it Always something is. that's slightly made Always up is. that you- What? Always is. Check. Okay. Uh, Knob News? Uh, yeah, we've got a bit of Knob News, yeah. I'm worried that Knob News, because it's only about penises, is a little bit mm -hmm. sexist. Um, have we got any fanny facts? <laughs> <laughs> can we, maybe, can we sort that out for next week? I don't want to alienate <laughs> our female audience. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Minge London. <laughs> um, good, I'm glad that's that. Well, um, brilliant. Uh, we've got a song with the story? Yeah, doing that. What is it? Uh, 
I don't want to sort of tell you what it is yet. Because right. the song isn't that great. Do you oh, know what I mean? Good. It's not a oh, song good. that, good. like, that, that's like an XFM song, but every time I hear it on, say, like, Magic or whatever, yeah. I have an argument. 105.4. Yeah. I have an argument with Suzanne that, you know, what I think it's about, and mm. she says, don't be stupid, it's not about that, and I'll say, no, it is. And so we're gonna decide who's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what song you're talking about, and I don't know what the argument is, but Suzanne's right. Definitely. No well, doubt about it. Yeah. Well, I'll listen, but I'm hoping that once people sort of listen to it again with my thoughts, every well, time well, I Well, this song it, sums up what people should think of you. It's don't believe a word. All right? That's the sort of links I'm capable of. If that was a bag of Sony, then nothing <laughs> wrong. Thin Lizzy. Don't believe a word on XFM 104.9. I'm gonna miss this show. It's been good. You want to be the only one? No, well, you know, so we'll we, we come back again. We've got, we've got a lot to do over the next few months, but maybe, maybe, maybe for Christmas or just after. But I still call Carl every day anyway. Oh, sure. Uh, um, I called him, um, a couple of days ago. Of course you did. And I went, uh, that was the weekend, I went, what are you doing? He went, oh, just in Regent's Park and that. I went, what are you doing? He said, just going for, went, oh! Jesus! I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. God, it's there, it's wriggling around. I went, sure a bird didn't just drop it. He looked up and went, oh yeah. <laughs> Of course he did. Yeah. For a moment he thought caterpillars were raining from the sky. I thought I was- t I was- I was in chicken licking. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. What- why did you think a caterpillar had fallen out of the sky? I know, it just startled me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Carl being startled! I like the idea of him straight on the phone to Trevor McDonald. Look, Trevor, there's- there's caterpillars, insects falling out of the sky. They're falling out of the sky now. Put it on the news, quick. Are you sure there wasn't a bird? Oh, there was a bird. Yeah, sorry, Trev. Bye! <laughs> but it was weird, after, like, I hung up- well, I hung up the phone and that from you. I mm. sort of, uh, sat there for a bit watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine him cross-legged, just in front of it. But, do you know what? Grass. Because- because of his shape, the shape of his head, and his sort of IQ, I bet the caterpillar was thinking, Mama. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It is <laughs> unbelievable. Go and, on. Uh, it was- it was sort of running about all over the place, right, Steve? So the caterpillars have loads of feet and that, don't they? <laughs> wow! Well, they have six legs. They're actually a larva of an insect. They have six legs, but they have little sucker things to hold on to the uh, cabbages and that. No, they've got more than that. They've it's got. Like... I tell you, they have got six true legs. Trust me. Trust me, I'm a scientist. And you were thinking what, Carl? Well, it was. But they've got little. It? They've got little pods. They've got little um, pseudo part legs mm. and little suckers. Yeah. But it was running about like everywhere, like mental. But sort of running off to the left, and then it sort of went back to where it was. <laughs> then back, you know, went r right and what have you. And I'm just thinking, whoever gave them the legs, right? What's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you can get about- Imagine that sentence. Did you hear that, just, did you hear that sentence? Can we play that <laughs> sentence back? No, I don't no. think we can. Imagine who gave them that legs. Whoever, whoever, whoever gave him them legs, what's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? And that. Always and that. And that, but, but maybe you just, to be fair to the caterpillar, with all its legs, okay, and you know where it's going, it had just been plucked from its house by a bird, shot up into the sky and then dropped from 80 feet, hitting the ground. Onto the head of a weird, bold, shaved monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably concussed. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's one of them things again, though. But I it mean, still knew more about the world than you. How does that make you feel? I just, I just think it's a waste of time having all them feet. It's the same thing as the, uh... <laughs> now it's got feet, feet yeah. now! All, all it has the, a nightmare uh, behind shoes, doesn't it, Carl? All <laughs> the, uh, what was it, what was it you were saying about leeches and that? Because we were talking about insects. Well, they're not it's insects. All these, they're not insects. What are they? Well, I think they're probably, uh, class, uh, probably platy helminth. Probably, uh, yeah. sort of like a flatworm. Type thing. That's they're what you were thinking, wasn't it, Carl? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know what the phylum is, but there's no. They'd, uh, they'd be, you know. What was uh, the leech? What was an interesting well, leech? Well, there's an experiment uh, um, where you get a maze for a leech, and there's a b bit of blood thing, and it learns, it eventually finds its way to the blood, okay, and then it knows. Okay. And if you, if you put it back to where it starts, it knows where it, straight, it goes straight towards it because it's learnt it. If you liquidise that leech, Right. And feed it to some leeches who have never done the maze, because of a thing called chemical memory, they find their way straight to the blood. That is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, it's it's in, it's incredible. 
We should try that at Hampton Court one weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but, but maybe with some tourists. <laughs> we'll just blend up some tourists. <laughs> or the people on, um, I'll tell you what would do it. Those people who go on, um, Celebrity Love Island. Any of them. They would do anything it. to get yeah. They will be liquidised. People <laughs> have enemas. They will do and they wank off pigs. They will do anything to get on yeah. telly. What about that? Be liquidised and fed to a no get get one D celebrity slapper, uh, liquidise her and feed her to another slut. So we and see if she can tippers. find her way. <laughs> and see if she can find her way to Channel Five. Yeah. What <laughs> a brilliant show, hosted by Jimmy Carr. Of course. That'd be amazing. The Kinks, better things on XFM one hundred four point nine. Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. But do you know this? Um, we were talking about the leech thing. Sure. Right. You're saying, put them in a blender. I'm not saying that. <laughs> well, someone did. Yeah. Why were they doing that in the first place? Do you know what I mean? How did they find out that if you- if you put leeches in a blender- I don't know, they probably kept notes, I don't- I don't- I don't no, know. No, 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 but what- what made them- were they just having a laugh? What- what made them go- uh, uh, Was it a party? It was a it couple, was a couple yeah. of 40 no, years it was, it, a party. it was a couple of research scientists, they'd be given a million pounds and the boss was coming around to say what you're doing and they were just making a smoothie and they went, QUICK! So Mr. Yakamoto's come round throwing some leeches! What are you doing? Just leeching. Just feeding these leeches to some other leeches. <laughs> Alright, well that looks like science, I'm off. <laughs> Well, that's what they Here's another million pounds yeah, next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Yeah. That's how they work, though, isn't it? A lot yeah, of these scientists. Exactly they're, 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 I'm just it. saying they're getting away with murder. Go on. Well, just just the way they do sort of spend. Uh, and you can't say anything in front of him because everything's got everything's everything's got a point with him. Mm. You can't have a conversation with Carl because he always he always puts in a curveball. You you tell him something. And it it, 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 the question comes back that you never could have expected. When I told him about that story about the monkey who had run away because he had an argument with his father, he said, what was it about? <laughs> yeah. No, no one in the world thinks that. <laughs> no one in the world the, the, would ask that question. The leech thing. Do yeah. you know how you said, uh, show, show the leech the way to its better food, whatever it's eating or whatever. Yeah. In the maze, right? Yeah. It makes its way. Yeah. Right? It eats the cheese or whatever. Right? Blood. Blood, right? And then, <laughs> and you give it, you give Everything's it. Everything's a cartoon yeah. with Carl as well, isn't it? Everything is a cartoon. It's a leech with a little hat and <laughs> a little baby bell at one end. But what happens if you got another one and yeah. move the uh, bit of blood? Yeah. Right? So, feed those two leeches to one, then what's it? Is it gonna get confused or... Do you know what I mean? Which, which way will it go if you've, if it's eaten two, two leeches? Yeah. That have done two different ways? Yeah. Is it sort of stressed out? <laughs> No! I don't know. It probably knows both routes. It probably goes, well, there's one over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's one over here as well. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I've had two for the price of one. Mm -hmm. right, and, okay. I'm, and I'm full of leeches. <laughs> <laughs> then what, what's the best that can happen for like... I don't- what are you talking about? What do you want because out of I'm me? Because I'm just saying if they could- if they- if by that, if by doing that they can go, right, we can do this, we're humans. I'd go, oh, what do you mean? What do you- what do you mean in the name of Christ? Do what do you humans. mean? All I'm saying is, what's the point in doing it? Think what- what do you mean? If you could do it with humans, I'd say- But well, what do- what- 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 right, Carl, think about what you're saying, man. Yeah, I'm saying- If you could do it with humans, do what with humans? Say if Einstein, right, didn't do all that maths that he did, right? Say if he got to E equals and then he died. Squash right. his brain, eat, give it to someone else, say, right, eat that, and they go, right, it's E equals MC squared, isn't it? What I'm saying is- But they wouldn't, they'd go, E equals, oh. Wouldn't they? If it was chemical memory, they'd go, oh, E equals, oh, yeah, same as Einstein said. Yeah, I just ate his brain. What am I saying? What are you- <laughs> what have you made? Carl, think what you're saying. It's unbelievable. Uh, you see, the thing is, right, you uh, actually, you, you are what a scientist does, you just keep saying why and what and why and what, but nothing's ever enough for you, which is good. It's, no, it's well, nice I, to have I, an I insatiable- just get, I get annoyed with all the, the amount of time and effort that's put into stuff that's useless. What's the next stage to squashing that leech? <laughs> if, if it's not going anywhere, forget it, work on something else. <laughs> it's the same way in some science magazine I was reading about, <laughs> is there anything smaller than a quantum electron or something. Yeah. It's like, if it's not getting in the way, don't worry about it. <laughs> Why are they worrying about things we can't see? <laughs> if, you just fed, if, you, if you blended up Carl's brain and fed it to someone, would it make any difference? No, no, they wouldn't would, even notice, would they? Would it would it would you fed it to a leech and leech would go, oh, I don't know what I was doing, know. I was- I don't know what- Where was I going? I'm even more confused. I don't know. <laughs> where do you stop, though? Supposing I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, 
I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd, I want them, I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my arse where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easy to move the head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, when was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they, so I've been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. Now, I used to love them. Yeah. yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got this year? No, just no, recently. years ago, oh, years like ago. years ago, when I loved them, I said I loved Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. He met one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No, 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 that's no he knew did. some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, he must have got about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, honestly mm. we'd have about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard, under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? How, in how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you're oh, lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just... What just so this, sorry, whoa, 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 bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. <laughs> they were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the I've great already run out of responses. Again. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no, that. I mean, I was nearly going to say, what would you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand like is, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like tic tacs, me. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Yeah. Albert, you got tic tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him out. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breast like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the country in place. Oh, do you want some more? No. Oh, of course we fucking don't. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Of course we will for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up on an audio book. But that's, I think that's how we got onto it. Because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, well, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? That's it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity. It is the same condensity. Um, same condensity. <laughs> yeah, so I got rid of them like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got shot of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> it's tinging its way up the tube! It's tinging its way up the tube. It's, it's tinging its way up the tube. <laughs> Ding tong, ping pong, it's tinging its, its way up the tube. tube. <laughs> that sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like pac or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be back up, singing it. Up. Sheila's getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. Up. No, it's, it's a the, really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell That's of a ingre... hell of a time you had with your parents there oh. and the old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when when I my mum and dad regravelled the drive, yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident. Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day. I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about sending this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Carl, I know you like to be kept abreast of all the latest breaking science news. Did you read recently about the blind mice that they have been able to make see again? And, um, hopefully they're, they're, whatever they did, which allowed these mice to be able to see again, they're hoping to be able to do with humans in maybe about ten years' time. Or at least begin tests. Extraordinary, isn't it, to be able to, I mean, to be able to cure blindness would be it, a it, remarkable it, achievement in science. It is, but it's just that thing how they say they've done it on mice and what have you. Yeah. 
if I was blind and I went in for the meeting with mm. the doctor, yeah, and they said, "Do you want yours doing?" And then they said, "Like, mm. I've done it on mice. That wouldn't be good enough for me." I'd say, "Look, when the blind fella gets in, don't say we've done it on mice. Just say we've done this on eyes." <laughs> If he goes, what eyes? Just say, just a pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you say mouse's eyes, it's like, well, it's, n it's not the same. And it no. sort of, it would make me go, J I'll leave it. Yeah. And then you, you, you wake up and you can see, but you've got very tiny eyes right in the... Uh, the you've put in mice eyes! <laughs> I'm scared of cats! It's just <laughs> eyes. I think I just don't like having my eyes messed with, and even if it was blind, you know, I just, I, I wouldn't like it. Right. Uh... And I think mine are more active than most, my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> um, well, I went for a what's-her-name, Steve, you don't know, I, I've, I've had mm. uh, problems with my legs. Oh, <sighs> Christ almighty. He's the same, what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a 7 year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week, he goes, now his legs Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. Know. I know. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. He's going, oh, right. Christ oh. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30-odd years, I've been working hard, and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, uh, 33. Sorry to start off with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? <laughs> well, I just have. I sort of uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm Well, you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> pitting about. <laughs> yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, okay, so you've been working for 15 years then, okay, good, Yeah, but right. I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I, and that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. <laughs> it all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked me height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, eh? Like it's a classic story that everyone should know. Everyone knows, and also right. the phrase, kicking my own height. Yeah. No, Explain so. what you mean. Just kicked me out when I was when I was. Kick a kid. your no one understands. You Carl. kicked your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I if kicked you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go. I kicked me height. So you were so you were four and a half foot, and you put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right. Okay. <laughs> Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go <laughs> get Carl Pilkington to kick his height. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> so why, why did he you sell tickets? The neighbours were cracking <laughs> up. <laughs> Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, 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 you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have to kick the height. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> so what's it look? Like, what the fuck did that look like? <laughs> he's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, you, you, it stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ but you didn't mighty. think. Well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like a Hitler salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back. Yeah. And, uh... And I did some damage, I think. Yeah, and it's because definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like all like all them years and what have you. Yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done because when you get older, I mean, it was the kidney stone thing. Once once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think. Got to start looking after your body. Do you think you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for fifteen years? <laughs> Well, you just... think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then. I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You know, if there's anyone listening you always there, hop. Who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what, though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. <laughs> so anyway, so I went to see this fella, to, uh, like a professional, uh, leg rubber. A um, professional leg rubber, yeah. And he's, uh... He sort of said uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of like podcasts? I said, "Am I in charge of my brain, or is my brain in charge of me?" Yeah, do you remember what I said? That's the most stupid thing you've ever said. 
Yeah, well, well, listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber, professional leg rubber, yeah, right, and he is professional. Yeah, right. Remember, so leg rubber. You haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he do back, left and right or back, back rubbing as well? He does it all. Right, right. right. So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, whoa, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well and your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was this above a laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that. On oh, the okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah, yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got uh, towels halfway through his pants. Yeah, bras. Yeah, halfway through, he's saying, "You haven't got 20p. I'll be for the dryer." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm lying there and he lifts the leg up yeah. and I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, you're, you're outside of the body is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't <laughs> sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body's yeah. longer than the inside. <laughs> Song there, song for the lovers. That's Neil really Young, good. man needs to made off the Harvest album. What a beautiful song that beautiful. is! Beautiful strings, yep. and everything. Well, you've got a song for the ladies coming up. Song for the ladies later on well, as well. That, yeah. That's that has set, you know, the standard. There. Well, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, were you going to uh, do a film review as well later? Have you still got that? Uh, film? Well, I could do, I could do a film review now because it's, well, it's, it's quite a big. I thought you needed to prepare, but no, I mean, no, it's quite a big film, and I've seen it, and it is, uh, you know, it's it's a great it's a great film. So okay. I, I hope I can do it justice because it's a very Okay, oh, this week. What film is it going to be? It's going to be Schindler's List. Okay, and are you going to do a jingle for us? Uh. Ricky's <laughs> film review. <sighs> okay. This is a film by Steven Spielberg. Yes. And it. Because it's in olden times, it's all black and white and that, except a, a coat that's red. I don't know what happened there. Um, anyway, it's about a, a bloke who's called Schindler, and because there were so many people we wanted to save, he had to make a list to get organised. And, uh, he tried to save as many as he could. Um, and, the, you know, he ma uh, made him sort of not make the bullets properly on purpose, cos he, you know, uh, and, uh, in the end, they gave him a ring. Um, it's the same bloke who made E.T. Okay. Your review of Schindler's List. Yeah. And as ever, uh, mark out a ten, please. Uh, nine. It was brilliant. You really enjoyed it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, did the fact that it was three hours long bother you? Uh, no. No? Quite like no. that. No. Okay. Watch some of it on Fast Forward. Okay, okay. Um, Carl, have you seen Schindler's List? No, I'm surprised they managed to get all that in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Would that encourage you to see the film? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, what would you give it a mark out of uh, ten? Nine. You'd give it nine as well? Mm. Okay, I'll tell you, I... That red coat effect thing you got yeah. about, that's... that's yeah. You sold it. You like that, yeah. 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 Well, that was just a, a, a mistake, apparently. Uh, apparently, yeah, yeah. Probably just couldn't get all the colour out of it. As I said before, if you've got a film that you'd like to have reviewed by Ricky Gervais, then yeah. email us, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, and I'm sure he can, uh... Or even the... You know, all the... Not just, like, um, the people, but what about the ones who make the films? Like, you know, the ones that actually make the film, what are they called? Hollywood? Yes. If they want me to do one for that coming out to sort of give it a little bit of a boost. Yeah. You saw me give away the tickets, that was selling. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we can we can sell your product and we make it look like it's all editorial, but really, if there's a little bit of money involved, <laughs> I can probably give it a nine out of ten instead of four or something. <laughs> I, so really, would you do that without having seen the film? Yeah. That's fine, because they wouldn't even, they could just tell you what was coming up and then if, you if, could it, just if they said this uh, give us a good review and here's twenty quid, yeah. if they go, Oh no, oh, give it, there's no money in it, I'll give it probably give it a bad well, review. Let's just to be can I just try that because I mean, a lot of people listening w won't be necessarily convinced. Um, Lord of the Rings, let's imagine I've paid you now to, uh, to review the forthcoming film Lord okay. of the Rings. What do you make of it? This is a brilliant film, yep. and even though it's all about wizards and that, and there's people in caves called gonads, um, with beards, Rob probably Robbie Coltrane's in it, because he's in the other one at the yeah. moment, um, and there's, uh, it's all swords and stuff, and there's some magic, uh, but it is the, is actually the Lord of the Rings, not just like you know, just one of them. He's the Lord of it, and he's he's excellent in it. <laughs> so, right, Mark out of ten. Nine. Again, very popular film for you, Carl. 
Less convinced by that one, maybe. That doesn't sound as good as no. as the other one. Yeah. What are you gonna give it? Seven. Mm. Still give it nine. You still give it nine. Excellent. Because we we split it. We split yeah. the money. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Good. This is <laughs> the this is the eels. Sorry about that. That was a mistake. I know shit that was. But it was too late to get it out of the CD player. It's Muse and feeling good. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of Muse, but I wasn't quite as venomous in my uh, hatred. Don't worry, we won't play that again. Um, no, I, well, no, let's let's explain the situation in the studio. There's a certain frosty air now because what? we ended up playing Muse. Yeah, it was you know, it was a mistake. Yeah, but it's not that bad. Well, no, it's not. It's not as bad as Ricky what? thinks it. I admit it's not as bad as that. But I'm standing out of it because I'm not a fan of Muse. I wouldn't play Muse generally. Well, I don't I mean, mind Muse generally, but well, I, I hate. What that. you like Muse normally? I hate Muse. Well, I don't hate them. Says the man who bought the like Funky Ones album. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't play them on XFM. I know, but Muse fits in. I mean, you, you're saying you want to play Radiohead. So playing the Nina, like doing a Nina it's Simone. New... Why do we play Radiohead then? That's what I was saying. We're playing Radiohead, but Muse is like Radiohead. There's not a big difference. Oh. Anyway, we're not going to argue. There is a big difference. Phone in if you... What's the difference between Muse and Radiohead? What's the phone number? What do you mean, what's the difference? What's, well, there they are. Let's just have a competition. Let's see if people can tell the difference between Muse and Radiohead. Give the number out. Can't be bothered. Nor can I. So it's left to me to keep the thing afloat. Yeah. That's never good news. Um, I went to see the White Stripes this week, good. if anyone's interested. <coughs> uh, anyone interested in that? Go on, Steve. White Stripes are absolutely amazing. I've heard all the hype. You know, I've not listened to the album. I went along to the gig, got a free ticket. It wasn't even a pound off. It was free. Ten pounds. I could have I could have sold it outside the gig. I didn't. I went in. Right? Couldn't take a long a mate. XFM wouldn't let me. Uh, I went there on my own. You know, went in there. I have to say, I wasn't expecting much. They were amazing. They were absolutely amazing. I have to say this now, for they were the best band I'd seen who were like I didn't know much about or whatever, like they were a new band. They were the best band I'd seen live since I saw a little band you might have heard of called Oasis for five pounds at Coventry Poly. Yeah, well, yeah. It's a long name for a band. <laughs> and um it was amazing, and it's a brilliant band because it's just the two of them. Obviously, the girl on the drums, the guy playing the guitar. He's got a real kind of rock guitar skill. He really plays it up and down the um, the long neck bit. I mean, I know all about the music and that the terminology. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. Sometimes he plays like kind of kind of steel with that steel pedal thing on his not steel pedal, the, the finger thing, the kind of thimble thing that some guitarists wear. I believe it's called a, a guitar thimble. <laughs> I believe is the name for it. Yeah. And he plays that like old bluesman would play. He plays that sometimes. Old sometimes bluesman. Somebody's got like a little electric keyboard thing or piano, as I believe some people call it. So this isn't a review. This is listing the instruments. <laughs> well, all right, all right. There's not many to get through with. There's okay, some drums yeah. and a guitar. What colour microphones were they? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Were they SM58? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is this. Go on. With just those few simple instruments, they yeah. had this huge sound, a big rocky sound, yeah. quality kind of bluesy punk with a little bit of uh, yeah. energy to it. It was amazing. I've just say I, I was a huge fan, and so I thought we could play a bit of White Stripes, you know, to we sort could. of commemorate that excellent gig. I saw a band once, right? There was a drummer had all the drums, <laughs> right. big one at the bottom, to the Diddle and once cymbals. Yeah, they were all mic'd up with different microphones <laughs> coming down the loudy speaks. <laughs> I was at the back. It was still wow. I can hear everything in that electrical, really, and a guitar and a bass. Can I do a like a gig review every week, like you no, do your film review? No, <laughs> good. Yeah, we well, just did. Well, I'm about you, as well, I'm about as well informed about music <laughs> as you are about films. <laughs> Uch, anyway, I'd, t tell me the Uch, how do you choose the playlist? In Feeder. Just today. Now, because uh, we're running out of time, yeah, because of that muse shit we had to play. Um, I think I say uh, that's my feature. That PlayStation game sounds good, <laughs> right? Because that's the uh, the main music of the PlayStation Two game, Gran Turismo. <laughs> right. So I, I could incorporate that. Brilliant. Yeah, and I've I've still got to get in a uh, uh, song for um the the you've got to get in song for the ladies yes. at the end. Got anything else lined up? Well, I, I just, I mean, it's just that you, I, I've never seen you spiral into such despair after hearing Muse. I mean, well, fair enough, is that they're not a great band. Well, obviously, we have to, you know, there's a bit of a playlist we have to keep to, and we drop the records we don't like, yeah. right, and play the ones we do, and that's fine. And if I don't care for a track, I don't mention it, I don't usually slag off bands, and I know we've got to keep to a playlist, I don't know how they're chosen or anything, but, you know, there's one thing I didn't want to play, it's feeling good. Yeah. And it was already lined up, and there was no time, so I was, I was genuinely annoyed. Because I don't mind, like, playing stuff that I wouldn't actually choose myself that's all right, but, you know, it, 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 you know, we're not completely free played all the time. So the worst thing is, I don't want to ever play Feeling Good again. I don't want to ever play Kashin again. Kashin, I don't know what is. I'm thinking of putting a ban on Gorillas. What, anything you like to ban? Basement Jacks. Basement Jacks. Oh, where's your head at? We already where's dropped that. Where's your head We dropped at? that on purpose, didn't we? What else have we dropped today? That this is that's what we saved people from. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like playing five songs over and over again just because some record company wants it to be played. 
I mean, I, I, you know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play things I hate, let, pay, pay me. You know what I mean? I'm willing to take bribes. <laughs> Look, I've been sent some chocolates here by the lads out of, um, uh, what, Carter USM, right? Are they and still the, going? Yeah, they've got a gig at the, who's the daddy now tour, right? They're playing the Astoria at December the 14th, on December the oh 14th. Oh my god, it's worth going along just to see how few people will be there. Well, see, I wouldn't use play but they've sent me chocolate, so there's a, you know, there's a plug. It's like, you know, bribe me, not XFM, yeah. all right? Let's yeah. get some out of this, Steve. Okay. All right? Yeah, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I, even I'd sink so low as to be bribed by <laughs> Carter. <laughs> I mean, I have a man who tried to buy dodgy speakers Steve, on the street. it's a Christmas, Father Christmas <laughs> with some jelly beans. Is that from, who's that from? That's from, that's from the lads, oh well, um, the, it's, who's the daddy now tour. Okay. And I've got, um, and I've got some, uh, um, chocolate money. Right, lovely. Yeah. Some any, of it, some of it French. Got anything there from the senseless things? <laughs> <laughs> or the wonder stuff? No, but, you know, we don't know, they're all they're doing now. Yeah. Uh, Carl was alright at the time. Yeah. You know, Carl was alright. Carter? Yeah. Right. Do you like Carter? Not really, no. It's nonsense. Well, I didn't like him singing about Dagenham all the time, whatever no. it was. No, yeah. what was it? New, New Cross. Cross yeah. yeah. But, you know, some Good. funny um, lyrics. Good. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Uh, you no, the war that's in it. Let's play, yeah. uh, let's play some songs we like. What have you got lined up? Andy? I've got the song for the ladies that's coming oh, up in a second. Oh, lovely. Yeah, let, let's, let's choose a song here. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's, right, this one here is Ricky. Uh, what? Oh, Radiohead. Just. Brilliant. Is this mute? <laughs> Radiohead and Just. Off the bends. No, that's a track. That's it's been a, a roller coaster uh, ride of emotions. This show. <laughs> yeah. You know, we started off there with some light-hearted anecdotes about you and animals. Yeah. It ended up with you sort of spiralling into uh, despair. Wow. You know. That's what, that, that, the that's the what a track by Muse can do to a man. Yeah. yeah. Well, clearly. You know. Did yeah. I ever react? But then maybe. Well, I mean, maybe that's what that's what makes them good. I mean, if music can you know create those kind of passions in someone, maybe that's effective. I don't. We've know. made me think again. I well, love it's, Muse. It's the punk approach, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, thanks uh, as ever for pressing the buttons and contributing. Yeah. Right, mate. Um, good job, good job. Shame about the news. Yeah. <laughs> but but, he won't uh, be getting a nine for his movie next week. <laughs> <laughs> <We're getting> a... <laughs> I think you guys should kiss and make up and maybe oh, naked. Oh, well, that's not Carl's fault. Go and kiss him. No, I'm not gonna kiss Carl, him. But go and touch him. him. I'm gonna kiss go him. Go and touch him. him. I'm gonna touch go him. Go and touch him. Should we go both go and touch him? Yes. Why don't we play a song for the ladies? This week, Drugstore, okay. White, uh, okay. White Magic for Lovers, oh, beautiful track. And let's just go and kiss and touch Carl. Yes, my life and no doubt on XFM. The yeah. version of the Talk Talk Love song. It. Love it. You've enjoyed that, Rip. Yeah, on XFM one hundred four point nine. Right, Carl. This is where he shines. This is where Carl gets. This is what Carl gets Mondays off for. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, Carl. What is it? You want to explain this? It's the bit when uh, I'm in a film and uh, sort of edit me into it so I'm like an actor in a major film. Yeah. We've done Kez, we've done One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Shining, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, this week, it's A Few Good Men. Brilliant okay. film. Brilliant with, film. With, uh, Jack Nicholson and that. Yeah. Uh, so you listen to this and, uh, we'll give the question later on, we'll probably- no, let's give it after this. All right. Yeah, we'll give it after the- we've All right. the clip. Uh, I haven't really got one sorted but I'll think of one whilst it's on. <laughs> so, uh, have a listen to this, take everything in. Yeah. And then the question at the end. So yeah. it's a scene where it's a court case. Yeah. All right. All right. A few All days. rise. Call your witness. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's just coming now. All right, Jack. Colonel. What? I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel or Sir. All right. All right, Colonel. A bit smart today with all the, uh, all the army stuff on. You ever served in an infantry unit, son? Nah. Brother did. He was, uh, he was in the army. Got kicked out, though, cause, cause he, uh, he went for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> Weird that, innit? No, it's not. It's tragic. Mm. I not say it's tragic. I'll show you something tragic. I always, um, carry this book around with me. I always show it to people. It's got like uh, the top 50 weird people in the world in it, right? It's all sorts of weird stuff in it. Uh, look at this one here. It's a fella, right? He's got two heads. And the weird thing is, right, it's the top 50 weird people in the world. He's at number 50, he's got two heads, right? Makes you wonder what's going to be at number one, doesn't it? Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? No, but look at it. 
Imagine if you were his mate. You wouldn't get a word in edgeways, would you? If you Maybe he didn't have any friends. Mm, probably right, they say, don't they? They say two's company, three is a crowd, so... Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. Yeah, I got loads more. For this fellow at number 36, look at him. Three legs. Little fellow with three legs, right? Guess what his job is? My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. Well, I'll tell you. He's a juggler. I beg your pardon? He's a juggler. This is ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. You're probably thinking what I'm thinking. Why wasn't he a footballer? <laughs> the great at keepy up isn't that? Isn't I'll answer the question. You want answers? Yeah, it's just, it's just that I'd like to know the truth. Behind. You can't handle the truth, gentlemen. Well, I've paid for the book, so I think I'm entitled to know why. I you don't did. give a damn what you think you are entitled to. You better get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. What about this one then? This lad here, he's 12 years old. He looks 48. What do you, what do you think? No. Why not though? You, you said you didn't want to know any more about the juggler. You didn't say you didn't I want know to know what I said. The... I don't have to have it read back to me like I'm... All right. Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Well, I just wanted to know if you thought Mr. Webfoot at number 42 should have took up swimming, but... Absolutely. Yeah, you'd say that now, wouldn't you? Forget it. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know what to say, really. That's Carl Pilkinson in the uh, film... A Few Good Men, with Jack Nicholson, acting alongside Jack, and I have to say, giving him a run for his money. I think Carl is a really good actor. Mm. I genuinely think that. Should we put him in somewhere? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. Right, what's the question? What's the, what's his forte, do you think? Just sort of, uh, playing that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay. Sort of deep stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we can sort that out. Think of a question there, out of that little lot. Um, you, you've not got one? Uh, well, well, I've got, what, what um, who was at number 36, whatever it was. What was it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's... Who was number 50? Who was at number 50? Yeah, all right. Um, okay. Yeah, who was number... Who, what... Yeah. What, yeah, what was all about the guy who was at number 50 in the 50 in the weirdest people mm. on the list? And just text in, uh, 83XFM and put your address on there as well and that. What Brilliant. prizes are there, Carl? Uh, loads of stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, that's actually not bad. There's um, Lord of the Rings on there. Michael Palin's Around the World in 80 Days. If you've not had a chance to see that yet, it's been repeated about 80 times. Um, <laughs> Look Around You, which is an excellent show. That's yeah, really funny. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, there's some other good. So that's not too bad. And also the um, relatively poor stand-up DVD, Ricky Gervais's live <laughs> show, which is uh, <laughs> mediocre. Can't give him away. Yeah. All right. And uh, yeah, you can uh, you can win all those pr prizes if you can answer which question again. Who, uh, who was the fella who was at number 50 in my book? What was up right. with him? Excellent. <laughs> Alright, so let's, uh, gotta play, uh... Thorns. And Thorns, That's yeah. the most beautiful track I I've been- I, I can't get enough of this. There's no- you'll love it. You'll love this. Carl, come on, what's the matter with you? What? Thorns. What's up? No- no blue sky. Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that you... a great track? It's alright, yeah. Just had an email, yeah. That woman who opened the office script could have her head cut off. Apparently. When a letter is posted, it becomes the property of the Queen until it reaches the person it was meant for. By opening it, she's committed treason and could be killed. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, Carl, are you? Go on. Apparently, uh, some copies of the Office Christmas specials, scripts, got sent to the wrong address. Some woman. And, uh, instead, I mean, I don't know what you'd do in that situation. Normally, if I get mail that's not addressed to me, I just put it, give it to the postman or put it back in the post box. Radio 1 tried to speak to her, but apparently, um, she's got a gag in order, which makes us think that she sold it to the Sunday. So oh, we right. we read it. We read the, the plot yeah. of the office tomorrow yeah. in the Sunday papers, which uh, ruin it for some people. Ruin it for a lot of people, yeah. But the other thing is, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if it was sent to her, obviously her name wasn't on it. Oh. If that's if that's true, in which case, I think that's quite a serious offence, isn't it? I would, I would hope so. I mean, I would hope that yeah, if I but, sent something in an envelope, uh, it was. But the BBC oh, Ash actually, the BBC thinks that. Because the person it, they said it was meant to be sent to got his, he thinks maybe that's an excuse. Maybe someone gave her the script and said, "Don't tell her it. Don't say it came from me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe she's protected someone. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I I mean, if, if that is well, either way, either way, don't sell it to a newspaper. Well, I, yeah. It's just it's just the kind of mercenary nature of it that I loathe. You know, it's the fact that and the fact that it's only just now it makes me wonder if she had it there lying around in the off in, in her house and someone said to her, well, "Why don't you go to the papers?" Yeah. Try and flog it. But I just don't think it's- I don't think she's gonna get a lot for it, cause people are gonna see it soon. It's not like it's the hit the diaries. Well, they're not mean? very well written. <laughs> but I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know. Is, I is tell you what I'm frustrated by is just the fact that it's like we've worked hard to give people some kind of pleasure for this Christmas, you know, because a lot of people are very depressed, Rick, very yeah. low at this time of year, they've not got what they wanted. But We're trying to cheer them up, give them a bit of happiness. Yeah, but I, I think she'll be happy if she gets a lot of money. <laughs> true. True. I don't know. I think it's- I think it's just tacky, really. It's like, well, I just say, if you're a fan of the show and you don't want to know what happens, then don't read the Sundays tomorrow, or at least avoid it when it says we tell you what happens. The papers might not ruin it. The papers might go, we've got them, but we're not going to ruin it for people. Well, that'd that would be, be nice, ideal. That would be a nice gesture. But, uh, I don't all know. I, I, all I can say is, it's a good job that I send out the prizes. <laughs> so, because that Michael Palin around the world in 80 days will be going to the person who won it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if someone else receives it, they better not try and, do you know yeah. what I mean, keep it. It should go to the winner. Yeah, right? exactly. That is a very good point. Mm. So, be warned. Don't open things that weren't addressed to you. Yeah. I a Pandora's box. Though, <laughs> as a, there's some sort of lesson there. Yeah. What happened? All the evils of the world, wasn't it? Pretty much. What? Yeah. Oh, don't try oh, and explain brilliant. it to, uh, Carl. No, Pandora's box. Go on. Well, told not to open it, opened it, released all the evils that are in the world now. But did- did the person say if you open it, loads of evil will come it's out? It's not true. It's not true. It didn't really happen. It's not like evolution. It's not the truth. But you remember that, yet you won't listen to some of my stuff. About goldfish and stuff. No, it's not that we don't listen to it. it it's that you would pass off how all the evils in the world got here. Because I, I don't know if it would be, uh, Pandora opens box! <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of headlines. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, look. It, it, yeah, imagine if Pilkington was on News at 10, okay? We should just explain, you cannot be bothered to read an entire news story. You get everything you need from a headline, don't you? Well, I think it's enough. I think if they did. Well, the let's news see, let's see, let's see if this is enough. No. Let's see right, if this. Okay. If Trent McDonald just read this on the news at 10, it'd be short and you'd get back to the, the football, or whatever. Yeah, well, the there we go. And here is the news at 2.15 with Carl Pilkington. Bong. Man who walks backwards around lake falls in. <laughs> Bong. Okay. Chinese woman eats dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Uh, man lives in rubbish dump for 10 years. <laughs> Brilliant. Bong. Czech family says they've got a rabbit with three knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Done. Sorry, can you just read a little bit more of the Czech family with three knobs? Uh, Just about a family. Not read it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go there. It's just he, about. Just he can't read it to himself. I told him to read it to himself. We still hear it. No, he was, just I could see his lips moving. <laughs> go on. Just this fella who, uh. Had three rabbits. Right, just think of this is Trevor McDonald. Yeah. Okay, carry on, Carl. Okay, oh, oh. Here's the news, right? Good, brilliant, go on. There's a fella, he's got he's got three rabbits and that, and then uh, <laughs> he checks them out, right? Yeah. Two of the rabbits have got two knobs each. Right. And he goes, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Sure. And they're ch throwing them around, sort of chucking, you know, showing them around the family and stuff, yeah. saying, look at that, that's weird. Picks up the third one, it's got three. Yeah. So they ate the two with two because they thought, we best keep the third one because a little bit lucky in that. Yeah. It is lucky, three knobs there, yeah. Now here's the sports news, and that's, <laughs> that's how it would work. Yeah, okay, brilliant. <laughs> well, we about the Chinese woman who eats dirt. I'm interested it's in said. that. said. That's it, that is the story, isn't it? What more do you need to know? It's well, I want to know a little bit more. Can you just invent 78 year old Chinese woman, she says she's 78. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder. Yeah. Is my theory. Uh, Carl's theory is that Chinese people don't age well, and so those Chinese people that are saying they're 112 are really only 33. Um. That's why he doesn't want to be recognised, because he doesn't want to walk out from here into Chinatown. Yeah. Uh, it just says she, she's been eating soil for, uh, <laughs> 70 years, she's ate about 10 tons of the stuff, and, uh, it's done her no harm. Keep, kept her grounded. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's probably alright for you, isn't it? Because yes. it passes through, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, they say, don't they, if you're having a kid, let it play in soil and that, because, um... Well, that's to, to get it immune, yeah, to get yeah. it, yeah. But, but uh, lots of, like, um, things without, with, with um, sort of, uh, birds and reptiles sometimes swallow, um, soil and, uh, stones, because it grinds up stuff, breaks down cellulose for them. Doesn't do you any harm. Since, obviously, the days of Nostradamus, there's been many people who've tried to foresee the future. Uh, Carl, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's endless, um, you know, predictions. Apparently there are other planets that may collide with ours. You know, there's some scientific basis on this. But if you knew with certainty that today was the end of the world, how, how would you spend that final day? So, for instance, I've always wanted to smash up a bar. 
Do you know what I mean? Strange, strange, but I've always wanted the exhilaration of just smashing all those bottles, like you see in a film. But would you enjoy it as much, knowing that you're gonna die in eight hours? I don't know, I suppose it's the sense of abandon, you know? I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just see, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know, I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought, because, um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately, because they're gonna the next day anyway. everyone's gone, yeah, so there's so, not gonna be mourning families. But, but then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. With plants and animals, there could be up to 10 million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't it? A lot. But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's, that's well, what I mean is the police know about the gangsters. Right. But they go, right, we're aware of them. Right. right. And get on with it. We'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. The spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them. Don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet, that lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised? I'd be surprised if there was something... It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now. Because we have to, we live no, in a world don't. now. We do, we know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or... Well no, well, no look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or a What do you mean a, it's like, not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing. It's not something that's... AIDS hasn't been, like, living under the soil for millions of years, but I'll wait till the 1980s and I come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in, not, I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms. There's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like, almost like bacteria. Sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to... I don't think she can. Just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of because, the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand, why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s, we uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented. And, and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, it's all, it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go. It's all right. It's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who but said he's up there with <laughs> Einstein? In, one, PR of, people in one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You go Einstein, you know Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson, <laughs> and, that's, and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now, because everything that's needed. Remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, "What can I make? Oh, I need a toaster." They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill, and they've gone, "I need some sort of device here." Well, I suddenly, yeah, 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 yeah. And what can it do? Oh, Necessity like is the mother invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, Where, "Where's a you know a loophole in the market? Where's a little?" Where's well, a this niche? is something. About what? a year ago, I came up with a see-through toaster, so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. 
Right. So I've just been beaten to the post. <laughs> <laughs> I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their designer car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> and then it, he put, he put, shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone, what a mania. I think that's a brilliant, I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently, and I would have loved but I think he did it when he was about nine, seat. and he must have thought, oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good if well, why hasn't the Why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving and you go, oh, where's the service station? You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would you say? So, so you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat that's a toilet? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to Cornwall all shitting? Well, not all the time, but he's, he's, he's more useful to me than a lighter. So also, what, at Where'd what you point wash do you wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Oh, that's the end of the journey. <laughs> oh, God! So, you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your arse at uh, Paul Perro. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, oh, I think I'll have one. You need one? Not really, but it's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy, I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. It's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minute break that takes, doesn't it? Ten no, minutes yeah. to Ten pull minutes. off, have a quick shit. Driving along. Just, it's just going on. <laughs> it's just going on. Don't even know about it. Radio's on. Everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean, we all do it as well. That's the thing. Anything else you'd uh, come up with? There's so many things. Chocolate fountain. Anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> Think of computers. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand. Now, for someone to come up with that, you go, this, there must have been some sort of alien involved here. What do you mean? Why do you <laughs> think that? <laughs> so I love it. So the frisbee, rubbish, anything too clever, well, it wasn't an invention, it was an alien. <laughs> So there's nothing between frisbee and computer chip? <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip? Where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, yeah. So with, you with, think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's great! Because <laughs> I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do- I know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You'd go, what are you, you don't do Well, that's what genius is, though, but isn't Carl, it? But there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been yeah. uh, a, a spaceship uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And there's all them rumours, isn't they, in the anger. They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them. Yeah, 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 steering wheel. Yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? and they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find Carl, these sand. but the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that, uh, what am I talking about, sand <laughs> makes computer chips, <laughs> that silicon can have information uh, 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 put on it. But we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, yeah. do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, that, yeah, but that's nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature. Right? No. He comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are, we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Think of that. We only differ on 1.4% of well, our that, genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. <laughs> Because that's a lot different. <laughs> Listen, are we going to get uh, rock busters out of the way quickly? Go on then, Let's quickly. Do it, then. Give us do it. It's not going to take long, is it? Go on. Right then. Yeah. So, uh, three clues and that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, initials of a band and artist. Yeah. You can win some stuff. Steve yeah. can go through the. Ladder forty nine better be in there. Oh, let me just check. quickly. Uh, it's ladder forty. You get on with those clues, and I'll tell you what's happening. And this is the last time. The winner of this. No, we'll do it again next week. Oh, is it? And then there'll be six people and we just draw someone out of a hat to win the, the signed Homer, the, uh, Nigel Tufnell, and the Assis Flannels. Right, you're ready then. But they've got great prizes, they've got Alias, they've got... 
They have. They've got Alias. They've got the Aviator, uh, Batman cartoon series, M Night Shyamalan's The Village, uh, atrocious film, and Ladder Forty Nine. There it is. Yeah, Brilliant. It's in there. Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta. Their greatest challenge lies in rescuing one of their own. Brilliant. Go right. on, yeah. Carl. Right, the first one then. Uh, when I'm ill, I throw up horse food. When I'm ill, I throw up horse food. How can that work? What's going on there? The init initials there. I H, right? It's a band or an artist, a singer, something like that. I H, they're, they're the initials, the clue. I've got it. When I'm ill, I throw up horse food, right? I've got it. Right then, well, don't say anything. Works, doesn't it? No. Mm. <laughs> Second one, uh, that garden tool, it's not yours, what are you doing with it? Right? Yeah. That garden tool you're messing about with there, it's not yours. Yeah. Give it back. Right? What's it? N D. N D. Right? Artist or a band. What's going on there? Right. <laughs> Third one. <laughs> that male sheep sounds fed up. Why is he fed up? T R. T R is the initials. That male sheep sounds fed up. What's going on? If you know the answers to them three, uh, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk or you can text in 83xfm. Right? Great prizes. You can win yourself a copy of Ladder 49. <laughs> Well, come on then. Well, let's do rock busters. Yeah, they? do rock busters. And you got monkey news. Well, we'll see if we got time. No, we got to do monkey news. Right, listen, listen now, Justin. If if he's out in the office. Oh, look, just he... quick, do the right, rock listen, busters right. answers then. Have you got a winner? No, I don't even know the answers. Well, we'll, we'll do we'll I? Pick one. All right then. Uh, the first one. <laughs> oh, right, I just chaos. got the plastic cut. Great. Right, the ahead. first one was when I'm ill. Yeah. I throw up horse food. Right? Yeah. That's the clue. The initials were I H. I got right? this one. And I must say that was I sick haze because when you're ill, you're sick. What do horses eat? They eat hay. Isaac Hayes. Isaac yeah. Hayes is the answer. They got that. Second one, that garden tool, uh, that garden tool you've got, it's not yours. What are you doing with it? Mm. Right? ND. That was different. That was a, what, that, uh, what's a garden tool? A rake, right? If it's not yours, what have you done? You've, you've nicked it. You've nicked, nick, nick Drake. You've nicked, you've nicked that rake. Nick Drake. Nick Rake, right? So that's ND. You got that. I don't know that's, fine. That's, fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. The third one, that male sheep sounds well fed up. Go on. What's up with it? That was TR. Yeah. That was uh, that was that ram. Ram. It's a ram. That's a male sheep. It's it's fed up. It's moaning. Ram moans. Ram owns the Ramones. So they got that as well. Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM twenty four point nine. All right, Carl. You calm down now about science. I'm um, just. It, it just does me head in a lot of this stuff. I yeah. think I would've been better off sort of growing up in the 1940s or something. Why? Yeah, well, there isn't as much science going on, people just lived, <laughs> didn't they, for the moment. So you'd- what I mean? you, well, what if you'd had to go to war? What? what right, if you, maybe you'd... 1945 then I'd be happier. Just after the war. <laughs> just that bit after the war and before they started what, 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 what year would you want to be born? When was the war over? 45. Right. 46 then. But there's people there'd be rationing. There's rationing for another ten years. 56, then. But there's a lot of science going on. Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, it, it just annoys me all the messing about. They're always messing about with stuff and I sometimes think, is it doing any good? Is what I mean. Um, mouse with ears, mouse with monkey's testicles. They're messing about with a mammoth now. Go on. Well, they're just saying, well, they're, they're managing to knock one together. <laughs> <laughs> and you just think, some, some scientist somewhere. Right? Just hey, Andy, somewhere. Andy. No, but it's just, uh, do we need, do you know, I mean, we've done it before about the do we need them thing. The amount of creatures and insects and that, that are knocking about. <laughs> you got that caterpillar that I mentioned walking about, it doesn't know where it's going. Get rid of them. The mammoth. The world's busy enough, it's crowded, it's overcrowded now. How, how much room are they gonna take up? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why are they doing it, Carl? Do you know? You've got, you just, all you know is that they're, they're trying because, to muck around with Because they can, because that's all it is, isn't it? Because they can. They're mm. messing about. Someone's yeah. being paid to do stuff. What else are we here for? If not to try stuff out? What else are we here for? What do you mean? Well, what are we here for? Just to enjoy life, isn't it? Well, well that's right. Some scientists enjoy knocking a mammoth together. No, but don't, don't worry about the mammoth. It died out, maybe it died out for a reason. Why didn't Noah say that if it was if it was important? Because Noah, that's, that's not that's, 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 that's what do you mean? Noah's not true, is it? 
Well, I don't know, there might have been some truth in it. What- what truth in it? That he put two of every animal that existed into an ark? How big was this then? Why didn't they eat each other? Yeah, I know, I'm not saying- Imagine the noise, Carl. Yeah. No, trying to get there's, there's, there. there's points to that where I go, that didn't happen, cause where could he have been where there was a hamster and an elephant and a, <laughs> you know, and a crocodile, where was he? Do you know what I mean? But none of it's true. What bit do you believe? What do you mean? It got a bit wet. What- what- what are we talking about? The mammoth or the- no, no. What, what is up with you? No, it's just that we had uh, no, a lot- No, seriously, have you got brain damage? No, you, it's just that we had a lot of topics going on there, I just don't know which- you No, know, we were talking about. about Noah! And then you suddenly go, I know where it was, where did it be, tell what, with a mammoth or Noah, what? <laughs> what is it? None of it's true. What- uh, think of it. Who t uh, oh, God. Think of the first thing. Build an ark. Alright. <laughs> Can I just, just clarify, what's an ark? It's a bit a big boat thing. Right. Yeah. I just, I've never had any experience of carpentry. Just build a big boat thing. But I don't, I'm not really, I don't make- Just have a go, don't worry, you'll be alright, I'll make right. sure it's alright. But w once I've built that, I mean, yeah. how big should I build it? What am I Very intent? big, it needs every animal, two of every animal, go there. on. Every animal. I mean, the boat building, fair enough. Like, make okay. it, I told you to make it big. Right. Don't worry about the fish, they can swim. Okay, but so what's All the, the thing? birds. Like, get the flightless ones though, they're drown. Get get the flightless ones. They would not the penguins, they're flightless but they can swim. But all other animals I should be writing this down. <laughs> 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 oh. why, why I mean, wouldn't you have took that opportunity to go right, you know, forget the uh you know, whatever. Mind you the jellyfish didn't need to get in it, did it? But but there's other animals where you can We go. don't need to be here. No. Because Carl is actually having a little argument with his own head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you remember that comic strip, The Numbskulls? <laughs> yeah. Where there's loads of people in there doing different stuff. That he can hear them. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes his own mind puts him off. <laughs> yeah. Like just then, he has an argument with himself and it puts him off. <laughs> right, what's your question? I'm just saying, don't mess about with a mammoth. Whoa! Good. Okay. Well, what a platform, it's good. You know, we've got a radio show, we've got our own radio <laughs> show. People are spending money to advertise it, people are actually bothering to listen. And you, oh. the, what, the, wor the words of wisdom coming out of your mouth is don't mess around with a mammoth. Brilliant. Great. No, but. Just, just going back to. You like, sound just like Bob Galdoff. Oh. oh, I can't be bothered with this. He's trying to say. What? What can I be bothered with? Just because I think I've got a good point. What? Don't mess around with a mammoth. <laughs> what? Or, or that's anything. not a point. Don't put your daughter on the stage, missing. Well, what, what are you talking about? It's just that I think there's too many animals knocking about. I mean, I know you love your cat and what have you. Waste of time though. What do they do? <laughs> well, they frighten you. Well, yours is mental though, isn't it? He's sitting there and the cat right behind him. I think they nearly shot himself. Well, your cat is crazy. It does go through. It, it loves. It's got claws, big old claws. Of course they have, it's a cat! Yeah, but though most cats don't come leaping at your ghoulies every time you sit down with an early warm hot cup of tea. Aren't they pointless though, Steve? <laughs> well, I've, I've always had a problem with pets generally. The <laughs> but pets. cats the most. I, I was saying to Ricky about, I don't know why, out of all the animals that Dick Whittington could have took with him on his journey. Again! Yeah. Forget the cat. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> what so, okay, what, okay, okay, you've got to walk to London because the, the streets are paved with gold. You can take any animal. What do you take? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a cat because it would keep wandering off. You do double the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get it back. Come here. They don't listen to you. It's point, I just can't be dealing with them. I agree, you don't get enough affection back from a cat. Oh. A dog, it loves you, it can't get enough of you. But cats, they're very, they're very snooty. Well, they're cool, aren't they, cats? They're cool and independent. I like dogs as well, I like all animals. What would you take with you? What, if I was Dick Whittington? Yeah. And where's he walking from? Like, <laughs> I don't know, wasn't it Bristol to London or something? I don't know. Uh, Again, it's a bit hazy. <laughs> this isn't well documented. But did, couldn't he, I mean, why is he taking a pet and not a mate who... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested. For the... I try and learn, and you don't help. That's a track from the new Amy Mann album, The Forgotten Arm. It's called She Really Wants You. XFM 104.9, Ricky Jamais, Steam Richard, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Talking about, uh, technology, sometimes being a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, th when you came round the other night, before you came round, I'm sitting there, just at the computer. It's a hot day, wasn't it? I was, as you know, I was in my shorts. I was tucked in, I was- I didn't get them out till you came round, just my own business. Jane got some wax strips and she went, oh let me just do your back. I went, no, no, no. Right, I'm not- I haven't got a hairy back. I've got a couple of wispy hairs on my shoulders, probably about twenty either side. Nothing to worry about. It's not like I look one of those people that's like, 
a, a gorilla on the beach. I assume uh, your back looks a little bit like Carl's head. Exactly, yeah. Um, and she went, I'm just doing this, oh no, she put it on the back and she ripped it off. I went, forget it. She went, I've got to do the other side now. I said, forget it. I and I, oh god, I let her do the other side. It's ridiculous. It's so painful. And I've hardly got any airs on the back, right? Uh, they've, they've made a map, haven't they? For the, uh, yeah. for the universe. Yeah. Side. Well, yeah. To, as far as they can, yeah. Big, is it? It's massive. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're that lost, <laughs> you know what I mean? Forget <laughs> the map. The map's not gonna help you. Sure. <laughs> if you're that lost, forget it. Look, we're never gonna make it. We're not gonna live 400 <laughs> light years. We're not gonna- Of course you could, um, take a shortcut through a wormhole, couldn't you? What's that? Oh, no, no, <laughs> no! <laughs> Let's not talk about the universe, please. Let's well, talk well, about well, something that you can comprehend, Carl. Well, listen. Were you on Richard and Julie yesterday? Right. Yeah. Tell us about that. It was good, it was good fun. Yeah? It's a bit surreal. Is it? Yeah. It's th it's nice. That's nice though. I really uh, there's something charming about them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They mm. they go off on tangents. They they sort of digress. They suddenly think of something. She suddenly go, oh, my jumper's itching or something. You know? Yeah. And it's quite it's quite charming. It's not annoying at all. Yeah. And um, I'd never seen it through before. And uh, um, I hope I didn't insult them because I said it was like an adult Blue Peter. Right. But, but um. In what it, way? Well, they had a they had a um a Christmas wrapping con uh competition. Right. Then they had, they had uh, a Christmas wrapping Yeah. Competition. And then they had, um, That wasn't them doing kind of Then they had what the French people are like. There was a little- didn't quite understand that, living in France. Then they had a, a woman who, um, relived an Elizabethan Christmas. <laughs> the bit that made me laugh was, she was, um, sort of announcing this through an Elizabethan microphone and PA <laughs> to all the people sitting around dressed as- <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit confused. Like, this sounds and, uh, funny. It was good though. And, uh, and, uh, at the end I said, um, the next week I'll be washing a tortoise and that. Yeah. And the producer said, if you do want to um, <laughs> make something for the show, we'll definitely feature it. <laughs> so I might, I might make some of those things that you work on Blue Peter, like sending, sort of, you know, I remember, um, they made a chest of drawers out of three match, match boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For Barbie doll or something, or Action yeah. Man. I seem to remember them showing you how to make a dusty bin, once. What, on, on, uh, yeah. Blue Peter? I made one, I remember making one. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen- I haven't watched Peter obviously for like 25 years, yeah. but is it the same sort of thing? I think it's pretty much the same now, yeah. They sort of- occasionally they'll have kind of um, larger sort of dramatic scenes, so that all the- all the cast will kind of act out sort of murder mysteries and stuff like that. Oh yeah. There's a bit more of that going Do on. Do they still have the Kodo band. drummers from Japan over? <laughs> I think the Kodos come on like twice a week. With this, the shiniest buttocks I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Grease, they're in like sort of nappies or whatever they call yeah. them, and they're playing the drums, and you see them from behind playing these big drums, and they've got shiny buttocks, the lights really pick up their- their arses. I think they've- they've- cause they've kind of funked it up since we were younger, cause I remember it was always stuff like, let's have a look at this traction engine. Yeah. Or let's drive some traction engines, one very small, yeah. a slightly larger one, then you need a really exactly. larger one, and we'll just drive them around the studio nope, for a bit. No, so you're going up Nelson's column with Shep. Yeah. You might die, you might not. But I always wondered if perhaps the people in charge were not perhaps down with the kids, when they were saying, <laughs> what we going to do this week, let's have a look around the traction engine. I, exactly. That's I, what I, the kids of the early 80s want. But it was, they did used to sneak in education, whereas Magpie, that was just like funky people who were sort of really in the 70s. Never watched Magpie. No, I, I know I, I got it wrong as well. I did yeah. used to watch it, but I used to watch Blue Peter, I think I was conned. I always feared, cause I, uh, see with the Blue Peter, I felt like I was learning something. I imagine on Magpie it was just, you know, Mr. T came round and, or whatever, it was a lot more yeah, cool, was it? Yeah, it, it was a little bit more cool, yeah, and a lot more throwaway and um, it was sort of like, Magpie was sort of like looking. Right, On yeah. telly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. What happened to looking? I don't know, it should be the Junior TV Times, I don't know. There's probably people listening who've never even heard of Is looking. that what it was? Apparently so. But there was cartoons and things. Mm, yeah, it was just basically an advert for ITV. <laughs> Looking. Oh, was it? Almost entirely, yeah. And did it have- did it have like a Laurel and Hardy strip or something? No, it would have things like the story of Five Star. Really? And uh- Is it like- it is like the ones in the- the News of the World? Not dissimilar. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I've had five kids! <laughs> Next picture. <laughs> Bought one of them a guitar. <laughs> yeah. Next one. We're at number seven. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Next week, Tina Turner. I love the fact that Five Star is still touring. There's only three of them now. Really? They're still called Five Star. Really? Mm. Yeah, I th there was four Boney M's at one point. <laughs> tribute acts, that each one of them had a- and then there was a fifth, who was someone who was- wasn't the original member of one of the Boney M's who set up a splinter group. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know how many there are now. Yeah. I was thinking, um, what we should do on this show as well, is have a doctor. Right, just is that, sit in the corner. worried about your health? No, no, just so when's coming, so when- when Carl says, why are your bollocks there? The doctor can now go, well, let's ask doctor. <laughs> right. And he goes, they're there because I don't know. And we need a is vet Dr. as well. Is Dr. Fox available? <laughs> we need- we need a doctor, probably a vet. 
some sort of vet or a naturalist would be good. And what else? Oh, and a physicist or something, or an astronomer. Mm hmm What do you think, Carl? I'd love that. Would you really? Yeah, yeah. Are there- is there any doctors listening? Of course there are. As if a doctor would <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> If there, if you are a doctor, I want a qualified doctor. I don't mean someone who's in their second year at medical school. We're not interested in that. Right, a qualified doctor, a GP or a, a, any specialist, and you maybe want to contribute regularly, give us a call. Yeah. We'll even give you a special phone line and stuff. Yeah, yeah. For not for now though, for, we're gonna get a lot of mentalists, aren't I we? I would adopt a nom de plume, an alternative, you know, identity, because your patients are gonna flee if they find out you listen to this Exactly. Tribe. What's the phone number, Carl? Well, they might as well just email in with the number, might That's because you don't like answering the phone. No, I just think it's a better way of doing it. Okay. Uh, how can they prove they are a doctor? Just, uh Go on, Carl. Uh Something to do with, uh <coughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. Something to do with, uh What thing could they say that we'd say, well, he's definitely a doctor, or we wouldn't know that? Think of something. Well, Look I'm not him. a doctor. So- We're on the radio, Carl! When we ask you a question, you've got to speak! I know, I'm just thinking, I don't know how you'd know, because you don't- you never ask them, do you? If you need their help, you don't think of going, no, before you do this, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> but saying that, but saying that, right? Go on! Um, Go on! Talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um, oh, what was it now? <laughs> Listen, a fella- Play no, a record. Listen, do you want- Let's just- Alright. Alright, no, come on, alright, he's got it now. Go on, go on. This fella goes yeah. to the doctors, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Right, if this is in any way apocryphal, stupid, illogical, impossible, right, you are never, ever speaking again on radio. So make sure this is at least possible. I- I'll tell you what, I'll even give you improbable, but possible. So if anything that breaks the laws of the universe, or logic, okay, that's all you have to avoid, on you go. Right, so this fella, right, he goes to the doctors because he's got earache. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, if a chimp's living in his brain, <laughs> that he Come gives, on. Go on. So he's got earache, he's sat in the waiting room and it's all, his ears all bunged up and it's hurting a lot and what have you. So the doctor comes out and he goes, right, and because his ears all bunged up, he doesn't hear it that well, right? So he thinks, it must have been me. Right? So he wanders in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Anyway- I tell you, I'm gonna hate this. I can just feel it in my bones. Steve, I'm gonna <laughs> let you take over. Okay, let's, so, on, let's hear it. Come so okay. the doctor says, uh, sit yourself down there. Right? So he sits himself down, he goes, uh, right, uh, take your, pa take your pants off. Right? <laughs> so he's saying that's a bit odd. Anyway, he, uh- He heard that though. He, <laughs> he, he, uh, apparently he took his, his tackle off. The doctor, like, did some operation. What, there in the waiting room? <laughs> no, in his office. In his office, yeah. What? Um, wait, wait, so, so he, so he removed what? His genitals? Yeah. In, in his office. Why, 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 Carl? Why, Carl? Because he hadn't called him in. Are we calling the bloke who wanted his testicles <laughs> taken off? And he didn't do it. You, f you, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so the doctor went out and said, Mr. Uh, Jones, who's here to <laughs> me to whip off your cock and balls, just here and now, right? The bloke comes in, didn't it? It must have been me. So the bloke with the- we wanted his balls taken off didn't say, oh, I think he said me. So he- so he didn't interrupt then. So the bloke goes in, he starts taking his testicles off and he doesn't say, I'm here for me ears. It's a new single from, uh, Snow Patrol and Run. That's brilliant, isn't it? It's good stuff. On XFM 104.9. Rick. Go on. I'm about to say three little words to you yeah. that I've never said to anyone before. Go on. Carl is right. On what, though? From Reuters, someone's emailed in, uh, a Brazilian man who went to a clinic to have an aching ear checked ended up having a vasectomy after mistakenly believing that the doctor had called his name. Um, he had gone in there, entered the vasectomy room when he was called, he was called by the full name and yet thought it was him, but the strangest thing is that he asked no questions when the doctor started preparations in the area which had so little to do with his ear. He later explained that he thought it was an ear inflammation that had got down to his testicles. And, um, the fellas came off. Extraordinary. Right. I'm stunned. Amazing, isn't it? But there's lots of things that keep coming true with Carl's nonsense. There's a- there's a program on next week. The boy who gave birth to his twin. Oh. And he's there, he's like- he's like pregnant with his thing, you know. How long ago did we do that? <laughs> yeah, you discussed that. 
years ago. When I talked about it, it was a baby who had a baby. Now it's a boy who's yeah. like a grown man and that. It's took them ages to sort that out. Mm. I did it in one link one Saturday <laughs> yeah. with the full story. Right? Keeps happening. We've done like Donald McIntyre's thing, right? He's been ripping us off. Mm -hmm. I did Cheap as Chimps. Yeah. He's, he's been doing it. No, he hasn't. He has. He's done some program about how much it costs to get a monkey and that. <laughs> right. Uh, what else have we done? <laughs> he believes this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's loads of stuff we've done like that. Um, you had the word the maggot coming out of the head. I laughed at you. Yeah, didn't didn't in the program didn't see him wrapping the head in bacon, but <laughs> I mean the, the principles there. Bob Holness is ripped off frock busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he ripped you off years ago. Yeah, he's been ripping you off for years, which is even more annoying. Yeah. So uh, yeah, interesting. <laughs> I he's love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat-nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time, or oh, got a compass. Don't you know where North <laughs> is, you twat? <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> because you find, you find new things, I'm forever going down. Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the, uh... I just think, you know, Columbus... Alright, what's the most interesting thing you found when, when lost? Um, uh, like I say, they normally, I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? Dressed you never up as Columbus, you never went and bought a sat-nav, <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go out, why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate I is just, fancy dress. No, but I like looking at the, uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right, so you found a fancy dress <laughs> shop. Where are you supposed to be going that you got, you had time to get sidetracked and go in a... I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> Which is cool. Amazing! That's the last time. You so always want to get lost. You, you always want to get lost. No, because I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself. Get a sat nav. No, I'm. I'm just saying. You, that's that's how you find little treats along the way. And you, <laughs> next time you pass it, or next time someone says, "Do you know where the fancy dress shop is?" You go, "Yeah, I do." You go, "I have no idea because I was lost. No, I didn't no, know where no, it was." No, 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 no. Normally, oh, I well, I'm not going to tell you. Lazy cunt. Have you got an AZ? Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself. You lazy twat. <laughs> <laughs> So, what have you learned? You keep going on about all this learning. What yeah. have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, sum when? up, sum up mankind's foray into the future. I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future. It will then be read in a hundred years' time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions just that you predict think, no, Just, just that sum you... it up, just sum it up. Um, I believe, start off with, I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will. Okay, start off and with that. And what, just have like a top five? Well, no, or just, just... Well, maybe just predictions. Just predicting yeah. time. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So and just... then a little, and then a little thing to remember, and remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkington, predict that in the future mankind will... Uh... Start off with that, start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. Alright, I'm Carl. And, uh the future. He's already gone off-road. It's a scary on. place. But, the future's gonna happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. 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 Okay, your predictions are... Mm. Well, we're, we're, we're all, uh mm. It's not a sound bite. Yeah, it's keep going, 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 space, okay, going space, 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 Get it think, wrong. okay, think first, think uh, and then, then say it. Okay, starting from now, these words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. I think trousers are going to be stopped being made. <laughs> Just because right. you see, you see kids now, they've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think I think they're, they're, that's evolution, just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> that's the evolution of the trouser because it's dropping incredibly well, you see, no, down you can the see arse. kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one. <laughs> okay, that's an amazing make, one. They'll stop making trousers in the future. Good, okay. Good. Uh. We're going to get weaker. We're, we're, that's already that's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> right. So we've definitely, that's, that's evidence, you can't argue with that. <laughs> I probably put that first because they go, he's right, what's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna die. 
I'm gonna die. Okay, they used three. to say, and I'm gonna die. Keep the doctor away. They used to say. They used to say, pull your trousers up. No, they say, put them down. You can. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll and they go, Ooh, what can number three be? Uh, I reckon we'll blend all our food. No, I literally they... thought they were going to make a point about race! Yeah. I never thought it would be! We'll blend all our food! <laughs> like oh, like they do for babies, you mean? Just, oh. Yeah, I just think, oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen yeah. chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. yeah. We add wisdom teeth. Yep. Oh. Now they say they took them out, you're not using them. Yep. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yep. Mm. Sorbet. Yep. Soups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, everything's softer, Just isn't it? When you get an avocado, yeah. they say, yeah. is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think, I think chewing is a sort of thing, thing of the past. the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You mm. don't have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating but it. But he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon... Uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth. Mm. Done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> This is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're, if, if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean is what? that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So, what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental, pointless, would never work. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely one of the maddest so things you've ever said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, it yeah. could be done. It, I reckon it, it could be easily why done. Why would it be? Okay, okay, because that last one, that's number four. I've blown a bollocks. Um, so what's number five? There'll be, five. there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, we're not running out of no, words. No, we are. Now. We are definitely no, running out of words. No. It's using the letters we've no. already got and yeah. making new words. Yeah, we're yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have Plenty. you any idea? You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet mm. is shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. They go mental with the L. <laughs> Now, now, what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling we, at all. We, we are. We're not. I mean, it's a stupid... Boswallocks. <laughs> in shampoo. Now, there's a word where they've gone, well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. Have you just made that up? No. no it's that. It's now they go, I knew, knew with Boswallocks and Ceramide are. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to invent, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. Yeah, it's another word! Is that real? You've made yeah, that up, no, you? I am, that's a real word. Yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh Go on. sodium. That sounds <laughs> that sounds alright. He likes sodium, he doesn't like with that. Because it sounds like an, an something in it like an ingredient. Well yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswallocks? Are you winding me up <laughs> no, the two it's of you? Real. It's, it's it's real. And that's because 26 letters, we've wasted them. Years ago we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia sticking a P on it. And uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that letter doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? <laughs> and now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things, no. cars are called things like 
you know, GTI or something, because they're going, well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word that up. hasn't been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be you. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, I think we've um, sorted out the future. Where's your hat at? Basement Jacks. Mm. Right, okay, let's get this. Have right. we have we have we knocked this on the head then? It's it's not happening. Oh here he is. Look. Here he is. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> In a, is how, how have you? Oh, God. I don't believe oh, that. Oh, that's pathetic. I do not believe that. I that's heard... absolutely pathetic. Now they won't believe this, will they? No. Right. Oh, yeah. If I say that Jonathan Ross just got his massive member out, and he is a big lad, yes. come and yeah. come and sit down. I've got your tickets, Mrs. Gervais. Thank well, you. What's going on here then? I, I mean, why are you dropping off tickets? Well, because you know, in in the spirit of the, the comedy awards, we like to have the rising young stars of the British comedy. That's awards. right. Yeah. And that's and, me. Well, we couldn't find any this year, so we asked Ricky whether he would sit in the rising young star seat, and I, I wanted to deliver the tickets personally. So there's no excuses if he doesn't turn up later. Yeah. I, I always suspected that you were uh, sort of pretty well endowed. Yeah. And now, and now we've seen. You know, it's on webcam. That, that, that was just one of my cocks. <laughs> We That's the one you're wearing today. That, didn't we? Did we you? Don't say that. that. No, we were. This is going to be the happening young station. What's going on? No, no you can't say stuff like that. You yeah. can't. No, just, no. just careful what you say. Look after Julian Clary. Oh, what? Can I? And he comes back in a person like. Ten years in the world. Happened to you. That's Jesus. Just, you're thinking of isn't just, it? Just because <laughs> you're on everything at the moment. I right? walked in here and I came in here and I thought this is the young happening place. And what do I see in here? Three old men sitting. What are you talking about? I'm only 28, 27. You all look. You're wrecked. You all look wet. Well, that's because we're always partying. I was looking for some youngsters. Where's the youngsters? I wanted to see some tight leather pants. I wanted to see some foxy chicks hanging on you every word. What is it? It's a bunch of old blokes and a bloke they're washing up in a sink. Look at him. He even dresses for radio. Look this is him. ludicrous. It's amazing. Looks like you're, you're I love the fact away. you were on the phone to Gervais last night, weren't you? Asking his advice yeah. on clothes. Well, look at him. Well, He's going for the man down the DSS. I like look. that look. That's no, a nice look. Have you, you got a single pair of trousers that aren't elasticated at the waist? <laughs> <laughs> they're, ma they're maternity jeans, aren't they? They've got a whole frank plank panel that pulls it forward. The thing is, what I do, at the end of the uh, week, I can pop these in the pan and I can make a nice suit with all the food <laughs> that's encrusted in them. That's his years as a homeless coming before there. <laughs> Look at you, but one what? step away from Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. I'd like, to be, I'd like to be that bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you dropping off tickets? Are you a little bit... Because I, th I thought you were married and stuff. Why do you suddenly got this obsession with Gervais? Because I'm a bit of rough, ain't I? <laughs> I? Yeah, it's like when you see Dale Winton out with those rough boys. I'd like to get one of young. <laughs> when, when a top celebrity in a lovely looking suit drops uh, walks down the corridor mm. with his penis out yes yeah. i know that i'm still you attractive know one. you've arrived <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was i was in all in the same way for me it was des o'connor yeah. it's like it's the passing <laughs> under the baton if i may use that euphemism <laughs> <laughs> and you've been battened but it's it's fantastic well, yeah. it's, it's, it, is, it is a pleasure i don't think i'm complacent just on mix with you, you i still wake up and think i don't believe it i'm mates with jono can i just no, point out jono. i was listening to the show last week and i heard you as always revealing a little too much about yourself if you don't mind me saying so yeah. steve Trump, not as much as you. you no but that was just for the for the benefit of the room <laughs> yeah. um yeah and talking about when you used to occasionally urinate in the sink yeah was when you were around my house last time and i can <laughs> And you looked a bit shifty. No, please reassure me. It no. was it was more ownership. Yeah. I was like, I went to my territory. And I, I, then yeah. then p other people that come in and go, has Gervais been round here? It's like just marking my territory. Because my coffee the next morning had a hazelnut tang to it <laughs> that I don't remember putting in. Can yeah. I just say something? Because I, I mean, I used to I used to you know mention to you Gervais when we first started getting involved in the business. Yeah. I should say if there was one celebrity I'd like to be friends with, it's Jonathan Ross. Yeah. Lo and behold, Ricky's befriended Jonathan Ross. I'm nowhere to be seen. But Not Ricky invited round. Ricky told me that I could be his friend, providing I, n I never extended the arm of friendship. Right. Either. Yeah. If you ever. I if, thought as much. He tries I, to keep everyone else down. He works with from the office, all the other shows. He, he yeah. tries to keep them down. He's yeah. like, I didn't even want you to come one. in. I yeah, wanted yeah. to meet you on the steps. Yeah. I didn't even want to tell him you were around. <laughs> but you called. He went, "Who's that?" And he saw your name come up, and he went, well, "Can I meet him?" Well, well you're no. com you're coming tonight, aren't you? This isn't Radio Two, by the way. These links are way too long. This is snappy radio. We have to play. Yeah. You might be kids of lost interest. But the kids, the kids want to hear Coldplay, Catatonia. You know what I like? How about some more of that instant? Any forgettable hip hop you play each week? <laughs> one, of those, one of those obscure oh, hip hop who That's Thanks. the worst feature on British radio. You should be ashamed of yourself. Thanks. Wait a minute, I've heard your voice on radio too. Put it away. Put I'm, it away. I'm Carl. Carl, how you doing? Oh. I'm alright. Got a question for you. Quiet man. Got a question. Yeah. The Pope. Yeah. <laughs> what semi-precious stone does the Pope wear? It is easy. Go on. Topaz. 
Is that the right answer? I don't know, I might have wrote it down. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Jonathan. It's not, it's not what he publicly admits to, but I have to know, because I was hanging out with him <laughs> at the Groucho one night, and he was saying, oh, look at this, look at this, look at that toe badge, go and buy that, look at look that. Look at that. Vatican City. Look at that, we can make a nice ring out of yeah. that, he said. Didn't go anywhere, but thanks for asking. <laughs> I, I better go, I've got to go, I've got to go and buy some winkle pickers. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. Enjoy it. Yes. Yes. Carl, I wish I could say it had been a pleasure, thanks. but actually it was quite creepy. <laughs> 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 See you later. Thanks. Please. You too. Beautiful day. Yep. Now, I was just saying that's probably one of my singles of the year, but was it this year or the year before? Oh, um, crumbs, I don't know. It was, I think, was it 2000, the album? It was the first one off the album. Maybe that could be a question. <laughs> no, we need the answer, don't <laughs> well, we? We don't know the answer. No, we, oh, it's cool. Well, I just ask, um, John, Jonathan Ross just came in there to drop off some tickets for the Comedy Award show that he's hosting yeah. later this evening. Yeah. Uh, interesting, of course, a man who's 40 and still thinks it's funny to get his penis out. <laughs> It is, though. I love that. I look, because it's like, when's that, when's that novelty gonna wear off? 74, 75, <laughs> when it's just too horrible <laughs> exactly, to show in yeah. public, I imagine. Um, but, uh, but, so he dropped off some tickets for you. Yeah. Um, was asking you fashion advice last night. Yeah. Came, I mean, he came after a three-hour radio show he's just done on Radio 2. Good show, by the way, worth tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> um, he came straight around yeah. here, dropped some tickets off for you. He's now got to go and rehearse that show. a lovely man. I was out with you last night. Yeah. Went into this this pub, like, kind of, that we've been to a few times before. Went in there, and this guy came in and said, Your usual table, Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> Your usual table? Can I just ask you two questions, <laughs> uh, Godfather? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one is... <laughs> Have we won an, a prize tonight? On I the don't know. Wars? We genuinely two, don't know. Can you have someone iced for me? <laughs> <laughs> it's ludicrous. What have you suddenly got over all these people that they're doing all this for you? When have you suddenly become the daddy? <laughs> well, I came from nowhere, and uh, you know, I, I've got I've got Polaroids of the head of all the right, stations. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Because what I'm worried about is that, like, when we're wrapped up in our winter coats, yeah. you're walking on there in your little sort of you know little black overcoat, and I must look like your hood. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like your goon that walks with you. <laughs> Twice as tall. Uh, very much like Edward G. Robinson. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You are one with yeah. a pug face, obviously. Yeah, well, don't go on about <laughs> Sorry, it. Sorry, that was a bit hard. Alright, no, I don't know what you just well, about. Well, we've not, the, about. even Jonathan Ross couldn't save this show. No. It is the only A celebrity I know. Yeah, I'm all it. out of ideas. I thought we'd have a trivia game. That's rubbish, because he can't read. Or write. Yeah, and that's a, what is so it? So, are we knocking the trivia game on the Yeah. Game? Yeah. Uh, we, well, let's have one final question. On, what What's the, the answer? answer? What, what I don't answer? know. I don't know. For the Pope one. Uh, I don't know. We couldn't even figure out the question, Carl. What's the stone? What's the stone? It... Oh. Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh. Just don't, uh, entertain yourselves at home <laughs> while Carl looks for the, uh, question. Am Amethyst. 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 Yeah. Amethyst. <laughs> no, she was the first woman MP, I think, you'll find. Amethyst. Rubby. Or Diamondo. Um, so have you got maybe a final question? That's still one on it. Okay, do it aside and then we knock this on the head. Yeah. Go on in. Where... what? <laughs> 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 Who... Uh, have you not been practising in all these... we've had ads, we've had music... <laughs> oh, where... what? Rick, I don't think we should call ITV later. Uh, with man, this. Maybe he was talking about Jonathan's inquiry about sartorial elegance tonight. Where yes. what? Yeah. Maybe he's just like summed up that <laughs> yeah. conversation in What's just two. What's the most expensive pub in London? I think he won't know because he never pays. Hang on, uh, wait a minute. What does that mean? How, how does, what does that mean? What mean to buy? I buy the pub. How much is that? It's a million pounds, no, sir. Like, if you go in, according to the Time Out Guide, two thousand and one, if you went in there and bought a big round, it's a day pub. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive this, pub. Imagine this on Millionaire. Imagine that question well, on Mark it's all too vague. You're, I know, your specialised subject, how, how much things are in that, <laughs> and that, and whether they make you fat when you eat them, then. It's in London. Is oh. this like some guy went in the pub last night and thought, this is a bit pricey. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm the most expensive do, pub I'm I've gonna, ever been in. I'm gonna expose them <laughs> exactly. on Ricky and Steve's show. But does it mean, like, maybe is it a pub or a club, maybe, where you've no, got to be a no, member? No, it's a pub. I'll narrow it down, it's in Covent Garden. Punch and Judy. That's it. it. Has he got it right? Yeah. Too well, right. I have to hand it to you. Well done. Yeah. So brilliant. So who who was that? Who was that question from? Because maybe that they should get these three CDs. Let's let, let's let's give them that. Who is it, Carl? There's no way of verifying that. That's probably libelous. They have probably it's made from the time out guide. Okay. All right. Carl, who what was it? What are you it? for? You got it right. Yeah, I won. I won. Yeah. Carl, I won. Carl, who was it? The one. Well, listen, they know, so they've won. Yeah. Right. Stone. This is genius, Radio. This is brilliant. I tell you what's letting like us down. Him. I know. KP the P man. When <laughs> he was just he was just doing the press buttons and it was cool. <laughs> now we let him on the air because we thought it was funny. We quite like him. He's digging a grave for us. <laughs> right. Listen. This is a new feature I've introduced called Songs I'd Like to Play. 
<laughs> on the radio. <laughs> And, um, oh, this is falling apart. And, uh, and a friend of mine sent me a little CD of uh, little treats and stuff. Oh. And one of them is this track. It's uh, called Monkey Man. It's from the Rolling Stones player, Carl. It's an absolute gem. And what was that again, Steve? Rolling Stones and a track called Monkey Man. That's from a, a double CD, not available in the shops. My friend Dave G made a compilation for me, burned it onto CD using modern technology. That's one of the tracks on there. What's his name? What's his name? Dave Greenwood, obviously breaking several uh, copyright laws exactly. there. I would not encourage anyone to make copies of anything for anyone. It's breaking his the law. His name again if the police are listening? Dave Greenwood lives in Nottingham. I can How give details. How dare he do oh, that for you? It sickens me, Rick. He's making you receive, you know... Stolen goods. Yeah. And there are various artists on there who've barely got a penny, who are losing money hand over fist. The Rolling Stones, for instance. Yeah. The and Doors. XFM have done that as well played off you know and that's terrible now we've implicated those as well ex ephemera culpable um so is dave g thankfully not us rick no we're just middlemen caught up in it we're you know what <laughs> i mean yeah mr biggs behind this there's always mr biggs just pawns in his game and we? Um, <coughs> so that's uh, i'll be playing another track from that uh, well, uh, later on i've got a lovely couple of little tracks from my hip-hop selection looking forward to it uh, is Incidentally, can cool i just ask rick did Mama you get uh, you did you get a um little gift here from xfm i did um i got a lovely little voucher here it was very nice you're very thoughtful. I've also got one. How much is yours for? Twenty-five pounds to spend at John Lewis or Waitrose. Yeah. A little uh, kind of gift voucher there. Oh, I think I. Oh, I think I do uh, Waitrose because food. You can get a good lot of food for twenty-five quid. Absolutely right. You can't get a lot of like haberdashery. <laughs> for 25 quid. So I'll <laughs> be going about, with the food option. The thing about the gift voucher, a lot of people will. Re I'm sure receiving these over the Christmas sure. period. The thing about the gift voucher is it's like. It, it's like here's twenty five pounds, yeah. but I've limited where you can yeah. spend it. It's it's like it's like they don't want to give money because that's go. Say so this is like money, but not as versatile. Exactly, you can't spend it in as many places. And, but it's the thing is that surely the thing about a gift is, you know, you don't want people to know how much it was, and, unless you're letting them make their buck their ideas up for next year. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? If an aunt gives you, like, uh, you know, a single, like a step single, and you've given her 25 quid at the body shop, yeah. you're saying, you know how much that single costs. Exactly. So do I, I'm not yeah. gonna say, right? Yeah. Let's make up the difference next year, exactly. so aren't we? You exactly. know what I mean? Let's spend 50 quid on me next year. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how much he got? How much did you get? Did you get a gift voucher as well? Yeah, but I work here all week. Right, how much do you get? 150. 150 quid? Yeah. What, in gift vouchers? Yeah. To spend at the same places? Mm. I'd have to say, though, <laughs> I mean, it's not a very inventive gift, is it? It's Whoever came up thought, with it, though. it's a lovely thought. It's wonderful to have 25 pounds that I can, I can only spend in two places I never go in. But, uh, no, no, no so I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth. Any I'm not any looking a gift horse in the mouth. It is he, a treat. He, My sp only he spoke to Jonathan Ross like he was a normal person. Uh, from someone whose dad buys him a spade for Christmas, I thought you'd be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of leeches, did you see the dregs that they put into Big Brother last I've night? I've not been watching it. It's, I mean, it's bad enough anyway. It's a house full of people you wouldn't cross the road yeah. to, to, uh, to save, yeah. right? Yeah. But there's three. They've put in three more to spice up a little bit. They, they've put in a low esteem model. Sure. Right? They've put in Mr. Bean, who is the whitest man I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a new race. Yeah. He's an easy through. And this thing that looks like Matt Lucas in a bikini. Wow. Unbelievable. The f the fat things on her back, I thought she was coming towards me. Really? It was unbelievable. And the first thing she said, she went in, she looked in the mirror, adjusted herself and went, Oh, me minge! <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, it's, that, that's the level. Uh, it's... Um, do these people have relatives? Do they have? Is there anyone in the world who knows them? Claims yeah. to be a friend of theirs? Family, families. Do are they, they have they, family there, or the well, family yeah. just? No, have they, they just probably, moved away. No, no, they're probably their family. Like their family are probably quite proud of them because they're on the telly. Oh. It's probably like uh, saw your daughter last night saying uh, all we binge on the telly. <laughs> yes, she was on the telly, wasn't she? <laughs> yes, she was on the telly. <laughs> the, the, what about the bit about all we binge? She got one out immediately. Went, of course, <laughs> got it out, lo loved it out. Uh, uh, it's. I mean, it's unbelievable. It looks like an experiment. I can't watch it anymore. It's just too much now. These because I I can't relate to those people in the like in the first series. I always remember it was like it seemed like a genuine social experiment. Yeah, exactly. There was intrigue. There was drama. Yeah. It was, it was genuinely great hypnotic television. Now it's like putting ants in a jar and shaking. I don't. It. Yeah. I don't know what's. But even that, I I couldn't watch that once a night every week. No, I know. It's just. It's, it is yeah, unbelievable that, that what they're, what people are willing to do now and the time because they've just put in people. Uh, I mean, it's it, I mean it's unbelievable. It really is. Unbelievable. You don't you don't care about anyone. But I suppose what what what's good is that you want. You, I think you watch it now because you want one of them to fall over and hurt themselves. Yeah, or just choke on a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else in the house knows the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, feed him more chicken. <laughs> Send him more roast chicken. So we've got a wonderful celebration for you. <laughs> Fish in the Senses by Feeder.
on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right. Alright? How are you doing, Carl? I'm alright, yeah. Another right. holiday? Well, it well, wasn't holiday. It wasn't holiday. Well, it was. You had, you had five days off work. Why well, isn't it holiday? You had five days not working for a living. You know how many days holiday gets a year now? Twenty-nine. Oh, that's it, more than teachers, isn't it? It makes me sick. It makes me sick. Well, I know the kind of hours you work, Rick. <laughs> it's mad. I mean, if you're not in work by midday, you're furious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm always- Twenty-nine's normal. For the normal working person. Yeah, but, you know. And anyway, it wasn't a proper holiday. I went to see my mum and dad. It's nice to see them and everything, but it's not holiday, is it? Why? It's not going away. It's not getting on a plane, is it? Going away. Oh, is that definitely a holiday? What happened before 1950? Hmm. I don't know. Who used to go- yeah, exactly. Who used to go to Blackpool or Brighton? That was holiday. Yeah, but I didn't Where did go you to go? Went to Wales. There you go. Lovely holiday. Lovely holiday. Have a holiday in Wales. That's what they say, innit? Have a, have a, come to the Wales and have a holiday. That's what <laughs> they say, innit? So, 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 come to Wales and meet your parents. Come to Wales and have a lovely holiday. Mm. Well, anyway, it was uh, it was good and that. It's always good to see him. Yeah. But um, week off work. Do you know? Do you know? Like my mum likes gnomes and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course she, she does. Uh, She's lived with one for thirty years. <laughs> she said, uh, <laughs> you know, get your dad to take us to this uh, to this park where they've got uh, like. You know, six foot gnomes and stuff, right? <laughs> Have a walk about. <laughs> sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Sounds like a living nightmare. Keep an eye on Carl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway. He stood still for two minutes, someone bought him. <laughs> no, 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 you can't buy him on that. It's like a, it's like a little exhibition thing, yeah. right? And it's part of a hall, right? This big hall that you have to pay to get in, but we didn't want to see the hall, I just wanted to see the gnomes. Of course right? you did, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, my dad says, yeah, well, we can, uh, we can get in there for free. Of course he did. Clever. Right? So, we parked up on this little country lane, right? <laughs> no one about. We How much is it to go in? Like two quid? About three quid each. Yeah. But he said, well, yeah, but if you don't have to pay, do you know what I mean, you enjoy it even more, don't you, when you're walking about and you think, I've got this three quid in my pocket, no one's having it. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, looking over shoulder for a bloke with a peak hat saying, can I see your ticket, please? <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it more, no. Go on. Yeah, but you don't worry about it, do you? have got a bit of money now then, Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you've changed. So anyway, yeah. so we had to walk across about four fields. <laughs> <laughs> For three quid! Right. And, uh, what happened was, uh, uh, we're walking through all these fields and what have you, big grass and muddy bits and all that, because it'd been raining, <laughs> and, uh, climbing over fences and stuff. And we're in this field, right, and I look to me right and there's about... Thirty cows all staring at us, right? And uh, Suzanne started to panic a bit. She said, "This isn't. We shouldn't be here." And Dad says, "Of course we can. We're allowed to go wherever we want. You know, all this land. It's you know, it's Rambler's rights and all that stuff." Yeah. And take uh, take a cow if, cow if you want. So, unattended. Uh, yeah. So, so. Uh, so it's right for leaving him in the field unattended. I'm having one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're walking, walking for a across. week. <laughs> anyway, these cows start surrounding us. That's around it, that's- Oh, brilliant! Oh no. Face and, off! And Suzanne's panicking, going, this isn't right, he's gonna- we're, we're not gonna make it to the fence in time. They, 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 they're moving faster than us and he started sort of running a bit. Wow. And, uh, it's like some kind of like, bovine West Side story. Don't- <laughs> A gang of cows <laughs> coming at you. Don't worry about it and stuff. But, uh, my dad had to sort of stand there and, like, wave a stick at him. Of course. And, and, uh, and we got away, but- Suzanne was like having a bit of a sweat <laughs> you on. got away. And saying, uh, you know, we could have got killed. Sure. And my dad saying, no, nah, it never happens. And <laughs> I just wondered if, if it does, if, if there's a risk of. Yeah, it's, it is rare, but, um, there's been a couple of cases of being trampled by cows. They're not aggressive, they sort of run through you. Well, they, they're aggressive if they've got a calf. They've uh, had a, kids. A, 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 what? They had kids with them. Kids, yeah. That's a, that's a goat you're thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they were trying to sneak into the gnome thing, <laughs> and they were worried that like if too many people did it, like, they bought some cows, we can just sneak in. They were cows, trying, yeah. No one's expecting cows. And the cows were going, walk upright like you're <laughs> human. Don't walk upright. <laughs> they thought you'd blow their cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people have been killed by cows before. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that was like the highlight, and then uh... So when you arrived there, you were presumably covered in mud, looking like something that had just come from Glastonbury, staggering around this, this uh, it exhibition. Wasn't that, it wasn't that bad, it was just like a, a woods and it had like a, a funny sort of funeral pla- uh, like a graveyard thing. Right. Yeah. With bodies sort of hanging out the ground and that, and uh... Really? these six foot gnomes. Right. Uh, and then we... We just set off again, walked back. But we sure this wasn't a dream? Field. No, it was good, it was good. But then, then I got back, right, Steve? 
And, uh, called up Ricky, I said, right, uh, you know, are you about? Have a chat and that. So he said, oh, I'll just come round, it's a, it's a nice day. Have a drink and what have you. So I got round there at about half past six, right? Uh, go up to his door, knock on his door, right? He stood there with his tackle out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what did you make of that? What was wrong with that? What do you mean what's wrong with Why that? Were I mean, was that? Why were you looking at it? Why were you looking at it? I tried not to look at it. But again, you're always sort of attracted to it, aren't you? <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> I've never been attracted to another man's tackle. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you can't help but have a, have a little sly look. Well, especially when it's there. When you, when you ring the bell, and I mean the, the one on the door, right? <laughs> and that's, that's hanging out. And does he dress to the left or the right? It was to the left, right? Yeah, it was left, yeah. Just pop- just popped out of my shorts. <laughs> for him. Just popped him out of the shorts. Should've seen the state of him. <laughs> shorts on, no top, a uh, cigar, <laughs> looked like someone out of the Sopranos. <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we, uh, then we sat on the balcony drinking wine, didn't we? Did you pop it back in, or was it? Yeah, I, put, I popped it straight back in. I've got the laugh. Sure. I've got the laugh yeah. I wanted. Yeah. He walked in. He went. Mm, it's not that hot. Straight <laughs> away. It's not that hot. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Then, uh, was that knob news, or yeah. was there more? No, it's got more knob news. That's just a taster. Just a taster. Listen, right. let's, play let's play some average. Let's play some great music, and maybe we should have some early knob news. Early knob news coming up. Landed by Ben Folds on XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've had a couple of emails, Rick, um, saying that there have been reports of people actually being killed by cows. Yeah. So it is actually quite a lucky escape for Carl and his, uh, family. The worrying thing about that is it's tragic and anyone dying uh, unexpectedly, uh, it, it, it's terrible. But the, the, what makes it worse is when it's something like being killed by cows, because mm. there's a slight, I mean, a slight humour aspect. Yeah. Being, uh, are you killed, killed by a cow? Yeah. Um, you know, like for example, if you were killed by a falling safe, yeah, the f the vicar might laugh. Yes, that's my worry. Yeah, well, I read a story in the paper of a man who um fell out of a window and died. He fell out of like he was like a third story window and he fell out. But it was slightly amusing because at the time he was mooning. I know. For a laugh, he was mooning someone and he fell out. I know. So when he when he fell, like even though it was tragic, he obviously had his trousers around his ankles and his arse out. I know. The thing that there was a kid who died, got hit by a truck mooning. But the, yeah. you know, the worst thing like that is. It's not funny enough to be killed for. No, Mooning no. isn't funny enough. No, it's just not a good enough gag. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a, it's a witless sort of thing to do and yeah. then to be killed for it. If you'd just, just done a two hour impromptu Eddie Izzard style, you know, yeah. routine and then you got tra I know. tragically killed, that would sort of make sense. But, but doing something that's a Mooning, bit... it's almost karmic because it's such a bad joke. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like some weird universal karmic way. It's like if you hadn't been mooning, you maybe wouldn't you wouldn't have got killed. I know. If you haven't done such a lame joke, Maybe you'd be okay. Yeah, but that's it. D d d d but know. there's lots. Yeah, you don't want to be walking along. You know, you don't want to be walking through the garden and, hit, and stand on a rake and it flips up and it hits you so kind of, hard and it's like a boing noise, is it? Yeah, and you? it hits you so hard that it kills that it you. Kills you. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, or you fall out of a window and a, and a cactus goes up your bum. You I don't know, want you that. killed by it's cactus up the arm. Uh, <laughs> or up. you're at a concert and a fat woman stays dives. Yeah. And she just Lands squashes you. you. Yeah. Squ How did he die? He was squashed by a big hefty. Mama Cass just jumped on him. Just big fat woman squashed him to death. Yeah. So you are. Tell you what, though, no. right? Uh, talking about fat women. Go on. Um, I'm not having a go. What? Can you see Michelle McManus on? Uh, oh, man alive! Yeah. Yeah. You are what you eat. What yeah. is she eating? <laughs> Girls allowed? <laughs> Look at that! It was unbelievable. <laughs> no, but to be fair, you know she did. Did you see her in her bikini? Whatever. Yeah. Well, yes, but she was always a little bit. Yeah, but a little bit. Well, no, well, she eats too much, right? But what I did like about it was that she had a go, you know, she did lose her. hard and that, yeah. Huh? I quite liked her at the end of it, really. Yeah, she's, she's not an unpleasant it. woman, she's a lovely woman, but yeah. I mean, mm. like I said before, there was that interview in Heat magazine where she, you know, I tend to eat eleven packets of Doritos a night. Yeah. Eleven pa- I mean- Yeah. Come on, Michelle. Yeah. That's too much, isn't it? Unless you're trying to win some kind of competition, <laughs> like trying to find some kind of, you know, a golden ticket in one of the packets. There's no yeah. excuse. What could you, what could you possibly be trying to win to beat those oh. every day? Auntie Nora. Right. I'm cold. She doesn't want double glazing. Why not? Just cause she's worried that when people come round and sort of knock on the door, she won't hear them. Cause it's all, <laughs> it's all sort of double glazed. But they're knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but bell. she said, that, no, she didn't like a bell, it makes her jump too much. Well, what, how, how, do, how do they get in now? Well, it's the thin door, the thin glass, you hear it. It's not like soundproof, like double glazing is. What, so they, she, they have to knock they on knock the- They knock like that, on the door. 
And she can hear that because but it's like a wooden door. Why the door? Is it a glass door? No, they want to put that PVC door in. in with hang the on, thicker so glass. she's scared by. You don't want a doorbell because that alarms her, but the knocking is fine. The knocking's fine because you, you get to know knocks. Why don't they have a bell that when you press it, it makes that noise? Because they haven't done that yet. Well, Maybe yeah, that's yeah, an you, idea. Could, you could do a sample of a. like that. So when they press the doorbell, she hears. That's easy, that's done. You could sort that out for her. Well, I don't want to start getting dragged into it because. Uh, Why don't you make Auntie Nora a bell that knocks? Well, he, he could be done. But the fact of the matter is, it isn't, and that's why she doesn't want double glazing. But why don't you tell her, say, Auntie Nora, have double glazing, be warm, be safe, hear the knock. Hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. Auntie Nora, hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. She could fart until she's blue in the place. No one will be able to hear. But look. No one will be able to smell it. But this is double it. Glazing. This she's is tremendous. It. This is it, though, isn't it? She wouldn't be around now. If it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. Are you annoyed at that? You're annoyed. I know he's such a fascist, isn't he? Anti yeah. Nora, a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. Yeah. No, Eugenics but is where you, you'd be up here. I, I, but don't you see what I'm saying, though? The way the world. We've, we've changed more than the world has. We can't handle anything now, can we? Look at it, like I say, a bit of snow, a bit of cold, everything comes to a standstill. Yeah. Oh, I can't go out, it's dangerous, you'll slip over, people having time off work. Yeah. What would you do, right, if you run a business, right, your business could go under, right, it snows a bit, you've got ten employees, you're paying them well, and they go, I can't come in today, Carl, a bit icy. I'll do it, I'll do it, okay? Right, they're snowed in, right, you're running the business, what are you running? It's a, uh, let's not, don't, you know, I'm not going to big myself up, it's just a, no, it's a factory, it, uh, it's, it's you bends I make, you, no, you bends you bends for, you Toilet, know, so yeah. you run a, okay, right, okay, so, plumbing, so plumbing, you, you, you pay them all right, don't you? I'd say most of them are on above average. So you're there, what time do you get in? Um, about quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, waiting for them to come in at nine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, it's snowing, it's a bit snow, snowy, you got there, it took you a bit, what, you'd set off early, did you, or? Gave myself a bit more time because I had to put the heating on in the car. Okay, ring, 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 ring. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Oh, oh, uh, is that is that Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is. Yeah, who's that? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's Sheila. Um, listen, Sheila, shouldn't you be here by now? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I was going to set off. Well, don't, but... we'll set off now. Stop wasting time. We've got a big order on. No, I know. We're all but... on a bonus here if we get this done. I'll see you in uh, ten minutes, shall I? I can't make it. What? I can't make it. Why not? The car won't start and it's slippy on the drive. I just can't get out. Get the transport. I'll see you in. I'll give you 20 minutes, all right? Don't no, worry about it. Well, Thanks for calling. I'll see you in a bit. I'm also scared of the ice. I'm scared of the ice. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to come in today. It's dangerous. So, what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to wait until the ice and snow goes away and then but I'm going to come in. But they're predicting it's going to be about two weeks before yeah, they clear all this. I can't really travel in this. It's oh, a bit dangerous. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay at home. I'll, uh, I'll replace you. Because I need someone to come in. Well, you're firing order. me because I can't get into work with this. This well, I, I got think, into work, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but oh, you don't live with me, do you? If you did live with me, then no, you'd probably it see. Bad, how... It was bad where I was as well. Yeah, oh, you, do you know how bad it is here? When you come round and have a look how bad I'm, it is here, no, you drive I'm my. Not tell me, you come round and drive my fucking car because I'm snowed in. You fucking calling me a cunt, and I'll tell you if you fire me, I'll tell you to drive you in. You bald headed wanker. Right, you're fired anyway for for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm, right then, see ya. Right, and right. then she's she's done with. She's weak anyway. Ring, 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 ring. KP plumbing. Oh yeah, uh, is that uh, Miss Pilkington? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hi, it's Bobby. Oh, um, Bob. Yeah, um, bit of trouble. Um, uh, in my area, it's absolutely snowing. It's possible no one's getting out. I live near Sheila. Oh, listen, yeah, well, yeah. Sheila's just been on. She's saying she All can't right. get any either. She can't. I've just seen her out there trying to dig her car out, and she's at her back. She's really, really tried hard to get to work, but she can't do it because she's she's not very rich. And her car doesn't work. She hasn't got the right tyres, and there's no public transport. They've cancelled those. Wrong snow on uh, this country. I'm not going to make it in today, son. So um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy. Well, no, you're saying you'll see me mm. tomorrow. Yeah. But but you'll probably call up tomorrow with the same thing. Well, only now, if it's snowing still. Now, listen, it might not well, some... I, can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Yeah, it's not my fault, is it, really? So go round to Sheila's and, and like, slag me off if you want. But I'll tell you what, you're you not off. coming Just... back here. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> one chance. Give them one chance. Oh. Well, you didn't even give them one chance. No, because they'd done it before. <laughs> Just annoys me. <sighs> what is art? Um, it's a very broad term. It's a very difficult one as well. Well, let me throw that question over to uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what, what do you want to know? 
Well, we were just trying to uh, clarify what art is. Uh, it's just something for your eyes to look at. Right, it's, right. it's just a change from the norm, isn't it? Um, mm. I mean, that's why I think most people have it. But then, the problem is, I'd, I'd never buy a piece of art. I don't see the point in buying something, because I know that my eyes will get bored of it eventually. Right. Have you got much art in your house? Yes. Yeah. Because it gives me pleasure, and it don't, I don't get tired of it, I don't get bored of it. Do you look it. at it every day? What? It's there, isn't it? It just adds pleasure to it. Yeah, but other things are there. Dust is there, but... Surprisingly, I've not compared <laughs> I think art I've, I've to looked, dust uh, as often as I perhaps should. <laughs> but um, the thing about, uh, and this I think may be intriguing to you, uh, Damien Hirst, of course, is more of a conceptual artist like Tracy Emin, and a lot of what contemporary art does is followed on from a guy called Marcel Duchamp, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh. Now, he famously, he famously took a gentleman's white urinal like you'd find in a pub toilet, and he put it on its side, and he signed it with a fake name, and he put it in an art gallery. Now, he did that in about 1917, perhaps a bit later. It, I, it just annoys me, because there'll be snobby people who haven't got a clue. And they're looking at that and they go, oh yeah, I see what he's trying to say. Well, that might make them think. They might Damien Hirst, I don't, I, I don't feel angry with Damien Hirst, really, because right. he's getting away with it. But why does that annoy you? Because it's people falling into the trap. Damien Hirst, before he dies, I bet he goes, what a laugh that was. I had everyone on. There's a very good point as well, because some people think that the greatest art form of uh, the last hundred years is marketing. Yeah. Some people say that that is his art, that it's not good enough to do it, you've got to then get away with it. And if art, if the point of art is to inflame, I don't think anything inflames people more than the discussion about whether something's art or if someone's taking the piss or if someone gets 50 million for something, do they deserve it? Is it worth a hospital? Well, what do you think? What do you think of the shark in the tank? I, I, I think I was blown away by it. I, I thought, thought I'd never seen anything like yeah. it before. It was sort of spectacular because it is so huge and so vast and to have put a shark you know, in formaldehyde, and to have hung it in an art gallery, it's very striking when you see it. Yeah, it's it a is. remarkable achievement. We, but we, what we is he? Is he an artist or a fishmonger? <laughs> they, what he's done, anyone could have done what he did. Yes, but not everyone did it. He did it. Now, <laughs> this is an interesting point that you raise. It's the same old point you always <laughs> oh. raise. Not anyone could have done it. That's always the same point you make. Anyone could have done but, it. Carl, but they didn't could, do it. You could say the same about Michelangelo. Is he an artist or a painter and decorator? Well, it hasn't caught on, has it? Like the crying boy photograph. No one's having them in their house. No one's gone, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen the new trend? A shark in a tank? No one's got the room. No one wants it. <laughs> and that, to me, shows you what's popular. At the end of the day, if everyone wants one, he's got to be good, hasn't it? But I think if people were given a chance to appreciate more sophisticated things, then, then, then they would. And I just think that that's, I think that's true in all walks of life. You, you know, it's, it's an acquired taste. And the best things are an acquired taste. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, I mean, it's tiny. You've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, Mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so there's no nowhere there. There's no no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's the, where's the where's the sofa? At home. Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night. Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting. Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. It does. The no, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable every fucking day. No, no, honestly, it's it's good to because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything. So I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself? No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up. And if Suzanne sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? So why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you, don't, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward, I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Look no, back she, at you we're, we're used to it. That's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room. In a way. It's like, <laughs> and they're further away! There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use... It doesn't matter. Your Sorry, eyes, remember why your eyes wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing 
a mirror where you can see everything in that room. You know, it's a small flat. I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. Stephen Hawking <laughs> would be well happy. <laughs> so I can look forward. She's sat next to me. If if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now she's getting the sound from me still because she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away. But things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> So that's how you managed to you keep are, this relationship alive. You are yeah, maybe. Just, you're such an odd little man. But, come um, on. Right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that um they they tested it out on a mouse, right? <laughs> they, said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight weight is a big issue in the world and you know, a lot of people are depressed and that probably like Rick Waller. Well right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. Oh. I mean you could you could sort out Rick by you know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about no, but my what, hang age. On a minute. What I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So I bet it's Sorry. Hard. What do you mean? Because he's like uh, how old is he? Thirty five. Right? Oh, he's yeah, got I mean. loads of money. He does his own shopping. So when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the the sponge cake section, <laughs> it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Look, uh, uh, so just, uh, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> but I'm saying how it is, because I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and you think, well, <laughs> one more and I'll do without... Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and oh, again? Well, yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So uh, the thing a is... Let him finish his point. So the thing <laughs> is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more? Yeah. <laughs> That, that sort that Does out. he live a with short, his mouth? A sharp shot. I, I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so he you, you don't actually know if this is true <laughs> or not? No, but, but anyway, right? So this, this drug they've come up with... <laughs> they've tested this on mice, haven't they? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm worried if they haven't tested it on mice. <laughs> Thank God for that. It's definitely been tested on mice. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby and he said, right, stop a minute. And then they gave it this drug that yeah. makes you lose weight. Yeah. And it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems, that seems to be fine then. Let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, let's, let's, uh, uh, yeah, Rick should get some I of that. Love. Yes, truth, Doc, look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jono, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? That happened to the mice. Mm. But what, what you do, do you mean? That's the option. But, like what do you mean that's the option? So, so I love the fact that your choice is either be like a fat happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, sorry, I thought mate. we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, let's mate. have a go at the fat people yeah, before we sorry. start on me, really. Yeah, no, I didn't. I forgot. You know I mean, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I got some issues, some body issues. You I know. know. But they, I mean, Rick Waller's grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. I'm just a little bit weird. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Should we play a song? And well, I'm just a little bit offended. Vines out of the way on XFM 104.9. You're listening to The Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant and well, Carl Pilkington. We've got to try and get on though. Because there's not enough. That. No, not enough time. Let's, let's, let's bang on. Let's do some observations. Some, <laughs> yeah. some satirical. Take a sideways look at the week's news. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the uh, fattest person you know, Carl? Is um, it an issue for you? Are you, are you concerned about fat people? Only if I'm travelling somewhere and there's one. Sat next to you. That'd yeah. Be a bit annoying. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think Ricky pointed out a few months ago when I when I went away, we were talking about plane journeys, and you were saying how it's a bit out of order. And when you go on holiday, right, you take your suitcase with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a. This is all was right. Was I saying this on air though? Is this my question? Because there's there's a reason I don't say things. No, no, on no, air no. Sometimes. But I think you've got a good point. It made me think. <laughs> oh no, it's I know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like if if you're not allowed to carry a hand baggage on because you're a few pounds overweight. But there's a bloke behind you who weighs ten stone more than you. Yeah. Surely the whole package should be weighed. Yeah. Like you and your baggage. Absolutely. Can he, be should have, he should have a carrier stone. bag. And so that's... I can. So I can take on uh, a Labrador and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. He can take on um, a towelette. Yeah. Yeah. To wipe absolutely. his brow. Yeah. His sweaty, Pack fatty brow. Yeah. yeah. No, I absolutely, I absolutely right. So, yeah. uh, and that does yeah. wind you up, do you, does it? But I don't. That's the only time. I mean, people can't help it. We don't want to like come across as if we're just having to go at people who've got. But they can help it. This is what we're saying. 
No, but that's, no, that, that's a little bit. But I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about people who are overweight or have got a problem with with eating and so on. I, I'm talking about people who are obese because that seems to me to be an indulgence. I mean, no, I read no, some no, statistics. Well, 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 if we're getting serious, it, it is a problem, isn't it? Because it, it's an eating disorder. So what what what's what's terrible is is laziness and kidding yourself. But the people who have, have genuinely got a problem. But it's, it's a genuine concern for apparently or... for the future of our children. Apparently, it genuinely is. Yeah. Apparently, it costs. I was reading some statistic that it costs something like. Uh, America, it costs them like 119 billion pound dollars a year or something. But that's in, not why people are starving because fat people are eating all the food. I'm not saying people are starving because of fat people. Oh, you mean? I'm you saying mean... that it's a, no, I'm saying it's a concern. Oh, I we know. meant we'll soon have kids and they're hungry because next door is out all the food. No, <laughs> I just mean that, it, that apparently because exercise now, people aren't taking up exercise, kids right. aren't taking up exercise, that we will all be obese in years to come. Not all obese, but yeah. there'll be a, a big obesity. Well, I suppose the natural state for the mammals we crave fat. We literally f crave fat for, for hard times, but now, but now there are no well, you're all saying offices typing but away. But, but our body haven't evo hasn't evolved yeah. to, to take our social uh, input in. Yeah. So we still act like mammals, mm. and we we eat and we crave it, and we like to store fat. Yeah. That's why we have to go jogging because we don't we don't hunt, we don't do anything. So it it it's not really their fault. You've, it's, it, it, I mean, it is about willpower and, and sort of like you know self. Hate but in years that, to come, we'll have just pictures, like kids will just have pictures of, they won't have NSYNC on the wall, it'd be uh, like sumo wrestlers. Mm. Or, oh, God, um, oh, 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 you know sumo wrestlers? I saw this thing about sumo wrestlers, um, cos the, the, they, they're athletes, they go into the, this thing cos it's a big honour to be a, a sumo, it's actually really? true, right? yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. So, you'd go along and you'd be nine stone, and you, they, they have doctors there, so you have to eat to get big. Right? right, and this doctor was interviewed. Jeremy's doctor is going. You know, it, it is against. You'd think it's against the Hippocratic Oath, um, but um, whereas they do it anyway, I do it healthily. So he sells them. He gives them diets of like, uh, you know, ten pounds of rice, wow. nine pounds of fish, and things like that. And they get that. But now, because it's such an honour, it's almost a spiritual thing to be a great sumo and that. Um, they have apprentices. Willing to now you know like when you're an apprentice, say um, uh, runner or something, you have to make the coffee, and uh, or when you're working an apprentice in the studio, you have to clean the floor and stuff. Do you know what apprentice sumo's job is? An apprentice sumo. Go on. They wipe mm. the sumo wrestler's ass because they can't reach. They literally can't reach. Rubbish. Uh, right. Uh, can, what, we'll give Who's out the phone taking now. that up as a profession? I know. I imagine that. Um, I'd 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 love to be a sumo wrestler. It's a great honour, and I'd love to work. Under you, uh, sure. So, uh, sure. So, uh, what will I do? Start press ups first. There'll be uh, some press ups, yeah. Okay, there yeah. Will be what, some press -ups. Get into the gym now, and uh, no, uh, I, don't before you rush go off. Go on, go on. You I'm will... starving. No, I can understand that. Go do on. You d would you mind wiping my arms? Because right. I've just you can't reach. No, got no. I can't get the arms back there. Can't okay. get them down there. So, uh, and I'll, but, but I'll be honest with you, a lot of this oriental food, it doesn't sit well with me. So it goes straight through me, to be honest. So it's quite messy. It's quite messy down there. It's right. quite runny. Okay. Okay. So be careful. Okay. Um, you no, wear some gloves. Honor. If you want to wear gloves, wear I gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. It's, <laughs> well, it's, not a, it's a lot of apprenticeship. It's two years, isn't it? You know, you're not going to take my feces and salad, are you? As souvenirs or no, something? No, no, it is, no. I'll like, be um, mainly getting fat myself. Sure. Wiping your ass. Yeah. Great honour. <laughs> yeah, no good. Well, Great no, honour. If someone could call in and verify that, look, Carl, look at Carl looking at us like we just said the worst thing no. ever. You this is true, like, apparently. Makes your eyes pop out and put in Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin. Don't look How at us like that. This is a. We're talking cultural science here yeah, and, yeah. and wiping asses. Yeah. So. Player record. Yeah, it's low brow <laughs> and it's high brow at the same time, Carl. Yeah. That's an incredible way? picture. Oh, yeah, hey, uh, this is for all you people who who uh, who like the odd cake. This is Bowie and Sweet Thing. Do you like that? Nice. Sweet Thing. David Bowie. Beautiful. Amazing, off Diamond Dogs. Absolutely. We went to see him in the week, didn't we? We did indeed, yeah. This little Very exclusive gig that Jonathan gig. Was there for people. Us. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, lovely to see him. Yeah, lovely to see him again. <laughs> lovely to see, uh, see Dave um, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, he's looking good. He looks great, doesn't he? He was, yeah. Was he bisexual? I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't what, know why I'm Sorry, at the, at the gig? No, 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 it's just the fact, because I know he's married now, isn't he, with the kid and stuff? Yeah. But there was some, there was some sort of- Oh, I, I think, um, possibly, I don't know, I wouldn't wanna- These pop stars, they dabble with anything, don't they, I suppose? <laughs> <laughs> try anything once, don't they? These rock and roll stars. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, if anyone knows the, uh, the, the truth behind Sumo- Yeah, well, how does Sumo begin? Because that's what I can't- I've never understood how it began as a, as a, as a sport, because it's- 
Do you know what I mean? Because you are, they are so huge. Well, so I reckon, it's not, I, I reckon it was a fat bloke who was picking on a little skinny bloke, and a skinny bloke <laughs> right. knew Kung Fu and So he goes, right, let's fight, and the fat bloke, no punching. Yeah, went, what yeah. do you mean? He went, it's just leaning against each other. Yeah, And they went, yeah. well, you're bound to win. <laughs> and they went, right, I've won. He went, yeah. bloke, okay. Yeah. And that's how it started, and the, yeah. the fat bloke He grabbed went, him. Are you, are you wearing a nappy? Well, I'm pretty I'm, big, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having white. problems now. I can't I, wipe my I ass. can't wear a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. I just can't. <laughs> exactly. I just, you know, that's the next yeah. step for John who's been banned wearing a thong in public. <laughs> so... But seriously, if anyone knows how sumo began, I'm genuinely interested, email maybe, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, just, cause I, I, you know, Carl, what are your thoughts? Where do you think, uh, where do you think it began? Cause it's an, don't you think it's an odd sport? I mean, it is a weird... They've always got nice hair. They seem to care about the hair a bit. Oh, sure. So he's sort of nicely pinned back. Yeah. It's yeah. getting in the way. But if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, across Oxford Street, mm. um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there, and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> he downed out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few <laughs> questions. <laughs> Let us do between yeah. these two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange snot. Holding a plum in the middle. He hands him a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you can imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, almost... exactly, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing, cos he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He well, wasn't speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they, you're saying they're nothing like- Well, I believe Harry Krishna is a, is a kind of, um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the, obviously their most, their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say, I believe they have to say Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them all down the street saying Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So, you see, even if you go into the Harry Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, forced to say Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, perhaps out, why? Out loud, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and You can put that on an iPod, no, it doesn't count, no, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your, into your social life a little bit. And then the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine if you're in a, in a cinema or a library, a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through, um, or Star you Wars live next him. door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. Yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there. But uh, so interesting to you. I mean, you, you you got handed a plum. You've been treated well by them. Yeah, well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? Do what can well, I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that that that, that chiness about them where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. They've got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah. Their orange. What clothes. are you looking for then in a faith car? You say you it, it's what are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism, you get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. Um, probably. Uh, uh, just, just, I like the Crusaders, I was forced into joining that as a kid, because a mate sort of joined it, and, uh, he sort of said, are you joining it? I sort of swore at him, I said, I'm not doing that, right? Yeah. He said, right, if you don't come with me, I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore. <laughs> so I was like, oh. So, so, I went, <laughs> so I went along, and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff, and then I went on one Sunday, and it was, it was totally different. There was no Sabutio. There was no sort of, you know, uh... Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> he said, right, sit down in this room. He gave me a Bible. I thought, this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this book. And, uh, I never went again. He used to hide on a Sunday when he came round. And, um, <laughs> that, that's, that's been the only thing. <laughs> I did that! I suddenly, why did it suddenly turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave. Who uh, was it? Were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a, well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Like well, that, that is an adult. Yeah, but, do you know what I mean? He seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. 
and uh, they used to hang around to see if I'd, if I'd eventually come out to play in that. And if I did, I think they would have grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want- that for you religion has to bring with it some kind of gift. It's like, you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something like- but, but, religion, but I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's- Well, the, the gift of the Lord. Well, well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't mm -hmm. it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think. But the, with for Carl, oh, right. his, his feeling is like that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is there well, an do iPod you have to have it? a religion because I, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it, and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist, and that, that's out of that's out of belief. That's out of logic, and we don't get into the the politics or the yeah. the morality of it. Why do you, Why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that, you know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd you know like to see you perhaps as a Jew. I think a, 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 Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know. And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> so so they have days when they eat a lot too much? Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. No. I mean, I like my Cheerios in the morning. <laughs> I don't- I don't- <laughs> I can imagine that no one, even the people who've entered, are that excited. Not because the prizes aren't great, but I'm worried that they don't appreciate it, Rick. Do you know, I get the feeling that our listeners, they just don't appreciate the fact that we've gone to all this trouble, we've got the Homer Simpson drawing and things like that. I just feel like these people don't deserve it. <laughs> and do you know what it's weird? I just wish we had a better quality of listener. Yeah. Like, people who listen to Radio 2, they deserve it. You know, they're elderly and infirm, some of them. They, they could really, it would really cheer them up. But our lot, you know, drug addicts. Yeah, let me pick you know, out. Tr truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I've just put all the names in the hat, all the previous winners from the previous weeks. And Who's gonna, is this Pilkey, um, gonna put it out? Do you want Pilkey or do you want Ricky? Oh, well, let's, let's have the shave monkey do it. All right. Plunge your hand in there. Is it just- that's one, isn't that's it? That's it, just yeah. Yeah, pull that one out, check who it is. Alright, it's, uh, Gavin Thompson in Edinburgh. Well done, Gav. Are we gonna get them up there? <laughs> <laughs> that's not his problem! You got to post them, you got to pay- they're amazing prizes! Yeah, but the Spinal Tap one, it's about five foot, isn't it? Well, they can post it, it'll cost them a few quid. It's a radio station. I think you should have to come and collect it. <laughs> no, just because then it'll at least oh, build, it'll, it'll prove that he's he from? Edinburgh. Give it to Bob Galdoff. I'll give it to Bob Galdoff. <laughs> he's walking up there, is he? He can jog it. Chewing brakes. Fishing for a dream. That's what we're fishing for, isn't it? We're fishing for a dream today. What's so that mean? Poverty, I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. I was, I don't know, I don't it doesn't know. matter what you're saying, Rick. No um, one's listening. No one's listening. Well, we've got to finish anyway. To, I mean, to think about the fact that we- I mean, think how small our percentage of listeners is anyway. Anyway. And then you two are on stage yeah. at the moment. This is like broadcasting during Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the same. It's just on hospital radio. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Where everyone's got an iPod for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the ward. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we've we've just got. We're going to go through. We're going to go through now till half past, and I've got to rush off. I'm afraid um, to to live eight. Um, don't don't apologise, mate. <laughs> when people see the glam that you're bringing to that event. <laughs> they don't even care about the people introducing it. Comedians going there going, ladies and gentlemen, just get on with it. No, I agree. No, I've got a good joint there. Two blokes will get on with it. Bring on Madonna. Um, but we're gonna give it to them. Carl, we're gonna go through to the end. We've done everything we have to do. Monkey news. The final monkey news of the year, possibly. It's been a joy. I'd just like to say, for, you know, I'm half of myself, Steve Merchant, and this little bald mank. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, we should just point out as well, if you if you miss, uh, Rockbusters while we're away. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you can log on to xfm.co.uk forward slash Rockbusters where you can actually see Carl himself, um, playing, uh, introducing you to an interactive game of Rockbusters. Looks very much like Blockbusters. It does, surprisingly. But yeah, you can, you can join into that. And, and there's also, uh, talking of monkey news, there's, uh, there's a link on, um, on the website, I'm trying to think where you go. I think if you go on my little biography bit, someone's done some animation to some old monkey news. Oh, it's brilliant. It's great. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you if you have withdrawal symptoms of monkey news, then you can find some classic. And it's monkey animated. News on it. It's classic monkey news. I feel drained today. Do you? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the strangest radio show in the world. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the, well, we can do that. We can talk about this and go, oh, I feel drained today. Just like he's not. 
Like, no one's listening. Because that's the sort of thing you say socially and no one listens. Like, just when you're washing up, oh, I feel drained today. It's rhetorical. Yep. You're not expecting anyone, not even your loved ones, to go, oh, really? They just go, oh, uh, that. But to do it live on air. Yeah. Oh, go no on. one's listening. Go to what I mean, is just give us a jingle. But the. But the <laughs> Exactly. But the truth the is, contempt we have for our poor listeners but is the truth unbelievable. Is the listeners aren't listening, and yes. we don't want to be here. <laughs> so this really is one of the most pointless things oh. ever. No, I would have been, been quite happy to do a full show. But you know what? The flow of it's just. I nice. would love to listen to this back in ten years. <laughs> this actual show. Let's keep this forever. Let's keep this show forever. The, the show we went early. We were bored. It was a day we're trying to save Africa, but we're a little bit annoyed that no one's listening. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. Right, once and for all, the final monkey news but of the not, year. Oh, go on. Yeah. What? What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, if you're not into the Live 8 and you're gay, you're not listening. <laughs> because you're on a walk. <laughs> right, okay. Right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! Right, there's this, uh, card game going on. Right. <laughs> In the, in the, uh, <laughs> a, a, a big hotel in, uh, in Vegas. Right. right? The Lux, Luxor Hotel in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, it's a major car game. All the all the big players and that sure. were uh, were involved. Mm. Right? They're all invited. Mm. Anyway, so they all uh, they all meet up in this dark room at the back of the. Oh, <laughs> there we go, dark room. Dark room. But hairy fella. So, so, so it was brilliant at poker. I'd yeah. say it's a it's a big game and that everyone's been waiting for it. So it's played in the back room, not not in the main entrance bit, right? <laughs> So anyway, like I say, it's dark in there and what have you, and, and the players went in. There was already someone sat in there, right? Right. But uh, they couldn't, short couldn't, <laughs> couldn't quite see. Was he a short hairy bloke with slightly longer <laughs> arms than legs? <laughs> couldn't see him. Where, is, it, where, where his arms slightly longer than his legs? Couldn't see him. Being dark was he had holding his hand of cards with his feet? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, oh, so the cards were dealt, right? Cards yeah. were dealt. Games going on. <laughs> his cards with his feet. <laughs> Game, game went on for hours, right? Look, no one's listening. No, the th terrible thing is that not even we're listening to I Carl know, now. I know. No, no one, literally no one is listening it's so to Carl. Insulting. There was a lot of smoking going on. It's right? going on. A lot of eating, a lot of eating and nuts going on. <laughs> that was a bit weird because they don't normally get through as many, but for this night. <laughs> so, I'm. Um, come on, let's just play Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you maybe Christmas time. Goodbye. Yeah, right? <sighs> but Warwick asks, really, um, what. Are your thoughts on short people, particularly in entertainment, because of course they've, uh, throughout the ages, made an appearance, particularly in fiction, Tom Thumb of course, uh, the Oompa Loompas. What do I think of them? He's just wondering, you know, I suppose what your take is. Um, they're alright. I mean when I was on jury duty, every day I'd sort of see one pop in and he'd be sort of struggling getting on the chair. And he'd sort of, you know, he wasn't struggling in a way that he felt uncomfortable, he'd obviously climbed a lot of chairs in his time, and this was just another one. And I'd, w watching him, it just makes you, makes you think, you go, you know, I should appreciate that I don't have that problem every time I have to sit down and what have you. But I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's that bad. If I had to pick being really tall or really small, I'd go for the really small one because, you know, it's, it, the world's a more interesting place for him, isn't it? Everything's bigger. Do you know what I mean? We go to New York and go, wow, look at this, and they go and they go, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everything's a lot bigger. Everything's more amazing. Food portions. Everything's a bonus. So out of the two, I'd be small, and maybe that's what I'd chat to Warwick about for a bit, just to get to know, get to know him. Brilliant. It's a shame in a way that he's not being able to pop in. I'd like to hear that conversation. But I've got, um, you know, speaking of like weird stuff and that, I've got a new... <laughs> well, we uh, weren't, but go on. No, I've got a new book. Do you know I had that Freaks book? The top 50 Freaks. Got a new one sent to me. Really? Uh, yeah. And do you know, like, everything, um, normally has a name. So, like, if it's, uh, the two-headed fella, you know, they're all nicknames like that, aren't they? There's, They've got two nicknames, I imagine. Uh, but this new book I've got, right, mm. on the cover of this one, it's got, like, a woman with three breasts, right? And she's called the, the three-breasted woman, as you'd expect. <laughs> The one face. Why is she posing nude though? That's what I want to know. Tart. Well, she looked happy. <laughs> and there was a, a fellow with like one yeah. one face but two bodies. Do one face but two <laughs> bodies. <laughs> one face, two bodies. What do you mean so one weird. face, two bodies? <laughs> Surely you one head, two bodies. Uh, head as well, but it was mainly the face that was weird because he looked fed up. <laughs> sort of what are you talking about? How what can you are you have talking a face about? Without a head? How can you have? What do you mean? How did it join to the neck? No, it did. It did have a, a head. 
But the fact is, it, it was weird that I had one face to me. What do you mean? Well, if you've got one he, head, you'll yeah, have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just, it was the fact that he had one face and two bodies that I didn't think But why do you keep saying one <laughs> face and two bodies as opposed to one head? head and two bodies? We're all the man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, well, surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. You, I mean, roll I've up, got... roll up, see the man with one face. <laughs> I know, yeah! So it's, it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is, that fella, you know, the one-faced man, the three-breasted woman... He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what I'm saying. Well, they've all... That, they that all... isn't the peculiar thing about him. Yeah, well, they all had names like that. Right. But there was one thing in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> What do you mean? It was—it ju just said un unidentified. What? What does it look like? Um, sort of, sort of testicles for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that's. It just reminded me when you. What talk do you about mean strength. testicles for eyes? And what is it? Do they have a normal body? I didn't even look at that. Oh, f no, so that's what I'm saying though. You're attracted to to the odd oddness of the thing, and that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. You know, it, it, it'll be odd for a minute, and then I'm sure for him, it'll for him it will be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'll get used to you. I've got my head round it a bit more, and and the way that there's loads of people in the world, mm. and yet you don't see people with like dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street, going, oh, "Everyone's got one head." That's yeah. weird. Susan, I don't see any dangly eyes today? No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> Went out the other night with the lads. Um, you know, there's a few of us, you know, young, free and single. You Must could... look like the swingers. Oh, it was pretty, it looked like a boy band had gone out. It looked like, really? It looked like, you know, in sync and hit oh, the streets. Right, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. A friend of mine said, let's go to a club. Right, I've been to a nightclub for a long time. I haven't been. Is that because your glasses steam up when you walk in out of the cold? That is a problem in the winter. I genuinely, it's not, it's very difficult to make a good impression. When you, as you walk in, your glasses steam up straight away. And, you know, you, you've got to take them off and clean them and stuff. And then, you know, you get a bit... On your wife front, you pull your wife runs up yeah. through the jeans, yeah. clean them on that. Or the back of a girl's dress. <laughs> but, um, we cruise down to the club, it's one of those big sort of London super clubs. And, uh, it's a bit of a queue, I think it's a bit of a chore. But we're queuing up, we're in good spirits, we're looking at it, it sounds pretty funky, we can hear the music coming out. You know, we've been in the queue for quite a while, 20, 25 minutes. Forget it, 25 minutes. Well, yeah, we were pretty excited by this point. The doorman says, uh, hello lads. He said, yeah, we're coming please. He went, no you're not. I really? He said, we're not, you're not coming in. And he just immediately lifted the little rope and sent us away from the queue, right? And we were slightly perplexed, we were, we were dumbfounded, we didn't know what to do, we, we, it was like... This, it, this it couldn't be happening, it didn't make sense. We just que queued up what was going on. And so, um, my friend said, well, we've got to find out why he's not going to let us in. So he goes yeah. back over it. I thought you wanted to do, you wanted to tie him up with logic. That'll show a bouncer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, show him how educated you are and how you can win an argument and make him look stupid. You'll be in that club in no time. <laughs> That's what they appreciate. <laughs> they love that. Because what they respect is being made to look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we went over and, uh, <laughs> they really look up to intellectuals. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so one of our mates goes over and he says, uh, why didn't you let us in? And he went, because you didn't have any girls with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'll tell you this. <laughs> that's kicking you when you're down. <laughs> because when you're out on a Saturday night trying to get into a club to meet women, and the reason you're not allowed to go in a club to meet women is because you don't got any women with you, that's just salt in the wound. It's so humiliating. So, um, a friend of mine says that there's a VIP entrance over there. There was like a woman with a clipboard, you know, the guest list. Uh, separate entrance. She said, you know, you've got a little bit of profile, Steve. Why don't we try and use your... You ran out, you've got your golden globe in your Emmy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I always, uh, I always carry, uh, you know, some of the cuttings with me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... <laughs> And it, so, and I felt a bit self-conscious about it. I was thinking, I'm not into this, you know, it's a bit awkward. But he said, look, don't worry, you just stand here. Just stand here, just like you're having a conversation. I'll go over, I'll say, I'll point him out, I'll go, oh, there's you know, Steve Merchant over there, at the office. Or oh, God, Steve! So I thought, well, you know, well, the thing is, we were out, and I was, I was a bit frustrated, and I thought, you know, uh, we may as well try everything. So, um, so I stand there. <laughs> 
if my friend goes home and he has a word and he comes back and he says uh, it's fine she's, she can't let us in the VIP entrance because she's not allowed but what she can do is walk us to the front of the queue right and walk in front of the queue and explain so I think okay fine oh god so oh. we walk past everyone else right to the front of the queue right she goes up to the guy she says uh, this is Steve Merchant office the guy goes I know he is we're not letting him in <laughs> oh god oh god <laughs> By now, of course, some people have recognised me, so they're trying to have my photo taken. So there's people inside the uh, line that's being allowed in the club. I've got to lean across the rope to have my photo taken with them, even though I'm not allowed in the club. So they go, oh, all right, this is Steve, they're having the photos taken, right, camera phones and that. They're going into the club where the music, the party's kicking off. I'm outside waiting for the next chump who wants to have his photo taken. I mean, it was mental. So, um... That's unbelievable! I was furious, and then one guy, I remember he was, he was chatting, and he, he goes, Oh, yeah, brilliant, I love the podcast and all that stuff, I love Carl, is Carl with you? I said, oh, Carl's not here. And his girlfriend, she went, Who's that? And he went, oh, it's just the motion, he does the office, he does the thing, and she went, Who, who cares? Who are you, Bruce Forsyth? And it's that thing when suddenly I'm being humiliated and embarrassed <laughs> by someone's girlfriend. I never asked for that. I never asked for her opinion on me. I'm sorry if I don't impress you, if I'm not sufficiently famous for you, but it's not my fault. It's your girlfriend who brought it up. It was like I got over to her and tried to show off and she was annoyed. I was, so by now I was just furious. Oh, so God. I thought, forget this. Well, I was walking down the street and there's a, a group of um, builders sitting down having a cup of tea. One of them goes, all right, Rick. I went, all right, mate. The other one went, not as fat as on telly. <laughs> I went, oh, thanks. Not as fat as on telly. So he went with, well, you are fat, but you look even fatter on telly. He didn't say, oh, God, you don't look fat at all. Or, oh, you look, you, you, you look, you look big on telly, but you don't look fat. Just went with, not as fat as on telly. And there's nothing I could say, but cheers, mate. Now, when you said cheers, mate, cause you, did you say that because you were... Because I'd say cheers, mate, because I'd be a little bit scared of them. No, I was I'd be worried it's like sarcasm and, you know, I laughed or I laughed or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you can get away with sarcasm I'm, with working class blokes. I'm I a little could... bit more secure with a working class man no. than you, aren't I? I'm terrified of them. I feel like they're going to turn on me at any minute. You don't feel confident sort of backing in a lorry driver? Terrified. Oh, right, Because okay. if I did, he'd, le he'd probably lean out and just go, go and get your dad, mate. Yeah, not you. Fuck off, I'm not interested. Not you. Yeah. Right, Carl, come on then. Oh, hang on, I just must tell you as well about Lord Admiral Nelson's erotic letters. Go on. They've been sold at last. <laughs> for £117,000. Sunday mail? Got them. I don't know who bought them. <laughs> <laughs> who opened them that shouldn't yeah. have? They, they got sent to someone else. To you. They were meant for Lady Hamilton. <laughs> what are you doing opening them? <laughs> Go well, on, what's he say? What's he got up to? <laughs> She, uh, it's interesting because they've printed a couple of the things he's wrote. Dear Lady Hamilton, uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, just the one hand. You might have to help me out on a couple of <laughs> yeah. manoeuvres. Yeah, and the one eye, so I'm not appreciating the 3D. <laughs> exactly. I don't care where you put it. Yeah, exactly. it, I don't, I, Yeah, go on. <laughs> You'll have to help me guide it in. You might not stand out. across the other side of the room for the good it do me. Exactly. Go on then. Um, uh, of course he ended up kissing Hardy, didn't he? <laughs> Did he kiss Hardy or did he ask him and he never did? Well, I don't know. I don't know about this because I heard that he didn't and it said kiss me, which means fact. And then I heard that he did say kiss me, kiss, kiss me, me Hardy. Hardy. Like, you know, because it, it was good suspense. I don't know. Is it kiss me or is it kiss me? Kiss me Hardy. I think his final actual dying breath was no tongues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. And, uh, uh, and someone went, kiss you what? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Maybe my, that was his my, nickname. My name's Smith. Yeah. Do you want me to kiss? <laughs> exactly. Kiss me hardy. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought so. I'll kiss your lips and you'd be happy with it. <laughs> but, uh, I'll yeah. touch you hardy. <laughs> but I'm not kissing it. Go on. A couple of quotes from there. Uh, this is him writing to uh, Lady Hamilton, who he was having a, an affair with. I can neither eat or sleep for thinking of you, my dearest love. I never touch even pudding. I think we've all written a letter like that to a lady. That's a euphemism. <laughs> sure that's is. like, I, that, I think that's, I haven't eaten, and by the way, I haven't even knocked one out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you are gonna get a sack for. <laughs> all right, Carl? You're a producer, is this all right? It's all euphemisms, I've not said anything wrong. Go on. Oh, come on, it, it happened in the 19th century. Yeah. We can talk about it, you know. Yeah. This is more topical than monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, we're sorry, we better get back to the competition. I'm worried that we've, uh, we've lost sight of that competition, because I'm not gonna lie to you, we've had no entries whatsoever so far. <laughs> I can't believe that, because I actually got up most of those. That's actually a more accessible one. I knew, I, I think I know all the artists and I'm stuck on, um, uh, Girlfriend, but I think I might know who that is. Let's hear it again. I'm surprised. Bye. Bye.
Tomorrow. Now I think that's a pretty accessible one. An eh? accessible quiz. Yeah. So no one's is the email up or no one's listening. No. Well, I think there's a little bit of that, but um, we I think we've accidentally closed down the texting. Oh. So if if you're texting in, <laughs> this <laughs> don't is rubbish. About. It really is awful, isn't it? Yeah. Just just play it again. Hang on a minute. Bye. Tomorrow. I'll tell you what it was. We didn't give out the prizes. We didn't say what the prizes oh. were going to be. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the emails are going to go oh, mental yeah. when they when they find out it's the first series of Open All Hours on VHS. <laughs> they'll okay, be uh, yeah. Let's see what we got. And the Bridget here. Nielsen video. Exactly. Right. Oh dear. Oh, no, actually, it's not too bad. Go on. The best air guitar albums in the uh, yeah, in the that's world. still going. That's, <laughs> Volume that's one evergreen. <laughs> That'll keep running and running. Uh, Some kind of anniversary box set of a Doctor Who episode with a small model and car. What's that, baby? I'm Alan Partridge series two. That's yeah. worth having, obviously. And yeah. Porridge series three. Okay, good. If you've not uh, watched all of them on UK Gold, then <laughs> <them> on <DVD. laughs> there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah, let's hear it again. All right. Bye. Bye. Tomorrow. Just name the artist, that's all we want, just yeah. the artist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Play record. Ryan Adams? Yeah. Yeah, oh, this is absolutely fantastic. His version of Wonder Wall, if you've not Beautiful. heard it yet, you'll be loving it. You'll be loving this. Radiohead, Fake Plastic Trees on XFM 104.9. Mm -hmm. Someone just emailed in and said, uh, just want to know what you think of that cover of Wonder Wall. Mm. We told you. We said it was great. Yeah. Listen. But they must have been listening to hear... The song. Yeah. Extraordinary. Although maybe they just turn off... When we start talking. Yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense. Mm. I mean, it would make sense in a sort of, sort of preserving of sanity type way as Objectively, well. Objectively, Rick, if you were listening at home, if you didn't know us and you were listening to the show, would you listen to it? Would you bother? Um... I know that's a hard thing to get your head round. Uh, it's difficult to say, isn't it? I- I've no idea. I've no idea what people coming to this for the first time think. Mm. I mean, I, I, you know, I love you like a brother, but I get sick of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I get sick of me. Yeah. Sometimes I, I go up and It's weird you should say that, because someone's emailed in. Yeah. A recent survey's been done by Chatham and Gloucester. Yeah. The most desirable neighbour in Britain. Number one. Shane Ritchie. Johnny Wilkinson. All oh, right. It doesn't actually give me the the full rundown, but uh, David Beckham was in the list. Yeah. Shane Ritchie was indeed in the list. Yeah, uh, he's flying at the moment. As was Ricky Gervais. Really? Well, that's what it says. It doesn't tell me where you came, though. And y that- there was actually a neighbour from hell and you weren't in that list. Well, I'm a good neighbour. Oh, come on. I am. I'm quiet. I don't keep myself to myself. I never- Do you know what I'm thinking of? What? If it was- if it was best friend. Yeah. Now that would be a nightmare. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Most I'm desirable a, friend. I'm a good neighbour. I'm quiet, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I imagine being stuck in a room with me writing all the time, with me <sighs> squeaking like a chimp. Unbelievable. Although I- I don't physically abuse you. I save that to my bald mates, like Carl and Robin. That I like to squeeze their head. I don't yeah. squeeze your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's because you command a little bit more respect. Ah, thanks very much. Do you know what I mean? You're mm. not. You're not that sort of. You're not an idiot. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. All right, Carl. Got anything to say? Has anyone seen his picture in Heat this week? It looks fantastic, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what Steve said when he saw that, Carl? Go on. He said it has captured Carl. Mm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> In the pictures, it's captured the brilliant. You know how like a good photographer can do that. You can capture the essence of someone. <sighs> That's good stuff. It's good stuff. Well, actually, I'm the photographer. Yes, because it was a screen grab from the behind-the-scenes footage. Well done. So I got that that gimpness. I captured the essential gimposity. <laughs> exactly. The uh, yeah, Carl. Yeah. All right. Captured it. Yeah. Well, I'm th um, I did a little article for Time Out, and I've, I think Boyd from Heat has sent over. That screen grab to them, so he might be in time out. I'm gonna try and get him in every publication. Yeah. For one year. It's like- Well, Dave you've managed it in the last two weeks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like a Dave Gorman project. Hmm. Uh, hmm. do you- are you Carl Pilkington? <laughs> yes. Th let's do that, shall we? If anyone's- if anyone's got a publication, it doesn't matter how little, yeah. just take it from heat. That's they, they, mine, so you're uh, welcome to it. Um, just try and just put his picture in anything. Next to round things is best, mm -hmm. isn't it? That'd be good. You alright, Carl, with that? All right then, good. What have you got for us, Carl? Uh, News headlines. There aren't that sort of been that much going on. Sure. Sort of headline-wise, you no. know. Sure, I to, sure, no, sure. No, because I look for good headlines and that, don't I? That sort of. Yeah. 
get you interested like the- Well then, then when you're interested you don't read on. No, I did. Okay, go on. Like the one, do you know I read, the one I read out a couple of weeks ago, that was, uh, Man Lives in Dump for Ten Years. Mm. Right? I remember the Chinese woman eats dirt. Yeah, yeah well- That man, was a man, cracker. Man Lives in Dump for Ten Years, I read on with that one yesterday. Yeah. I found it in my bag because I took it home so I thought I'll read that when I get a minute. Yeah. Right? News. Imagine that. News. <laughs> I might read Last Thursday's <laughs> Sun. <laughs> yeah. Just to catch up. Uh, do you know how he got caught? What do you mean how he got caught? He, was, lived, he lived in he a, living a rubbish dump. He was living that? in a rubbish dump. What's no one, no one knew he was there, right? Yeah. He was living off food that had been chucked away. So a lot of people chuck away stuff that isn't off, <laughs> so you can survive on that. Uh, he had a nice little place to sleep and that, an old mattress that was all right and stuff. Yeah. Uh, got away with it for ten years until he decided to celebrate bonfire night with some fireworks. <laughs> 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 I believe that. <laughs> well, he, you know, he's happy that the uh, gunpowder plot was foiled <laughs> exactly. and the Guy Fawkes was beheaded. Anyway. Thus saving our system of government. <laughs> There's gotta be a couple of news headlines, surely. Um. Hold on, wait a minute. Bong. Pierce Penis Man off the hook. <laughs> Bong. Man changed his name to Bubba 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 Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Dwarf to live in a glass box. <laughs> Dwarf to live in a glass box. Yeah, it's meant to be art or something. It's not though, is it? Really? What? Meant to be art? Why is? Yeah. Well, who's, who's idea with this? Is 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 art or is, is someone hired a dwarf to live in their box? It's just a box, and he can even leave when he wants. Apparently, he can yeah. like go. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm going for a walk, and he puts a little note. Uh, with his dame in earth, he might end up in four bits. Oh. So just be careful. But to me, that's like that thing when I said to you about the woman in the jar. What woman in the jar? The woman in the jar. They go, oh, come and see the woman in the jar. And yeah, then it turns jar. out it's a big jar. So yeah, it's, it's a like, big well, jar. put me yeah. in there as well then. Exactly. It's not yeah. special. Yeah. And that's, that's the same with, with him. It's a big box, he's a small fella. What's, what's good about what that? What do you want to do, though, to compress matter? But hang on, it's not a world record breaking attempt, it's supposed to be art. You know, what's art about that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what's art about it? that? Oh, can we do a show for BBC Three? Carl Pilkerton going around, what's art about that? Yeah. That is brilliant. What's art about that? I'd love that. Would you? I'd love that. Me and Steve are gonna do a thing called Is Art Rubbish? Where we go around and we chat about it. Yeah. But, um, we, well, we can hand that over to you if you want to do that. If anyone from BBC Three is listening, Carl Pilkerton, what's art about that? Alright? Weird, isn't it? And what would you go around like Sensation and things like that and Saatchi and going- Dali and that. You put a sheep in from Eldorado, what's art about that? Our oh. butcher does it. Uh, all right, uh, weird, isn't it? Uh, what do you make of Dali and the, the melting clocks, all that stuff? Talked about it, haven't we? I've told went? you, yeah, told you. What about do you think of it? Uh, he sort of milked the idea a bit, <laughs> right? Because yeah, sure. every everything had a melting clock on it. It yeah. was like he had a bit of success with it once, and then he just ruined it. Do you know what I mean? It's sure. like it's like you with the monkeys, like status quo. Yeah, or yeah. Sure. Like, What's your uh, favourite artist? Don't say Lowry. Lowry is my why, favorite. Why? Why is Lowry your favourite artist? Captures life, doesn't he? Going on and in that. stick form. I know you're a big fan of Where's Wally as well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've never found him, have you? I never found him yet. <laughs> no, Carl. That's not Wally. That's a stain on the table. You've come <laughs> off the book again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> listen. Are we? Uh, are we doing what's in a bit? What? 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 Right, what? what? We don't know what you're talking about. Player record. What? Yeah, we'll be doing what's it. Yeah, it? what's it coming up after the break? Libertines, don't look back into the sun on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, have we got the results? Yeah. Go on then, what are they? Uh, play songs of phrase. Play okay, this, songs of phrase. This was the phrase, these are the songs. Bye. Bye. My girlfriend had a problem with a marrow. The answer's Sinatra, Prince, Billy, uh, Bill Medley. Uh, U2, Shirelles, there was also Dub Pistols in there. Uh, no, no, no one got all of them, Carl, obviously. Um, but we'll give it to Mark Cantan, he got, uh, what did he get, about six or something. Yeah. Well done, he's from Dublin, yes. so that's nice. Well done. Listening over there, the Irish. Yeah. That's good, aren't it? Um, yeah. a German man, just thought I'd let you know this, Carl, sure. Ricky. A German man has, um, been arrested because he taught his dog to give the Nazi salute. 
<laughs> and then he made it do it in front of two policemen. I think it's an offence in Germany now. That's is a fascist it? with too much time on their hands. No, but is it, a, it's, it's illegal for a dog to do it as well? I think so. I bet he thought he'd found a loophole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he's been dying to do it, but he thought, well, I'm, I'm not allowed to do it. It's illegal for a human to do it. Yeah. Thought he got round it, and uh, no. For a while, it just kept doing the uh, Basil Fawlty funny walk. He's <laughs> going, no, <laughs> yeah, no, you're don't undermining do that. it. Don't do the legs as well. Uh, oh. But so the, uh, the reason I mention it is because he's German. And you, what were you telling me about earlier? About <laughs> Carl was wittering on about the Germans earlier. He was saying something about the accent. Um, it's yeah. fine with blokes, but not with women. You won't want to go out with a German woman because the accent. What do you think? It's a bit manly, isn't it? Sure. Is it? Yeah, it sounds a bit hard. <laughs> I can't imagine having a nice sort of romantic chat <laughs> with someone. Well, it's not a romantic language, no. It's, it's it's quite harsh. Yeah, but that's our. No, but what I mean is, right? I can't speak any other languages apart from this one. Well, right, you're struggling with this one. Yeah. And what I mean is, whereas you you really do speak the language you love. All right. I, There's I, some condoms. Where's my tea? Yeah. What I'm saying is, if a French woman was talking to me, I'd say, I don't know what you're talking about, love, but it sounds good. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> whereas a German, German woman, yeah. I'd go, oof, and she might be saying really nice stuff. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. But then we got talking because, do you know, like, me brother- Sort of a prejudice, really, isn't it? In a sense. What do you mean? S in a sense it's prejudice, but anyway, on you go. Yeah. Go on. Uh, it's not really, is it? No. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my brother was in the army, we've talked about it, haven't we, and yeah. how he got kicked out for going for a packet of flags in a tank and that, yeah. right? <sighs> But he was, uh, when he was in the army, he was based in Germany for a bit. And, uh, he used to be one for sort of, you know, picking up the ladies and that. He, he always had, you know, new girlfriends and stuff. Yeah. He's a Pilkington. Get, used to get through loads of them. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't that bad. But well, no, because you, you, you had things like, you trouble with your marrow and that. No, you might die. I'm not interested. Yeah, but no matter what he did, do you know what I mean? When he was a bus driver, he was one of them who always had a woman still at the front with him and sort of, you know, having a chat and stuff. Sure. And, uh, right. he sort of got kicked out of that and stuff. <laughs> but, um... When he was this, when he was bus driver, did, did he own the bus or did he just take it to get a packet of fags? <laughs> so, he, uh... He's in Germany. He's in Germany and the army people say to him, now, we know what you like, Pilkington, right? Das Pilker. Don't be, uh, don't be meeting up with any German frown women. Frown lines. Leave the frown lines alone. Not allowed to go out with German women because they, apparently they get you and then they beat you up and that. What, the German women? Yeah. Why? Go on. Dunno, they just said don't, because they don't like, uh, English army man. English army people and that. Why? See, they, the, the, the English is your first language, isn't it? Are you speaking German now? Or? I, d I, I can't tell. They don't get out with the Germans, go beat you up and that, don't like English army man. What See, is what, that? What worries me, Rick, is we've got the face, the body language and things to try and interpret this gobbledygook. The yeah. listeners, they just I got mean, the words. I must be, I yeah, know, yeah. It must be just ridiculous for a listener. Right, just do the competition. Okay. What was that anecdote about? Oh, Don't go out with German women, they'll beat you up. I'm just saying, when if you're in the army, if you're about to join the army and you think, it'll be great, I'm gonna meet loads of women over in Germany, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Wise words there, wise <laughs> words. So this station in public service. Excellent, Excellent. okay. Right, uh... Oh, can we just play a song and then do the film thing? No, right? just do the film thing now. Oh no, let's play a song. Oh, what are we playing? Bit of brag. Billy Bragg. Yeah. Excellent. Billy Bragg, the Sunday boy on XFM 104.9. Um, Ricky's laughing because he's just <laughs> thrown something at Carl. It made him jump. Yeah, that's worked well. Here are the prizes <laughs> for the, uh, the film quiz thing, which I think is what it's called. Brilliant. Brilliant. People will be loving this. It's, uh, is Trance it? Alp Anthems. Brilliant. 2003. We know we've got a lot of Trance fans listening. The best air guitar album, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, the best club anthems. Yeah. Uh, series one of Happiness by Paul Whitehouse. Uh, the very best of Father Ted on DVD. We've got Teachers. We've got Knowing Me, Knowing You. Not too bad. Yeah, a few bundles there, good stuff, Christmas gifts and things like that. So, uh, that yeah. Knowing Me, Knowing You, I've noticed it's on VHS, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite quaint. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. yeah, so what's the con explain the conceit of this? It's, uh, it's when, you know, we sort of dig out a film that I've been in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is... Don't know if I want to tell you what a film is, because that might be the question, thinking about it. Because there isn't that much going on in the clip. I think we need to know what the film is. Do you? Yeah. All right, it's Rain Man. Okay. Uh, Why is he called Rain Man? Is that going to be the question? Yeah, I know the I know the answer, Carl. Don't worry. Don't look at me like that. No, I do. I do. Oh, well done. Yeah, you watch the film. Yeah, you should. Right. So it's you, Carl, in the film Rain Man. Yeah, it's a bit when uh, Tom Cruise uh, is in the doctor's with uh, with with the with the ill man. All right. <laughs> there we go. You ready? Well, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do know that his brain doesn't work like other people. Wait, I, I am sat here. 
Don't go talking about me like I'm some sort of diff kid. Got a good brain. Works well. It stores all sorts of information and stuff, doesn't it, Tom? He uh, remembers things, little things sometimes. Well, d d don't say it like that, little things, as if it's stuff that isn't important. Are you good with numbers? The doctor's asking you a question. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just thinking. Good with numbers. It depends. Uh, not that good at maths, but I remember facts that have got numbers in them. Like I know that uh, one person in two billion will live to be 116 or over. Right. Weird thing is a lot of them are Chinese, so, you know, sort of makes you wonder if they, they're lying. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean you don't understand? It's not... All right. Here's an easier one for you, then. Goldfish have better memories than people think. He's right. He's right? Yeah. See? There you go. Uh, goldfish related. Oldest goldfish in the world was 41. No. Yeah. Um, funny thing is there, if it was a goldfish with a dodgy memory, it could have been older. could have been, you know, pushing 45. That's amazing. I mean, that is amazing. He should work for NASA or something like that. Well... Don't go that far. You know, they're the sort of things that I like reading about. You know, I've got that big book there. Uh, it's full of. Did you read all this? Yeah, just don't. You it, read all these stories yeah. that are in this book. Don't bother touching it. Maybe you better put it back. Give it back. Yeah. Okay, no, Ray, Ray, it's... take it easy. I'm not gonna. I won't touch anything else, Ray. Just... Come on. It's okay, Ray. It's okay, come on. Can I ask you something else, Raymond? No. You've annoyed me now. You've kept coming here saying saying I'm daft and that and messing with my book. Just go, will you? Excuse me. Were they messing with your big book of freaky facts? Yeah. Yeah, that's out of order. Good. Right. So what's the question? Why why is he called Rain Man? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone happy with that question? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ricky Dr. Faze at xfm.co.uk. Why is he called Rain Man? Right? Yep. Bad day, REM, XFM 104.9. That's nearly it, isn't it? That's almost it. Got I through think. another well, one? Got through another one seamlessly. <laughs> the film Brilliant. quiz, obviously, we had just moments ago. Uh, it was Carl featured in Rain Man. The question was, why is he and the film called Rain Man? The answer, Ricky, was. Well, uh, Tom Cruise's character, when he was little, couldn't say Raymond, and he used to call him Rain Man. Okay. Plenty of right answers, but we're going to give it to John Steele, who, interestingly, is from West Yorkshire. He's listening. Yeah. That is, so inter that, that is interesting. <laughs> it is. It yeah. Is. Um, so that's pretty much that. Is there time for Monkey News? I think we've got to have Monkey News. Let's and then that, that second track from the Ryan Adams Let's album. Let's play the jingle, though, if we can. Oh, chimpanzee that Monkey News, you f Right. Now, uh, it was back in the 1980s. Right. So it's quite topical then. Mm. Uh, okay. When did this happen then? 1980s? Yeah. yeah. It's about a uh, Colombian F1 sort of, form you know, Formula One driver. Yeah. Uh, apparently these races were going on, right, and uh, someone kept winning them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, okay, forget it. Forget it. No, don't do it. It's because it's rubbish. Cause it's rubbish. Right, so someone kept winning the races. So, uh, uh, this, this, um, this someone, this, this human, um, that kept winning the races. Th so this human being that kept winning the races, um, Carl, what was his name? Um, his name is it? It's Jimmy something. Yeah. But How tall is he? Well, Just something to us. No, 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 so, never showing his body that's right, or face? That's right, that's right. Never you're took joking. his helmet off. <laughs> you are a- you're an idiot. Never took his helmet off, right? You know- you know the short trousers he used to wear? <laughs> the, you, know, his, you know his trousers were about a foot long, but his shirt- the, the sleeves were really long! Anyway, right, so because he wouldn't take his helmet off- I You're mean, an he idiot. In, he was in- he, he was taking part in, like, yeah. the F3, which is like the lower ranks yeah. of Formula 1 and that. Just get to it. Just get to it. Everyone to thought it was like a, a famous driver yeah. who was Just taking part get, in that. Get to being a monkey. Anyway, what happened on. was, uh, there was a crash one day. Yeah. And the car tipped over, everyone's like, oh. He ran up a tree? 
So- They were suspecting when he ran away with the ambulance people up a tree and started eating a banana? So the marshals ran over and the ambulance people were there and they yeah. were about to take his helmet off and the marshals were like, don't take his helmet off. And give yeah. away the secret that he's- Give away the <laughs> secret <laughs> and that. Yeah, chimp. Yeah. Took his helmet Jimmy off. Jimmy Chimp. Jimmy Chimpers. <laughs> Little monkey under there. No. Definitely not. Okay, let's play Why and Alone. Did, did he survive? Well, let me yeah. just a couple of questions. Did he survive? Yeah, yeah he did, yeah. He, he, he was allowed to keep all the awards that he won. Sure. But he wasn't allowed to take part in any other races. Yeah. Didn't happen. Uh, this is Ryan Adams. Uh, we'll see you next week. This is uh, a song called The Shadowlands, also from that Life Is Hell album. It's good stuff. Uh. <laughs> Idiot. So, he, he, he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he's going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid, this as well. Mm -hmm. Putting me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice, though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that. I said, oh, you know, that, that's that. He went, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he probably said that. He said, that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. A lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional a, is rubber? A, is or? A, is a doctor. He's definitely a doctor. So anyway, mm. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. <laughs> he said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. He said, because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I tell me mm. about it. So when I was telling him that I had problems relaxing, mm. he said, oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person Who's a fat He's gullible enough to spend 46 quid for this oh, hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them, rather than them being in charge of the so brain. So all you did was you met a person as stupid as you? <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like, no, he saw it right, minutes. fucking sucker coming. No, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, the reason- Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well I am doing it, I've got locked into it, I've got to go at least another three times. Why? Try to get out of it. I don't know, I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait to- well, what's the wisdom he's gonna come up with next week? That'd be brilliant. I will kinda, yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is- Your blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking- You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. Do you know like how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus, right? He said, mm. uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep- You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh Close your eyes and see what's going Instead of just leaving but, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? <laughs> okay. He said, I'm just thinking about no, nothing else. He, I said, He's a witch! <laughs> didn't he? Did, did he say you to put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes, and and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So I was lying there, and it just wasn't working because. Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was. You were, even though you were thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. You were still using your face even though they were shut. What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm gonna die! I am going to die! Why, out of interest though, and this is this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why, why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, I, developed? I, I, I honestly it's got to be trauma, on it? It's the things, again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? 
Uh, where were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember them. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Because they, oh, they, God. they, they oh, pinpoint they things. All the tic tacs they've ever yeah, eaten. Yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No. Because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then. And, and it's oh. weird. I remember, uh, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't no, remember no, that, no, were you? No, would no, you, no, you, no, you, you weren't there, were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one you, of I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to memory. go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why, to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, okay, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of, uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters. <laughs> Where's the fucking Tic Tacs? <laughs> no. I we was... lost our truck for you, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window and the window was open and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But why? I don't understand. Why were they. Hang on a bit! Why do you mean. Why were they glued? Why were they. What do you mean they were glued? But just... why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just. <laughs> you get a build up on, yeah. the, on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It... <laughs> when they came in and you could sense them looking. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> I went to what's the name? Mm. Harley Street. I went for a, a check up. Mm. And, uh, like a medical. Yeah. Posh, you know Harley Street, it's like, yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah, been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. I uh, went up to the counter, I said, uh, I see the doctor, they said, name, yeah. Uh, it was ten minutes, go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yep. Loads of magazines. I mean, like a, like a news agent's. Yep. In the middle of the room on a table. Loads of them. So I'm looking through, and there's the, you know, there's the top quality ones, your Esquire, you know, GQ, Classy, Yacht Weekly, uh, all that, Country Life, uh, Boys. Boys? There's one there, yeah. Boys. What's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it, and it's like Boys with a Z. Two fellas stood there, looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Dungarees on. Uh, no shirt then. No shirt, just dungaree sort of unbuttoned hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never going to buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're going to tell us you looked through you a couple of magazines. Look. I had I had a little little look just because I thought you know like I say you, it's one you're chance. You're always looking to learn, aren't you? Always looking to learn. <laughs> yeah. Always open. You know there might have been something in there that I go right. I get it now. I understand why why they like doing that or whatever. Yeah. Right. So uh, she said I was going to you know ten minute wait. I can I can have a quick flick through. Picked it up, had a look. Um, still none the wiser. Why? Well, what did you see when you opened it up? Um, just loads of. Uh, I mean, like I've said to you before about, I don't know why you like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there. You're not going to go. Oh, yeah, so sure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Some had like car oil on the face. <coughs> uh, not about. Yeah. There was someone sat on a. Um, like a, a one of them square things of hay. Oh yeah, sat a there, like sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah, uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, knob out. Yeah, yeah, just looking, just looking like it's normal. <laughs> That's sort crazy. Like no that. farmer walks around like that. What was the other one? There was a uh, you know motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. No, I'm going through and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It, it it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in. <laughs> Look in the male his, body. Look at, look at this bloke it's straddling not, this huge throbbing thing. The bike's not bad either. Yeah, yeah all that. Yeah. Loads of them. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, just all, just, just cock. Just hundred percent. Like, let's, let's just talk about the knob. That's yeah. a good name for a, um, a gay magazine. Hundred percent cock. Hundred percent cock. Did it not at any moment, sort of, maybe slightly unnerve you that you might, the doctor might come in, and see you reading 
boys. No, because I or wasn't. What if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital about to have um, a tube going down your knob and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on and I walked through and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went, yeah, Carl, what are you doing? I would have just said, look at this. Look at this, it's free. And I, and you, and I said, why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like a bro with me? Look yeah, at this. yes, it does, because well, I've never, because so I would never see, you would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then, and pretended that it was that's, there. That's the thing, that's, I was amazed by that. Because there was no, like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for, like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, I mean, really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're going to have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had and I thought, they're really struggling with like ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. Su surely, Sococo. surely Sudico is better. No, because it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's dick as well. Sudico. Yeah. What, and it's, it was still a Sudoku style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name. Yeah, yeah. It's just so everything. It is was all just Sudoku, but called Sococo. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, if I, if I was gay, do you know, like, Let's have say, a game of Lubo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. Knoberation! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> Well, that works for either sex. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how we spend our okay, Christmases. Then. Fuck a poo. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, the greatest singer-songwriter of all time, Beautiful. with one of his uh, best songs there, Absolutely. Bob Dylan. If you see her, say hello. She might be in Tangiers. <laughs> I mean, he's he's having a go. He's, I he, mean, if you're going to go to Tangiers on the off chance to <laughs> yeah. try and find her, I wouldn't yeah. bother. <laughs> yeah, you know. But, I mean, you know, he's thinking, if you're going to be there, then he's have desperate. He's desperate. He's going. Yeah. Well, she might be in Tangiers. Uh, have you checked upstairs? She's definitely not upstairs. <laughs> just just have a look. Well, anyway, that was song for the lovers, but. Because I'm so excited about having such great prizes to give away for the first time, some albums that <laughs> Carl found, um, got we've got the lucky winner on the line. Hi, Neil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Ricky. Hi. You're a winner with XFM. Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do you like Feeder? They're a good group, aren't they? Feeder, well, yeah, the kids seem to like them. They do, the kids like them, and then Bob Dylan, uh, he's, a, he's a great, um, lovely bloke with a guitar, isn't he? You're working hard, aren't you? I'm, I'm, t I'm fed up with this, mate. <laughs> really? Honestly, I just don't know what else to do. I, I come in every week. I try, uh, try yeah, and write, see. Yeah. You have to write a new series of uh, of the office. I'm, That's what I, you have to do. I'm trying, but I've got a voiceover work now, so there's more yeah, money in that. You're, you know. You're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Woolies advert. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't mention that. Shouldn't really. No, it's all right. It's so, all right. Uh, Neil, uh, Steve mentioned here. Uh, will you be looking forward to receiving these albums? You've got Feeder, Echo Park, uh, Bob Dylan album, the best of, and uh, a compilation. You looking forward to them? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, it's going to really lift my Christmas. Uh, I'm not going to not going to get to your home this year, so that's going to make up for it, I'm sure. Neil, what what are, of those three? Which one will you be putting on first? I think Feeder Echo Park because the kids seem to like it. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much. What are you going to be doing for the rest of the weekend? Are you going to be chilling out? <laughs> I'm chilling, man. I'm freezing. I'm playing golf right now. It's, uh, that's it's madness. Very, it's very cold yeah. out here. What's, What's your handicap? Was my handicap? My short game's terrible. But right, uh, yeah, yeah. You're going to be watching the uh, National Comedy Awards this evening. I hear that The Office uh, is nominated. <laughs> ah, you guys are the shoe in. Sorry, yeah. you're, the, you're a shoe in. It's yours. Thank no. you. I don't yeah. know what a shoe in is, but I'd like to go to one. I think it means like um, foot you're, in the door. Lovely. Yeah, Does no, it? not foot in the door. It's like it's no. yours. Your name's already on it. Oh, really? Wow. I would think so. Yeah. Well, other, what, what, why would Ross stop around? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he makes the decisions. Neil, but. thanks very much for calling. Those, uh, those uh, prizes are going to be winging their way to you. We're just like real DJs, aren't we, Neil? Just say we're just like real DJs and we'll you leave guys, you alone. You guys are just like real DJs. Thanks Enjoy your game. Alone. Cheers. Bye. Step on my old size nine stereophonics. Absolutely. Well, talking to Neil, it all brought it home. You know, maybe I should give it a little bit back. Yeah, uh, you've I'm, had a good year. I'm hanging out with Jonathan Ross. Exactly. I'm doing ads, yeah. right? But. I care. I'm still in touch. You know what I mean? I'm still down with it. Yeah, right? yeah. And, you know, it's coming up to the time of year where we should, you know, care about people less fortunate than themselves. And what I've done, I've recorded a, uh, a Christmas single. That's beautiful. And all proceeds are going, you know, to, uh, you know, little sick people and that. And 
Are there gonna be any proceeds? There's gonna be not a sausage. <laughs> right. So I'm right. safe. But I'll tell you this, what I was thinking actually, I was listening this morning, and you go in, uh, doing some Christmas shopping, you go in the shops, and there's always, you know, walking in a winter wonderland, and all those songs. You know, no one writes those sort of things anymore. No. Uh, it, well, you're wrong, Steve. Really? Listen to this. It's What's called it called? Don't Cry, It's Christmas. Let's hear it. Ash. Good. It's a great show so far, isn't it? Enjoying it, Rick, but I'll tell you this, what worries me Go is on. something we've not done, which is what we've not- we've not taken on board some stuff I've heard from the management. They've said they've enjoyed the kind of light-hearted flippery, you know, yeah. in the past on the yeah, show, and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the likes of Jonathan Ross getting just, their just knobs out. Yeah. But, uh, they just feel that- sometimes it's a little bit cheap. Really, no, a little bit what, crass, and they just want us way? to perhaps be a little bit more highbrow at times. A little well, bit more that, cause I mean, well, you're a smart yeah. guy. I, I am, yeah. Know. We've, I've proved that with clubs having four noses and Stephen's Tower. Can I ask you, Rick, about politics? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Because I'm, I'm a political person. <laughs> I thought as much. Go on. What on the politics? What do you make of who to vote for? Vote for the government, whoever's in the government. Yeah. That's the it. Liberals ever? No, not if they're not in government. No, okay. don't. What about the foot and mouth, which a lot of people are worried about? Don't worry about it. No? No. Recession is hit, and a lot of people are losing their jobs. Should yeah. they- what should they do about Get it? Get another one. Get, Get another, another job. job. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, this is- and this is- I mean, you can have this for free. If you do lose your job or something, get another one, but get a one that's even better than the one you lost. Right. <laughs> okay, good advice. Yeah. Maybe get, maybe, if you were just like, kind of the postboy before, like Carl. Get a, in charge of the company, get a manager's job. Right, become director general or something. More money. <laughs> good, 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 good. And oh. don't lose that one. <laughs> okay. And, um, oh, what else is concerning people? Know a lot of, we get calls all the time, Rick, to the yeah. station. People saying, I'm worried about the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you make of the war? Is it, is, oh, it, oh, is well, it one of your favourites? Well, what, I, no, 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 my favourite, all war's bad, uh, but, uh, oh, my favourite. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. What is your favourite? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it? The Falklands it, War? It was a range war. What does that mean? Do you know what that means, Carl? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember drawing pictures at school and that. Yeah. It, it means that our missiles could go sort of 17 kilometres, yeah. and the Argentines only had missiles that go like, you know, 9 kilometres. So we just parked our boats about 12, 13 kilometres off it, and we were shelling them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shelling it out of there, right? And theirs were falling in the water. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's the war equivalent of holding a midget at arm's length. Right, and he's trying to punch you. And he can't reach yeah. you, you're just kicking him in the balls. At <laughs> will. <laughs> that was, uh... Rick, a lot of people talk about WW1 as being the Great War. Was it a Great War for no, you? No, it was a good war, it wasn't a Great War. Right, <laughs> what was the problem well, for Well, I you? liked all the, I liked the bayonets and the trenches and all that stuff, but I could have done without the poetry. Right. <laughs> only, only because the poetry's a little bit bent. <laughs> okay. And, you know, and what I'm saying is the only time that it isn't bent in a war, but, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's beautiful, but there's one now I remember, it was, um, we are the dead, once we lived, felt dawn on our face, but now we lie in Flanders fields. Be honest, if you'd have had a gun in your hand instead of a pen, yeah. you might be lying today, be dead, yeah. and the war yeah. would have been over by Christmas. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, high five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's losers. politics, Carl. Any other questions, politics Carl, you want to solve you know, any high Economics, features? I've done economics. Because, yes, yeah, the economical. Anything I else? I just think you should look after yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I've That's just got something to say to you. Hip hop, hooray! Hey. Let's play my hip hop Whoa. track. Hey. <laughs> Put Whoa. your hands in the air. Yay. Move them round like you just don't care. Yeah, you're not even bothered. <laughs> I'm playing an old school track this week, Rick. I'm Excellent. going back in time, rewinding the track. How are you spelling school, Steve? <laughs> oh, with a K. Go on. Uh, ever heard of anything by Digital Underground? The Humpty Dance, might you might The remember. Humpty Dance. Do you remember that? That was um, a fellow sat on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And he was he was getting dissed by yeah. the police, and he fell, and he broke all up. And the king's horses shouldn't have really been sent to to repair an egg. <laughs> they couldn't do it because of their hooves. <laughs> uh, anyway, Digital Underground for those that don't remember was an Oakland group led by Shock G and Chop Master J. Go on. <laughs> uh, but of course, most famous now for the fact that they featured uh, Tupac Shakur. Love him. Where he first began. You'll hear him on this track. It's called. Uh, what's it, which one have I chosen here? I think it's called the same song. Have a listen. Ross was uh, slagging off the hip hop feature, wasn't he, when he came in earlier? And how can he not like that? Digital Underground, same I, song. I think he was scared of it, Steve. I think he was intimidated. Doesn't understand it. By your, by your youth. Well, he's scared of the youth. He's scared of the fact that I'm down with it. The homies and the bitches and the hoes. Yeah. He, yeah. Because he, he's not with that. You I know, he looks dapper. If they saw him in the street walking down like a ponce, they'd just laugh and jeer. But yeah. Probably rhythmically. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and he couldn't come back at anything. And you'd be high fiving. Oh, they'd, they'd, they'd be loving, loving you. you. I, th I think he was intimidated by your style. I think he's jealous of you, to be honest. Do you know, I think what he's probably most jealous of is the looks. <laughs> yeah, I think Do you so. know what I mean? Yeah. I got the new haircut because we might be on the telly later. He right? didn't mention that, did didn't, he? Didn't, did he? Well, he's never seen the old one. <laughs> you, you've kept him from me. 
<laughs> He's got nothing to compare it with. <laughs> but that was a great hip hop selection there. Yeah, lovely. Even lovely though fun. I say so yourself. Rick, we've had a couple of people, because uh, they've, they've listened to your dissection of current politics and ep economicals. Yeah. And they've got a couple of questions for you. Go on. We've had one from uh, <laughs> Jimmy Ruffin. He says, uh, what becomes of the broken hearted? Oh, oh, oh dear. Um, that is a difficult one. I don't think I've got time to go into it because it's, it's a very <laughs> delicate problem. Can you answer this one from the KLF? What time is love? <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> Listen, keep those questions coming in uh, for Ricky Jones. You may be able to sort them out later. Have we got a second, <laughs> uh, yeah. let's, let's Oh, mark dear. It uh. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Super furry animals. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. XFM 104.9. Rick, you going to do your film review for us? We've got time for it, I think. I'm not, no. Why not? I'm not going to do it anymore. You're not going to do it anymore. No. You love it, don't you? No, well, it's great, and I just think it's time. You know, I did, I did a dozen, but I did all the, do all the films that I would give like nine or you know ten out of ten for. I don't want to drop the standards. Right. I don't want to start doing films that are eight out of ten. Yeah. You see? Yeah. That's where a lot of film reviews go wrong. Yeah. Ross I've being one of them. Yeah, I've yeah. seen them go. Oh, this is worth seven. Don't do it then. <laughs> yeah. If it's no good, don't do <laughs> it. No worries yourself. No. Sure. So, so no more film reviews? No. Oh. In, until a great film comes out. Sure, okay. Like uh, Braveheart 2 or something. Yeah. Which would be, which would be well, nine now. Quite it's an eventful, yeah. I'd have thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So nine for that. Uh, In well, advance. Rick, <laughs> it's almost the end of the show, and yeah. I've still got time for the uh, song for the ladies. I can't but wait. Carl won't be here next week. I think where's going? Where are you heading, Carl? Going away for Christmas? Tell us. What? It's a secret. What you want? You, you, you <laughs> well, in case, in case your fans try and track you down. What? You're going taking pictures of planes in Greece. <laughs> what? What? Political. Rob your house. Satirical, don't Steve. <laughs> Satirical. <laughs> Where are yeah. you going? What are you doing? If uh, I tell you what, if I was caught in a foreign country and the, and and the government got, I said no, it's okay. They were train spotting or plane spotting. I go, no, I am a spy. <laughs> exactly. No, I am a spy. No, you. Were, it's all right. You were train spotting. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> Wasn't spying, please. I saw you at the uh, Doctor Who convention as well. No, no, prob no probably an assassin <laughs> or something. Are yeah. I'm probably an assassin. Carl, where are you going, mate? Tell us. Come you, on, no, we haven't got time. to say when. What's that? Yeah. What? People rob your house if. Yeah, we didn't say tell us your address. <laughs> where, tell us where you leave the key, and <laughs> yeah. then tell us you're going on holiday. We said where you're going on holiday. Barbados. Are you? Ooh. Showing off. Yeah. Boasting. I'll tell you what, Steve. What I'd like to see, and a lot of the listeners right there too. Pop round there now, touch him for Christmas. Shall I touch him for Christmas? Touch him any way you like for Christmas. Can love I just introduce the song for the ladies before? Well, love him for Christmas, though. <laughs> Can I just say, yes, uh, what but the song as long is? as you love and touch him. We're going to leave you with uh, the excellent Tim Buckley, of course, father of Jeff. I'm and, just going to be uh, watching, but love him for Christmas. Look at his little face. Also on that CD that my friend Dave sent me earlier, so if you don't like it, blame him. Yeah. Uh, while he's been arrested if... by the copyright police. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's called Buzzin' Fly. Let me touch you, Carl. Oh, Steve. Uh, Go on. I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. Oh, I'm not calling you. 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 I'm not calling Little roundy bald head of Carl Pilkington. Good news and bad news. Good news is, boys are back in town. We're here for two hours. Hello. Bad news is, we have no uh, monkey news, um, gay fella news, or little Chinese fella news. Really? We're gonna try and, you know, leave that for a week yeah. and then maybe come back to it. Yeah. Why do I get the feeling that within 20 minutes we'll be talking about little, uh, <laughs> little gay <laughs> Chinese, Chinese monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, think of that. We have got monkey news. Really? We? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> so we've already broken that promise. Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna try and sort of talk about something else. I've just done Jonathan Ross show and they, they don't talk about the same things every week. It's weird. Mm. It is weird. Mm. But, um, or as Carl says, weird in it. Yeah. So, um, gave this show about five plugs. Nice one. Yeah. So, uh, I think we'll get... Upward of 800 people listening. <laughs> oh, double. For, for the first two minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then turning back. They're already switching over. I, I'd have thought so, yeah. I spoke to my friend yesterday. I, he's a little bit of an old fellow, and he said that he, for his own amusement, he had an iPod in his car, and he bought a little sort of transmitter, and he could transmit the music from his iPod to sort of just beam it, kind of as he was driving along, to sort of passing cars. What do you mean? I, Make their radio play it? Well, but if they had it in the right frequency, yeah. Um, I mean, pointless, completely pointless, but. Not dissimilar to this show, I imagine, in terms of the number of listeners. <laughs> yeah, but I was saying, what's the chances of people having th this frequency Absolutely on? Absolutely pointless. So it's probably about the same, yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? When I was, uh, when I was young, I wanted to get into radio, I was excited in radio, when I was sort of in my, I don't know, it was 11 or 12, 
my friend and I, we, uh, we got a little mixing deck and we used to host our own radio show. Brilliant. Uh, from his bedroom. We didn't have a transmitter, so we'd put some speakers in his front garden, in some bushes, and sort of broadcast it to people who were, who were walking Again, by. Again, probably over the week more listeners than this show. Almost certainly. That, yeah, I love the idea, we n it never happened, but I always was hoping that some, so maybe some girls would just come by and just like sit and listen, these guys are great. I don't know where these sounds are coming from, it seems to be that bush, but. Or Noel Edmonds <laughs> yeah. coming along going, who are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Can you get on my boat Can they stand in for me when I go on holiday? Yeah. 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 I did, uh, did I say I did sort of pirate radio? No, go on. They'd, uh, got into a- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the normal radio, but you had an eye patch on. Go on. Uh, Dad was in hospital, right? And, uh, he was having some operation done, right? And, uh, went to see him, and didn't have that much to say to him, right? So I was, sat, I was- I was sat there, well it's awkward though, isn't it, when someone's ill? Yeah. And you don't know- Boring, isn't it? <laughs> Boring. So I was flicking around on that little radio thing they have. Yeah. And I heard, like, they had a radio station in the hospital, so I said, oh. I'm gonna go and join this, so I wandered off to go and find it. Yeah. Uh, sort of joined that, did a little show on there, thought I can, I can sort of get out to the masses here. <laughs> My mate made a little transmitter, did a little pirate radio show from the, uh, got, got kicked out because they found out and apparently I put the, the station at risk because all the stuff could have been taken off us. But uh, from Little Acorn, 16 years later, he's on a show with less <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Um, Can you imagine if you're, you've gone into <laughs> hospital, you're already pretty depressed, there's the fear of these bugs, super bugs in the hospital. Yeah. Maybe you've got some quite serious illness, you know, yeah. you don't know if you're gonna make it. His voice is what you hear to cheer you up. Alright, weird, isn't it? I saw a program about a parasite the other night. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they, they get in through your eye and eat their way out through your genitals. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you here's where you went. Yeah, exactly. Play a record, Carl. But Stone Roses, is it? Oh, Fool's Gold. Classic. Classic. Stone Roses, Fool's Gold, XFM, 104.9. Brilliant. Can I help but notice you've uh, brought some sandwiches in, Rick? Mm. What, what's in there? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion? Yeah. Because I've never, never, ever seen you make sandwiches before. I've seen you take a loaf, a piece of bread out of a loaf yeah. and sort of fold it in half. Crumbs everywhere. Well, Jane made that for me because I was in a bit of a hurry. I, 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 I didn't think for a minute that you. Why? Because it looks so. neat. Well, it's they're wrapped in the tin foil. <laughs> they, a knife has been used. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to chewing round yeah, the baguette, exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, breaking yeah. it in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Anna, yeah. Albert Steptoe. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. nice. It's great, but the yeah. onions are strong. Are they? Making my eyes water. Yeah. If I can't breathe on you, yeah, it'll cure any sort of skin disease you <laughs> might have. Skin disease. We watched that. Um, Carl, you know that Carl was raving about that thing about parasites, about worms coming out of your brain, and that. And I watched. What is it. this? Is a TV show? Yeah, called Body Snatchers. Right. And it was pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, amazingly shot as well. I mean, it's got to win an award for photography. Yeah. And there was uh, one bit that um, this little girl had been bitten by a mosquito and laid her eggs, and it went to the doctor. She had a lump on her neck, like a boil, and uh, they pulled it out, and it was like. Like a bullet, this maggot. Oh. And it, they put it down and it was wriggling in her blood, right? But the hole left was sort of aesthetically pleasing. You know, like that feeling you get like, I once had an ingrown hair and I quite liked it when I pulled it out. And it's a perfect little hole. And I thought, I wouldn't mind having those as long as they sort of like healed over. What are you talking about? I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? But why would you want a hole in your body? No, I... it's got pulling something out, sort of like pulling something out of your body. It's sort I don't of know what you're talking about. It? No, but it's sort of like. <laughs> This is it, you watch one program <laughs> recommended to you by Carl, you've turned into Carl. <laughs> you want a hole in your body? No, it was, it was like, you know, like squeezing a really good sort of like, spot, I mean I haven't squeezed spots for ages. In fact, I never had spots, but maybe that's it. I didn't have spots. Right. And I always thought that would be nice squeezing a spot. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would these know. things be pleasurable? Why would a hair, an ingrowing hair, that's yeah, great fun. That was good, because I, I got it, it was like a little lump and I pulled it, and then it pulled out and it was like, that left a little I know hole. what you mean. I, I, yeah. get, I get thick hairs yeah. down there. Yeah. Like, really. Oh, when they come out, it's like a bit of wax. Yeah. Like, a, like pulling out a little candle. And I love that. What? Uh, yeah. When, because I've got no, not much hair on my head. No. Right? It sort of grows thicker on my face. No, not true. Um, <laughs> sure, but go on. Yeah. No, it does. Not true, baby. Go on. <laughs> no <laughs> evidence for that. Just made it up. <laughs> so it yeah. grows sort of thicker on no. my neck and that, and now and again I'll see like something that's like a twig. Right, it's, it's yeah. really thick. Yeah, you feel it, and then you think, oh, I'm gonna have that, and then you work at it, and then when you get hold of it, it's brilliant. It's like pulling out, a, it's fantastic. It's waxy and build up, and it pulls it out and it stretches your skin and it leaves a hole. I've just realised why we talk about Chinese people, monkeys, and gays every week. <laughs> why? Because this is the sort of replacement. <laughs> This is what we've got if we're not talking about them. <laughs> but it was great as well. And um, 
there was a, there's this parasite, right, that lives in a fish, right? Mm. And what it does, um, it changes the fish's behaviour. Because to breed it has to get its body temperature up, so it has to get into a bird. Right. What, sorry, what needs to get into the bird? The, the fish? parasite to to the complete parasite its needs life to get into cycle. A bird. Yeah. Right. So it changes the behaviour of the um the, the stickleback, and it makes the stickleback sort of suicidal. So the stickleback doesn't flee when it sees a heron. It gets caught. Right. Because this stickleback has changed its behaviour. I was tr uh, Carl didn't quite understand this. I did still you? don't really get it. I watched it, and you see like the fat fish and that, and you go, oh, it's not well. But I don't understand. Well, all it does is it has to get into a bird because it has to to breed. To lay its eggs, it has to have a, a raise of body temperature. So has to, the fish is cold blooded, so it has to get into a bird which is warm blooded. There's lots of things, uh, uh, certain things. At yeah, that why, level. why? Why is it doing that? Because it needs a, it needs the the uh, the temperature. It needs the the, the heat energy for the, for its reaction. Just like, for example, that's why your balls are on the outside. Because the cells have to be a certain temperature to survive. I think I don't know if it's the sperm or the cells, but they have to be a couple of degrees below body temperature. Otherwise, they'd be in a nice cage, and we wouldn't get kicked in the nads. What do you mean? That's why your testicles are on the outside of your body. They have to be a couple of degrees below body temperature. Yeah, but it's not. That isn't why they're there. You see, this is like the chat we had last week about the giraffe having a long neck. What do you mean? They're there because that's where they happen to be. They didn't go right. Well, that's what evolution is. It's it's a selection process. It's not a will. The balls didn't say, look, I'm too hot, let's get us outside, let's get outside of here! Alright, hang on a minute then. What? So a little, a little man monkey, <coughs> right, theirs are in the same place as ours, yeah. but, but oh, they're, they're walking around naked so it could be anywhere, they could be like on the back. It doesn't no, matter where it, they are. They call it, well they could be on the back, yeah. So why aren't they? This is a completely <laughs> different- <laughs> Steve! Um, you started it! I wash my hands of the whole affair. And we're, we're not only back to balls, but we're back to monkey balls. <laughs> yes. In one in one thing from about parasites, we're back to monkey ball news. Yeah. And we're back to to, to chimp testicle news. All right. <laughs> All right then. So this thing, this worms and a fish. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's like a little platy helminth. I think it's some sort of sort of. But what I mean is, why are they about? What do you mean? Why? They evolved. But why haven't they died out? Because they're very successful. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? What do you mean, yeah? Uh, what, what, tell me the tell me the brain event that made you say yeah in that one second gap. Because uh, in a way I don't get it, and uh, if I think about it too much it hurts a bit. Black <laughs> 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 oh. They've just been around for years, Carl. Yeah. Like Cliff Richard or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, just... Forget about tomorrow. Bye, Feeder. On XFM 104.9. Carl is in some pain now, isn't he? What angers me is the fact that the listeners, at least they get a record. They get three minutes where they can just relax, they don't have to listen to this drivel. I've got to sit here for another three minutes while you try and explain to this idiot <laughs> why we they have a parasite and why we have fish and why, you know. <laughs> it's going, just what? interminable. Oh, Carl's question is, what's the point of a parasite? I was saying, well, they evolved alongside everything else and it's part of the ecosystem. He's going, but why is a parasite in a fish, in a heron back in a fish? And I said, what's the point in anything, right, apart from the balance of the ecosystem that survives at any time? And then Steve went, Carl, you should have done this when you're in sixth form. Yeah. Questioning the point of life. Yeah, you should have had these existential questions, you know, when you were younger. Did you, you ever used to lay awake at night thinking, where did the universe end? No. I did that when I was about six or seven for about a year. When, I, when, I, when someone said it was. <laughs> he was lying awake at night thinking, where does Manchester end? <laughs> 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 I assume it goes on forever. <laughs> Embrace and gravity on XFM 104.9. We've uh, had a couple of texts. People obviously can text in 83XFM. That's the um, text number for the uh, big quiz that's coming up shortly. Rockbuster, still your opportunity to win some of those cracking prizes. Enter your name in the draw if you can um, unravel the, I don't know what you call them, conundrums that uh, yeah, Carl set. Sort of. We've had a couple of texts. Um, obviously, we're leaving early today. This is a, sh a shortened show and our last show of this run. But we've got to leave early. We've got to go down and try and make poverty history. Um, but Rob's texted and he says, only an hour and a half today. Well, poverty does have some benefits then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's a fan. He understands the show. Who was that little fellow that used to uh, write in who hated the show? Right, I forget his name, mate. And I haven't heard from him from a while, for a while, actually. I don't know what happened. No. Maybe you realise that if you hate the show so much, the obvious thing to do is to switch off. Maybe that finally does. That's dawned. annoying. What's got, his name? Someone like, remind us of his I name. I like people who hate us to carry on listening. Yeah. It just gives it an edge, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, It's the fact that, you know, some, that you're annoying someone. I mean, I love annoying people. I know you do, I know. So you're, you're like a kind of walking Chinese water torture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, have we got Ladder 49 today? Rick, there's a number of cracking DVDs as ever on Rockbusters. Um, we've got The Life Aquatic mm. with Bill Murray, we've got Howard and uh, Kumar Get the Munchies, <laughs> hilarious stoner comedy, and uh, Batman the Animated Series. And Ladder 49, there oh, it is. Oh, Phoenix, yes. John Travolta. If you're interested, if you've never seen Ladder 49, then you can give us a quick text review on uh, 83X. And I'd be interested to know if, it, if it's Why actually. Why are you giving away one a week <laughs> for the last six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Well, we better start then. Let's do Rockbusters for the last time. You can win those amazing prizes. All right. Um, as always, just a little cryptic clue. Some initials of a band or an artist. Work it out, email in or text in. That's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Right, the first one. Uh, Richard Kid, uh, Richard's kid. Yeah. Cuts hair for a living. Right? Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Right? Initials BD. Right? D D. Richard's, uh, R Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Second one. I have a problem saying the French word for well. Right? I, I think know. I think that's that's the right word anyway. Well. I have a problem saying the French word for well. So what's that? that initial there is K. Right, band or artist. And then uh, the third one. You take eight kebabs, two kebabs, fifty-seven kebabs, times it by twenty-seven kebabs. Right, the fella is struggling to work it out. What's 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 that? What's going on there? Right, it's <laughs> a good question. D S, D S is the answer there. Eight kebabs, two kebabs. I've got it. Fifty-seven kebabs times it by twenty-seven or what have you. Fella's struggling working it out. What yeah, is I've it? I've got that one. D S. So uh, just email in Ricky at xfm dot or on the text eighty-three nine three six. Yeah, and you can win, uh, Ladder 49 and those other DVDs, plus you go into the draw, which we'll do before we leave, and you can win the, uh, signed by Matt Groening, personally drawn, uh, Homer Simpson, we've got the Spinal Tap poster signed by, uh, Christopher Guest, and, uh, and also the, the original, um, artwork of us, uh, as Flanimals. But they've all been framed, they've done a brilliant job, it really is, it really is a nice prize. I mean, almost too good to give away, a little bit annoying. Is it too late to original. take that back? Well, I was thinking we could sneak in a, a copy. Yeah. Just a very bad photocopy, so it goes grey and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they're all originals, so, uh, g keep, get texting. Right. Right. I still have that other girl in my head by Elvis Costello and Burt Bacharach, uh, on this final XFM show, Richard Vase, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, we nearly got to wrap it up. I think we got to do the, uh, Rockbusters winner and give someone those lovely prizes, monkey news, then we're out of here. We'll yeah. maybe come back, maybe do some Christmas specials. I don't want to make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, first one. First one was, uh, Richard's kid, uh, he cuts hair for a living. Yeah, what's right. that? That was, uh, well, try and work it out. No, you know. there's no point. <laughs> Dixon, yeah, he was a barber. Bar yeah. bar Barbara Dixon, right? Dixon, work. Dixon, well, again. Barbara, he, he Dick, Barbara Dixon. Right, so, it wasn't Barbara Dixon, was it? So, that's did, that one. did Ronnie Corbett ever say, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Barbara Dixon? <laughs> second no, one, second never one was, did, did he? Uh, he never did. I have a problem saying the French word for well. What's what's the French word for well? Bye, isn't it? That's good. What? No, that's that's good, then. Well, well, no, what? Isn't it, uh, isn't it BM? Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. right. I have a problem saying it, so I, ca I can't say it. I can't say BN. I can't say, can't say BN. can't say Kasabian. Right? So, <laughs> they managed to work that one out. Can't, can't That's say- That's one of your worst, that. Can't, can't say BN. Can't what, say BN. Can't, can't say BN, it's not, it's doesn't- No. Nah. And the last doesn't one- work. That's terrible! Eight kebabs, two kebabs, plus fifty-seven kebabs, times twenty-seven kebabs. This fella is struggling working it out. What's, what's the answer there? DS. Right? I don't know some. Uh, right? So he's, he's struggling working it out. He's, uh, it's a Donna Sum. Donna Sum, um, right? <laughs> so they got that right as well, so. What, what, what was the answer? Donna Summer. R.E.M. Night Swimming. Beautiful song. Brilliant band. I've got to introduce them and I'm actually nervous. Yeah. I never get nervous. You never get nervous, do I you? I never get nervous and I get a little adrenaline rush. It just takes, what is it, 80% of the world's population to be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get a little bit jittery. And I don't know what to wear. No. No, this is interesting actually. <laughs> I don't know, um, no, 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 no. I, uh, I, for a moment though, I was thinking maybe Ricky's got to pop home first before he goes down. <laughs> 
<laughs> to bring on the band. But if you are watching it or if you're there, obviously not there, if you were there you wouldn't be listening to this, but if you're watching it on TV, do check Ricky out because how do you describe that particular look? Ricky's wearing, uh, sweatpants. I assume they're sweatpants. They're not pajama bottoms, are they? They're, yeah, they're, they're sweatpants. The, they're sort of, And yeah. you've got just a white t-shirt, a cheap and plain white t-shirt. Yeah. And it, basically Ricky is wearing, <laughs> it's like, He's made so little effort. The only the, he could have made the only reason he, the only way he could have made less effort was if he wasn't wearing any clothes. <laughs> if he was just wearing his underpants that he slept in. <laughs> but he's actually bothered to spot on a t-shirt and a pair of sweatpants. There's some trainers. Yeah. Well. I mean, what, Ro Jonathan Ross is going to probably be wearing a suit, one of his you know expensive suits, yeah. whatever. And, yeah, he won't know. be as comfortable as me. Well, true. <laughs> Did it not occur to you for a moment to maybe make slightly more of an effort, perhaps put on a jacket? <laughs> a jacket looks silly with tracksuit bombs. Well, again, you could have changed the tracksuit bottom. I mean, oh, yeah. they're a mainstay of the outfit, are they? It's like they're not changing for anything. <laughs> yeah, I've got very little things that I, I haven't got a drawstring or an elasticated waistband. No, sure. I don't really don't want to be bothering with buttons and zips and hooks. There's going to come a point, isn't there, where you're just going to wear, I don't know, smocks. <laughs> baby grow. Baby grow. Yeah. Baby grow with a flap. Yeah. That'd be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Those little mittens. <laughs> yeah, I want in, yeah, great. And then an oven glove, so I'm just getting stuff out of the oven, eat it, let it drop everywhere. Yeah. Right, and then just get out of the baby grow, put a new one on, a clean one on. Or those kind of, those kind of red <laughs> flannel things with the, 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 which cowboys wear. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. With the kind of buttoned up. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah. like gra old cowboys. Yeah. Grandpa, he comes out with the shotgun. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the long johns. Well, um, yeah. how's it going with Rockbusters? Has anyone got the answers? Um, actually, one guy is, uh, he texted a uh, James in Deptford, he's, uh, offered some answers, and he says here, the guy that hated us, famously, of course, we should have remembered, Dickie Anderson. Dickie Anderson? Richard Anderson, of course. Um, oh. Never, I don't know if Dickie's still listening. If he is, obviously email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and, uh, tell us what you've been doing, what, how you've been keeping busy and stuff. Yeah. Nice to hear from him. Chris Campling hasn't called, has he, either? No, Campling. The one that thinks that not only is this whole show scripted, imagine <laughs> that, right? But that Carl is a character created by us. Yeah. He's actually an actor. Oh, I found him. Look at that. A that. shaved monkey we got. I'll tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go There's on. only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, perhaps yeah. I'm gonna do, uh, um, uh, cause I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, yeah. but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a, a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know very well that when I was put, I'd put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that whatever you put on. That's nonsense! No, they, they, they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they weren't having a good time. It was your party. It was- it was alright, but they weren't going mental like you're- you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. No, when I put on the proclaimers, no. they could not believe their no. luck. Yeah. <laughs> they- they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he- were they really- what were they doing? Were they dan- they were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going, you know, more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take wow. on me came on. They, 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 they big, big up. Oh, I don't know who to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well. I oh, it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy, though. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up and his are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, people making, making music, music his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> But you're safe, aren't you? You're behind the little thing with the yeah, flashing lights. Yeah, but I don't, still a lot of people and that. Forced fun. Don't like that. Forced it's fun. It's not forced fun. They haven't got to dance if they don't want to dance. Yeah. Don't like it. What do you mean your fortunes are on the up anyway, DJ? Well, you? I tell you, I was uh, hired, well I say hired, I did it as a favour to a friend, uh, his wedding the other week. And I got there, I was thinking, yeah. Cause I, you know, everyone was, everyone had their little role to play, and then people were doing a good job. I love you taking it seriously. And I did, I spent wedding. ages putting together some CDs, <laughs> special selection CDs. I love that! Cause what I did, I, I burned them on iTunes. Did you turn up with your own headphones round your neck? O own headphones, wearing a suit but headphones. A metal case. Didn't need it, just had them all in one small box. <laughs> Brilliant. Boom. Um, I thought this is good stuff. I got some classics here. Give me an example. Give me an example of the, like the, the, the first hour, the warm up hour. Rick, um, I've, I'm coming straight in with, uh, Frankie Valley. Oh, what a night. Brilliant track. I mean, when those beats start at the beginning, who's not getting on the dance floor? Dun, 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 Wait a minute, what's this following up? Go on. It's the Jacksons. Well, I want you back. I want you back. Brilliant. It sounds good at the moment, Carl. Yeah. 
So um, I'm, I'm thinking, like, at least I'm gonna, I'm gonna roar this, but because you know they laid on a good spread, the ceremony was nice, food was nice. I'm thinking this is gonna be the, the piece de resistance. Yeah. Alarm bells started ringing. Why? When I realised there was a marquee outside. Of course, it's a balmy summer evening. I'm stuck inside oh. on the dance floor. Inside, I'm thinking I'm gonna be struggling here to get them in. <laughs> even with, even with flavours like this, I thought I struggle with it. <laughs> so I'm sat there in my suit. <laughs> There, I'm sat behind this little, I'm sat behind this little DJ console. <laughs> I've got all the big numbers. There's one or two people making some token effort, but frankly, most people are outside. Everywhere oh, no. time. I was livid. Of course, they couldn't hear it out there. So I was playing to an empty room, really, and I was furious. I was absolutely furious because oh, no. I mean, what is you know? You're wasting my time. <laughs> you're wasting now. I could have just stepped the CD on. They're wasting Frankie Valley's. Wasting Frankie Valley's time. They're wasting the Jackson Five. They're time. wasting you know D-Light's time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so I'm sat there and there's not really, there's a couple of people making a cursory effort. Mainly when they come to get a drink from the bar, they might have no. a little quick, you know, a couple of two. You shout, we don't want your, all, uh, uh, all, uh, yeah. all of your, no all of your, no one at all. <laughs> <laughs> Strokes last night on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Definitely, definitely. Ahoy. And little Carl Pilkington. Little KP, there. the K-Man. Steve. Yes. Don't worry anymore. Okay. I've procured some great gifts to give away. I was tired really? of seeing all these other people getting gifts and that, and it was go yep. all going to that, uh, O'Doddle and, uh, O'Diddley. Diddley, and, O'Diddley, yeah. And, uh, uh, Anderson and Sturge, or she, st at least she steals them herself. Well, at least she, she steals herself to sell them to feed the habit, and that's yeah. why I don't mind that, because it's no. industrious. Exactly. But I have got Feeder, Echo Park, I've got the Essential Bob Dylan. Now, that is a good giveaway. That's a great giveaway. And Reloaded 3. Where have you, did you buy these yourself? No, you? little Carl found them. Let me, I have to say, Carl, you've done an absolute dynamite job here, mate. This is great prices. And I thought we could play that trivia quiz where we, we we're the challenge. They, if they get right. someone to catch us out, maybe, or some other question. Like you confused me slightly. Explain again. Well, we could play a little trivia quiz, couldn't we? Right. And then we could sell the fish. <laughs> Use the, the words that you need man. to complete the sentence, and Rick. And then... And oh, we could do this. this. What, what's the quiz? I don't know. You not thought this through? No. Coldplay and Yellow. <laughs> You've got to keep talking, Rick. We're on the right. radio. I got bored. Did you? XFM 104.9. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. What I was saying was, yes, we could have a little trivia quiz, right? This is how it works. Their their phone in, yeah, right, and they pitch a question to us two, right? We won't know it. They'll tell Carl, and Carl write down the answer, yeah. Or on his email, right? <laughs> and then it might be something like, um, oh, uh, who was the, f uh, first woman MP? And, uh, write down the answer, and they go, okay, Steve Rick, who was the first woman MP? We'll write it down. You know, I mean, you'll write down something like the Queen. Yeah. And I'll write down Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah. And they go, well, Rick says Britney Spears. And the answer is, the lady, see? Yes, 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 and, yes. And yes. then whoever's. So they, can they, can they phone in or do they, can they email as well? They can email as well, Steve. Right. Okay, so let me just try and clarify this, because I didn't really follow that, and no. I know what the competition is. Right. Um, people listening, phone in or email in with a question, a trivia yeah. question, it could be about anything. I right? don't do game shows. But, one, not, but one which we may be able to get, right? They phone in with that, or they email it in, but uh, only Carl knows the answer. He asks us here in the qu studio the question, Ricky and I write it down independently, we hand it to Carl, we see who's got the right answer. It's like 15 to 1, but 2 to 1. And the great thing is that the best question that we'll vote on at the very end of the show can win these three CDs. We've got Feeder, Echo Park, The Essential Bob Dylan, that's a two CD set, Rick. Maybe keep the questions highbrow to show our intellect, not things like pop and trivia and- Good idea. And, and we've also got this big, uh, compilation, Reloaded 3, that's also a two CD compilation. We'll start phoning and emailing now. Phoning, like emailing go with berserk. your trivia Absolutely questions go berserk. for Gervais. I'm um, best at science. Well, don't start well, don't giving things. That. That's not That's fair, because I'll say I'm best at films if they want yeah, me to Yeah, but I've already said don't do trivia and entertainment and that. Well, they should do. Well, they should no. do trivia and entairment. Music and films is what they should do. No, they shouldn't. Or old TV. TV. That's, that's the cliche of XFM listeners, and I know they're more intelligent than they're that. They're not. They're not, Rick. They're, they're stupid <laughs> people. <laughs> they're stupid, stupid people, and they only know about a few things. <laughs> Garbage, cherry lips on XFM 104.9. Well, either they really want those CDs, or they want to embarrass us. Mm. Because uh, the phone lines are going mad. And they Carl's are going mad. If, we didn't even give out the phone number or the email, Rick. Shall I just give it out now? Well, obviously, I don't need to. Well, I ought to anyway for those that didn't hear it, but didn't know it already. Of it. 08700, 08700, 800, 1234. Sorry, that's not 08700, 08700, because I, I started again because I got. I sort of fluffed slightly. Yeah, go on. 0800 800 1234. And when he says he fluffed slightly, like, that, that's not how he got into television. <laughs> exactly. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to email the question. And only Carl can see the screen, so there's no cheating. Probably people don't know what fluffing is, do they? No, I don't think so, Rick. 
Uh, Carl, have you had a question? What, already? Are we doing it now? Should we do it now? Well? Well? I think we should just drip them in throughout the yeah, course of the show. Yeah, yeah, you could want dripping them in. Go on. <laughs> yeah, Ask us right. a question. I thought this was a good one. It's from Clive. Go on in. Clive? We've got a listener called Clive. Why? That's all right. Who was the first James Bond? Oh, is right. this film one? No, that. but wait a minute, but wait I, a minute. I know, I know this ambiguity because we've talked about we've it. We've talked about this ambiguity before. You see, he could he might be deliberately embarrassing us because the old myth is that someone played it on radio yeah, at that we all know and love. Yeah. Now, he should have specified, did he mean the film, James Bond, the first well, film, the thing James is, Bond? Is, can I just say, the, the, we, we won't count this one, because the definitive one, I've talked to, to Glyn about it as well, it, it is Doctor No, was the first one of the team that we... Sean Connery. So, Sean Connery's the first screen James Bond. So, we, we agree on that, even if we're both wrong. What did he say it is? I bet he said, I bet he said it was Bob Holness who played him on radio in, like, the 1950s. He didn't say the radio bit, but he said Bob Holness. From Blockbusters? Yeah. And I was drawing a little Blockbuster thing. That's there, really spooky. That is, that's weird, isn't it? But the thing about that is, I I'm worried if it might be a myth. Mm. It may be. Well, a no, myth. I don't. I don't think it is. It's that that we can't. One point that. to me then. No. Yes. No. Well, you did. Did you not. know it? Did you know it? Did yeah, you we talked about no, it. No rubbish. Yeah, but who? Well, if we talked about it, did I say it to you? No, we agreed that it was Sean Connery because it, it just like we didn't count Casino Royale because you said it wasn't by the same team. And yeah, but that wouldn't have been the first James Bond anyway because that came later in the series. No, Rick. No, 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 no. no Don't way. play the music. No way. That's clearly a point. You didn't know it was Bob Holness. He meant it was Bob Holness. I knew the answer. One bit. Well, fun-loving criminals, Scooby Snacks. Anyway. It doesn't matter, because we, we both agreed once in a pub that the right answer is Sean Connery. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Rick, the that. point's not that. The man phoned in with a question, and the yeah. answer the man was after was Bob Hollis. Oh, okay. And that's the answer I'll tell you I gave. What, the, the answer I was after was me. But that's not such a He's the question master, the man who phoned in. That's ludicrous. You, you, you face the facts. You can't say, you can't say what number am I thinking of. You've got to, you've what got are you talking about? It's got to be the real answer. No, but I knew the answer he was after. So, oh, brilliant. Yes, because that's, you know, even if he's got it wrong, it's such common parlance now that Bob Holness was the first James Bond that I knew the answer. Face the facts. Right, give us another question, Carl. Jeez. Give us another question. Guy, he's a bad loser, isn't he? <laughs> I had a good one here, but... You've, you've forgotten it? Or... I sort of scribbled it down. This um, is brilliant, isn't it? Hang on a minute. We can edit this out, can't we? It's we'll not live, it, isn't this? It's, it's only a pilot. It's gonna... <laughs> 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 this is gonna look great when it, when it comes out. Go on. Which food? Yeah. Um, Carl, you know making up the question. No, no, no it's just that I sort of took down the important bits. Right, this is amazing. This is amazing radio. Go on. Which food kind of doesn't make you fat? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> What kind right. of a question is that? Oh, this is ridiculous. No, it is proper. I love, I love, imagine um, this on The Weakest Link. <laughs> what kind of food doesn't sort of make you, I mean, it doesn't make you fat. Um, what, what is this what, what, Okay, do you want Basically, me to... Basically, no sort of calories in it. Um, celery. Water. Well, I mean, what do you mean? Do you mean a, 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 a vegetable? No, do you you're, mean a you're right, you're right. Apparently, you, yeah, you, it, it you, uses you up more use calories more to bite it, it than, than, than yeah. But wait a minute, wait a minute, Rick. One, one all. No, it's not one all because you're supposed is. to write it down. You didn't know. But you didn't. I, what do you mean? I didn't know. You're supposed to write it down. That's the whole point. We're writing. You down. said water. You said water. But that's because I thought we weren't taking the question oh, seriously because he didn't know what he's talking about. One all. We it's got to set the rules. This is a bit too much like Porter's head for my liking. Was it? Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. Beat a band. Well, you, that's because Porter said it from your neck of the woods, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> Port, well, Porter <laughs> said I think you're fine. Yeah. I embarrassed myself. <laughs> 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 right, well, another question, quick. Is this, is this one, is this question a real question with a definitive answer? Or is it like, what is my most comfortable chair? <laughs> I don't know why people aren't going to maybe like Trivia Pursuit or something, just getting a question off that and then... Because they're, they're a little bit more discerning than that, Steve. Yeah, have you heard the questions? They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> This God. is stuff they've overheard in pubs. <laughs> Come on, yeah. ask it, ask it, Carl. I look at the Carl takes down and goes, "What's that? <laughs> I know. What am I meant to write? Go on, then ask this one." Right. Um. Wh what sort? No. <laughs> the Jesus. Pope. Yeah. Um. What semi? Sorry, Aunt Mrs. R Robinson. We're gonna have to let you go. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> you are the weakest link, Carl. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Go on. The Pope. Yeah, the Pope. Yeah, we've got the Pope. Yeah, <laughs> that's not strictly a question. He wears a, uh, oh, so <laughs> He wears a dustman's hat. He wears gold blimey <laughs> trousers. Yeah. Does he live in a council flat? Yeah, he, he lives is. in a council flat. He wears a semi-precious stone. What's the stone? The Pope uh, wears a semi-precious stone. What is the stone? You mean, you mean, what is it called? Yeah. What is it called? What, is it got like a kind of, um, well, papal I think, name? I think it's like, you know, is it, is it a 18-carat one? 
<laughs> so we got to try and get right. the carrot <laughs> yeah, of the Pope's big diamond. He calls it Dennis. He calls it Dennis the Stone. <laughs> <laughs> do they want the, the, the do they want the type of gem it is like or is there some kind of papal name movie, for it? or do they want it like the Rosetta Stone or the oh you <laughs> oh I can't actually <laughs> play a record play two records. <laughs> Uh, my only thought is that John Lewis and Waitrose, I mean, it's not very rock and roll, it's not very XFM, is it? No, I mean, a tattoo parlour, yeah. maybe, you know, in a or bike a shop. piercing, I might get my face pierced, just a big <laughs> bolt <laughs> through my head. But, yeah. I mean, they're a little bit, aren't they a little bit like The Man? Aren't they a little bit mainstream, Yeah. Really? Hey? What would Billy we say about roll? this? I'll oh, play a record, and don't make it a square record. <laughs> something on an indie label or something. Or oh, something that hasn't been even recorded. <laughs> yeah, that can't even become available yeah, ever. Yeah, I don't know what instruments they're playing. Oh. Not the guitar. Some 41. In too deep. All yep. right, Steve? Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Eh? Isn't it? Well, it's like, like, that seemed a long time, all that music we Yes, made. no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, it's annoying, actually, that Carl never went to the email, because the questions have been sent in there. Good, good questions. And they've all been, uh, sort of neatly spat out with the correct answer. For instance, I might have asked you this, if I was the Quizmaster, Rick. How many noses do slugs have? Oh, I think, it's, I think it's four. It is four? Yeah. Point to you there. Let me just see if I can find another one. Who, according to the current issue of Viz, is a cycloptic pop temptress? Oh, don't know. Is it a pun on her having one eye and being yep. sounding like cycloptic? Is the clue? There's yeah. only one pop temptress. Oh, it's um Gabrielle. Of course. Yeah. Two points. Fine, a battery didn't get them. These are these are rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever watched a question? Because I can understand the question. They're rubbish. I suppose, aren't they? It gives me a chance to know what, what the answer is required. Go on. Uh, let me see if I can find another one for you. Uh, no, that's, you're never gonna get that one, that's too hard. Oh, no, uh, that just, that just... That just teases you more, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, what's the name of... No, that's boring, that one. Sorry. Sorry. It's, it's beginning to fall apart again now. Uh, here we are. What's the proper name for Big Ben? Is it St. Stephen's Tower? You know, it absolutely yeah. is. That's three out of three. That's fantastic. Yeah, because the bell, uh, the, named after something like Benjamin so-and-so works in it, it's St. Stephen's Tower, and it's, that's the big bell. It's actually, in a weird way, I didn't know any of those, so it's actually quite good that we did kind of balls it up with Carl, because otherwise I'd have, there'd have been egg on my face. Yeah, but I still won, I just won less. Oh, did you? Yeah, you did win. Yeah. 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 I've already forgotten, i already wiped that out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, it, and but, hey, Steve, it's not me that's the real winner. <laughs> it's Neil. Who uh, asked that question about pubs? About pubs, he and he's got those three CDs. Just tell him what they are again. Just feeder Echo Park, a compilation called Reloaded Three. Lots of great stuff on there, and the Essential Bob Dylan two CD. Have set. you called him and told him? No, not yet. This is such a shambles, isn't it? Because what if he goes out or something? <laughs> Actually, if he's listening, can he give us a call? That is so lazy. Can't we call him like Tarrant would? I would have got his number. You've not got his number. I forgot. Carl, oh, this is I, unbelievable. I said get the numbers, Carl. I I wanted to go for the Pope one. Carl, do you actually work here in the week? <laughs> or, like, did you just, you know like in a film when they knock someone on the head, put on the space you would go to the yeah. room like, Is it like, is, yeah, is it like Secret of My Success and Michael J. Fox, you actually work in the post room, <laughs> but sad is there's no one around that recognises you. So you pretend that you're a producer? Yeah. Cause you don't yeah. seem to know any of the rules. Cause I reckon that name's made up. When did uh, I say a producer? When <laughs> that, did I say a yeah, Carl Pinkerton is a name that you'd come up with on the spot. No, he doesn't work it. no, he's not a producer, he says he works in sound. He works That's what in he sound. Says, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, work with this. This is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. I've played it before, I'll play it again. It's one of my favourite tracks of all time. It's Bob Dylan, If You See Her Say Hello. It's a little bit of trivia for her. This is the last song I ever played on the old XFM before wow. they came in and said, okay, you can go now. That's incredible. And it? Bringing tears to my eyes. Lovely. And, uh, then there's, even, there's a microphone set up because people have been doing speeches. This little girl gets on the mic, right? It's being funneled through the speaker system. So every time I put my headphones on... Oh, I Miss can... Dynamite, was it? <laughs> it wasn't sadly Miss Dynamite, although <laughs> she decided to, uh, have a little go at MCing. She was screeching her little head oh, off. Oh, was she? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine. <laughs> at their most annoying. <laughs> When, when children are at their most annoying, because they've got a bit of confidence there, they're a bit cocky, they're not shy anymore, they're a bit arrogant. Yeah. She's screeching her head off, so I'm playing, you know. <laughs> oh, she doesn't I just know. Look at your face! I'm playing into the groove, no one's getting into the groove, because she's. because <laughs> she's going mental, she's just going, Ryan, what's this? What's this? I don't know what this is! Play something I know! Oh. I think I haven't got any bloody DJ Otsu. Or Crazy Frog. I'm not gonna play what, what you- So she's just switching along, ruining it for everyone. <laughs> and I say everyone, there was no one there, so me, she was ruining it for me. <laughs> I bet you were really I'm angry! I'm furious. But of course as well, every time she screeched, it went through my headphones. <laughs> so I- uh, 
So, of course, I'm and then this, her dad comes along, right? And I'm <laughs> thinking, alright, he's gonna, he's oh, seen what's happening. I just imagine you in your suit, sweating, getting annoyed at someone Living. ruining your set that yeah. no one's listening no to. That no one's listening to. <laughs> I think, oh, oh, her dad's coming over, he's gonna put, put pay to this, he's realised that, you know, she's causing a disturbance. He comes over there, joins in! No. Sits her, sits her on the lap, on his lap, he's just saying, hey, she's having a whale of a time, I'm thinking I'm furious. I'm thinking it's his responsibility to shut her up, he's yeah, not gonna do anything. I what agree. can I do? I can't step in. No. And I know very well that if I interfere, he's gonna say, oh, well, she's enjoying herself and no one's dancing anyway, and we'd have just got into a frac car. Yeah. I didn't want to start a fight. No. Cause so, um, I don't know, but he'd have knocked you out, wouldn't he? Someone would have got knocked out. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying who it would have been, but, you know, but there was, to bear in mind, Rick, there would have been two of them. <laughs> And, um, so I didn't want to get into a fight with him. And, uh, anyway, so I'm playing. Anyway, so my friend came along. He, he, he realised what was happening. And I didn't have the guts to, uh, to unplug the microphone. Because uh, he'd have known, you see. Yeah. So I got my friend to do it when she had her back to me. <laughs> so he pulled the plug out. She, the microphone went dead. She went, What's going on? I went, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, I don't know. She said, Where the microphone I said, You must have broken it. Oh, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Someone will probably make you pay for that. Oh, and, uh, anyway, at least we shut her up. <laughs> that is great! But, uh, <laughs> but it just went, it really went from bad from worse. And, and you know there's that thing when you panic, you start panicking, so you start, you're putting on a lot of flavours that you would have saved to the, the, the last hour. What are we talking, boom, boom, shake, shake, Exactly, you're throwing him in early. Love Shack's yeah. coming on way too soon. Really? Oh, Love Shack before 11. <laughs> I, it's heresy, but I had to do it. <laughs> But anyway, in the end, the, uh, the, I made the bride go and get some people in. I thought, I said, look, it's your special night, <laughs> all right, and they're gonna enjoy this. I'll be honest, love, this is a washout, and it's up to you <laughs> exactly. to turn this wedding yeah. around, or I'm walking. I'm walking, and I tell you, they're gonna have a sour memory of this evening, yeah, unless you so bring some go people and get in. everyone in dancing. So, I, so she got them in at the end, and, and I'll tell you this, Carl. I mean, I don't know what you say, but they were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. A bloke came over and said, have you got Amarillo? I said, no, but I put on something even better, Delilah. I have never- I mean, wedding crowds always go for Delilah. Let's- uh, a song, of course, about old man killing his wife. It always goes down very well, strangely, at weddings. Yeah. They get into a sort of hokey-cokey thing. They went yeah. berserk for it. And I was following it up with, I had the monkeys, I had all sorts going on. Brilliant. Of course, you know what happens. What? I'm going great guns. People are absolutely loving it. They're rocking it. I throw in, um, uh, Oh, I, I had something cracking on at the end of- Come on, Eileen, of course, was on. People sure. were going berserk for it. Which is unfortunate, because the bride's name was Eileen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, then the bride pipes up, I'm throwing the, uh, bouquet. So they all traipse off outside again. Oh. I was furious! Oh, no. I, I plugged the microphone back in, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> We got, you know, but they went out there, and of course you can't get them back once they've done that, because all the women are running around, I got the, I got the, you know, thing, yeah. and then they got to wave everyone off, throw the confetti. They ruined, they ruined your day. I was having a great time and they ruined it. She ruined your special day. She ruined my special night. Oh no. You know, what, would you, head. what would you put on about now, Carl? What well, I thought was DJ. Yeah. Probably about a world party. Go on. Oh, interesting. Put the message in the box, put the message in the car, drive the car around the world, and I, uh, I'm imagining Rick, that that message is make poverty history. Um, <laughs> that's world party, put the yeah. message in the box. Yeah. Um, can I just say quickly while I think of it, um, we get a lot of emails from people, a lot of texts saying, can you say, you know, can you send a big shout out, mm. stuff like that. You know, I've just looked at one now, Scott and Julie in Australia listening, they want a big shout out, big shout yeah. to them. But there's so many people that do it, and I'm obviously just want to say, sorry we never get to your emails, we're very, very lazy, we never really get to look through them, um, but we obviously do appreciate you emailing in, texting in, stuff like that. Um, and also, can I send a big shout out to my grandparents, who I believe might be listening on their new digital radio? They're pretty high tech. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah, nice yeah. country. Yeah. Are they, are they, are they the merchants of, uh, uh Bristol? Merchants, yeah. 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 Props Good. to them. Props to them, yeah. Um, Carl. yeah, no, uh, it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got I don't like it. Like trust. I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you happy don't, do you? You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? It, 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 it's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, uh, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you. Where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it. Where you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg, and chips, no matter where I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what they're like. <laughs> Right. That's what, that's what they'll remember, actually. When I'm saying about stuff about Live 8 and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad, you know, you remember Live 8? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday, when I had sausage and chips. <laughs> 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 Nothing changes. But the thing is, today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that, and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's that's normally done. That's really throwing you out. Uh oh, uh oh. I just uh -oh. don't. I don't like all this change and that. It's messing about, isn't it? Rain man. <laughs> so what what do you want now? Well, what about song with the story? <sighs> See with the. Uh, 
Right, well, last week- Look at him, he's in a genuinely foul mood. Uh, he's actually rocking. Yeah. He's actually rocking like Rain Man as well. Last week we did, like you say, Eric Clapton. This is the section where we play a song with a story. I think every song, if it's a good song, it's got a story. You've got to listen from, to it, to, sort of, you know, from the start, mm. you get in the middle, you're going, oh, how's it gonna end and all that. Yeah. You wait another minute, you know the ending, you're happy. But, listening. but, the thing is, as Steve said, um, you know, sometimes you're disappointed with it, so it's just not a good story. And as Steve said, I'm not sure you're finding what you need in a song for a story. Why don't you read a, bu uh, a book, a novel? If you want a really good story that engrosses you and kind of, why don't you read a book? You're not gonna get it from a, a pop no, song. No time for a book. A song's three and a half minutes. And that's it, is it? And that, that satisfied your... Well, yeah, it gets you thinking for a few minutes, then you move on. This then one, you stop thinking. Two <laughs> minutes fifty, this one, right? It's brilliant. Go on, it's then. about, uh, last week we talked about the, the little crippled fella, right? Mm, this one- was, uh, As I say, I don't think we say crippled anymore, but go on. Alright, this one, someone emailed in saying, if you want a song about that, this is a song you ought to listen to, right? right. It's about this fella who, uh, basically something happened, I think he's in a wheelchair, right, mm. for some reason. Uh, you thought that last time. His wife, um, you know, likes going out. She doesn't take him, take him with her when, when she goes out. Right. Is um, it Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town? Yeah. Good, brilliant song. Well, we'll just play it then? Yeah, great song. Alright. What do you mean? Oh, it's just, uh, it's a good story. It starts off well and night, you're feeling yeah. sorry for him, but then he says, where's my gun? Yeah. Cause well, she's a slut. Why? Because she's going off. Yeah, but, but what, what does, what does he expect her to do? What? Just cause it, it, he paralyzes his legs fighting. For his country, presumably in Vietnam War, says that crazy Asian war. So he's gone, he's fought for his country, he's taken a bullet, he's come home, he can't walk, he should be a hero, and then he, his wife's going out putting it about downtown. Why do I never meet women like Ruby? <laughs> Forever lost. The magic numbers on XFM 104.9. Well, the concert's kicked off, Steve. Yeah, I'm a bit annoyed that we're still here, really. Let's try and wrap this up quite quickly and then shoot No one's listening anyway. Nah. We could talk about anything. Well, we do. Yeah, true. It makes no difference to We us, could do a lot more swearing than we normally do. <laughs> and do even more. Oh. I was talking to Carl the other night, um, cos I'd been watching, re-watching for some reason, that film Witness with Harrison Ford, oh, where he's a uh, policeman that, um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish? Amish. Amish. Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl- you, you look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, I was obviously trying to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony-faced. Amazing. Used. Um, now for those- Okay, you've explained it to him, have yeah. you? Okay then. Yeah. Now I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them they're sort of in about- 1842 or something, so they're getting old papers and that. Um, they no, haven't caught up no, to no, 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 no. They, haven't they, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny, don't. they don't deny that the 20th century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they, they look up and they see planes and they know what they are, and they go into the town and they see it in the window of Dixon's, the telly, they just, they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're, they're still living they still they are still living like it's yeah yeah that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I mean yeah yeah but they don't they they know they know about everything else they just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing they think it, you know that society became more and more depraved and they wanted to go away from it and they want to go back to old values and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets and that way of life they can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better missing out on live eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I think this is the problem that Carl had. He, he, in his mind, they were just a bit delayed. So yeah. that in his head, they were slowly moving towards the. They wouldn't be century. able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could, they, sh they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah. Doing an acoustic set. Yeah. Between yeah. the bands. Yeah. yeah. That'd be all right. They'd but though, in Carl's a... mind, it's like if he. Although they wouldn't like fast car. <laughs> they wouldn't like a scene about that, they go, I don't know what you're talking about. Pony and Trap, you got a pony and trap, <laughs> that'll be alright. But, but are they still, do they still get sort of rubbish posts and that saying we need your money for this or, you no, know, get behind this charity? They live in a isolated community, they live, they're farmers, aren't they? 
they're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, I'm a, in actual fact it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? It's probably out- I mean, have they got anything to do with the- the Hare Krishna people? No. No. Nothing at all. Cause out of all- all the religions, that's- you know I'm not a religious person, I, I don't- I don't understand you that. You're only saying Hare Krishna cause you've got the head. That's the only no, reason you think I, it'd I'm be- I'm halfway there. Yeah. But, but the thing <laughs> is- out of- out of all the- you just- what's- what was that? <laughs> Man, he just fell out of my pocket where I'm- I'm nearly laying down! <laughs> That's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I, I've only ever lying down in a chair! Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm- I'm- you know, I've never been a religious type, you know, if people oh. want to do it, I let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the- I, I want one that's not gonna take over your life. I don't want one where you've gotta get up three times a day and you gotta go and pray and that you gotta get up early. Forget that. One prediction for the future, Carl, is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life, you'll just need the egg or sperm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? Uh, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. <laughs> different point, though, isn't it? That's a different, different point. point though. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. But no, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <laughs> ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that, that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left well, right well, well, no, well then that, that doesn't sort of, What do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are, you so saying, many... are you saying, because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't. You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all, if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy, because at the end of the day we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. Sorry, so, I, but what's this got to do with what Ricky said? What's this world like? Describe, you, describe a typical town or, or country It's sentry. exactly, right, imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it, it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they Everyone's just... still, yeah, uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. I, haven't you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on, because it's not no, like because a strict... we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now, yeah. at a school photo, yeah. You look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? Well, you can't <laughs> tell the difference between <laughs> some all... of the girls and the blokes. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not yeah, his school no. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? But we will change. Yeah, Probably we'll change. Probably not in 75 little years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that, that will go in evolution. <laughs> think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little <laughs> finger. Not, I've been watching my little finger. But again, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what's more interesting, about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not imagine that. To say, not, not French fries. Well, hang on, though. Well, at what point are we us then? They are. This is good. Go on. Go on. Go on. No, because if I if I can go on the internet at any time then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge yeah. and the stuff them, them kids on that now. 
I just think, where, where have they stored that? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. Yeah. Basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. So, what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yep. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Well, I'm not, but because what do you what's think the your point? Head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying. No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. And so we're having a chat socially. It's not like they're going, oh, right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep, and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find it there. No, uh, only. Do you want to see naked ladies? <laughs> no, only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. So, no, no. so then, I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Right. Mm. So what? Why bother using? But you're your still knowledge? the go-between. You're you, Carl, are the go-between between the internet and whatever your mouth says. You can't says. beat the internet. Yes, you but can't, you're the it knows everything. No, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge a human put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch University Challenge and go, I want to be like them. I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted I I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, is, is I, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day. <laughs> what an amazing game! <laughs> what an amazing because, intellectual oh, pursuit that is! What a lucky lady. <laughs> What does Suzanne say to that? Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along, and then I'm saying, oh, it might be this one, whatever. I remember, the... I love that, because well, I remember once, it was about um, five years ago, uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlour games, um, like charades and that, and then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals, and you have to go, uh, First one is A, then B. So you say aardvark, next one goes beaver, next one goes cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went egg. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on egg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well known jeweler of Fabergé, is well known for his jewel encrusted war, <laughs> egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living <laughs> egg. That's, That's what I'm saying. Oh. It's gonna, if you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his right, head looks like hay. <laughs> Yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But uh, also, he told me uh, w when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he says he's given up ever trying to get an answer. So now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. <laughs> 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 Another great game! <laughs> Suzanne's rotated on! Unbelievable! <laughs> <laughs> how would you do with that? That's not. I'm normally alright on that. <laughs> There's got to be something else. But there's there's <laughs> another watch. there's what another there's another evolution thing though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that you, you can't argue with that because the evidence well, is there. Can. Okay, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain mm. isn't part of filling your head with stuff. The journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whereas if I just, if I'm, say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit, you go, right, we've got, what do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're mm. going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need plumbing, Yeah, I know we do, but... The, uh, it's yeah. odd that they would have chosen plumber. they've got such... <laughs> oh, yeah. Such because kind of small it's what, it's, it's what ambitions his, for their It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> they, want, they want the baby to carry on the business of the plumbing. They want, they want the baby to be able to plumb. Well, what about this chip in the head?
But you've made this but you've up. you've made the scenario They're up. not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. No, what well, well, I, I, I say that? No, no, no. said that. I, I think Steve's one. I don't know. I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and an and interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun. You know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be: oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop. It's it's in there. It's an interface. I know, but it makes us but lazy. Carl, it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. It kind of looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm at it. Right, look at it like this. Jesus, look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go. Ooh. Where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to uh, Dorset. Hi. Oh, hi. What road are you taking? Don't know. I'll just pop on the sat nav. Now. Mm. That's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you getting there? Uh, car. All oh, right. Yeah, well, which, uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why, why do you want to know? Oh, just, just making a, just making a friendly chat. Just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know, really. I've, I've got a sat-nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there, and... What do you mean? What, what, what... Bit lazy, isn't it? Well, I don't... I'm not a, I'm not a pigeon. I don't... Well, you got an A to Z. Well, well yeah, but it's... Yeah, it was a, on a computer with the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and... It's a bit, and la bit lazy, though. Not isn't it? really, no. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? That's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit... Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. <laughs> Clive, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road, we need to get going. Well, it's this, uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who? to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because Fuck we really got to get going. He's a go. fucking dickhead. Who, who, I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, we're, 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 just, we're just telling him we're using the sat now because it's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but, but look, look but what's happened. Who the fuck are you? Would Columbus found America if he had had a sat nav? Yes! No, he wouldn't. He'd have put in America and he would have taken it to America. He wouldn't. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody d just hold goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, be on a sat-nav? <laughs> no. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... What's the difference between the sat-nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> from finding oh, a continent no. to a little I love that! I love that! Little greasy I am, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know yet, it's the unknown world. <laughs> what are you taking? Just a uh, boat that all lazy swim, you can. <laughs> Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just, they, they can't comprehend how well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my my thing, and it's reassuring. I think you know we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. Philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Um, because there's a I read on the email someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, it's something about. Everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there and that. I like the Chinese, there's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up, warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about, um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. Why, well, why is, well that's, I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it was all, it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is, um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean, it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let, you let 12 people in a room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do, and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee, because 
uh, everyone having their say, it becomes anodyned, it becomes compromised. Whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> Well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, knew is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. Well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them. Okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? What, what, how could you improve it? Like, the camel, you'd go lose the app. I'd probably... I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um... And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar is is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says. That... Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. <laughs> no, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones. But you... I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've you've said you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? <laughs> oh God, I love it. you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I it? Thought, but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot the, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like... Do you think there's a lot of cheating, is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm just saying there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah, so and you want... You'd want, you, you, you you get it down to, like, eight animals that represented all of them. So oh, okay, who would get in your, in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah... I would have gone like, hang on a minute, We've, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> Let it drown. And have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't, he was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. compared to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe... With Noah as well. You well, believe you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to to catch two of every species. You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Um, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee! That questions for Carl. <laughs> Yeah, okay, no, fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but let's, yeah, let's broaden well, it animal, to anything. Anim well, no, animal, any creature. That insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong, I'm just thinking about Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um... I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because... Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through wars and stuff. Well, you get an old one. If you get, like, an old one, that's about... Yeah. Most of them have lived in a box, in a garden, for 52 years. No, you, but, you, but you get some that have been about... And even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some what? of them have, well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two, yeah. And I what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel, and I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? 
what's the point in going back to oh, things that you've got? No, it's just that it's never as good as it. It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first night. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in going back to places. What do, you, what, what do you understand the question is? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back, you are that child again, you're in the body, you are the child, or you've got your adult um, head and experiences well, on, you know, you could... Rick, got... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, Let's be honest, but now that you've flagged I him up... I think he was thinking of him as he is now, in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but Too big for the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay. Well, choose then... an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. Know. I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever. But then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book, is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently? What, what about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could, you could have a look at someone and just sort of look, like, uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does, the ghost of Christmas past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you question. What. It, this is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once on a on a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's talking absurd. About? You're now saying. You're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <laughs> and you've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch them. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, well, something unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, safety is one good moment when I was about six that I loved. Mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You could go back and come back yeah, again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on.